Goliath, your response theory. Generosity. What you bring me? And all of a sudden, you're a Nazi. 
probably deserve to have leprosy. What is this, a Digidi Digidius? Yeah, this is all just cinemasins. Everyone knows what a fucking white wing is! Yeah, because it's for kids. Oh great, cosmic chicken. This is a film intended for children. It will be. When it fits a woman. Do, 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 do. What was the theme? How did it make you feel? Sexual harassment. What? Sexual harassment. Woo! Here's the thing. You're kind of watching movies, bro. People call me the Don. We're the worst channel ever. We're racist bigots. We bully smaller channels. Is this guy supposed to be Alfred? What was the theme? theme. How did it make you feel? Sexual harassment. What? Sexual harassment. Woo! Here's the thing. You're kind of watching movies, bro. People call me the Don. Don't know how discussions are meant to function. What is this music? <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, okay. I already got the link up there, yeah. Hello. Hi. <laughs> we had like seven, now we're down to four. Uh, hello everyone, welcome to part two of every frame of pause episode 120 20 million hour stream. This is what, hour 12-ish? Um, we welcome Mr. Mr. Wolf, how you doing there, sir? I'm doing pretty good. Excellente. Uh, Mr. Fringy, always nice to see you. Hello. <coughs> and of course, down with thrust. How are you, sir? How was your day? Uh, it was good. And uh, congratulations on the hundredth episode. Yeah, of man. Fine podcast. It's um, it's been crazy because they're all like a million hours long each. <laughs> it's finally get yeah, I wonder when you sleep. Yeah. Also, as some may have already noticed, Rags is mysteriously missing. Um, any second he may be back. Worst case scenario, he fell asleep. Best case scenario, he'll be <laughs> any minute. He wakes uh, up eight hours later. Hey, sorry, what I missed. What's well, up? See, the good part of that though is that he can he can be the hype man while I slowly stagger and fall asleep in the background. So it'll be great. Right. Um. But yeah, you know, we 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 don't need to. We don't, we're not really going to be covering anything for a little bit. We're just going to have a a nice little chat. You know, uh, chill out. Just ask all of the questions. Because I mean, uh, after those, especially after those those cooking videos, uh. Uh, you cool, you cool with calling your tone? Is, is that alright? Yeah, um, so the story behind... My name is Tony, by the way, obviously. Shit. Probably many people thought about that. Anyway, I was, was working at uh, this cell phone store, and uh, this the manager I had at the time, he gave me... He bestowed onto me the name Tell Moak, so it just kind of carried through. Not nice. my real name, but I go by either or. Yeah, I mean, it works. Um... I mean, I was just gonna say the the easy question to go off like, what what got your passion going for cooking? Because man, you're good at it. Um, my starvation as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, grew up in a family of five five kids. Hey, Rags. <laughs> you <wanna answer> <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, hey, Rags! Hello. Yo, hello. Uh, the fuck have you been? Rags, meet uh Tone. Tone, meet Rags. Hello. Hi. Hi there. Hello. Hi, uh, it's great to hear from you in the live. Mm. It's great to meet you over the internet. That's that's what the best we can do for now. Um but yeah, he's just he was just regaling us with uh, how all this cooking stuff got started, so go ahead. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, like go um so when I was a kid, like my mom and dad divorced when I was like ten and um he had the job she didn't kind of thing. She never went to college, so she took all five kids and um had no job she was broke we ended up living like in a trailer long story short um we didn't have a lot of money and we had five kids so i pretty much never got to eat as as a kid so, <laughs> like my mom would make like the, the the classic hamburger helper for for dinner you know the the noodles with the the ground beef you know the five dollar meal for 10 people mm -hmm. and like if you weren't first to the table you, you didn't get seconds because there were so many fucking kids mm. 
So as I got older, um, Food Network exploded when I was like a teen. And it wasn't just like the classic like restaurant tour doing like the demo on TV via like Epicurious or something like that. It was like the celebrity chef, you know, the, the Bobby Flay came into the picture. So I kind of like, it was a combination of being always starved as a kid or starving as a kid. And then like um, watching like the celebrityism develop with food, like on the side while other kids were like watching, like Saved by the Bell, like I was rocking like Iron Chef. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like how I got started. And of course I had my grandma in the kitchen, you know, trying to sneak the the little taste of the tomato sauce before she'd whack me in the face kind of thing. We had a very (laughs) close knit family, although we were very poor. (laughs) So like it was, was it like making as much as you could of the ingredients you had at hand sort of thing? You had to learn how to sort of change them up and stuff. Yeah. I mean, um, I actually recall fond memories of uh, food stamps actually at one point. So we were pretty poor actually. And my mom would send me to the store with the old food stamps. And she'd say, you got $20 in food stamps. You got to get food for the rest of the week. So I just go down there and get a whole bunch of stuff. And then my mom and I would just make dinner for the whole family for like seven days, pack it up in little, little packages. So everyone would have, you know, food in the fridge. But at the end of the week, we pretty much have no food. (laughs) I mean, making the most so of it, right? Really, it was shit. like, yeah, I was about to say, basically just learning by necessity and not only yeah. like learning how to cook good, but also cook a lot. Like, it's, it's a pretty good combination of skills, I would say. Oh, we, we made some trash for sure. Some goulash. <laughs> right. Mom, I, got, I got 20 cokes, mom. Will this work? <laughs> <laughs> I got a bag of flour and some chocolate, mom. <laughs> Did you like so? What? When you were, when you were buying this shit, we, we we sort of like I want to mix it up this week. I want to buy some stuff we haven't used before. No, no. My mom would give me like a list, you know, the old uh, ten ten item list, and then I'd, I'd have to figure out how to squeeze like a uh, olive oil, cereal, pancake mix, mm. all this crap. I'd have to find some way to to get it under twenty bucks. So like that's how I learned how to cook on a budget. Obviously, the show is kind of like about like restaurant style food and like lavish elegant yeah, food but like my roots come from very poor like family style peasant food well that's a I was, humble I, way I, of getting up there yeah starting yeah. from nothing and getting to where you're at now i mean your food looks genuinely excellent yeah, restaurant style high quality stuff is definitely what i'd call it to the point where i'd even say it's um i don't want to say like it's really, um, I'd say, beyond the level most people could probably do. It's sort of its own thing. It's surpassed the the everyday person um, kind of level. It's really up there. I really, can make uh, macaroni. Really that's that's my level. <laughs> I can make toast. <laughs> I can burn toast. Well, I mean, like the the truth of the matter is, I don't eat like that. Like that's just kind of like the special occasion stuff, right? I eat very like. I imagine as I said, like, what your low tier stuff is like, would be godlike to us as well. We'd be like, whoa! <laughs> You're just like, I'm just putting it together. I don't know what you mean. What can you do with a can of beans? <laughs> I actually fucking hate beans. So nothing. oh no! Oh, <laughs> you and all, you and me both, beans, man. I guess every them. kind. Like I was in Chipotle this one time, and oh. you know, you, you guys don't got Chipotle in Europe. No, uh, but. Or, I know what it is though. It's like you know the, what it is, they have though, spicy right? shit there, right? It's it's like Americanized. Mac- you got you, you got you, sh- you sure as fuck you got beans. So like, <laughs> I go up there to order my burrito, and like, it's it's kind of like for those who don't know what Chipotle is, you basically walk up to the counter, and uh, you, you they make the burrito in front in front of you. So I wasn't watching this chick that was making it one time. I gave her clear instructions because she wasn't listening. And then there she goes dumping beans into my fucking burrito and uh, just stared at her aghast, disgusted. Don't put beans in my food. So this yeah, is post the, bean the natural <laughs> I thought this would be the, the origin story for hating the beans. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. No, that would be the, the campfire. Someone in the chat probably knows. What is the... The do- the commercial with the dog, the beans. Oh, bushes, it. baked beans. Yeah, man, we were so poor. I was. I told you guys earlier, I was poor. 
we were so poor. We'd ha- we would eat Bush's baked beans on fishing trips. If we caught no fish, guess what was for dinner? Beans. Oh my god. Now that, that's where my hatred for beans, among other things, uh, this is where my it makes those fishing trips pretty fucking fish. high stakes. Jesus. Yeah, that rainbow trout. Fuck, I'd eat pike rather. No, actually, I don't know if I'd rather eat pike than beans. Pike is pretty disgusting. Well, doesn't the UK, don't you guys have like a lot of, or maybe it's Norway, you got like a lot of fish dishes, like dried fish, Mahler. Uh, I mean, yeah, we like, we like a lot of f- fish related dishes over and over in Britain. I was going to say, I'm, 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 I'm okay with beans. I'm on team beans to, to a degree. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to shout from the heavens for them, but you know, beans are cool. I'll keep them in uh, yeah. and back up. They're all right. I mean, the, the Weezer had that album, uh, Pike and Beans. <laughs> yeah, Pike and Beans. Um, yeah. Fish and chips is, of course, one of the uh, cultural exports we have over in Britain. It's one of the things people people come to our aisles just for the fish and chips. Exquisite, you might even say. But um, yeah, I I was curious about the um, the the rabbit. I'm I'm assuming the answer is no, but I thought it was anyway. Do you do any uh, hunting at all, or is uh, do you get it all from like a butcher and stuff? No, I am completely 100% non-hunter. I hate zoos. Animals and cats. Wow, you hate zoos. <laughs> really? Zoos. I don't yeah. like exploitation of are... animals at all. Zoos are kind of shitty places. <laughs> well, there's a difference between like um, a natural habitat or like a, um, you know, where do they have those like sanctuaries? Like for wounded animals? I know what you're talking about. You're talking there's about like the big sort of uh, yeah. zoos that they can sort of free roam around and they try to approximate like the habitat and they live in social groups, you know, like groups. Yeah, and it's, it's hard to re- co- re- cohabit or re- rehabitate those in, uh, those animals into the wild because they've been yeah. put in those, those. There's a difference between that and, and zoos is what I'm saying. Zoos is commercialization. Mm-hmm. That is, it seems to be driven by a certain amount of goodwill. Maybe it's just my own personal experience, but the couple zoos I've been to have been like really bad shitholes. Granted, one of them was the Detroit Zoo, so that's kind of a given that it's going to be a shithole. But uh, (laughs) yeah, I mean, you had animals like walking out of their cages and the people working there just didn't give a shit. Free what? range, free range zoos. <laughs> Could yes. you imagine a free range zoo? You walk through the front gate, you see like a lion chasing down. <laughs> like, yeah, they, from, they already bought their tickets. Remind me of Tiger you'd King. See, like, you'd see like the monkeys like sitting in their own shit. It's like, it's sad. They're like super sad. They're super depressed. They're in fucking cages. It's like no way to live. Anyway, the penguin exhibit is fucking depressing. You go in there, it's like all fake ice. You see the shit collecting on the bottom of their little pool. It smells awful in there. It's like it's just really fucking disgusting. Fly them back out That's to Antarctica, weird. please. Anyway, no. The, to, to circle back, Mahler. No, I'm not a I'm not a hunter. Um. What, so, like, weird question. I don't know how to phrase it, but like, what what kind of stuff do you know how to cook animal wise? Because obviously the rabbit. But what's uh, so what looking at? So the rabbit was was tough to get actually. Like finding that rabbit. And like the COVID system, oh, right, yeah, was like nigh on impossible. Interesting, considering like, there were like 10 billion rabbits like, in the world. <laughs> I should have so easy. This gun gets so much dead rabbit. <laughs> yeah, head to the nearest field and, and gun one down. But no, like finding the <laughs> rabbit was <laughs> come here, bunny. But no, like the, the finding the actual rabbit was a freaking nightmare. I had to like go to like another city to like this. It wasn't even like a butcher. It was like a this is huge. Like they were like breaking down entire animals, like from not like a slaughterhouse, but like huge pieces of meat. Like you go to a butcher, you'll, you'll you know you might find like like a venison loin, but you're not going to see like the venison hanging from the chain, just being cut down. You know what I mean? So like someone maybe like a hunter would go out and they'd shoot a deer or something and then they'd bring the deer to this person and they dress it and get it all ready and that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, there's like two, two there's two different types of like of butcheries. So you have like the the butcheries where the 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 butcher will import the the product mm-hmm. that's pre pretty much pre sliced or pre cut or whatever. Then there's actually butcher. Well, I guess there's three. The second type of butcher would be the butcher that imports bigger slabs of, of meat and then cuts them down themselves, packages them and sells them. Then you have what you're talking about, which is what Disney um, did to Star Wars. Yeah. 
if that <laughs> and <laughs> if you like hunt a deer you can find like a someone to take your animal to and they'll actually break it down uh-huh they don't they don't actually sell commercialized meat they'll, they'll just you know break down your shit for you yeah i could imagine a like I'm, I'm in arkansas and there's a lot of hunting that goes around here so i imagine there's quite a few places like that that'd be more than happy to you know get your deer already take care of your meat get your meat you bring them we slash them yeah the the um rabbit episode was actually supposed well that was like my second take third take actually we were planning to do venison and then i completely fucked it up <laughs> i fucked up the first episode and then we ref refilmed it which took like seven hours by the way and then Bro, the camera like a lot of work went into it the camera fucking died oh, as we were doing died not like at the start not like two hours in right as we we're getting like the money shot plating you know that the iconic shot that everyone <laughs> wants to see uh -huh. it dies oh. and for some reason i don't know why uh there's no indicator on the camera i use so we just kept on filming and uh gathered up all the footage later on and then realized we didn't uh. have that good old-fashioned money shot so we had to can it went back to the butcher they're out of venison so then we switched to the rabbit which one was better uh the rabbit for sure i had never had it before and um it was my first time cooking it so it was it's kind of like a challenge to me and the something really cool to do too so rabbit is uh you you, you like the taste of rabbit better than venison um i mean it tastes like chicken and i i i, I do fancy the rabbit does. chicken huh. it tastes exactly like chicken nice. i mean i paid like 40 dollars for this tiny little rabbit one stinking rabbit it exactly <laughs> like chicken dude <laughs> it's jumpy chicken <laughs> it's well, the I attitude no of the animal because you hear people say that all the time and it tastes just like chicken but i don't i think if i had to name an animal that the the animal that isn't chicken that tastes closest to chicken i think is actually alligator I was just going to say that too. That's what? what I heard. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I knew I wasn't though, crazy. Not out crocodile, dude. Okay. You get your I'm out of the loop. Why is straight. an alligator or a crocodile close to a chicken taste wise? Is that just a. Just, what? Well, no, I in America. Because oh, right, dinosaurs <laughs> and, and birds. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, no, no say I, I'm pretty sure that I'm. Um, say it. I just said it. I can't. Say it again. Say it again. There is too much interference. Uh, you have to say it yeah, again. All right. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. All right. Or, I'm just trying to explain my point. Um, I'm pretty sure that aren't birds descended from dinosaurs and crocodiles are basically dinosaurs. So uh, there you go. Yeah, dinosaurs eventually became birds. I don't think. Cro um, yeah. yeah. What are you. Crocodiles, not. They're a whole but different I think thing. Yeah, no, I, crocodiles I think the crocodiles are like just... related to dinosaurs. I'm pretty that, sure they no, are. All dinosaurs I thought, I thought were the... related to each other. I thought it was just that they've been around for fucking ages, isn't that the thing? I, yeah, on. crocodiles have been around for a long time. I think that's just because. Welcome to our podcast, by the way. We're talking, about... <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, I, I think it's just coincidental because there probably would have been a lot of changes, you know, between the dinosaur chicken stage. In what um, the crocodiles and alligators have been hanging out. Uh, on I'm not. I'm not sure that that's. Uh, although birds may be the only modern dinosaurs that this is from um, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Can't be trusted. <laughs> like, um, they are you getting news from Canada? Stop well, it. This is the first link that came up. Modern crocodiles no. and alligators <laughs> are almost unchanged no. from their ancient ancestors. From Get the a new link. Period. No. Well, no, no, that makes sense. Yeah, if if the crocodiles and the alligators are unchanged, then they might have shared a common ancestor, but they wouldn't. Yeah. One wouldn't have been descended from the other. Oh, maybe not. But yeah, if crocodiles for, I mean, and alligators if, if, like, become birds, birds. Yeah, but if it's the idea that like birds, because you know turkeys and chickens are not the same, but they taste similar, and you know, so if if that's the case, then surely there's like and duck as well, right? So like if if that's the case, and then yeah. Animals belong oh. to a similar group, taste similar. Maybe Total that's duck. just one of the duck. Let me you like duck? Straight. Let me set this state straight. <laughs> duck <laughs> does not taste like chicken at all. Yeah, it doesn't. I was about that's why I was uh, asking because right. I really like duck, 
but it doesn't taste like chicken. It tastes great, though. Through, I like yeah. it. There's My mom doesn't like nothing that it. That so out of the loop. I've never evolved, evolved from a crocodile either. Well, I'm not no, saying no, they, they evolved they from crocodiles. That's not what no, I'm they saying. Didn't. Like, they're, they're they, they didn't. Animals. Yeah. yeah. They don't taste like <laughs> dinosaurs. <laughs> wait, what? Well, how, wait, wait, wait. how do you know what dinosaurs taste like? Nobody knows what dinosaurs taste like. Uh, well, they did. We they found engravings to describe the taste of dinosaurs. Okay, guys, like, that's how we know. <laughs> engravings yeah. from other <laughs> dinosaurs. They wrote it down. <laughs> Though seriously, wouldn't it be cool to taste a T Rex? Just be like, I want to try that shit. Just to see what it's like. Thus, tasting power. Obviously, after it's just died of natural causes, no need to butcher the animal just for the taste. You know. I heard predatory animals don't taste as good as like herbivores. Yeah, and that's uh, that's so what, from what, what he's talking yeah. about. I'll tell you why that's true. I'll tell you why that's true. Well, let me let me <clears throat> let me replace the word herbivores with um, like hunters and hunted, right? So the why game meat or like predators and game taste good, like let's say venison or like whatever kind of game meat you're talking about, is because those fucking animals are running for their for their lives all day long out there in the wild. So they they build up this crazy like enzyme structure within the meat i saw it on joe rogan at one point you can go look it up but it's this system so you of want like not being frame. like the mess oh, i i get you right? like <laughs> the, le the sense, less it's... domesticated you are eating cornmeal crap you know rolling around in your own shit the better you should taste obviously ah do you think it also has something to do with like their diet too i sure. assume so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Grass, like <laughs> the diet of grass. So well, eating it, grass is what makes different from like just eating good. like a carnivore just eats meat. Yeah. Have you seen so, like again? Am I the only person who's seen the Tiger King documentary? By the way, out of us five, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Well, what, what is it? Tiger King. It's like a Netflix documentary, but they show like it's just a bunch of tigers that Captain made money off. It's it's pretty horrible on their end, but it's also insane documentary. Crazy shit happens, but they they comment on like how they. They take all of the, like the expired meat from loads of different supermarkets, and that's where they feed the lions. Where they just shove it into like a big van, and it's just all this different kinds of meat, and it's just like plopped into their uh, their pens. So I wonder if I wonder if that makes a difference, like fed higher grade or higher value quality, even cooked meat versus just like raw random shit from supermarkets and stuff. It reminds me of uh, this documentary called The Cove. Anyone seen The Cove? No. No, I haven't. I haven't even From... heard of that. Dude, great, great documentary. It'll make you pissed off, but it's really good. No. Oh. What's it about? <laughs> it's it's about these these dolphins that are kept in captivity in the small upset. island. Yeah, like dolphins. Come on, man. Everyone loves dolphins. Yeah. But these people butcher these dolphins for commercialized meat. Jeez. Then they take the dolphin meat and repackage it and label it as tuna. So you think it'd be way more expensive to kill a dolphin and sell it as tuna than not true because dolphins really? are cool and they just kind of like come up to you. Like, hey dolphin, Aww. come here. And you know, swimming oh, with oh, the dolphin. Damn. That's really? come come to me sad. as I hoist this giant spear at your face. Wow. Oh. And then the like the entire the, indigenous population now has like mercury poisoning you know because dolphins and sharks they have a high concentration of mercury in their blood which makes the the meat the flesh really dark like tuna it's fucked up Ooh, yeah that's, mm. uh, that is very strange i have no idea please don't tell me that happens often now i don't have to see the documentary and i don't want to <laughs> yeah just make sure you double check that hamburger meat on mm. the store I don't was think that, I've eaten an animal that I didn't like. Though. Was that called the Cove? You said the Cove. Yeah. What, where can I watch that? Was that on like Netflix or HBO? I think it was a Netflix. You know, they've got some really good documentaries. Um, Blackfish is good. It's about. Ooh, I've, uh, I've um, seen Blackfish. To... That's a sad one as well. That one pissed me off, dude. The basically the shutdown of Sea World because they were killing. Great white sharks. Wait, not great white sharks. Um, orcas? Killer sharks whales? Called? Orcas. Yeah, killer whales. And another one that's really good you guys should check out is The Wire. 
you seen it the show the why? No. Like the why of the show no it's this fascinating documentary where these two people climbed the and obviously in the past the um well everything two towers in the past. yes for i don't want to harp on the the sentiment regarding it but they climbed the two towers at one point and shot a cable i think out of like oh, a bow and arrow talking about across the two towers and then walked oh yeah across I know this. it oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, I i've know about heard of this movie. i haven't watched it but i have heard of it that's it's the a one big with, uh, nope for me um oh damn it yeah, everyone's saying man name. on wire is that what it's called that's it wait man on, yeah that is it yeah yeah, it's. I it, remember. Like, yeah, wow, I, I remember this distinctly. By the way, uh, Chris Stuckman did a review of this movie, and he said, "I'm not going to spoil whether or not he makes it across the wire." <laughs> and a minute later, he references the fact that they consulted with the guy who did that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, he could have fallen and been okay. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't the entire movie have? interviews with the guy who climbed it what about well, this? I, I, I think his whole thing was he, wasn't, he didn't want to spoil whether or not he made it i oh. guess making a movie about a guy who falls to his death is not like it's a bit of an anti-climax but... hey man, he <laughs> might have been talking to his force Stuckman. ghost you don't know yeah <laughs> chris stuckman i'm not gonna <laughs> spoil it one minute later spoils. yeah well, it just makes you wonder or i mean it's just it dawns on you like what humans can do yeah, they can make really cool oh yeah they're crazy good old Something humans the chat said you died i got better <laughs> really? besides the people who put animals in zoos for profit it's amazing what people can do mm -hmm. oh, i just i was curious because i was like i do remember blackfish they, they like um their fins flop over eventually because uh they just like break they can't work them properly because of the space confinements and stuff it was like one of the first it's things actually yeah, um, it's actually not about the physical structure of the tank or lack there of space. It's this weird, I mean, I hate this. I mean, I guess this is kind of spoiling it, so you close your ears if you're going to watch it. But um, it's something happens in their brain while they're in captivity that makes them go like loco, like crazy. Yeah. And they literally commit like suicide in the tank. Because they can't like live a life wild. It, so, I mean, it's it's like crazy. depression, or is it different from that? I'm not a scientist, but uh, seems like it to me. It is. It's one of the many documentaries when you watch. It, you're like, oh dear, this this needs to stop. This has to go. Like we gotta rethink this shit. It's weird because the Sea World, I at one point lived across the street from, and I was there as they shut it down and they remade it into it was like sea kingdom or or something they basically took away all the sea creatures the whales the huge aquariums with the killer whales uh due to government regulation they basically came in there slapped them on the ass and said hey man you can't do this no more and then they pretty much just like a video game remaster they remastered the theme park and they put a whole bunch of roller coasters in it well, hmm. better to have roller coasters than orcas. Yeah, at least the only risk is humans dying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah at, at least you gotta be ready kind of funny. You ever seen those pictures of those humans that are riding the roller coaster and the fucker stops when they're upside down? Uh, <laughs> no, um, pretty scary. Yeah, we're having a little bit of maintenance issue. I'm just gonna be about three and a half hours. Just sit tight. Oh, man, I don't know what... Uh... What roller co what the roller coaster is called, but at Cedar Point, there's this roller coaster that just goes really high up, and then you go down. It's like not complicated. It's literally just one hill, and it's like I think the tallest roller coaster there. And it kept breaking down like ten times while we were there. And then my dad was like, "Let's ride this one." And I was like, "I don't know if I want to ride the one that keeps breaking down." There's like that repairman sitting on the side with <laughs> he's all washed up. Wants to go home, greasy beard. He's got the screwdriver in his hand trying to fix the... that's a it's a good vote of confidence. Let me go ahead and step up. Yeah. I did ride it. It was like five or felt like five seconds. It was fun. Uh not the most fun I had there, but it was always like, uh, I don't know if I want to be riding the one that keeps breaking. 
That's a valid concern. <laughs> yeah, that thrill makes it more fun. Do you guys have a lot of theme parks in uh, the UK? Oh, well, Smaller? um, yeah, we got like Thorpe Park, and uh, well, most of the time we just we venture out of our little island when we want to go to like the better ones and stuff. Um, I've uh, I've only heard of Thorpe Park because of the in betweeners. <laughs> yeah. But, um, oh, you know, it's funny because in my head I was just like, what do you mean, COVID? <laughs> we're, like, we're not allowed yeah. to go anywhere, it's just spooky. But, uh, yeah, when things are a little bit more in function. You got the Disneyland Paris as well, which is pretty close by. You can drive there when you go under the bridge of spooky. You, you can't drive over on water. You can you freeze it about? like a sorcerer. <laughs> like that scene from the Polar Express movie. Or, uh, or Frozen. Yeah, how's that? How's a reference? <sighs> what? No. Frozen? Wait, what do you- wait, what? I- wh In Frozen there was a train on- <laughs> on ice. What? <laughs> <laughs> when you're only half paying attention, you can buy the shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Fringy, the Polar Express cameoed in Frozen. It was um, around the halfway point. Well, it no, splattered, I mean, in, in splattered one of the like, characters. I was about to say the Frozen Express. The Polar Express wasn't made <laughs> of ice. <laughs> I said an ice train. Um, so oh, here's everyone's a... chat saying Frozen. Frozen. <laughs> um, <laughs> so here's a question. What is everyone's opinion on cooked carrots? I love them. They're great. <gasps> mm. So good. I love them. What is the... What was the method of cooking? <laughs> It's very important. See, yes. you've already lost me. <laughs> Cooking. Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> does a flamethrower count? Boil Damn. them. Are you boiling them? Are you roasting them? Stick them in a stew. <laughs> I've put. Well, I've I've had them in like stews and stuff. If you put a carrot in a, a pot of boiling water, and then hand it to me, I will throw it in the trash. <laughs> wow. Wow. Let me write that down. Okay. We will. We will. I'm, avoid I, it. I boiled it just for you. If I could I add, I, I just want to know why. They so, taste like baby food. You mean like really soft and... Yeah, the way you should cook your carrots is roast them. And it makes them crispy and yummy. It's not really about the food sometimes. It's about how you handle the food. Yeah. Like, obviously, you always want to cook with fresh ingredients, but it's how you utilize the ingredient that determines the final product. I've never actually had roasted carrots. I might have to give that one a try. So I, yeah. I'm worried to ask what your opinion on mashed potatoes is. <laughs> <laughs> we, like I said earlier, we're really poor rags, so we ate a lot of mashed potatoes growing up, dude. So that could either mean that you have a, a, a wonderful fondness for them or you never want to see them again in your life. <laughs> uh, if I would ever make them, it would be like in a different format. I'll just say that. Like I would never like go out of my way and make mashed potatoes and stuff it into my right. mouth. I'd rather throw up. Oh, oh so it sounds like you hate them then. <laughs> so <laughs> like, you could like if boil you them up a bit, dice them, them, grill them, at, roast them after that, things like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the potato. I, I prefer sweet potatoes because they're healthier. I, oh, okay. I would eat a sweet potato over a potato. Sweet potatoes pretty time. cool. I don't actually like sweet potatoes. I, really? uh, I, 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 I just don't like them. There, there are some foods where I just feel like the sugar isn't, just doesn't have you the sweetness to it. Ever roasted them? Um, I can't remember. Uh, probably not, but I'm not sure. I, Next I assume, time I come across a roasted sweet potato, though, I will give it I a try. I assume your the sweet potatoes that you may be referring to are, is the classic Thanksgiving, yeah, the, the sweet potato mash that tastes like candy. It's nasty. Yeah, if it, it does taste candy like, and that's why I don't like it. Um, and I'm the same way about tea. Is that I don't like sweet tea. Though I am from the South, and everyone here has sweet tea, but I just can't, I can't do it. Never, never have liked it. Sugar just doesn't mix with certain things to me. I don't like sweet tea right. either, man. All right. How is the... 
Arkansas, what is the COVID situation down there, if I can ask? Uh, not too much. Everyone's um, more spooked than anything else, but not, not much COVID stuff going on here. The laces are pretty much open. They just do the reduced capacity, you have to wear a mask, that sort of thing. But it's Dying not indoors or out. Yeah, there's some of that. There's some of that depending really? on the place. Um, but it's not like there, there, there's not lockdowns or things of that nature. It's fairly oh. light. What's the rabbit situation down there, Rags? Lots of them. There are rabbits everywhere here. Every time I walk outside at night, there are rabbits all over the place. Oh, now I've just thought, have, have I ever told you the story of our rabbits in Australia? Just as a, <laughs> do they have No, fangs? how big are they? And yeah. Do they attack so, you? And well, no, ra rabbits, the idea of that, uh, that scene from Monty Python and the Holy Grail where the rabbit just kills everybody. Well, the thing, right, so rabbits aren't from here. Um, rabbits are an introduced species. So the, as the story goes, there was a guy probably like a hundred or something years ago um, who was like, man, it sucks that I can't go hunting rabbits in this country that doesn't have rabbits. I should uh, bring in some rabbits and uh, we'll hunt them. Let's do that. And so he brought 24 rabbits. Um, <laughs> he, 24. he let those 20... Yes, yeah, I know, right. I'm pretty sure it's 24. Um, he brought 24 rabbits um, and let them loose. He didn't get them all. Um, I'm pretty sure there are now 200 million rabbits in Australia. I think wow. that might actually be a gross underestimate. I think there might be more than 200 million. It got That's so bad theory. that they had to build a like 3,000 kilometer long fence in Western Australia to keep them out. So they have a lot of fences to keep animals out. Of. And now you have. You didn't even bother to fight a war against the rabbits. Well, was the emu how, did, how does one fight a war against rabbits? Like, I don't know. How, how does well, when you said they built war. something? I thought you were going to say like a rabbit laser or a rabbit turret. No, they they, uh, they built a a rabbit proof fence. Um, and it's not rabbit proof. It didn't work. <laughs> it's it's not like the dingo fence. Wait, the wait, dingo wait. fence works. The dingo the fence. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, oh, did you not know? Do you not know about the dingo fence? Well, I know about dingoes. They didn't know there was a the, the great Australian so, dingo fence. Well, and, and it is it is pretty great. It's uh it's like five thousand kilometers long. It's it's really long, um, and it's success. <laughs> it's a dingo <laughs> you fence. You understand? You know, ancient China built a wall to keep the Mongols out. Fucking Australia <laughs> builds a fence to keep the rabbits <laughs> <things out. laughs> out. Hey, <laughs> it, it worked though. The, the dingo fence was successful. There are the, the rabbit the dingo... fence didn't work. Well, well yeah, I, rabbit, I can rabbits were a lot smaller than dingoes. Well, you called it a rabbit proof fence, and the rabbits. I, have been... I didn't call it a rabbit proof <laughs> fence. That's what they called it. That's the actual name of the fence. Oh my when God. I say you, I mean Australia. Uh, well, I didn't name it. I'm just saying. <laughs> the fence got made, and it didn't work. <laughs> Oh my Fringies god! On the hook for everything Australia's ever did. <laughs> I do hold him responsible for a lot of Australian things. Let me let me see. I want to I want to double check the actual number of our uh, rabbits that we have in Australia now because so I'm pretty what, sure. That ju just so you don't drop another bombshell on us, what other fences do you have that are interfacing? Yeah, what about this kangaroo yeah, fence? The, the T Rex uh, fence. <laughs> I imagine well, that kangaroo yeah. fence has to be extra high. Uh, well, I think, um, it's mainly just, I like it, it's mainly just these two enormous fences that are thousands of kilometers long. An <laughs> like, elegant solution. Well, uh, yeah. The... I just want to highlight as well, I like that the story began with, like, the rabbit. Not originally from Australia, and it's like, yeah, anything cuddly and normal is from Australia. <laughs> hey, look. Kangaroos are pretty cuddly, you just don't want to get too close to them, otherwise they'll beat you up. Well, that's you know? the opposite of cuddly, though. If well, you then damn you, right? Them. <laughs> um, they are, I mean, cassowaries, that, that, well, you don't want to go near cassowaries is what I would say. So <laughs> what the hell is the cassowary? It's like so an emu. The cassowary is like an <laughs> emu on steroids. <laughs> so, I don't know what that is. So, <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, okay. Let, let, me, let me see if I can find a picture so of if a you inject steroids into a... What? Well, <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not actually, it's not actually an emu, it just looks a lot like one. Um, okay, so, uh, Tone, you know, you played Halo Reach, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, he, oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. I love that he's like, you know, where is this going? Yes. <laughs> so, you know those giant birds in the first mission of Halo Reach? That's essentially what an emu is. Or that. Oh, oh yeah, that the fringy is... We have a picture in the chat. That thing looks... 
actually a little bit more prehistoric than the crocodile. Well, oh, hold on. Let me let me let me show you the real picture. The real picture that should uh the this is this is that the, should terrify. I just like the idea that he's like it's yeah. a flupal dag, and you're like, what's that? It's like it's what a in the dangle. absolute sandwich? Is that, <laughs> what uh, in the absolute that, that is, sandwich? That is uh that's a cassowary kicking through a giant metal sheet. You know what that <laughs> reminds me of, dude? That reminds me of uh. When canine uh, sheriff trainers get the canine to attack him with the glove on, what the yeah. hell is that guy doing? Is that a shield? <laughs> it's well, or yeah. is that like it, provoke the cassowaries into taking out my shield? Only in Australia do you need a fucking shield against birds. <laughs> that's they, not just they, a shield. That's like a that's a steel shield. Have they weaponized yeah. the cassowary? Have they have they put it into war yet? <laughs> well, it, it, it's funny, right? Because oh, are I, we I, arming I, these I, things I, at this point? Well, oh uh, God! Don't give them arms, Jesus actually, Christ! Uh, Tone, have you have you heard of the Great Emu War? No, <laughs> it's, it's not very great. Uh, no, yeah, it, it, no it, one uh, laughed at <laughs> Rags's Joe pun. No arm, but wait, right, what was what was? Thank the you, joke? thank you, Tone. They, they they don't have arms, and I was talking. Yeah, about they them. they don't have arms. Yeah, uh, no, it's, well, it's great. But um, I got so, you. <laughs> yeah, the the emu war, the great emu war, took place about a hundred years ago. I think I'm pretty sure it was in the 1920s. Can you count it? Um, in the land well, of Australia, so uh, <laughs> give us a fable. Effectively, uh, a bunch of a bunch of farmers again in Western Australia were uh, they didn't like that emus were making things difficult for them, so they launched a campaign against them and lost. You're um, actually <laughs> being serious. Uh, Australia yeah, well, fought it, a literal a war thing. against yeah. a bunch of birds, and they lost. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not that we lost it's more that we just quit it didn't work oh okay you were the one that it. just described it as a loss well it was a loss in the sense that we didn't achieve our objective it was a loss like in the sense did. that we didn't it's win <laughs> is this it was like a big battle, battle and the, the australians just were the defeated battle? and left the field what, what i mean is that we weren't conquered by the emus we just kind of we just left them alone. <laughs> yeah, you, just, you just built a fence around yourself to keep the emus from wiping well, no, you we, out. We didn't, we didn't build a fence for the emus because I don't think it would work. You know, the it's aliens in like Independence Day, they didn't work. lose. Well, they you, just went home. Well, yeah, you, you, you couldn't build an effective fence against rabbits. Of course you couldn't yeah, build we a built, fence. We built an effective <laughs> fence against dingoes, okay? Like, it's pretty good. I mean, you got one thing down. That's I don't that's know, something. I feel like a dingo and a cassowary, or an emu, sorry, are, are on sort of different, you know, I levels. I agree. Th that looks um, like it could yeah. possibly fly. Well, that that's a uh, cassowary. Emus aren't as uh, hostile. <laughs> I feel like a cassowary could just kick the earth downwards yeah. and then sort of fly as a result. Yeah, what, kind of uh, like, maybe, or just knock it out of its idea. axis. You know, these these things seem powerful, like a pole vaulter. Your entire country mm -hmm. is like Jurassic Park in real life. <laughs> well, hey, look. If you leave them alone, then you know it's fine. Yeah, yeah that, that what... sounds like something a loser would say. If you leave them alone, they're fine. It's, it's... No, really. Like, and kangaroos are, like I said, unless you get really close to them, they're okay. Um, well, that's like a lot of wildlife. Thing. It's great as long as you're not up close. Yeah, you didn't well, I mean, actually, like, tell yeah. us how you they fought against. Oh, well, the brigade, it, it, uh, right. So the emus. the emus, like, they didn't fight it. It's more that the the farmers were unable to successfully curb their numbers. That was their goal, and they couldn't do it. You didn't kill enough. Um, yeah, pr ba basically. Um, kind of <laughs> anticlimactic. I was imagining this giant war, well, a giant battle of like poultry a versus emus humans raiding Perth. They <laughs> gathered up on an empty field. No, the, the and they lined the horizon. Like, the shield wall wow. is breached. You and imagine if this I... like, um, <laughs> the, battle, the battle of, uh, like, in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Emus on one side. I, I fire actually, at will! Like, I've brainstormed ideas of, like, if I were to make a movie, I'd call, I I'd call it World War E, and it would be, World like, War a, e. it would be like a serious yeah. war film with, like, dudes with, like, assault rifles and shit going up against emus, and the emus just, like, rip their heads off. I, I thought about this, uh, well, not, not like that, more like, uh, you know, the flashing <laughs> darkness as the emu lunges through and the numbers are getting reduced. <laughs> I like would just make movie. Saving Private Ryan only the Nazis are emus. Is it going so, to star Brad Pitt? Well, I mean, it has to, right? Brad well, Pitt is trying to, like, get Isn't that World War Z? Yeah, that I, is World War Z. I, I would Someone start in chat with is Hugh saying Jack. you guys used Lewis guns against emus? <laughs> Yeah, Jesus they did. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, the Tommy guns, you still lost. 
Hey, he's look, fucked. the emus, they're really... I love the idea that they're using, like, actual military equipment. Like, <laughs> like light oh machine guns. God, and they're yeah. setting up... I can't believe <laughs> you, you used machine guns against birds and you lost. Hey, look, I'm just, you know... <laughs> As he said, well, he didn't lose, he simply didn't win. Yeah, yeah that's they, what a loser is. Just... <laughs> <laughs> well, look, all right, I'm just, I'm just saying... We are uh, the that time. I'm just like, look, I'm just saying America would have got the job done. They you know, maybe it's a good thing that Australia took all your guns away because you're clearly not good enough to use them. <laughs> you can't even speak I mean, your email. You can't even win a war against a bunch of birds. No wonder you don't deserve so, guns. Hey, here in America, I guess a similar issue that we have is with hogs, wild hogs, where there's just so many of them, and it's to the point where they let you ride around in helicopters and shoot them really wow yeah i haven't heard there's... about that law in california but maybe oh in california in, maybe in not yeah and a lot of other places you can do that but probably not in california they got weird gun laws but yeah over it, we're in places where warthogs are really bad you just shoot as many as you want because there's get so many of them with an m16 well if you have an m16 very few people do but yeah whatever you've got rifles um you need to use a generally for hunting though you need a, at least a minimum size caliber for certain animals so you don't just like wound it and maim it you have to actually use a bullet that'll sufficiently kill them you know quick enough Instantly, but yeah. Yeah, generally so like 30 caliber that's why a lot of um like ak's are popular around here because of hogs uh you have to have like 30 caliber in a lot of states in order to uh kill hogs what you know what we have in, in Cali? Not warthogs, but we have turkeys, dude. Oh, turkeys. Lots so, of turkeys. A lot of those I got these, shit. dude, I got these six gross turkeys that come onto my mulch in the summer every day. And they pluck at my mulch and they tear it up and they throw it on my lawn. Hmm. And like, I go to my neighbor, I'm like, dude, can I shoot this thing? He's like, I don't know, California's kind of conservative. You, you can't really touch him, and you, you can't really have a gun either. <laughs> Dude, Dude fucking fuck with your mulch, that entire, is not cool. Uh, that's kind of the thing we had to institute in Australia, because, like, historically, we didn't, we, we were not good at, like, maintaining the ecosystem here. Um, like, it doesn't I mean, seem like they're any better nowadays. You oh, just build no. fences and let everything burn to the ground. <laughs> what I mean is, like, uh, for example, there is a, there's an animal called a, a, a quoll. Quolls are actually really cool animals. They're like, uh, like possum predators. So they hunt. They're like hunter possums. Um, Can we get and... another picture, please? Yeah. Oh, they're, they're actually they're really nifty. Hold on. Quolls. Now, how cool. how easily can these kill a human? Well, quolls are not that big. They're like, they're, I don't worry. I, I got I got one for you. So, uh. These are these nifty little fellas. They are they're now like protected because they often get killed by like um. Oh my god, that's adorable! I imagine it would like rip my eyes yeah, out. Oh, like, that looks into cool. Everything not, looks cute species. except for the claws. It, it is a carnivorous species, but um, don't they're really small, so it's it's okay. Um, actually, they're I'm like parrots sure. and stuff. Well, interestingly, um, ever since the thylacine, which was the Tasmanian tiger, which isn't a, a, a cat, it's like a dog. Um, well, uh, that used to be the largest, uh, I think, um, land-based uh, mammal predator in Australia. But now the tiger quoll is, and it's like a possum size. Um, so it's kind of important that we preserve these little fellas. Because they're like, they're, they're apex predators. They are the apex predators of oh, like... Well. Awesome. Hell yeah. It's that looks like, like an apex predator to me. The cuter it looks, the more dangerous it is. Australian well, logic. Well, I you know, um, but you got like Tasmanian uh devils and they're they're well, they are pretty cool. They, they scream a lot though, or like they they are uh, yeah. <laughs> they, they they scream a lot. Yeah, so, I don't know. You know, you know one of those sneak up in the night, even though they can't really do much to you either. I went on Amazon and um, I bought a slingshot to kill these, these right. turkeys because I couldn't buy a gun. And I fucking clocked one in the head <laughs> and it just walked away. 
Do I feel like the fact that you saying that there's gonna be art made of you like it just, <laughs> annihilating? It just walked like... away and it came back the next day. Oh. I mean, well, you gotta hit him twice, maybe three times. I don't know. I'll get the message Try eventually. Try a brick next time, or a knife. I, I actually saw these this flock of turkeys actually when I was driving recently, and um, if it wasn't for my dogs in my car, I would have swerved off the the damn road and just clobbered them. But your dog. I don't know seatbelt. Oh, the dog wasn't buckled up. <clears throat> I don't traditionally buckle up my dogs. Oh no, I I yeah, I was I was at at the at the start I was confused as to what difference the dog made. And then I was like, oh, the dog was in the car and you didn't want the dog to get, you know, hurt if you went off road. It, Always clarified. I had this I would have definitely soccer mommed them at the soccer mom them. <laughs> <laughs> at the very least turkeys. <laughs> come to america soccer mom the turkeys <laughs> i'm gonna have to steal that just refer to hitting things on the road soccer momming it <laughs> while we're on the subject of animal i like how it's just me bringing up all these australian animals have you uh so is it common for like what what's the biggest bird in uh in america is it i thought you were gonna ask if it was common for people to lose wars against birds <laughs> I, well, uh, is, we haven't is, lost any wars against the poultry. Yes. No, I, I feel yeah, we, well, we tend to win. Well, I mean, how do you know that, uh, like, California condors haven't secretly infiltrated your government and are ruling everything? Because they have a behind. peace with the condors. Well, uh, I, in any case, the, the question I was trying to ask <laughs> before we went on the tangent is uh, what's the biggest um, bird you have? Is it the condor or the bald eagle? Uh, I think the California condor is the biggest bird in North America, but I'm not sure. That's purely... Yeah. I mean, I just Googled it. Apparently, it's the golden eagle. Really? The golden okay. eagle. So With a wingspan topping seven feet, golden eagles are the largest hunting birds in North America. Okay, so they are... All 50 of them. Their length hmm. is 66 centimeters to 100 centimeters. Okay, let me look up... <laughs> I'm pretty sure the wedge-tailed eagle has a wingspan of three meters. Hold on. I'm pretty I need sure to all of the American birds are, are damn near extinct, unfortunately. Well, I know Poachers. condors really are hard to find, from what I understand. I think they're like ravines. Right. Heard it somewhere. Oh, dude, actually, here we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I, these These guys have, like massive le oh they're like nobody knows what centimeters is yeah get on the rest of the world's level it's a wedge tailed <laughs> eagle <laughs> it's a wedge tailed eagle <laughs> thing looks like it wants to kill me well it well, is from australia <laughs> so uh, it's it's three meter wingspan so you can't why do i feel like those things would like carry nuclear bombs across the <laughs> country <laughs> Coalition of all Australian birds launching a war against the world. Like, you you shoot me, I drop the bomb. Is this what you want? Drop bombs, <laughs> and then, like, you got these little amphibious landing craft to let off the cassowaries and the emus. They tried go, to build go, a fence, go. but they couldn't get it high enough. Wow. Well, that well, could be the, the sequel to World War E, just World War A. It's like right resistance war A. a. War for Australia. <laughs> Guys, we need the funding. We have to. Get this thing higher. Come on. Just build a dome around your cities and like pretend the rest of Australia doesn't exist. I like the idea that there's That's such amazing uh, eagles in, in Australia or whatever that they can go to space. That's just like a thing they can do. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be the eagles like beat that. up to space, sir. Damn it. Or like <laughs> space space birds, like you know, Rick and Morty with space snakes. They just hunt in space. <laughs> You're telling me that there's a bird that could go to space and you still can't fucking build a fence to keep some rabbits out. <laughs> a bird that goes to it's space. like every factoid about your country makes me think no, very I much less. Think but there are no birds in space. What do they breathe? Like what? How would they get to space? They and how would they get back without burning up? Elon Just Musk has can't... probably figured that out by now. Yeah, I was going to say, come on, Frank. It's Australia. <laughs> I like that. Some Come people say that. Australia's made up, and I'm, I i don't know, the more I hear about Australia, the more that seems like it might yeah. be the case. This doesn't sound Ooh. like a real place. Like, like Freaky just claimed that apparently they have birds that go to space. Like, what's that about? That I, makes no sense at all. 
that's uh that's not what i said <laughs> okay, right. everyone it's heard it insane. Tringy, it's very simple the birds just put on helmets yeah <laughs> Put on helmets, and then that's that's all they bid like, helmets. Like, <laughs> they bid scientists like a, like a made. <laughs> and it's like, all right, we're good to go. I got these weird visualizations of what Australia actually is right now: giant <laughs> birds attacking people with the machine guns. We got walls well, we, all the way up to the sky. Uh, birds fly to the moon. <laughs> what the hell's going on over there? Birds Just think hell. That's what it is. They mostly don't attack people. So you <laughs> mostly, do. yeah. Well, you sound I like mean, newt. <laughs> well. It's magpie. I can imagine uh, that just Tringy looking at Ripley and being like, the cute animals don't usually kill people. No, it, well, kill. magpies don't kill people. <laughs> yeah, magpie, we have those here. We have well, some of them. We have we, them here they have Australian uh, yeah. ones, though, rags. They have, like, fangs. Oh, Australian <laughs> magpies, where they, they don't just steal shiny <laughs> objects for the nest, they, like, commit identity theft and... <laughs> All those other, all sorts of other crazy Australian versions stuff. <laughs> Working to crash the stock market as we speak. <laughs> Just these birds sitting at their computers buying up futures and like and trading stocks to plummet the economy. No wonder my cryptocurrency just went downhill. Yeah. Yeah, with the magpies. Fucking birds. Damn magpies. I, I do like that um just a normal standard magpie is more intimidating than magpie from Batwoman. Just like a normal yeah. bird. <laughs> you have to be afraid of that. I can't believe they brought it back. It's so nuts. It's like, yeah, <laughs> magpie. Someone in the chat it, said they mostly come out at night. Mostly. <laughs> mostly? Well, I mean, they're not not well, I think like the majority of Australian animals are nocturnal. Uh, of or, course. Like, large... That's just an added bonus. Yeah, they come out at night. Of course they do, because it's Australia. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking flowers are nocturnal over there. <laughs> the flowers. <laughs> well, I you have to lock up. up your flower bed so children don't <laughs> disappear. <laughs> Like, oh well, my god, they just gave me like Oh, some... they're like the plants from Jumanji, the Robin Williams one. <laughs> yeah. like the plants are just, they shoot oh, barbs and stuff into your neck. This, like, horrible image of like a kid falling into a flower patch and then the flower patch just starts eating the kid. Oh, oh this is terrifying. Yeah. We need to make this series, this TV show. It's Australia, is it real? And a bunch of people go there, <laughs> like adventurers, and they all get killed one by one in this like horror zone. Every oh, I mean, time someone Australia. gets killed by something cute and cuddly, the Terminator theme starts playing. Yeah, because like, it's, it's, yeah. it's like the Lovecraft shit where you go there and everyone's just like weirdly okay, like, weirdly normal. Everyone, it's just, it's, things are just a little bit off. And it's all the all the stereotypical stuff you hear about, like everyone's saying no and stuff like that. And you're just like, hmm, walking around, not trusting it. And then eventually, you like you see a door that no one's allowed to go into, and you're like, what is this? And it leads to like the real Australia. <laughs> Australia two. <laughs> You hear the distant roar of the T-Rex, you're like, yeah, I knew uh, it. It's like the upside down. And well, they push you in yeah. just as you realize it's there, and you're like, no coming I guess, back. Uh, the, the funny thing, right, is the whole idea of, you know, brown snakes, it's pretty obvious why you wouldn't want to go near them, but like platypuses are the ones that are the surprise, I think. I think yeah, uh, they're so cute and cuddly, then they're like, ah, poison barbs! <laughs> well, it, 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 it's the whole thing of uh, platypuses are the alpha males, like, as if you were to have a species of animals, like, platypuses are the most alpha animals that there oh. are. There's ten women platypuses for every one male platypus. That's how competitive they are. I, I love well, how you just great. said women platypuses. Women plat male like platypuses. Like females? Well, yeah, female platypuses. Women yeah. platypus, yeah. Um, like a woman deer is a doe, yeah. They need a better word, wow. like platypops. Well, I, I, and I'm pretty sure that uh, the plural is not like platypi, it's platypuses. You know, hey, as opposed free. To well, if it's 10 to 1, there's a lot of platypuses, I imagine. I got another question for you, Fringy, and this is a serious question. So I yeah. saw this ad from Australia, and given how cute and cuddly animals from your country tend to kill people, I'm pretty sure this must be true. How many minefields are in your beaches? How many minefields? Oh, what, yeah. what do you mean? Uh, I mean that there's a an ad from Australia that I saw where a bunch of kids skipped school and they went to a beach and it was a minefield and they all died. No. In the, like no. Field, you, have you guys never seen this video? No, no I've never seen the video. Oh of the my god! Well, well, it sounds like we just made that shit up. <laughs> no, I've not. <laughs> okay, we're we're gonna get into a watch together. I'm gonna show you guys this. 
It's the if greatest it, article you will ever see. If it is all, you know, all the shit that Freeze has been saying today could have been made up. You don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we had a war with the emus, and we have a 5,000-mile-long dingo fence. And, like, yeah, none of this is real. You're like, this, this is a really is cool this... book you're writing, I guess. It seems a bit <laughs> yeah. weird, though. Yeah, it seems a little unbelievable. No one is ever going to buy this. <laughs> Space right. eagles, really? Okay, I got to watch together. I'll send you guys the link. Is this, like, a copytism thing at all? Or are we just seeing... Um, we I seeing don't actually People know. being blown up by mines? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Yes. Kids. Don't be beach bums. Is hilar hilarious Australian ad tells kids not to be beach bums. All right. Uh... Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll mute yeah, you it might just in it. case. Yeah, that's probably for the best. Peppo face is there, ready for whatever. He's terrified for these teenagers. He doesn't know what's gonna happen. I'm still shocked that none of you have seen this. I've n I've never seen this. I don't, I don't even know what I'm watching. Is it gonna oh, be like a <laughs> hilarious it, it, thing where they just explode it, violently or something? You'll, you'll, it's it's the greatest ad ever made. This minefield sponsored by Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> They're just teens having a wonderful time. What could go wrong? Oh, you'll see. Oh, she's gonna blow up. She's gonna blow up. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my god! Oh, what the fuck? Why would you immediately start sprinting? What are you thinking? Oh, oh! Well... I mean, that's what he gets. What kind of ads do you allow in this country? <laughs> Jesus Christ! I don't, I don't believe that. This is a ad to play on TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if it was played on TV, but... Poor people. <laughs> if only I wasn't a beach bum. Oh, she died too. <laughs> this is for real. You gotta see this. You gotta see the message of this ad. This is what happens when you slack off. <laughs> <laughs> you Wait, get what? exploded Stay by mines. <laughs> <laughs> They put school. this on TV? I don't believe that they did. I, I, I don't I, 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 that. I, I'm not sure that they put it on I TV. I believe the 5,000 mile dingo fence over this. I, I just I, I just love the fact that in Australia, th this is where the ad comes from. Australia makes that kind of shit. <laughs> I just, just like the idea that like it's not mines, it's just turtles. That's Australian turtles, that's what they do. Australian <laughs> turtles. I, uh, I just double checked the length of the dingo fence. Yeah, it is 5,600 kilometers. Jeez. Not bad. Um, yes, yeah, especially when it was built in 1880 to 1885. <laughs> someone said, what the gnawing hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the mine turtle. I'm imagining someone stepping on like a turtle shell and it just makes a clicking sound as it presses oh, down. Oh, oh. Um, so there is a, an animal uh, that lives in the Great Barrier Reef. Pretty... It's like a, how does uh, it kill like... you, Fringy? Right, so, <laughs> I'm guessing uh, it does it at night. It's like a, a. It looks like a rock, and it has these. Um, of course it does. <laughs> of course it looks it like has, an innocent rock. It has pincers, RPGs. Like, what are we dealing with? <laughs> it has uh, little things at the top, like little sharp pincers, and if you step oh. on it, it shoots into your foot. Yeah. <laughs> So wait, wait, wait! You're, you're telling me that this thing is like the nail from Home Alone? Um, hold on, I, I, I don't. Let me, let me see. I'm just waiting for it to be like, is the nail from Home Alone a rock thing that shoots stuff into you when you step on it? I, mean, I think I, uh... nails normally just shoot pain into you whenever yeah, you step yeah. on them. <laughs> horrible, horrible, terrible it's nail called pain. That, uh, it's called a stonefish. It's it, oh, yeah. I know. Actually, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah sure. The, yeah, the, the fish that looks like a stone and then it's super poisonous and yeah. thanks uh, nature for oh. making death rocks. Nature is metal, yeah. man. There's oh, a, there's that's a one fish. that's one I didn't mention. The whole fucking reason did I did I you know when I was telling you guys about like how I was on Reddit looking at the nature is metal stories? Um the reason I'd got on there 
was because the video that w was shit, I think I only said my reaction to the video rather than what actually happened. Also, that's, yeah, that's pretty terrifying. You don't know what that's gonna do. That just looks like one of those things you're like, okay, explain it to me. <laughs> it doesn't look like a weird <laughs> That's the kind of thing I would see that on the beach, and then I would just be like, "All right, I'm never going to a beach ever again." I like the, the, dude, they're stored like fucking face huggers are stored. <laughs> Keep them afloat in jars. <laughs> that way, they can't harm the populace. Damn, nature, you're scary. <laughs> so the one that got me into like 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 into the subreddit was uh, not into it, like 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 clicked into it was um the video that got highly upvoted. It's the zebra who'd had a tussle with a crocodile. It had tore open the, the, the belly and its stomach had come out and the zebra had escaped the clutches of the crocodile. Only it was panicking, filled with adrenaline, and it kicks its own stomach until it disconnects from itself to escape. Oh my god, fuck off, Jesus Christ. It like, it comes oh. out in a whole bag and it just kicks and kicks and kicks and then sprints away. It's like, dude, I think you need that. <laughs> like <it's... laughs> to be fair, that's nope. a great. I mean, weight loss option. You know, it's, have you considered detaching your stomach, sir? Waller, that I, I messaged you about it earlier, but when you were telling that story of like, um, what was it, the dough that was getting eaten by a Komodo, Komodo dragon, dragon. And it, like, ripped out the baby? Yeah, I had just ate a burger from Five Guys, like seconds before you told that story and i was like oh wow i'm so glad i was i don't know i don't know a lot about komodo dragons, dragons but the thread was all about how komodo dragons do not give a fuck they will like i think they're like I really thought... fucking they're pretty dangerous og terrifying yeah. they look like well just look at this shot like they, it, they look like something out of you like, oh walking with beasts walking with dinosaurs there it is the komodo dragon you're like oh wow look at that thing lucky that's extinct I, yeah. I think they're indigenous to, uh, to the Darwin Islands, though. Correct me if I'm wrong. They're indigenous. You got to go out of your way Indonesia. to fucking yeah. find one of those. Wait, does Australia not have these ones? Well, they're near Australia. But... <laughs> they probably have something worse. <laughs> they're the only ones that got out of Australia. They're so fucking badass. <laughs> they Thank God he didn't need to build another fence. Well, the interesting thing is, I remember watching a thing that talked about how we used to have mega marsupials. So we used to have like three mega meters tall marsupials. That's I'm another like a, class, a long, mega. A long time ago, like uh, you know, millions of years ago, kind of like the uh, the mega creatures that you had in in like North America before they were hunted to extinction. Um, I'm not sure what happened to these ones though. <laughs> like they're just not around anymore. That's a nifty little avatar there, you know, Mola. Komodo dragon is probably one of the cooler animal names. Yeah, well, the island is called Komodo, that's why it's called a Komodo dragon, so... It's like, what is the coolest animal name? And I know that it's not really fair, because, like, some of them are cool because of the animal, but I mean... Chinchilla. Chinchilla. Well, like crocodile, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess crocodile is cool regardless. That was a pretty cool animal name. But, yeah, I feel like Komodo dragon's got a skull pretty high up. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Imagine if those things actually had wings. What, Komodo? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, walking around, and then you see a Komodo oh, dragon. God. Swooping in like an actual dragon on wings. Yeah, if the Komodo, Komodo dragons had wings, I think we would have actually left the planet by now. <laughs> well, I don't think we would have made it. Just it to them. <laughs> We're like, it's alright, you guys can take it. <laughs> um, okay, so apparently... It just says run, by the way. <laughs> on the thing. Apparently Komodo dragons, so Komodo's group behavior in hunting is exceptional in the reptile world. The diet of the big Komodo dragons consists of Timor deer. So these dra these are fast enough to hunt deer. Like, Well, maybe they're oh, ambush dude. predators like the alligators yeah, and stuff. Yeah, the video I saw is actually like... It it it's hard not to assume these things just like causing pain. It was just a... a a little fawn giving birth, and, like, and it's just like, yup, this is for me. And it's like, oh, no. Well, yeah, it says that um, Komodo's attacks on humans are rare, but evidently they've happened. Um, wow. I imagine it's one of those things where they're like, don't fuck with me and I won't fuck with you. And you're like, okay, all right. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah sure, 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 anything you say. Absolutely. Mr. Mr. Dragon. <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> what Mr. it was Komodo. from, but I remember hearing the, or watching this, like, 
episode of some show forever ago of some guy who was like hiking on Komodo Island and he got sick with something. I don't remember what it was, but he was being hunted by Komodo dragons while he was sick. And then he Jeez. eventually keeled over and died and the dragons got him and all that was left was the video camera footage because he was filming a documentary doing it. Imagine well, that Komodo window. dragons are venomous, I believe. Yeah, As, I know. I, I, we're just pi we're just piling on horrible things about this creature, I, yeah, but I think they're uh, also venomous. It, it was it, like ten years since I seen this, so I don't remember all the facts behind uh, it. But, apparently, yeah. they might be venomous. Maybe people they don't know for sure. Just, how the fuck just, do we not know for sure? Well, I mean, you want to go near them and try and find out? Like, you think you know? that we'd have like technology that would allow us to do things? How can we I find out that a snake is venomous, but not a komodo dragon? Do how how does one pin down like a komodo dragon to how do you tranquilize it? Or you use I don't know. How do you tranquilize it when it's got like giant look at it? Like how does anything you use through spear that? tranquilizers, okay? You fucking dig it in. I'm sure that um I'm pretty sure that like saltwater crocodiles are so strong that like lower caliber bullets can't actually penetrate. Their, okay. Uh... Well, what if we drug up a baby with tranquilizers? Well then we use high caliber bullets. Well, yeah, but the high caliber bullet would just kill it. So oh sure. no, not that. Let's <laughs> <laughs> try the tranquilizer to figure out how it works. How it works. How well, then we can. Ex well, if it's dead, can't we extract like poison from its poison glands or something? Nope. Have it, have it alive, man. Yeah, I fun. feel like the rules to life are not fair. <laughs> Dude, the the fucking eagles got to space before we did. Like, I don't think that we can really say what this planet has in store for us. I feel really, like man. you can put like you know those stat screens of like the strengths and weaknesses of enemies, and then you get to like some absurdly unfair enemy that has only one very specific weakness, and he's just got strength stacked up on the entire right side of the screen. He is what you <laughs> call a meta build. So. Yeah, I, I feel like you could put those next to almost any animal in Australia, and it would make well, sense. I mean, I, uh, hmm. I, don't know, maybe. <laughs> I feel like you could put next to emus, just invincible. Don't try. Like, no, like do not engage. <laughs> Extremely <laughs> dangerous. I feel, I feel like emus would just be that they have evade. You know, like in Pokemon, when they, they just keep doing like speed up or evade up, and so every attack he misses, like, <laughs> it's nothing but sand attacks. So you can't even yeah. hit. It. Oh my god! Well, I mean, yeah, and it face. screeches at you. Dude, <laughs> no, early game. Sharply fell. Early game when Metapod just keeps using Harden. You're like, stop it, stop, <laughs> quit it. This is you're doomed to quit. <laughs> just you're doing this out of spite. The the just like, I don't, like, I don't like know. You. I guess I'll just get harder. I guess. I Australia is filled with Dark Souls bosses. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what the names would be for like the bosses if in Dark Souls in Australia, Emu of I don't know, like Emu of the Boreal Valley, mm -hmm. <laughs> like Emu of the Abyss, <laughs> Deathbird of Gorlock, um, Cassowary Soul of Cinder, <laughs> Razor Feather, <laughs> Deathbeak. No, you, you wouldn't need to change Komodo Dragon, that's fine. <laughs> Just keep well, that one. Komodo is like the DLC for when you venture, like, you know, to the islands. So he's like Gale or whatever he's called. I don't know that much about Dark Souls. The Beast of Komodo Island. <coughs> I can't yeah, tell if that was a laugh or a cough. It was both. Choose one. Yeah, I, greedy Australian. I, I, what, wanting to laugh and cough? How dare I? Yeah, leave some for the rest of us. Why did you want to cough? <laughs> yeah, to clear your throat. Yeah, it's, yeah, clear the air. Yeah, I think that's okay. We can approve of that. I'm glad you asked us permission first, though. Your, your approval <laughs> to cough. Hey, uh, uh, I, I think people are gonna explode if I don't ask. Mr. Tone, what do you what do you think is like better? Like, if you were to choose one as as the better one, would it would it be Christmas or Halloween? Uh, Halloween for sure. Yes! Oh yeah. <laughs> you it? Oh yeah. I like dressing up. Welcome but... to Team Halloween, my brother. <laughs> Let's be real though. When we were kids, like Christmas was the shit. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, but Christmas kind of lost its meaning over time.
I feel like I, Rags, you're you're pro Christmas, right? <laughs> of course, Christmas is better than Halloween. <laughs> I guess not even Christmas. close. It's obvious. On the Christmas I mean, it's obvious side. if you know you're just a. What do you, yeah, what do you mean, Friggy? You're pro Christmas too. Why are you saying it like it's a weird thing? No, 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 no. I would, uh huh? You said you said it like, oh, you're pro Christmas, right? It's like, so are you? It's okay. It's all right. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't saying it. It's nothing to be ashamed was, of. We give you permission. The two of us are pro Christmas. <laughs> It's like a political sure. candidate. <laughs> well, I, I do, I like, I mean, I think, because uh, we talked about this the other day, part of the reason why I'm very slanted towards Christmas is because there's just not a lot of exposure to Halloween in Australia. Like, all I ever had was Treehouse of Horror. Well, that, that, the thing is, is Australia is just Halloween every day. Yeah. I mean, even if you did have Halloween, you'd still prefer Christmas, because it's Halloween, I mean, it's Halloween just can't compare I, to Christmas. Uh, I, I really Christmas. Like I really like Christmas. Christmas is cool. Um, I'm not going to be as mean as Shad and say that Halloween is worthless. Did, did oh, Shad get like touched by Halloween as a child? <laughs> he he <laughs> had a. I don't know if it was prepared, but that was a speech and a half. That, that rant like it disturbed me a little bit. <laughs> it was like Shad, what happened to you on Halloween? Oh, I suppose people are curious about uh, your your leanings, Wolf. Um, funnily enough, they would discover it. Is it in the second reaction set? So it would be Halloween, after this re-upload tank. Better objectively by every measure. <laughs> well, there you go. Um. Uh. Well, yeah, that 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 that, that, was, that was something. It sounded like a Hitler speech. I mean, oh, definitely. He was he was going for it, and I, you know what? I respect the passion. Um. I think what, uh, I guess his case. What? What was his case? Oh, oh, he. I mean, to be honest with you, all I remember, he was just shitting all over Halloween. He was like, Halloween's the worst thing ever. Really, any, really, wasn't even any arguments. <laughs> never heard any <laughs> arguments. <laughs> never heard any. He, he look. He, he has a passion for Christmas, and like I said, I can't deny that shit. That was good, but Halloween. I think it was done. I think it was done dirty. You know, in that speech. Peace on All earth, right. my ass. There's no peace on earth. I guess the, the thing Christmas. is, like, Christmas is, um, there's there's a certain, I I don't really like the build up to Christmas as all, at all, but like Christmas Day I've always liked. I, I, I really like Christmas Day, um, even if it doesn't snow here and instead it's like 45 degrees and it's boiling. But, uh. I, I feel like Halloween is universal, but like Christmas, like well, I came from a poor family, so I got like no presents, and like well, guess, my friend had like Nintendo sixty four. Spirit and of all giving, the games. and all he can think about is what he can get from it. That's just that's a, <laughs> so sad. It's sad to hear. Him right. it's sad to hear it. It's sad to hear, right. it. It's sad it? to hear it. Sad to hear it. Giving when you can just buy what you want at any point of time, and it can be spooky well, themed. What the world's come to. I, I think, uh, well, I, I don't know that, like, gift-giving is right, one of the things. Sort of like, I, I mean, admittedly, that's well, one of the here, here's my take on ho or Christmas. So there's, like, three major things about it. There's the gift part, which becomes irrelevant once you get a job and a credit card and an Amazon account. What? But there, no, no, it, it doesn't, because you get to give gifts to the people that you yeah. love. Yeah, if you have the money to do that, which, which you know, you, if you have a job, like you said, if you have a job and a credit card and all that stuff, then you can do that. So yeah, it never becomes then, irrelevant. Well, well, that's not exactly true. It depends on oh, which job you have. Selfish little elf. That's all I hear. <laughs> Selfish little <laughs> okay. Halloween uh, gremlins. We can uh, see about me, me, me. You, you, you do slave oh. driving with the elves, so you can't really. That's fucked up, dude. Well, I don't. That, that, I don't. One the, thing the, the elves can leave whenever they want. Irrelevant. They could, they're allowed to unionize and they could do all the stuff that they want. I the like other the other thing. <laughs> unionizing, like the elves unionizing against Santa. He wakes up one day. No, not against it. It's, it's just an understood thing. You know, we got to make sure that, you know, we're all on the same we, page well, here and things are okay. Yeah, you you know? the elves sitting across from Santa like they are. Well, it's, the more, it's more symbolic than anything else. It's like, we want to finish at five. Fuck you, finish at five. Finish my fucking like iPads. I wanted to actually uh, switch focus just a little bit to either, I mean, it's totally up to you, Tom, but um, I was going to go with, with either talking a bit about games, because you clearly like games, or I heard 
You weren't too much of a fan, and I'd like to maybe explore this with you. Uh, the, 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 the certain Star Wars movies or Game of Thrones Season 8? I would totally love to talk about that for a little bit, if you're up for uh, it. <laughs> leave it up to the chat. <gasps> I am a giving person, Rags. Appar apparently not. I, <laughs> I, I think this like is a cover story. I don't like it. I don't love it, but I like it. He doesn't have to wait till Christmas to be giving rags, unlike everyone else who pretends and the, to and be the giving is in the giving is time of the year. All of a sudden, oh, I just don't, don't have any money. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, right games, now. Games, <laughs> Star Wars, Game of Thrones, Star Wars. Oh god, this is a this is a big collection. What do we do? We need a, we a lot of Game of Thrones. Oh, a lot of Star Wars. Game of Thrones. I will Christmas? say though, let me let me cut in here. I will say though, I know more about Game of Thrones. Oh, go for uh, it. Wolf and, and Frangie we're, we're talking about before the podcast started. Um, I have not seen The Mandalorian. Just throwing it out there. That's all right. I know it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a heated topic, I've heard. Well, I think, oh, no. Uh, I, mean, I mean, we we agree, but I don't think everybody agrees with, with our take on it. Yeah. Yeah, I literally being in the minority Pretty. that it's very very mm. beloved but mm. wait you think it's beloved or you oh it is yeah it's rated really really highly already but i don't think it's very good at all in fact i think it's quite terrible we have to, we're talking about that's the video right? i'm working on right now yeah, big one. can we get the cliff notes in case game of thrones wins i would like to hear why about mandalorian so. i guess yeah, if i was going to give it. cliff notes uh don't think that the characters are consistent. The plot is basically nonsensical. A lot of contrivances. It's nothing anything really special with why it's bad. Um, it's a lot it's of just, normal stuff. Yeah, it's just not offensively bad. Like, I don't hate it with any kind of personal thing. And it's not like the, the last Star Wars movies or Game of Thrones season eight. It doesn't really ruin anything. I just don't think it's a well-written and well-made show. But I so see not, why people like it, you know? Not catastrophic, but... Bad. Oh yeah, it's just it's just bad. It doesn't destroy things. It doesn't crap all over beloved characters and retcon a whole bunch of lore and things of that. Yeah, nature. what you're referencing with that time. could be anything. <laughs> what do you think is it could be a selection of like seven different things? But yes. <laughs> Let me ask you guys a question. Like, I know some of you guys do like really long form stuff. Yeah. When you like when you like sit down to write about something or think about something, do you approach it in like Okay, is this movie um, not wasn't not was it made poorly or did I not enjoy it? You know, what's your viewpoint when you go into well, one of those? I'm glad you asked. That's kind of like our thing is that we we take our enjoyment and whether it's you know of good quality, and we're pretty good at separating the two. Uh, kind of, I would say it's almost like the core of EFAP, EFAP yeah. is separating the subjective from the objective nature of media. We and we are and... fully ready to say that something is terrible, but we love it, or it's great and we just don't like it. Yeah, like we try and create a structure, and then sort of, as things come out, we're like, how does it fare in the structure? And then it's like, also, what did you think of it? Like, on, on how, did, how did it make you feel? How did, it, did it give you the goods or the bads or the nothings? And I think the main reason why that's valuable is because if it's strictly talking about what people like and don't like, it makes it very hard to know whether or not... Like, it, like if you're looking at a review for something and it's all like and don't like, that's very, that's very subjective. And so it doesn't help you. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't, it's, it's almost impossible to know like where something is going to sit um, in terms of like a rating, if it's all strictly how somebody felt because it's really vague and wishy-washy. Yeah. So if if you're criteria. just going by how you feel, how can you really know if it's like of high quality or, or not? Because feelings are so why you like things can be for a, a uncountable amount of different reasons. You could, if you like broke up with a girlfriend and watched the thing and then you're like, this was shit. And then you watch it like a year later when you're happy and fine. And you're like, Oh, why did I hate this so much? It like easily swayed opinions through like all kinds of different, uh, you know, influences, I guess. And so like, it's really hard sometimes to be like, wait, what was it actually? And not to mention recanting events in a thing can actually be really funny because um, we, we covered someone once upon a time who was convinced that Han Solo was killed by Rey. <laughs> <laughs> he might have remembered that part of the movie. A l uh, 
we let's just call it he had alternative facts yes there may have also <laughs> been another person who very firmly believed that gimli wanted frodo to die in order to <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the best so thing about true. that one is that they double checked they they took the time to say this is true don't tell me it's not and you're like okay all right <laughs> that's just really funny to me well yeah so did we decide in game of thrones or whatever the other that's option a was a lot of game of thrones is all right take, like, take way more than i expected Take the conversation away. What do you want? What do you want well, to know? Oh, actually, just before before you jump into it, because I will unfortunately, I I uh, I have to depart for now, but I will be back later. Uh, back. It was very it was very good speaking to you. Um, and I guess I'd throw mine in for for Game of Thrones as well, if that's like the direction you're taking it in. So yeah, good to meet you, man. Uh, I think you ruined Australia for me, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, it's not. It's it's it is a good country. Um, just don't approach. Yeah, it all that said, it's actually great. <laughs> yeah, Ignore, it's just, just oh, it's the wildlife. wildlife. That's it. It's fine. Yeah, everything else is really nice. But uh, it, yeah, uh, you need to what? caveat and say, look, it's a great country, but yeah, the, the landmines. No, I, I I'm I'm flipping it the other way around. Wildlife excluded, and and I actually think the animals are really cool. I think really really on the beach. Yeah, if we, in the same way that Warhammer 40k is cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm. I think I think it's a really unique and interesting ecosystem, and I think it's important that we preserve it. I think the Lost of Us world has a unique ecosystem. Or the vast majority of living organisms in Australia, it's not that bad of a place to be. <laughs> I, look, I'm just saying, maybe killed or eaten by pretty much everything that walks here. But yeah, come on by. Walks, flies, I, crawls, digs. Like, like yeah, just even uh, the rocks stay. will fucking inject poison into your feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Friggy says stay indoors, but yeah, it was uh, it was good talking here, and good luck with the rest of it until I come back. When yeah, is you uh, bet. we we looking? Oh, what? Like four, five, six, uh, seven hours. What are we what are we doing? Probably like six-ish hours. My God, you uh, might be able to get back into this very stream. Oh yeah, maybe. Um. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I'll let you know. But uh, yeah. All right. Catch you later, guys. Absolutely. Goodbye. Let me ask a question real quick as he cuts out. How? <laughs> so you guys have been streaming for, and by the way, I sit down to play the video game for like two hours. I'm like creaking and groaning. <laughs> like you've been uh, in the chair for 14 hours at this point. Is that? What I've been mean? shifting my cheeks How? around here. Yeah, I try to a, try to do a little bit of uh, eating, drinking. Them, How them... you feeling? Oh yeah, you know, a lot of this okay. happens once per week, so I'm relatively used to it, but yeah, drink your fluids, move your body around, and get them breaks while you can, you know, healthy memes. Like, you did a health video recently, right? Yeah, it just, it reminds me, my, like, my very first job before I went off to college was at a call center selling, like, CDs and stuff for a bank, and I had to sit down in a chair for eight hours, and I got two... 10 minute breaks outside my lunch. Jeez. Wow. And like, I thought that was like literal torture. So, like, I could you guys for the stamina. Honestly, it's the friends that keep us going and the entertainment and the chat, the interaction. It's all very uh, engaging. Um, as someone in chat just said, Mauler's buttocks are highly experienced. True. They're like wow. big pillows. I mean, mm. you have some chiseled ass cheeks. Mm -hmm. You, you, you shift around a bit here and there, but oh, yeah. yeah, a lot of it does come down to who are you hanging out with? What are you talking about? Um, if you've got something engaging to, you know, that you care about, that you know a lot with, if you're having a good time, if you're laughing and enjoying yourself, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot easier than just sitting in the chair by yourself, being all alone and sad. I gotta say, I've gotten a lot of invites for podcasts, and this is the first one I've ever done. <gasps> really? Hey. He does love us. How, <laughs> how have you found it? It's been weird, I know. <laughs> no, no. It's, uh, you guys are pretty funny. Um, actually, I had no idea. Oh, by the way, gotta get this out of the way. Where did Tonald originate? What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> I know there's gotta be something big behind that curtain. I don't know oh, if I want to know. I, I, I can explain. Well, I feel like I should. 
So I'm ready. So one of your videos, I don't remember which one it was. Uh, it had Tone Loke at the bottom of it, and we were like, "What does Tone mean?" And we just jokingly were like, "Okay, how do we what what do we fill in?" Because Tone's definitely got to be a a shortened version of your name. Obviously Tony, but uh, we just memed it and uh, just combined Donald so, and Tone and came up with Tonald. And well, that's not obvious. Don't say it like it's obvious because Tone and Tony are the same amount of letters. Yeah, it's I, not a shortened form of. I wasn't well, sure. I, mean, I, I say it's obvious now that he's told us in this call. Yeah. So without spelling them, I can totally see how Tone is short for Tony. Because one's got one syllable, one's got two. Yeah. So in that sense, it's shorter, but. But um, hey, yeah, without on. it, I just oh, I had no idea. Like tone was short, and and I, I, it just seemed tonal was funny. And then we were like that as uh, until we get proper word on it, that must be canon. Okay, I I shall accept it. <laughs> I like it. it. Might be. It's very. It's a name of a like. If you had a friend, that's kind of like their name. You know, I say hey, tonal. You know. I feel like there's a little Hobbit bit name. more to it, but for now, I'm cool with it. Um, some some things have humble origins. So I don't want I don't want you to you know, spoil too much, but like, what can we uh, what can we expect cooking wise? What, what's uh, you want to do? You want to entice tease a little bit? I'm telling you, man, it's been tough. I've been really thinking about it, and um, maybe we can get some chat action here. Help me out, but um, at the moment. I don't have any solid plans for who I'm going to feature. Mm -hmm. And it's sad because I really liked doing those videos. And while they weren't my most popular videos, um, I found a lot of joy in them. And I um, think that might just be cooking. because they're newish, like they're newish from your channel. So sometimes if someone swaps the kind of content they do, they might lose some old people and they need to build up the, you know, a new crowd of people who like that stuff. But they are I, I very agree. good. I agree. Um, it actually... It's kind of a window into my past, actually, into YouTube, you know. Uh, at one point, around 2018, 2017, I kind of stumbled into this weird, like, negative, dramatic, just really condescending YouTuber. Um, I think a couple of us did, a couple of big YouTubers, me, Tyler from Clean Prince. And um, I got stuck on that road for a long time. I don't know how I ended up there, but I got, like, really unhappy, like, just constantly like waking up and putting out like pretty much garbage videos on a daily basis, which it seemed like that was, you know, the, a good way to grow the channel at the time. And I was at, at first it was kind of enjoyable, but as like time went on, I decided that like I needed to shift uh, my, uh, the way I approach content and I started to explore different ideas. The food thing was, pretty much during the apex of my transitionary phase. Like um, I'd say over the past year or so, I've pretty much gone, a done away with like my old, my old self on YouTube. Um, that really negative presence um, started to focus on like celebrating games and stuff like that. And then like the food thing was just like this natural, like experimentation avenue for me, because unless be honest, like, if you're a if you're a full time YouTuber, it's it's really tough to like balance your own happiness with what's good for you financially, and saying it like that is kind of demeaning almost because it it, it almost takes away from why you would want to become a creator, right? You, you, you fall into this trap of like being like almost depressed. Like you mean forced. you mean like you know what um what works better for let's say algorithms and and sort of checks and clicks and stuff kind when. Of. And so you might yeah. start edging toward that instead of edging toward just doing what you love. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the essence of it, right? Um, and then when you're like I was, I was financially strapped to the position as well because I quit my job and it was like 2016 or so. And it was, a, it was a big job. You know, I went to school for like eight years to get my MBA. And um, when I decided to, to fill the shoes of this YouTube channel, it was... It was really based off of my um, passion for gaming. And then like the second you lose that, which I know a, a few YouTubers that have gone down that road, myself included, you know, guilty. It's like, 
you can either keep going down that route or you can like try to transition out, but you're strapped to it financially. So it's like this weird balance. And I think that's kind of like a topic that doesn't get discussed a lot among YouTubers is like, are, are YouTubers actually happy? Oh man. Not yeah, this... a, a very, I, people have a, an idyllic sort of version of it. Like it's, it's, they don't see it as a job that comes with all of the issues that a, a more typical and traditional job might have. They, they think of it in a very romanticized sort of idealistic Fantastic way. way. And that, that's, that's really not how it is for a certain demographic of people on YouTube. You know, there's, yeah, there's guys like you guys who seem to like do what you want to do and you have communities behind them. And that's, you know, you do what you want to do and it makes you happy, which is cool. But then like there's some YouTubers who primarily exist in the realm of like developing news content, daily content, dramatic or provocative content, you know, like tackling issues like EA is a shitty company, microtransactions this special edition is is uh, predatory you know like issues like that mm -hmm. and like those are inc those are way different than someone who just does it for the love of what what they do so like i'm trying to get from that point to a place where i'm like generally happy with everything i put out and i've pretty much been there for like six months now and it feels good but kind of circling back to what you were saying um it's a new concept it's radical it has pretty much nothing to do <laughs> with the wants and needs of probably all the viewership up until this point. So I'm hoping that I can continue to make the videos and um, at some point they'll they'll take off and I'll well, the, be able to uh, you know keep going. One thing we noticed about, especially when the cooking video started, was compared to your old stuff from when we first saw you and before and all that is like this dramatic uptick in quality and passion everything from it was written better um seeing you do everything you seem to be really into it everything from the slow-mo cameras and the high quality footage to churning out a finished product it looked like like what you did isn't something that everyone could do almost to the point where i feel like it might even be detrimental um because it's so high it's it's so high skill and high quality sort of stuff um but not something that you can't like yeah, inevitably um, teach people to do and then get more people into it get more engagement over time yeah, yeah it's, it's a huge just, uh, difference in a good yeah. way no i know what you're saying it's like where's the connection point for the person watching it is it the food is it the stupid jokes is it the green screen stuff is it or is it the actual person behind the video you know that's a, a big topic in itself like do you go out and watch your youtubers for them or do you watch it because the video title made you want to click on it huge difference and for the most part i've always been in that latter camp which you know took me to a place where i was like okay i, I want something different so that's kind of why i started it i mean if i got can a personality that would definitely attract people it's very uh, you're you're very approachable you know, you're not, you know, a, a hoity-toity sort of, you know, better than you kind of guy. You're someone that I think pretty much anybody could relate to and listen to and talk with. Um, and and yeah, I think that's definitely the, a benefit for the, you. The cooking aspect comes right through in terms of just like, ooh, this, uh, I want to see what we'll see. I was going to say, I noticed um, definitely something changing when you when you did your um, your video on the, the three games. Uh, it was, was it Mario 64, Banjo-Kazooie, and um, a third one? That... Dude, that was the video that was literally the video yeah no one I, watched it but that was i liked it <laughs> dude that's the one where you said uh you're gonna be fucking dead <laughs> when you fall off the <laughs> yeah. oh, it's good. Like, i just didn't give a shit at that point i just wanted to do something that was interesting and it was kind of a little bit of a spin on donkey stuff or donkey sorry um very mm -hmm. short snappy stupid con you know yeah but yours is good content. If, you know, if, if add something real quick. We cover or have covered a lot of people over the course of this show who are pretty bad content creators <laughs> and who refuse to change, no matter how legitimate the criticism, no matter how consistent they or how consistently rather they commit the same mistakes, and they just refuse to do anything different to improve their content. I think you might be, at least to my memory the only person that we've ever covered on the show who exponentially grew 
so much better with your content. And I'll be the first to admit, I really didn't like your content when I first saw it, but I genuinely love it now. It's really, yeah. really good, really well written, really well edited. And you can, uh, the the passion in it is really palpable as you're watching it. We suppose, actually feel like you care about it. And that's amazing. It's with better than any you, content we see. Are you okay with us like, you know, promoting it <laughs> semi-regularly? Basically like we like watching the cooking ones for sure. Cause they're like a lot of fun and we would absolutely like encourage, uh, cause chat have been filling up with hearts as you've been talking. Um, well, here's the thing. Let me cut you off, dude. Sorry. But I just want to say your, your community has been really like nice to me. Um, I'm getting like all these followers and comments and nice things as you've said in the, uh, my Twitter feed and stuff like that. So I just want to say thank you to, um, like, I, I have no idea who you guys are. I just came on board because, um, something new, something fresh, but, uh, your, your community has really reached out and, and given me a, a warm welcome. So I just want to thank you guys. Absolutely, well, you mean, deserve it. It's you really do, good yeah. stuff. Like those videos are really fucking good, man. We we often rank like like and try and figure out what the best stuff is, and like yours is. I don't even off the top of my head. I'm trying to think of like what what are the best videos we covered, and it's like it's gonna be the two cooking videos are gonna be really up there. Like really enjoyed them. Appreciate that. I think the turning point. Um, you guys can cut me off if I'm going too far, but uh, was when I had this. I think it was summer two, 2017. I was, I was kind of depressed actually. My girlfriend and I had broken up. I had moved out to uh, like an apartment. I was all alone, but my channel was growing enormously. Like I was getting tons of views, but the content I was putting out, like I'll admit it, it was it was pretty low quality. I would just go on, uh, on Reddit every morning, look for the most controversial issue, and I would I would basically just take that and and crafting my opinion story on it and put it on YouTube. And um, eventually this guy, and I've never mentioned this guy ever because my philosophy in terms of like haters and stuff like that is I don't interact with them. Um, Usually a wise idea. I never, ever. It's just a personal thing with me. I don't ever go after people or talk bad about people because I believe like in respect. Whether or not you don't you like the person or not, I don't like to slander people or talk behind people's backs. I've never ever made a video about anyone on my channel, for the exception of there's like an Angry Joe video where we actually supported him. But there was this guy in 2000, I think it was 2017, named Trolls Us. I still remember his name, and he he made a video about me, and it was it was pretty bad, um, for, from what I heard. To this day, I actually haven't watched it because. It's, I mean, it's tough sometimes when, when people, it wasn't critique I've heard. It was, it was a slandering, you know what I mean? It was a push someone into the mud and, and rub their face in well, the dirt. Not, not trying to like uh, outdo you in any way, shape or form, but we have lots of experience in that department. Yeah. <laughs> Scary amount of experience. Well, Some I people mean, are, they hate our guts. Well, you're always going to have haters, but this particular guy, um, I don't know what happened with the algorithm. Or, or what, but it just started this series of hate videos about me. And there was, I think there was like 10 or 15 videos. I never watched any of them, but um, I, I got into this, this space where I was like getting depressed. I don't know if you guys have ever dealt with like, you know, the job of YouTube itself, like actually making you sad. Because yeah, of sometimes, else. yeah. I was on YouTube for eight years. I actually ended doing youtube videos back in last december just because the depression had been getting to me so much over the years so definitely feel you there do you feel better now oh yeah i mean like i was telling you before we started up the stream uh, i mean i pretty much gutted social media out of my life and it's been much better i mean there's still issues it's you know clinical chronic depression so it's not really something that goes away but you know, getting the negative things out of my life has definitely helped me in a very substantive way. That's that's my whole philosophy. Just do not surround yourself with negativity. Oh, and absolutely. Be, surround yourself with people who will support you and be there for you. Yeah, and, and positive people. And this was exactly yeah. what this guy was. This, this guy was this negative atomic bomb. Like while I was in the process of, 
going through like, I don't want to say clinical depression because I've never been diagnosed with depression, but I had reached an all time low. My channel was growing, but I was so unhappy to the point where I would like not be able to sleep. And I remember really fondly, like walking out into my living room. I had a one bedroom, you know, get out of bed, couldn't sleep, walk into my living room. I would literally just open the blinds and stare up at the moon, dude. And just, be, I was like really unhappy. So like that, the, that event in 2017, that basically set off a chain reaction with me over the course of the course of the next year where I had to like really find myself again, go through the learning process of what happened, who I become, how far down, you know, the rabbit hole I went, how do I get back up? How do I make myself happy? Because I, for damn sure, I wasn't happy doing what I was doing. And I guess this is a question for you guys. Do you think, I probably don't even have to say any names, but those individuals that they operate YouTube channels and they, all they do is slander and hate. Like, do you think it's possible for someone to enjoy their own life living in that environment? Um, I think it takes a special kind of person to do that. Um, I certainly don't think a lot of people can. It's one thing to be an audience member around that kind of content all the time where you're looking for drama. You're looking for, you no, know, who fucked up big this week? Who can we, who can be our target this week? Yeah, there are you know, channels, they, they want to be like vampires. The like they only survive off other people falling. Yeah, yeah hive mind. Channels. Yeah, these, a lot of internet blood sport kind of stuff. A lot of yeah, that kind of content that I learned very quickly to stay away from. It brings nothing but misery. And they love um, to get personal, uh, which is a bit of a worry. You know, something I've noticed about a lot of the people that attack uh, CFAP and anyone affiliated with it is uh, that a lot of them post about how upset they are quite a lot on Twitter. Some of it comes across as like, please give me attention and sympathy points, please. But if any of it's genuine, and just for the sake of argument, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and assume it is, it, it seems that a lot of them don't seem to be very happy with themselves and they kind of lash out and attack other people to kind of project that anger onto somebody else. Because if we ever get to talk to any of them, it's always, it's just like this, really chill, really civil. And they get to talk for as long as they want. I mean, that's probably much, it's pretty much the what you were talking about. Wolf is almost emblematic of the culture of people, yeah. especially with social media. It's like with autonomy, your computer screen becomes a shield that can't be penetrated, and you can pretty much say whatever you want, and it hurts. Which is why, just personally, I've never ever gone out of my way to ever. I think the only time. I ever featured someone besides Angry Joe on my channel was this article by Kotaku, which was a publication at one point I respected, but I've changed my mind since. I think a lot of people are in the same boat. Yeah, <laughs> naturally. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was an article written by this, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman, but it was a woman talking, I think it was titled, um, If You Get Harassed in an Online Video Game, Speak Up, which to me, as someone who, who knows how to placate toxicity by not encouraging riling, you know, riling people up and putting yourself in a position where you're attacked, I basically made a video that said, you know what, this is probably not the best idea. But Yeah, um, if people are harassing you, the, what they want more than anything else is to get a, a reaction from you. They want to see that what they're doing is bothering you. Yeah, it was basically, a, it was basically an article talking about how we should rally around people that are getting harassed in online video games and, and basically tell the other person to shut the F up, which obviously if you have one brain cell, you know that that's going to instigate more. Wait, it reminds me of like the bully hunters thing, even if it worked, like the idea is just like, you're only going to make everything worse. The idea that you send people, people into gonna... a game, you counter grief. It's like, oh, that's. Yeah. They don't seem to understand people like trolls like that who do that sort of stuff, it is a badge of honor if they get a bully hunter sent after them. Yeah. And like, I that's amazing. Be, that's what they're going to try to do. I hate to be political, but um, 
in terms of more of a meta narrative scope, it's the same issue with um, the news. You know, when there's a God forbid uh, school shooting, they posterize the killer, which is what they want. They want the attention. They want the fame. That's the only thing they want. When in fact we should be never mentioning the name of that person. Yeah. Not yeah. talking about anything, but we should be focusing on the victims. But no, mainstream media evangelizes those kinds of anti-heroes to the point where even on the social media platforms like Twitter or, or whatever, it becomes a point of attraction for people like to strive for. And that's really unfortunate. I think it's surround YouTube and being in the sphere of making content and you know, like, I, a lot of people have no idea what it is until it's directed their way because most people are just audiences they don't have any level of personal stake in it they don't have to worry about someone making a video and you know tens of thousands of people you know having some error of yours or perceived error of yours or you know kind of put out there context. yeah it's it's problem. a people don't know how to relate to it until it happens to them and eventually a lot of people just get a thick skin built up, maybe. Um, oh, I have, yeah. It's tough to explain to people who haven't had it happen to them. Well, the, the, what I always tell people is, who are like mean, instead of like fighting back with these people, I always say the same thing. Well, I actually have never said this, but if I was going to say it, this is what I would say. You go out there, put your heart and soul to something, a piece of music, a piece of art, a YouTube video. You go out there, bust your ass, put a bunch of energy into making something you truly love, and then have me come up on your video and tear you to shit unfairly. Tell me how that feels. And it, it kind of speaks to the idea that there is a divide between creators and, and viewers where sometimes they don't see the psychological battle of being a YouTuber because all they see is the content. Yeah. They don't have any stake in it. For them, yeah. for most people, it, it's just, it stops and ends at there are some people and they are a free source of entertainment for me. And that's where it totally ends. I don't have any investment really in, you know, like I have no personal stake in it. I can always go to someone else or I can, you know, laugh at someone or mock them. I could chase them around and I can hound them down. It doesn't matter to me. Like it, it's not my problem. And if something bad happens to them, I'll just move on to the next person. It's no biggie. And it's just a cycle that always happens. YouTube's They've never free. had that target on their back. Yeah, there's no cost to YouTube at all. Anyway. It's the people who make the content that are the ones who are the most at risk and the most invested in everything, and they have the most to lose. I'd actually um, love to see like a statistic on... I don't know if you could do a poll or, or whatever, but you could, you could branch it out by type of YouTuber or type of content, whether they're community driven or content driven, how many of those people are actually happy? I'm not talking about the people who just do it for fun. You know, like, I don't know if you guys do it full time or what, but you know, the person that just puts out a video every couple months because they love what they do. I'm talking about the people who, who do it for basically a necessity, you know, sustenance. Like, are those people happy or not? Yeah. Do they feel I trapped? I think it would be an interesting, at least thought experiment to, uh, I think one of the issues is that this is kind of a new thing. So the data and the numbers just aren't quite there yet because you, you tell people like, Hey, what do you do for a living? There's like, Oh, I, I make YouTube videos. I, I do a podcast online and it's like a new weird foreign thing to them. Like they, like people have, Oh, you can get paid for doing that. Or that's a job. Yeah. That, that's what you do for a living. And they have no idea because it's so new to some people. Yeah. I was at, um, well, before COVID, and during my job, someone asked me like, what do, I, what do I do for a hobby? And I just so happened to mention that I make YouTube videos on the side. It's like, what? You get money from that? How? <laughs> I had the same and, thing. Um, it's like, Sister, yeah, sister's man. wedding, a uh, distant family member was just like, what does that mean? Review movies, how does it, what, is it, what, do you, what do you mean? Like you make videos, like how does that, what, how can that make money? <laughs> you talk, you're talking to a microphone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I think as time rolls on and it becomes more and more mainstream to do this sort of thing a streaming podcasting internet media work 
becomes more and more just commonplace and understood by people. It will. Uh, I'm curious to see what the psychology data eventually turns back because the people who consume it, who watch YouTubers, watch the stuff they go through, and the people who do it themselves, we sort of kind of have we we get hunches about you know what it is. We've seen the stories of people going crazy and losing their minds and stuff like that. And you think it's driven by their success or lack thereof success? Or I mean, I think so. Happy to a degree. Like I think some people are trapped into it. Yeah, I mean, you, you, have you the... strike it big with a video. Uh, your the algorithm works in your favor for a while. All of a sudden, you've got all this attention, all of this money's rolling in, and the money can be great. And you've got you're like a kind of a quasi celebrity essentially. But are you equipped to deal with that? Are you equipped to have people find out who you are and where you live? Are you ready to? Accept the idea that people are going to be watching for all of your mistakes that you ever make. And on the internet, nothing will ever be forgotten. And for a lot of people, that's just not something they can handle. No way. So they find success and they don't want to lose the success. But at the same time, they're just tortured by all the stuff that comes along with it. There's a lot of baggage. Yeah. And to shine a bright light on a dark painting, what I've found recently is you can really garner a great satisfaction from knowing that people love what you do and it really fills me with joy when i when i read comments and i was like oh man you made my day oh this is awesome dude cool video man you 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 made me feel good and like it's a good feeling it's like that is what i'm after these days i'm not after the the fucking money or the viewership or whatever i'm just about expressing things that I feel with inside me and then giving, giving those to someone else, whether that's teaching people how to work out or cook or sharing, you know, my favorite games or whatever. There's, there's this like sensation inside of me where it's like, I'm done doing it just to do it. Now I want to make people feel good and myself good at the same time. So there, there, yes, there's like a, there's, a psychological dark side that we've been droning on about for 30 minutes. That's very depressing. <laughs> but if it wasn't worth it, we wouldn't do it. I was going to say it's a but, reality. It's good to talk about it. Yeah, there's, but what I'm trying to say is there's great things that happen when people come together on YouTube. And for the first time in my channel, since I went down that road, I previously discussed, I'm starting to realize that and it feels good. Yeah, when you it, it seems like a it seems like such a tiny little thing. Someone just typing a little YouTube comment that says you know you did a great job or that it made their day or that they really enjoy. I am so happy to watch your stuff. But something so tiny can really, really mean a lot to the person you send it to. It's because people always remember the bad and they never remember the good. Well, one of yeah. my favorite favorite ways to think about that is like when I was twenty one, working my way through college. Um, you know, I told you guys I was poor earlier. My family was never able to help me pay tuition or get an apartment or buy a car. I, uh, I gambled for a living, uh, playing one, two, no limit, sometimes two, four, but it's beside the point. You always remember your bad beats. You never remember the ones you won. It's always that one tiny little detonator, whether it's a bad beat, you know, you had a, you had a straight. On the turn, the guy rivers a flush. He shouldn't have been in the hand, but he was. Whether it's that or uh, a comment you receive on YouTube, you're always going to remember that one stinger. You know what I mean? And when you get those little blips from people, awesome job, man. This is this is cool. You made my day. That washes away a lot of that bad stuff. And it becomes a place where yeah, man, this is cool. This this can be cool. It makes you feel like it's bigger than yourself, you know? When you get an email from someone who says, like, I was struggling with depression, and I even had, like, suicidal thoughts, and I was in a really rough place, but watching your content, like, it really helped me to stay positive, and it helped me through a really bad point in my life. There's things like that that, you know, like, it makes you think this, you know, what I do, it isn't just me. It, it really does extend a, it extends outwards, and it's, really kind so, of humbling in a way i'll tell you it what means a lot my the most watched video on my channel is a, is a video on video game addiction called the bitter reality of video game addiction but i'll tell you what dude 
I received upwards of 10,000 emails in response to, to the million people who watched me and the countless people who repeat watch me or whatever. I have an email box full of between seven and 10,000 emails. I'd say a good 500 of those are deep, hugely emotional stories about people in the most dire situations, completely addicted to games. They don't know where to turn. They don't know how to get out of it. Some Dude, some of these people are like 10. They email me these novels. I still get emails trickling in. Lost their job to a, a video game. <laughs> their, their mortgage, they can't afford their mortgage because they, they lost their, their job because they were too addicted to World of Warcraft or CSGO or whatever. And like these people have these crazy situations that I would never have been able to impact. And some of those emails were, dude, you made me find a light. You know, I can get past this. You know, some of them are, of course, help me, you know, help me through this or whatever, which that's, it's personal. You can't really help someone out to go through that kind of situation. You can give them tips, but you have to go through that yourself. But so many of them were these really wonderfully like redemption style emails of I had this video game addiction. It was ruining my life. I lost my wife. I have no money. But watching your video realized, made me realize I have some hope. And I always think back to that video when I think about like, why am I doing this on YouTube? Am I playing games just to write essays so that I can force my opinion down th other people's throats and get them to think exactly how I feel? No. I think about like the notion that this platform can help people. It can hurt them and it could aid in the, the sickening spread of, you know, technology addiction and, and social media. If, if people just can't get off the thing, but at the end of the road for the right person, even if it's just one person, like you can, you can help someone and Dude, that video, I think that's the video that I'm most proud of because it pretty much knocks on everything you just said in regards to the, the weird society that we live in and the, the troubles that you can find yourself in, viewer or creator on this platform, dude. You should be giving TED Talks. That was the most inspirational shit that's ever been said so on this you, show. You got us captivated and the audience, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> that, I give that credit to my uh, MBA program where I had to weekly give giant presentations in front of CEOs and hundreds of Harvard grad faculty members. That shit was scary. Talking to a couple lads on the internet, it's not too bad. Well, I mean, I'm really thankful you did. <laughs> well, I think everyone is. What's uh? So for your your videos coming up, I I suppose I think maybe it was asked before. Any plans? I guess, or just kind of seeing where the wind takes you, or you're gonna experiment with some new things, or kind of keep a common thread going. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think some people have or know that I've returned to full-time work. Um, different job, but same industry, same, actually the exact same position, ironically. So my needs on YouTube are not driven financially anymore. So everything I put forward on the channel or on my channel going forward is 100% passion. It's only what I want to do. It's only the things that are going to make me happy. There's been some experimentation. Um, I've got this idea... <laughs> Speaking of food, I've got this idea of creating this um, short series called Gamer Food. And I've got some recipes that I've developed that take unhealthy foods and make them healthy. I call them Gamer Foods because I think gamers should be eating healthy given our sometimes poor eating habits, poor posture, poor nutrition, yeah, and stuff like that. Not eating dirty. Really the sedentary nature of video games is typical. 
Yeah, I don't want to stereotype people um, and put people in buckets, but I think. Oh, that's just why was... I need this series to exist for my health. <laughs> I would be interested in it as well. I could I, I myself, know. but I'd love to get some insight on that sort of thing. Yeah, so I filmed the first episode and um, it just didn't come out the way I wanted it to. So I put it on the back burner, but I've got these recipes for chocolate cake, pancakes, rice. And I want to do like a short playlist on my channel where you can find like basically a recipe book and you can cook along with me. It would be much, much less formal than the restaurant style videos with all the sexy food porn, slow motion stuff. <laughs> oh man, I was, I was just about to say, we, we were kind of saying when we watched these videos, I was like, man, this is such high stuff that I wonder how approachable it is for the, you know, the average person. But if he kind of lowered it down to the rest of our level, and Baked did like beans. a gamer cook yeah a gamer cooking kind of thing that people yeah. could really do with you know more typical stuff i think there'd be a really big interest in that uh, potentially because i can't think of anybody else who does it yeah i mean that was the original design for the food stuff anyway was to do something no one else did but um what i've realized with filming off of a webcam and on an actual camera in an actual location like a kitchen it's way more challenging than you really think in terms of lighting and cinematography. Like to shoot a high quality kitchen demo or like a food commercial in an industrial kitchen or a home kitchen, it requires a tremendous amount of work. Just moving the damn camera around. Tripods, you know, the island's in the way, you gotta reposition lights. Um, is, the, is the shot uh, backlit? Is there enough exposure? What's the depth of field? Can I slow motion this shot? Is there enough light? Like all of that stuff gets factored in which creates an incredibly time consuming process for the, uh, the two videos i've done basically the the 10 minute videos you guys have seen took me about eight hours um fucking god forbid the food's cold at the end uh, <laughs> you, you got to film the thing right so like half the food's cold um yeah it's just kind of a mess i would it, like to do a, a less formal <laughs> version of, the, of this particular idea though to, to talk to your point or to speak to your point. It will all, all that work does pay off. There's like I said, yeah. going back to stuff and then looking at your new stuff it is a night and day difference. It looks professionally done um, nice. with the cameras and the way that it's shot and the way that it's set up. Um, it's just, from like watching your old videos, because I found out about you around 2017. I think I one of your first videos that I saw was something about shadow of war. I can't remember exactly what it was off the top of my head, but something around there and comparing it to now, I mean, it takes some serious uh, introspective thinking to really see the flaws in your own work and then make it better because there's so many people who just arrogantly think that whatever they're doing is perfect and they don't need to change anything. But to see you actually improve your content by light years is insane. So and refreshing to you see. Should be, you should be extremely proud of all the really hard work that you're clearly putting into your new content because it's oh, really great. Man. I think I think what drives me is probably what drives every single YouTuber. You know, I think we like to create our videos and then watch them. Is it just me or well oh, I, um, I, I also, does that you um, work all it, this time on it and then finally days later you get to watch your creation it's like okay cool like this sitting down to watch the video is like one of the reasons you do it well and i the, think that applies to the quote unquote the right kind of youtuber who isn't doing it just for the money who isn't doing it just because they feel like they're trapped in this job they don't want to do because i think a lot of people once they make it to where it's viable on youtube they think that that's the ultimate job to have. There's nothing that's better than doing that. And so the idea of stepping back from that and doing something else doesn't even really occur to them as an option. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. <laughs> Life is, YouTube is not the end of the world. You know, in my opinion, the goal of life is to continually self-improve yourself, work out so you're healthy, you can live long, enjoy the people around you, share good times with those you love eat well you know don't 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 grow old and die young and you know people 
it's a people lose you. So there's life beyond YouTube. And for me, it's based around health and sharing good times and stuff like that. So try to reflect that in the videos I make, um, as well as try to, you know, improve myself. I recently did a video on, well, it's a pending video on Detroit Become Human. It's a retrospective a game I replayed this year. And um, in 2017, to your point, Wolf, I probably would have barfed out a why Detroit Become Human is the worst game ever, or why you should hate this game or whatever. <laughs> and I would just barfed it out and put it on YouTube and that would be the end of it. I would have never thought about it again. But I've been working on this video for about 20, uh, 20 days off and on. I rewrote the entire script, which is rare for me. It's kind of to your point of trying to be the best you can be. And um, it's at this point, it's 22 minutes long. It's way longer than I wanted it to be. But like, I'm proud of it. And I think that's the, really the goal that if you're a YouTuber out there, you might not realize this at the time. You know, you might be very financially driven. Oh, the viewership, all the money. Eventually that's going to end or it's going to plateau. And what you're going to be left with is your own happiness. So like now I'm trying to work towards shit, man. Can I make this video? Like, can I make this video worth my viewers time? Like, that's the only question right now for me. You, Does this yeah. make me happy? You couldn't and be talking to like the most most suitable audience ever. You just told us that you're redrafting, your video's getting longer, that you, you care about how people are gonna react to it. Re is, we, this is ecstasy to us. <laughs> well, it's, not it. about, it's not about me, it's, it's, does my viewer, who is going to sit down for 15 minutes, take the time out of their day to watch my shit, is my shit worthy of it? Because if the answer is no, I'm going back to the drawing board. That's what I mean, man. Like, you just put everything in. Really work at it. And we've I gotta watch like, your videos, like, though. Sorry to cut you off, dude. I gotta watch your guys' videos because I gotta learn how to do a long form essay. <laughs> maybe not 10 hours. Maybe, yeah, I was yeah. gonna say, you could probably start with someone else. I, uh, I spent like. <laughs> tips on how to push it up to 30 minutes, all right? I think it's if, if weird. You a long video, it means you've got stuff to say, and that's not a bad thing. However, I am a very, like, I'm a man of very, like, I don't talk a lot, although I, I seem to be chatting in this particular podcast. I don't know why, but I'm usually a man of very few words, and I'm actually quite the introvert, even though my schooling forced me into being an extrovert, and my current job requires me to talk to a lot of people who make a lot of money, but I'm naturally an introvert, so, like, it's very difficult for me to open Google Drive. It's probably different for you, Rags or Mauler, where you've, you've watched or played some piece of content and you see that blinking line. Okay, this is where I start. It's very difficult for me to think about adding more because I've always been a, a subtraction kind of guy, if nice. that makes sense. Like, I like conciseness. I like things that come to a natural arc, whether it's long or short. Sometimes if it's shorter, it's, it's less bogged down, it's less clumsy, but like learning to write longer is probably a direction I'll start to go in, especially with, you know, some of these upcoming games, like, um, like I haven't played the last of us part two or cyberpunk 2077, um, a simulation game like Detroit control where there is space for you to explore your ideas. Because let's be honest, it's not really applicable for a lot of games, action games. I'm sure, you can tell you can talk about a Call of Duty campaign for a good bit, but can you talk about a racing game all that in depth? Not really. So it kind of depends on what games you gravitate towards. And in this moment, I seem to be gravitating towards RPGs and adventure games. So it might allow me to to expand my ideas beyond my comfort 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 zone as i said before was conciseness if that makes sense yeah um i think that generally we definitely err on the side of say it if you we say it if you need to say it don't waste time but sometimes you just have a lot of things to say and sometimes that means depending on what you're covering maybe there is a lot to say about something and do the topics justice i suppose um if if you're if you're covering something that you think 
is owed a lot of an explanation. Better to say it all and have it be long instead of not giving people enough. If it's too long, people can always go back and finish it. But if there's not enough, then after you finish it, you know, what then? It's over. You make a good point when you say um, do the subject material justice, which I think is what clouded my videos for a long time and it continues to cloud and, and really fuck up a lot of people's content on YouTube is we're not respecting what we're actually using. You know, there's a lot of companies out there. Sure, there's companies out there that put shitty games out, but if you're gonna be covering a game that people have toiled over, sleepless nights, you know. Yeah, that's a good way to look at long, it. For years. Like you owe that property the respect, just like you owe it to your viewers to do it right, whether it's long or short. Um, it's just for me, an expert uh, process these days of trying to figure out how long I want my videos, how short I want them, you know, it's kind of dependent on every game. Well, some people sort of get into the, I think they get into the cycle of, well, I just got to crap out this video for this one thing. Oh, this game came out. I just got to put out a video. Oh, this game came out. I, I just got to put out a video. I just, it just needs to get done. I got to make a video for it. They feel like they do it as an obligation to a schedule instead of really sitting down and taking the time and being like, okay, this is a game. I need to sit down, play it, absorb it, take notes. And because a lot of people, like even if you're not a big YouTuber and a thousand people watch your video, it's like, well, maybe, you know, 10, 15, 20, a hundred people out of that, you know, it's $60 to them. And that's a lot of money to people. So you don't want to, you don't want to steer, steer people wrong. Yeah. The, there's a great divide between high quality content and crap on YouTube. Oh yes. Yes, sir. Um, it's just, it's gotta be honest, man. I'm guilty as charged. I put a lot of garbage out on YouTube for, for a good amount of time. Probably, a, probably an entire year. Some of my content was garbage. Like I won't even go back and watch my videos. In fact, I've deleted so many of them, but it's like, I don't know what you guys are opinion of with COVID is and, and what, what seems I don't to like be. it. Well, I mean like the, <laughs> I'm anti COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to die either, but in, t- in terms of like YouTube, it seems like there's this, the viewership is being spread thin because a lot more people are coming on. I mean, we have Brie Larson making videos, Steph Curry, um, movie stars are creating YouTube videos these days, which supply and demand can dictate that perhaps unless you have the community to back it up, you're going to get a smaller slice of the pie, right? Which can back to your point, push people to, to really grasp onto this idea that this is an obligation because my life depends on it. I think, which kind of circles back to the point of there's a lot of garbage on YouTube. And you have to sift through it if you if you really want to find the good stuff. Yeah, sometimes I, I definitely feel that way. I feel like to really find the good stuff, there's so much, uh, so much of it is just like middle of the road, average, passable, kind of, you know, five out of 10 stuff. It's to find a YouTuber that has some real, not just passion, because there's a lot of passionate YouTubers who just aren't good. Uh, but to find a passionate YouTuber who's really good and insightful about things, it's not always, you know, it, sometimes it feels like a diamond in the rough. And it, you want to encourage people to support those YouTubers who do that. Um, well, system, unfortunately, has something to say about that, Rags. Yeah. The algorithm YouTube and the crazy automatic robot, not to mention the rampant demonetization, copyright strikes, and just general uh shatakery of the notification system dude the the bot that is some nut shit like i i hate the bot i Ugh. i was curious um because the, the, like someone was like oh by the way tfa part three managed to get over a million and i was like oh i actually wasn't expecting to because i feel like interest in that series might have waned a bit but i was like oh that's cool and i checked analytics i was like what is going on then like is it still getting rotated and the interesting thing is that was in my top rotation like according to the bot second was a video that was 20 minutes long that I made like three years ago where I was responding to someone talking about horror games. I was like, why the fuck is... What? That's been popping up in my recommended. Why? By the way, What's video? going on? Oh, yeah. The I one that that was the game. And yeah, loads of people have been up. watching it on my channel and commenting. And I'm like, I don't I can't even remember what I said in that video. <laughs> what's what's it, going on? 
the uh the shotgun thumbnail yeah yes. yeah and um I, yeah it's been popping up for me and it's and nuts because the U- the youtube bot can literally create and destroy careers at, at a whim like absolutely it's insane and I'm imagine that video. sword of damocles floating above you and you're trying to make a career out of this shit <laughs> it's like cool watching a video and the f bomb must have been roll it was like a rainbow six siege video highlight video not scripted just gameplay audio right f bomb is thrown out at least 50 times in this video monetized <laughs> there's yeah. no rules on youtube copyright strikes and demonetization seem to happen at random videos are promoted for what reason who knows i don't think they really have the system down at youtube oh hell to no any degree of predictability and i saw a meme video posted just a few days ago from a channel that only has like 2000 subs and it had a million views after a day and it's like it was a funny video but i don't know how the hell it got that many views in such a short amount of time from such a small youtuber youtube's fucking broken it is um i remember i i did a response to angry joe once and i quoted him and his quote was part of the video title and the video got demonetized because of that quote but he was allowed to have that quote said over and over and over in his video and he was monetized there is there, there is no it's basically random when people ask me what's the bot like i it's it's indistinguishable from randomness which is the problem. Uh, you just never know. You just never know what'll pass and what'll fail. I agree. And that's, and, and that's demoralizing when you work really hard on something and then you put it into the system and it's like, ah, uh, you don't get to make money. Yes. Oh, thanks so much. I was going to say, by the way, we got um, Catastrophica and Sophistic Autistic made these. They, they are you, Tone. <laughs> Wait, what? In the, uh, in the, <laughs> it's posted in the chat. You should be able to see them. Oh shit! That's you just made this. Oh, these these were sent to me ahead of time because uh, I think well everyone was sure you were coming on. <laughs> they, they they all I think they all wanted it, so uh, they drew it. The, but I can guarantee you, especially after how this has gone, that you're going to be getting uh, probably a bit of fan art made. Uh, oh, I need a new YouTube thumbnail. I can guarantee you that there's oh. going to be some, like Van Gogh <laughs> level. My way. You. The white Samaori has really uh, taken <laughs> over with a lot of the meme stuff. Hey, it's been big. hey bro, that's what's coming eventually, bro. White Samurai. <laughs> ninja, dude. dude, we'll be watching. You better that. believe I'm doing another one of those trailers. <laughs> Can I, by the way, the like our favorite quote from you is uh, when you're talking about God of War and you show the bit where uh, Kratos is grabbing Poseidon and you describe it as these clown boy? Yeah. You guess clown boy? Where yep. where did that come <laughs> from, dude? Like clown boy? That shit's hilarious. <laughs> I've never that, heard it before. That's just something I say. Like a like, little clown boy. It's it's like it's, it's everywhere in our community. Rolls off the tongue so naturally. Just it's, if anyone says anything to you that you don't like, clown. Just, that's clown it. Just drop boy. the clown, it's over. <laughs> Can't come clown. back from it. It's um, it's when you combine certain words and you're just blown away by how effective it sounds. Like a little clown boy. It's like, oh my god, that is wonderful. It's like, wow, it's done. Oh, Shut so down. We're on the topic of asking questions like that, I've always wanted to know what's the origin behind the name Downward Thrust. So yeah, that's a yeah, good question. question. <laughs> I ex- I actually explained it to me, or I I explained it to. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you know. I explained to myself in the mirror <laughs> while I was crying late at night one night. I um, agreed with me. <laughs> I made a vlog a long time ago. Uh, not many people saw it, but the name was based off of the down thrust move of Zelda 2. Oh. So in Zelda 2, you had the up strike ability and you had the down thrust, which you could get, I think, in one of the dungeons or. I think you learn it from like a townsperson or whatever. And like, that was my favorite move ever because you could like kill enemies, like fucking just boom. Little did I know at the time, the, the move name was down thrust. So there I was 
starting my YouTube channel, I, I, figuring the name was Downward Thrust when it was Down Thrust. So to this day, I wish I would have looked it up because that's <laughs> not the name of the move. I've like, close down, enough. <laughs> downward thrust sounds better. Downward thrust does sound I mean, better. It does, it does work. Thrust. And you can totally count for that. You can be like, yeah, I took it and I changed it a little bit. Yeah, like, you can say you did that on purpose. You're fine. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I honestly think that it would be just, it's a funny little bit of lore to say like, yeah, it came from this. It was a mistake. But I think downward thrust honestly sounds better as a name for a YouTube channel. Oh, definitely. Down thrust. Well, it's probably better to... Nintendo not coming after me for copyright or nothing. You know, <laughs> I don't know if they can copyright down thrust, but you never know these That's days. Some, I will Nintendo let, I will let Fredo uh, drew that one. It's just you in the Pokemon universe. What's my what? Okay, ask that gentleman. What is my Pokemon of choice? That's a oh, huge question. Surely that would be for you to decide, right? I don't know. No, no, that's for the creator. All right, you hit him. Please say Arcanine. By the way, if any of your. Uh, if anyone in the chat has a question for me, you feel feel, feel free. Throw my yeah, we way. can we can do that if you want. Um, I don't yeah. know how much time do you Blabbering have now. On about, um, probably like half an hour. Let's do it. Let's let's do it. Now we did do wanna, into some Q and A. Keep an eye that on is the, uh, Do you want to pull questions out of chat yourself, or do you want us to just try and find some? No, you go ahead. All right, chat. All right, yeah. Get your best questions and posts. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, don't fuck this up. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite movies? Oh, yeah. My favorite movie of all time is uh, Interstellar, followed pretty closely by Inception. Huh. Okay. Hey, I, know, I like Inception. I know a lot of people are pretty divisive <laughs> about Interstellar. Um, I don't know what you mean. For various, <laughs> various reasons, but uh, <laughs> I'm a space junkie. Oh. And that, that movie was just phenomenal. Uh, Runners Up, Last Samurai, anything by Van Damme, Bloodsport. Last Samurai is great. Yeah. I really like Last that. Last Samurai movie. was the only movie to ever make me cry. I was sitting in a movie theater by myself. The only video I went to by you myself. You cried during crying. Interstellar. Nah, man. Dude, the okay. scene where he sees his kid growing up, that didn't get you? No. Nah. No. Nah. Man, so all right. Insane, man. Yeah, all right. Well, I fair enough. I mean, maybe my girlfriend just broke up with me that day, which is why I was in the theater by myself. Um. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Which is a, which is a, I guess a question for you guys too. Anyone ever, you know, we're talking about video game addiction earlier. How many girlfriends have you guys lost to video games? Let's just be real. Um, none. Yeah, like, honestly, uh, if if I'm gonna commit with a girlfriend, I'm like she's getting she's getting a lot of time, uh, usually. Yeah, but I oh. I don't see myself. I'm not the girlfriend boyfriend type really it's just not sort of my deal the romantic relationship at least currently you know people change over time but i never saw myself as that kind of person where my personality would mesh with that sort of relationship so i've kept things pretty simple and you know, always kept my been up front about that sort of stuff mm -hmm. just tell us how you really feel mr tender <laughs> <laughs> but i could see how it could be um you know, it, competing for attention. If, if you do have a problem with, you know, video games or really any addiction, then I could see how that could be a huge deal to have to. I mean, it's a terrible sort of thing because, like, they're designed day after day to be that, to get more players, to get more success because it's a market to thrive. And of course, I just, it's like we try and separate it into like ethical and non ethical ways of making your game satisfying to play. And thus, you know, when it gets a little bit more deeper down it's like how addictive in, in the same way that gambling oh you guys remember that the uh csgo gambling that whole thing oh yeah yeah that thing yeah. that happened that was a big thing when it came out yeah <laughs> too ugly for dating sorry oh chat <laughs> <laughs> oh even hitler That's had his eva cheer true, up man have some confidence pluck Jim your eyebrows Sterling's married matt jarbo's married like come on yeah <laughs> everyone's got something to offer yeah. Oh, so uh, I, I guess this is, if you have questions, uh, I, quick one. Um, what games have you been playing recently that you like? So I just beat Detroit Become Human uh, for the second or third time. 
which I was talking about earlier in terms of uh, the retrospective. Um, I just beat uh, Splinter Cell Chaos Theory again. I missed out on The Last of Us Part 2. Um, I really want to play that game in 60 frames per second, and I know a remaster is coming for the PS5, so deciding to hold back on that. I missed Ghost of Tsushima, but currently I'm just playing like really old games. Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, I just finished. I've been playing a lot of Rainbow Six Siege. Oh, it's a good game. But nothing like, nothing new. I gotcha. I'm the same way. A lot of the games I play are not necessarily new, just ones I happen to get into and mainstays I could always go back to. All reliables. What have you guys been playing? Good question. Um, I've been playing uh, Killing Floor 2. Uh, Uh, Full Guys. (laughs) Guild Wars I've been too. wanting to try Fall Guys, actually. Dude, we should uh, we should do a gaming with that, all right? We should do it. I'm, I'm down for a co-op sesh. Defo. Um, oh, that would be fun. You said uh, you meant you meant you're you're interested in playing The Last of Us Two at some point, right? You haven't played it yet. Yeah, The Last of Us is actually my favorite game of all time. And oh man, dude. Well, okay, no spoilers, I anybody. Shit. I will love to know what your thoughts are on Last of Us Two when you finish it. Man, I mean. I, I go into media blackout mode when a game comes out that I'm going to be interested in. I read nothing. I, I watch no previews. I truly believe the magic of a video game experience is you go in and know nothing about it and just sure, being yeah. surprised. I agree. But God damn, did I see some shit? <laughs> uh, people, oh. A lot of people are, a lot of people feel a certain way. That's a, uh... Oh my God. Did I see some stuff? No, nothing, no spoilers, but good God, the political socialism drama spewing forth from everyone like t- Count Dooku is just, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's intense, man. Yeah. I don't know. It's like, am I supposed to be worried at this point? Well, we wouldn't want to say, right? We'll, we'll, not, we'll not say anything. You just, you, want, you go in there. Dude, I would love it if you streamed it, by the way. I would watch the shit out of that. Since Warframe 2017. I feel like I'm a bad streamer. (laughs) I would love to see y'all. I and this isn't to say I'm not indicative of any direction here. I would love to see reactions to certain portions of Last of Us 2. It would genuinely be a treasure. I'd have to play it first. Oh, maybe I don't know if you'd be willing to like record it offline as you play through it and then supercut it or something. I would watch the shit out of that, just saying. Um, uh, oh, oh! I'm someone's hoping. asking. Uh, do you think uh, if Last of Us Two or Last of Us is big with you? Uh, do you think Joel's a beloved character? <laughs> I would only be able to answer that in the context of the first game. Go for oh, it. Yeah, so, that's all you need. That's that's all you need for uh, what, I, yeah, an what I liked. What I liked about um, the Last of Us was that it was fairly enigmatic, in the sense that Joel started off as someone relatable, albeit his circumstance was unreachable at this point, you know, zombie apocalypse or whatever, daughter gets shot by the guard. Um, But the transitionary arc of his character was something I fell in love with because he started off fairly prickly towards Ellie, right? (laughs) Yeah, it was cliche in terms of, uh, doesn't like her now, likes her later. But um, the ending of The Last of Us was when I started to not like Joel. Obviously, there were some moments before in the hospital, you know, with the decision. You know, Last of Us is a linear game, so you have no choice, right? Um, don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't, seen, who hasn't played the game, but um, the choices he made and, and how it was presented on the screen... I think now, it's okay to spoil it for this crowd of ours. We're... Yeah, don't worry about that. Yeah, well, let me can, just you say, can go for it here. Let me just say I like Joel, but then I didn't like Joel. That's mm. pretty much the best part. Really? Interesting. I mean, the, the causation of what he does, you know, his actions, the consequence, or I guess a better way to put it is the the underlying reasons for why he does what he does at the end of The Last of Us is shocking, but it's relatable, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. It doesn't mean that that's the right thing ethically to do. 
And I think gamers play games that they can connect to morally, value wise, ethics, right? What would, what can I connect with in terms of a character? Does this make sense? Can I put myself in that, sh in those shoes? And what, what, what he did at the end of the game disconnected me from that because that's what I, I would never have done. Really? I mean, yeah, it's a fair reaction. Well, I could understand it, but it's fucked up. Play the second one, then we can talk. <laughs> we'll go. We can yeah. go in depth. We'll talk all about. I'll just say that. Too. I'll just say no. I don't like Joel as much as I I did when the game started. It's hmm. still still what you consider your favorite game. Yeah, definitely. Um, I remember playing The Last of Us when I was. Um, I think it was the first year of my grad program, and. My roommate had just gone out for the night and it was just me. It was raining. So like the mood was ripe for this kind of game. And I put it on. I beat the game pretty much in almost in one sitting. And it's rare for me to divulge into that kind of behavior because generally like I'll pick up a game for an hour or so. I'll put it down kind of guy. But for me to plow through that entire experience, in that environment, there, there was just something that happened, I guess, in that room late at night. Could, I connected to the story for whatever reason. It doesn't really matter, but yeah, that's my favorite game for sure. Yeah, I think it's a great choice. Uh, another question came up. Um, do you have a favorite faction from 40k? Uh, no, I don't play too many Warhammer games. Is that... Oh, they said the, based on your icon, so I assumed... Icon? Yeah, but they might have been mistaken, I guess. Or yeah, what is the my, icon from the, pic the picture right now in my mm -hmm. yeah. bubble? That's a custom drawing that was Ooh. made for my channel by oh. some chick in Kazakhstan. Actually, <laughs> I hired some chick on Up Upwork. I think it's Upwork. I gave her like a hundred dollars. I said, I want a guy in a cloak thrusting down with a sword and this is what she drew me so unfortunately i don't have uh too much to share about the warhammer universe this is a custom drawing uh let's see oh. uh someone's asking favorite anime not into man i'm not into anime good man <laughs> um but... i wouldn't even know where to start crawling here seeing if I... Do you have a favorite genre for music or band? Um, yeah. I generally listen to two types of music, either like really dirty rap or um, what they call finger style guitar, which is the style of guitar I play. And that kind of music doesn't have any vocals. So if you kind of want to look it up, you can search like Andy McKee to kind of see what I'm talking about. It's basically like a one man army style on the guitar where you're playing melodies and rhythms and you're slapping the guitar with your hand to create percussion as like an all encompassing style of playing music. And I find it very attractive to listen to. So I think those are the two styles for me. Pretty, uh, pretty different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what is your workout routine? Uh, my workout routine is is new because COVID and I had to cancel my gym membership. Um, yeah. The cool thing about COVID actually is I started calisthenics, which completely changed my perception of working out. Because when I first started working out when I was about 22, I got pretty jacked. But I didn't get ripped. I got big. And there's a big difference. Um, my... <laughs> It's funny because looking back, I grew up a, sk a skinny kid, but when I first started working out, I was slamming the bench press, you know, and I was eating 5,000 calories a day. And boy, <laughs> you do not want to know my diet, by the way. It was disgusting. Filled with uh, protein shakes with raw eggs, Rocky Balboa style of spaghetti with meatball, Ooh, man. peanut butter sandwiches every two hours. It was pretty nasty. So I got jacked 
but I wasn't healthy. COVID, you know, years later, took away the gym for me. And it pretty much almost kind of like made me see the light in terms of like doing body weight over weights, basically. Um, what and what do you I'm, mean body weight over? So, yeah. So like when you, when you go through your life lifting weights, you, you don't actually train your body to be stronger or more flexible or more, or more mobile. You're just increasing weight, whether you're compensating during those movements, your form sucks. If you can get the bar, basically your entire objective is to get the bar you know, above your head or whatever, you know, you're pushing the bar, you're pulling the bar. Calisthenics. So it's not like clickable strength? No, because calisthenics allows you to control weight versus just push weight. And it, it develops like a more lean physique because you have less weight to push around, but you're, you have to control not just your body weight, but your own flexibility, and you have to be mobile enough to complete some of the moves, like let's say a planche or a headstand or a handstand or like a scapula push up, for instance. So, like my routine these days, to go back to your question, is, is basically like a full body calisthenics workout three days a week for about 30 minutes, focusing on body weight strength, flexibility and um, being mobile because you know gamers don't exactly have the best hobby to promote good health with our bodies sitting yeah. down is not very good for us so um, if i have any advice for like people who want to get into working out who are gamers it's you need you got to get flexible and mobile so push-ups um, dips squats lunges l-sits um, hollow bodies, stuff that's actually going to make you fit and strong and flexible, not just the ability to push weight around. Mm -hmm. Way so, too long winded. Sorry about that. No, I know it's good advice to have, um, especially nowadays where a lot of people are inside, doubly so. But if let's say someone wants to put a set aside just a little bit of time every day, you know, 10, 15 minutes or whatever to do a little. Do do a little workout. Uh, what would you what would you say is the best idea for you know a gamer who just wants to put aside a little bit of time every day, something that's useful? I would say watch my most recent video called "How to Be a Healthy Gamer," which has Excellent. a complete calisthenics workout. Shameless plug um, that you can do oh, pretty much every day. Go for it. I just did. You um. <laughs> <laughs> do you uh so you, you said you're not uh interested in like anime what about just tv shows in general a lot of people are asking have you heard of Ad avatar the last day of ben have you watched that no um i just got done watching space force which i thought was fantastic that's uh steve carell right so uh, yeah. yeah i haven't watched airbender maybe you guys can fill me in on on what it's about is it like hardcore anime or is it no great entry weird? level for like uh shows of of i don't know i don't know if it is anime or not i don't know like i, don't know I would say that it's anime it's certainly it looks like it it's got a lot of the the tropes of it in there um it's stylized yeah, in the way of it yeah people I, I would, like, really gatekeepy with like oh it's not really anime because it's not made in japan even though it has everything in common with any other anime it's pretty much anime there's almost nothing distinguishable from it and anything else that you find in typical anime from my experience yeah I, I would love to watch it i just have such a backlog of stuff since i got netflix like i've been watching uh the last dance with michael jordan i play in a competitive basketball team well i did before covid but like i like sports documentaries um game of thrones was phenomenal until they fucked it up <laughs> <laughs> We never did get around to talk. Yeah, about we, we got to talk about this Dude, before I go. That is the um, perfect summary. It was great until they fucked it up. <laughs> um, I'm not the best person to talk about it, but like Game of Thrones was phenomenal for 
seasons upon seasons. Like what they were able to do with the cinematography and the layering of the, the network of the relationships between the characters and the surprise moments, the, and just the sheer cinematography, the acting, the music, the overarching meta narrative, just splicing through all those personal stories. I could not pull myself away. Like, it, dude, it was set easily to be the season. greatest TV show of all time if they had just managed to fucking keep it going. Like, the, the quality they'd set. If they had I, just yeah. replaced the writers. At what point did it turmoil down into a raging fire? Uh, you could pick a few points in the final season, but um, I really thought when Daenerys flew over <laughs> King's Landing and <laughs> killed everybody <laughs> completely ruined what do you everything mean, that's to that's about totally her, in her character. character she's always been established to kill innocent women and children that's her thing yeah it's, it's the origins of her character she was leading up to the moment where she murdered everyone in the show it, it, obviously but like that moment ruined the greatest show on tv i think my personal moment when i was like all right i you killed it for me was uh, when Arya killed the Night King. Well, that yeah. whole in general, but I mean, I was like waiting for Jon Snow to have an actual fight with the Night King, and then Arya just like boops into existence out <laughs> of nowhere and stabs him, and that's it. Well, was it just? Was it just because they wanted that surprise factor? Yeah, they oh, said yeah. that. They said that nobody like... was thinking it was going to be Arya. They said a lot of weird shit as to like justify it, and they were, and then eventually they started saying like it always made sense. Arya was always gonna be the one, and they show that clip where Melisandre says, "You'll close eyes of all colors, like greed eyes, blue eyes." And it's like oh, the Night King has yeah. blue eyes. I get, oh my god, it's fo thoroughly foreshadowed. <laughs> like what the fuck, <laughs> dude? Oh, it was that conversation by the time that happened. Oh. It was it was worse than the ending of Dexter. It was worse than anything I had experienced like, ever. And my girlfriend and I were sitting on the couch, staring aghast. Fuck. I think I had to do CPR on her at some point. <laughs> did you? What did you, did you have any comment on their um the formation, the fortifications with their armies and uh, the castle? Any any thoughts there? Uh, I mean, I'm not too terribly inquisitive when it comes to. Did you think it was details? amazing that they like, ran their cavalry first into a crowd of zombies? Oh, uh, Rocky. Okay, that's the first super thing about that scene. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're catapulted. Let's go ahead and just send a, a third of our army <laughs> into the darkness, where there are murderers waiting. Charge. <laughs> It's it's actually that's baffling because the the way you use cavalry that's like the opposite of how you use cavalry like there's no and they have all like the greatest minds in Westeros working together to to create like the best plan and then you see that their front line is trebuchets um <laughs> not the greatest idea <laughs> I only mentioned time the trebuchets stopped firing after the first volley I think which is cool. That's exactly what you want to do, is have all your archers and trebuchet stop firing when the enemies are in range. Makes sense. Too late for those trebuchets as soon as I fucking put them on the front. Yeah, well, so yeah, once, once uh, she stabbed the Night King, because uh, I was in a cold wolf watching it, and it was like, a, oh yay, we did it, we beat the bad guys. And it was like, wait a minute. Hmm. Yeah, what I <laughs> think about the, the the fight between the mountain and the hound. Funny. In the, in the tower that was melting around them. I feel like I was, my investment was thoroughly destroyed at that point anyway, so just watching it all happen, it just felt weird. Like, I just like and funny. The mountain, like, takes Kyburn and, like, breaks his head and throws him on a rock, and that's just the end of that whole character. That was so funny. Like it's, it's <laughs> thematically, it, it tugs at 
you know, underlying thematic, you know, the fire scene from the, the first time we see the hound or whatever, but like, good God, a little bit over the top. Well, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got my popcorn out. Did you like all the walking in the last episode? Oh, yeah, was... Did you like how Jon Snow's entire character arc resulted in, but I don't want it. She's my queen. Dude, what do you mean? That was perfect. That was Jon Snow. Don't That's you what know the Jon Snow I've always known. He's a dog. He's not a leader. He doesn't have wow. his own mind. Wow. Come oh, on. Yeah. All he wants is that, uh, you know, his, his aunt. Oh, we've got we got a request actually, and that's a pretty fair one. Do you guys remember the meme that Little Potato made in King's Landing? Do you remember that shit? I oh. believe I do. Um, I it's okay. Wait, hang on. <laughs> Carry on a sec. I'll set it up. All right. Um. Yeah, I know when the the I never got into Game of Thrones until Mahler dragged me in. I th I think I was his uh, I was his emotional support animal. Yes. Uh, he was very, very distraught over what happened. Uh, and I could certainly see why. Um, I have legitimate sympathy for people who were super invested into that show and then watched that happen. That must have been really rough. Uh, with, with how long it took to get there, especially. So yeah. much investment built up over so long. And I think the fact that basically nobody talks about that show anymore sure is interesting, you know. Sure is interesting. Um, is everyone in? I think we're copyright free on this video. I'll do what Let I can. Let me. I'm ready. This is, um, I'm popping in now. Here we go. All right, here we go. Um, before I let it play fully, you don't have to understand it. It's uh, <laughs> it's just, some of the memes we see from our community. We don't even quite understand them, but holy shit, you'll probably find this amusing. I'm not sure that that's inherently that much of a bad thing. Carol's flat. I mean, as a character. Is that like a personal attack or something? Again, don't worry. You won't understand all of it. <laughs> you also have to tell me about these food references with the McChuros. Is it supposed to be playing the ad? The ad? No, no, no. Uh, hang on. Yeah, it's it's playing that. It's playing the ad for me. Is it up it's now? Not playing the meme. It's playing the uh, meme. no. Let me reload. It's supposed to be very. I was about to be very, very confused here. Here we go. Oh, there it is. Yes. Sweet. Okay, I'll just skip. You haven't missed anything, don't worry. At this point, there's literally no escape. That's just pathetic to me. You two are pathetic. You're subhuman, honestly. <laughs> Oh good lord, what's this? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Turns into a food kind of forgot about. Fuck no, bitch. Where the hell did you come from? So, um, here's the thing. This is destructive. By the way, can I just say one thing? Yeah. Whoever made that 18 minute video. Oh, you've seen that? About the e -fat. I watched that and I oh have to God. say that that was fantastic. And whoever <laughs> made that, it was very talented and creative. Dude, it's it's what we, we could only dub as a as a Hollywood level meme video. <laughs> it's insane. I had no idea who those people were, what was going on, what the heck the McChicken nuggets were for. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the food references are, but damn, that was some high quality shit. Um, yeah. Well, <laughs> did you like the little clown boys who punched Pennywise in the face? It's fucking classic, dude. Really encapsulating the most important things about me.
You'll ha you have no <laughs> idea how happy you've just made several of the people who made that video, by the way. I had no idea you'd see that. Can I ask Actually, why I'm why I'm Ant Man though? Was there uh, some decision that was reached or the problem is we have so many characters in the EFAB community to spread across. I, I don't know what the decision making process was, but um you know, do you do you, do you like Ant Man? Do you not? Or I'm I like it. I'm just wondering oh, why. Oh, I don't <laughs> know. Uh <laughs> I, say... I, I will accept it. You likey likey? Some... I like you like me. <laughs> so they sent this. They wanted me to show this to you. They made us uh, about our conversation today. Oh, great. It's me in five years. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, need, I need to put this on my thumbnail, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think you had a lot of people uh, enraptured. Yeah, that's pre pretty fair to say. Um. It's good to talk about this stuff. I hope I wasn't too preachy or uh, no. You know, we oh, were. Dude, this, um, is, this has been in terms of some of the subjects we brought up. In terms no. of EFAP highlights, this is uh, this is up there, man. We've had a hundred episodes, and this is up there. Well, shit. Maybe that's uh, my call to bid you guys adieu. I've got to make oh, some dinner, but uh, it was an absolute fucking what are you pleasure having? to come in and meet y'all. We're going to have um, vegan burgers and oh. a kale salad. Oh, I'm Go sorry I asked. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, he's cooking it, so. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it was an absolute honor to, to meet you chaps, and uh, thanks again for having me. The, the support from you guys' community is awesome. Um, I hope we can maybe uh, play a little Fall Guys at some point. I'll do it, definitely. I got to buy the game now just to be in on this. <laughs> Everyone's talking about it, so I guess we'll have to see what's up. All right. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you so much for coming on, dude. Seriously. Yes, that thank you so pleasure. much. You Made a lot care. of people's days. And I want to see. Can I, can I suggest Sauron can be one of the people you cook for? Yeah. Can we... oh, fuck. Damn. I never considered movies. I want you to get creative. What would you cook for Sauron? On the spot right now? Well, no, I don't want any spoilers. Make that video, dude. I'll watch the shit out of it every time. You, 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 um, the possibilities of <laughs> movies is yeah. endless. I'll just should, you should do like um, a polling system. Just see what see what people really want to see. Who they want to see guest on your show to get uh, cooked for. Yeah, uh, it's a good idea. Yeah, man. Um, of course, take care. Thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure, and uh, we'll we'll see you again soon. Absolutely. Uh, you guys Thanks so care. much. Take care, guys. Bye. You too. You too. See you around. I feel like I met Jesus. Um. So that went well. Uh, yeah, that was that like was, the fact that he he when you. We're bringing up that little potato video. I was like, oh God, please don't hate us. Please don't hate us. Please don't hate us. The fact that he loves it, that makes me so happy. Yeah, like, I, that is, that's great. That this was is like the best excellent. possible outcome we could have ever had. I don't, yeah. yeah. It really kind of is. How the fuck are we ever going to top EFAP 100? Like, what? <laughs> you know, we asked ourselves that on EFAP 50, and I, I think we're going to be okay. Oh, no, it wasn't okay. on EFAP 50, though. Huh? Tonal wasn't on EFAP 50, though, you see. Now we're, we're doing... I know. The stakes have been raised. Well, if there's anyone who can raise stakes, it's Tonal. Absolutely. Um, Probably cook stakes, too. That's, even... Yeah, that is, the, that is the reference that I was making. Yeah. Yeah, but you said raise. Yeah, raise the stakes. You, yeah. can, you can raise them in a cooking thing where the heat is at the top and thus cooks them more. Right, Rags? That's what you're gunning for, right? No, is that this the stakes are raised? He's raising the stakes. Like instead of S T A K E S. Are they racist stakes? Hmm. <sighs> you know, it's weird. It's like now what, you know? Um, well, I'm gonna pee. So <laughs> there you go. I'm gonna go and Like that could have, that could have gone a billion ways, and it it was like perfect. I was afraid it would not go 
well just because i was like oh man how much does he know what's he taken from what he does know but man that was like possibly the best conversation i think we've ever had on evap at least from what i've experienced obviously i've only been on like half the episodes if that and yet look we're just actors we don't write efap but holy shit this season like they've really pulled themselves together the the, the efap writers like i I have to go and uh, you know raise their pay like amazing that arc one of the greatest arcs i think i've ever seen in media oh yeah um (laughs) so do you want to just ask me the question you're asking me in dms now because oh well so either there's two different directions we can go here but it really depends on 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 how long we got you for i feel weird talking to you and messaging you (laughs) at the same time um anything you could say to wolf you could say in front of me oh no it's well it's i'm uh, so how long we got you for uh i mean like i said i'm not doing anything tomorrow so Okay. Um. In that case, well, so how far in the stream are we? What am I? What are our? Like three and a half hours in. Three. Yeah. So that means we still got a while before we hit the the cap, which means I might just bring some people in. Uh, um. If if. Oh my god. Is that good? Yeah, I could out, come in, or whatever you want to do. What? No, no, no. I want you to stay. Fucking. Oh. <laughs> um. Assuming you can stay for the length of this stream. So what about when there's two hours left? Uh, we'll do a we'll do just a, you, you you rags and I I think for a little bit. But until then, we'll have uh, we'll have some peeps on I assume. All uh, right. On. Well, I, I ordered food and we will see when it gets here. Excellent. Oh man, I'm doing that right now. I'm gonna I'm getting to the point where I need some munchies. I've been snacking on nuts and Lara bars, so. Yeah, so if I mute myself and then gone for like ten to fifteen minutes, that's that's why. All right, Rags, you got to entertain the audience while I sort out invites. <laughs> it's just you now. Alrighty. Well, I hope chat really enjoyed Tonal's appearance. I think that went shockingly well, almost suspiciously well. <laughs> <laughs> that was fantastic. I'm so glad to have had him on. He seems like a really cool dude. I gotta Absolutely, be honest. Yeah. I was like really scared that it was going to go bad because when uh, it was me and him and fringy or no Mahler was there too uh, one of the th- first things i said is like man we've been trying to get you or hoping you'd be on for like the past two years and he kind of said something like oh i didn't get a message and i was like oh man i hope this isn't going to turn out badly he, Probably. he's super chill very yeah, approach no. he, he's just like he's in his video super approachable Seems like a really nice guy. Oh yeah, way better, way more approachable, and way more down with the, you know, the meme humor that we have here than I ever would have expected from really any guest, not just him in general. Yeah, he's very just kind of normalish, but in a good way, you know. Um, seems like a cool dude, just like he is in his videos, and that's not something that you get a lot of the time. Sometimes people are basically different in their videos and eh, for better or worse oh yeah i like the good honest uh you know i I, I love the fact that he could actually like look at himself and look at his past work say yeah this is not that good and was us just honest about the quality of it and what he wants to do like compare that to like literally anyone else we've ever covered well yeah how often is it that we even people we haven't covered but how often do we see people who just make the same shit for years and they never get better? They never improve. They never try they to learn new things. Often refuse to. Yeah. Like to our faces refuse to. And then he's here like just trying to make the best of it do better himself. That's amazing. Hello. And it's good that he knows, you know, it, it's good to know that our audience <laughs> is good to him and that he really appreciates it. That feels great. It's like we've kind of channeled our you know, the attention towards him in a really awesome way. And that feels great to it, hear. I know? love Absolutely, that he, yeah. like, single-handedly, like, disproved every argument about our audience being, like, harassers and bad people by yeah. saying, by just coming out and saying, like, how nice the audience is. Which, by the way, audience, thank you for being so nice to him. Yes, like, thank you. Th- th- thank you for not being mean and just, just being nice to Tonal. I wasn't at all surprised. They they are a wholesome bunch, honestly. 
And of co do anybody who comes on and says anything even remotely critical about their own work that's been covered by EFAP, you'll instantly get the love of the audience. It won't even be a question. Also, hi, M. How you doing? Hello! <laughs> mm. Sorry, I think I came in at a perfect moment, but I don't know that I'm, uh, I'm capable of, of coming on immediately after Tonal. Yeah, the, yeah well, so we're we're, yeah. we're we're gearing up. We're rolling them wheels back along. That was that was something, you know. That that is a yeah. section of EFAP that I think the fans will will find to be something of a an amazing moment. <laughs> like I can't. I don't know what else to say. Like the that was something. He. I don't know that you could have gotten more preferable reactions and and chats about anything. I don't even know. Oh, that was surreal. We got we it's like even, a dream. Yeah. I were you, I'm guessing you were listening in on that, then, Mr. M. <laughs> I, I mean, I saw sort of a uh, part of it. I, I didn't, you know, um, I didn't get a chance to sit in the whole time, but it was really good to. I heard him say that he saw the uh, EFAP 100 meme. Yes, that, that and, one I was not expecting at all. No, <laughs> first of all, I've seen that too. It was fantastic. It's <laughs> absolutely fantastic. Scary. All good. of the stuff around EFAP 100 has been fantastic. Somebody did uh, uh, some art that I saw on Twitter, and it was just incredible we're actually Absolutely. yeah it's it's about time i we should we check out some art actually the pfp i'm using was from some art although i had to clip it out because it made my profile look like i was staring at rags's ass <laughs> i think <laughs> that the that. art you're using is the one i'm talking about it was just oh we're huge. getting there fantastic i'll uh that'll be next for us we're actually expecting potentially one two more people oh whenever they oh. made a meme um also, hello, Logic. How you doing? You there? Oh, I'm here. Wow, How's hi, it Logic. It's been so hey. long, my good man. How are you? It has been a long. I time. know. I miss you guys. We've been. It's you. been so busy, you know, talking about yeah, things that suck. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, me too. You tired? Oh, that's a good question. You'd think, but not yet. How long have we been doing? I'm this? okay. I'm yeah. doing better than I thought I'd be after. We're. Two, just three. about at the halfway point. You, you're um, keeping your energy up, eating lots of nuts and uh, energy drinks. Yes, I am eating lots of nuts. I you gotta love eat nuts. nuts. Love nuts. Yeah, gotta love get nuts. gotta get lots and lots of nuts in your mouth. Yeah, I've got lots of nuts <laughs> in my system. Um, we got we we're at 15 hours, I guess, I believe. So yeah, not yeah. too bad. We halfway still got another. Point, I'm feeling good. We got nine before we beat. No wait, sorry, 14 before we beat EFAP 50. So not Whoa, quite there. Going there for a <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say. I was like, "Wait a minute, come then." Um, yeah, wow. just, just. Wow. What? What are you saying? I, I, I wish you guys. I wish you guys luck. Anyway, I, I won't be on here for too long, but yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll stick around for a little bit here. But I, I wish you guys luck for your actually managing to not fall asleep. Oh, we'll you I don't think I could be around here for too long. Did you think we were going to allow you to leave? Yeah. What the fuck? You can't leave. <laughs> You're not allowed. You're trapped here with us forever and You're ever. Or yeah, ever. we let Tonal leave because he's God, but you're not <laughs> yeah. God. Also, John, but you are not. You're you're the opposite of God. I mean, <laughs> true. John, how you doing, buddy? Welcome back. Thank you very much. Good to be here. It's the, the for anybody in chat who. Well, it Hello. seems like a lot of people are saying they know they remember you. So hey, there you go. <laughs> I was gonna say, do I need to? It's like it's the Abby, the chief guy, yeah. but no, people's people. The remember. man who needs no introduction. I'm just kidding. That's um, right. The um, a lot of people were really happy with the uh, the cameo. Thank you for uh, setting that up for us. It was really cool. Oh, uh, hey, no problem. You guys did great. That was fucking hilarious. Yeah, I was some... laughing my ass off cutting that voice over work. So <laughs> thank I you very much for that. Voice acting in my spare time. You know, it's no big deal. <laughs> Don't worry it's no about. Big deal. But, uh, you, may, you know, it's you know, it's just you know, part of the business. You know, yeah. I just, uh, <laughs> hate them, uh, you know. didn't even right. ask him for anything. I just uh, just went ahead and did it for the love of the craft. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fringy would, would will. I think I don't know how long Fringy will be, but uh, he'll probably jump in as well. And the the other person, I was like, I, I got this making up Australia stories. Aversion to like... wanting to spoil, but someone else is on the way, and I'm sure you'll be happy. It's such a weird. These ones, like the 50s and the 100s, or whatever. Such a you'll never know what kind of guests you'll end up with. Such a jumble. Like we we got it's all over the place in a good way, of course. Um, of course. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw us. We got a couple of memes and then some artwork, right? So you may not get it, but don't worry. We'll 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 happily explain them. So you got Rags. Batwoman is killing again. <laughs> so Rags has to Batwoman. go and stop it. 
This is, that woman is killing again. Flip the rag signal. I just like the idea that she regularly kills and you have to stop it. <laughs> you have to stop that woman. She's killing every non lesbian in Gotham. <laughs> um. EFAP, EFAP Games The Mocking J, part. Part one of, is that 1.2 bit? People are asking me to get Toad to say 1.2 billion. I was like, why would we? No, we he's not friggy. We don't make him say embarrassing things. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah. It, it was kind of crazy. I didn't think that we'd get him to. That that meme where he was the dragon. I couldn't remember how that meme went, and I just loved that he was fucking loving it. That was great. Some. Um, and the amount of memes at the beginning that would have just been... Imagine reading Rhino Milk and Objectivity, The Long Bad War. You're just like, what the fuck is happening? Like, what? <laughs> oh, yes, of course. I know exactly what this uh, translation means. Um, oh, wait, wait, I shall return. Yes. <laughs> I, I feel like Rags and I are the only ones that will definitely get the memes, but I hope other people do. Told you I don't. I don't think I'll get any of this. Sam to die. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Welcome. Oh, that video. That'll never get old. Jay Longbone, how you doing? Oh, I'm hi, Jay. Doing great. We got What's up, Rex? What a crazy oh, cast we got today. And chatting and trying to stay up. Also, yeah, you and Wolf are gonna have halfy faces, but uh, everyone can see it's okay. It's just how it worked out, I'm afraid. But um. Again, what do we mean about the whole? We're trying to get people in. People rotated. Got to get all these these guests in. Yeah? You guys ever wanted to watch Doctor No? <laughs> <laughs> I can just drop out if you want. I have no idea about the memes. Oh, dude, don't That's worry. Right. Like, the, the, I got no commentary just, here. Just, just laugh. I feel like I feel like I should know. be offering something. Oh, you won't be able to hugely because there there there's not a huge amount, and uh, the I mean, look at this. What do you what do you think this is? Rags, you'll be able to explain it. Let's see. <laughs> it looks like um, someone preparing for a post-birth abortion. I have no idea oh what that goodness. is. I know, I know this meme, Rex. Do you, do you remember what this is? Um. Uh, are you an angel? Is this the... Oh, I do. Fuck off. I do. Yes. I do know what this is. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I understand the context, so that's enough. Yeah, well, we I'm going to increase the size of Peepo for that one. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's at least a five. Uh, that, that, that's a that's a seven on the Peepo meter. Oh, yes. Um, we got a EFAP every time pulls up episode 100. Oh, that's Dragon great. Ball Z. That up, there you go. And nice. holy shit, we had Tonal, Wolf, and Pipeman. N this, that's some... Pipeman told me he couldn't make it. By the way, that was wonderful uh, guest appearance. I'm very happy. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's just so wonderful. Everyone came together. It's, just, it's, it's a beautiful experience, okay? And I don't, I, like I said, we peaked. You know, that's that's what it is. Hopefully, hopefully, the, there's more peaks to come, <laughs> such as this. Do you want to build a snore, man? <laughs> <laughs> it's just endless snore memes. Um, so this is the collection of lesser EFAP memes meeting together. He got the Wall Street Clown, the Noid, my friend Alan, Hot Dogler. Jay's gonna be very upset that got Hot Dogler. Hot <laughs> Dogler. Joe in Honey, Straw Man, Lesbonius, and Jay Himmler. I would say Lesbonius Joe and, and Joe in Honey are the two that could escape this this meme hell, but uh, yeah, the rest do seem to just float around there. You know, meme purgatory. Yeah. The lesser EFAP. It's like they're known enough, but not. Not enough to be really cool, but not enough to fade away. So they're just in this room. Those poor memes. No one, honey, was a good. Joe and honey <laughs> is a really good one. Long man, the art ruiner. That's, That's us. It's going around ruining art. Oh, look, Mel's with me. He's a little sidekick. <laughs> what is he? He's got like a doll. You know, some of these. Wakanda forever. Okay. Oh yeah, Black Panther. J Jar Jar Abrams. There's a lot of detail if you get in there. Yeah. Like the Isle of Man's that, represent. GJ. Yeah, okay. I get it. I get it. <laughs> no, you gotta enjoy a wholesome holiday with your family. <laughs> Christmas go. Peace on <laughs> Earth. Goodwill to men. <laughs> 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 Shit. Who is who who here has not answered that question? Has everyone answered that? Oh, Logic wouldn't have. Hey Logic, what? what's better? Halloween or Christmas? Halloween. 
Yes. Don't wow. What, what did you expect it. me to I, say? Thank fuck. I was Look at me, said. man. <laughs> don't believe it. Uh, uh, Am, have you answered this? I don't think so. Right? I have I answered it multiple times. Oh, I, I spent too much time in the real world that I just. Uh, <laughs> well, firmly in the army of Christmas. Damn it. Some of us have lives. Wow. The Halloweeners, you mean, yeah? Look at those the tears. No, no, yeah, the Halloweenies. All. And, and you see, you have the, on one side you have the Halloweenies, on the other side you have the Christmas Chads of the the of sect having <laughs> the fucking Christmas and, Chris and you just can't handle this. <laughs> the Chris Sims. Yeah. Chris Sim? Oh come on! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we simp for when we can when we can give to our friends and our families there, and there's the holiday cheer, and there's the spirit of Christmas, and the peace yeah. on earth, and the goodwill towards men. Yeah, what he said. Oh, this is a so this is a thumbnail for um, a video we're gonna watch right after we're done with the the Moomaroomies. It's an animated meme apparently from my Last of Us Two playthrough um, by <gasps> Senior. And I think Play Creations worked on it too, so that'll be fun. Oh wow! That's a bait right wow, there. Wow, that's like, awesome. We yeah, to be that's seen. Really, really this is um, thumbnail. this is a wonderful piece of artwork just de describing the the story of Becky and the Dawn. See, like he saw her, fell in love, they're biking together, bikers against child abuse. They seem to go to the orphanage. They, and look at that, they look after a zebra. Do you know of any <laughs> other way to determine someone is of good heart than looking after a zebra? <laughs> kind of awkward, because I was just earlier talking about the um the zebra with its stomach falling out. We don't need to get back into that. Yeah, please don't. Yes. Uh, the Dawn, you know, all about them orphans. Taking care of them. Riding that bike. The fucking... <sighs> Captain Mal ruined it. This is uh, some 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 uh, uh, icon for rags potentially. Some rags on. Oh, there. that's pretty good. I yeah. like that. That's a good one. I like the ears. Good shit. <laughs> I like that's the some ears. Great fan art. <laughs> what the ears are great. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, you hating okay. on the ears, Am? You racist. That's what I thought. <laughs> oh, we got shit. If only Metal were here right now. Silence, chat. I do not wish to be sad anymore. I wish to be happy. He's no longer crying. <laughs> this is going to be Metal's major arc, by the way, when he stops crying. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days. I mean, maybe. I maybe whatever, years from now. Whenever someone new in a call who's not met him before like, needs to identify with like, the crying Pepe. <laughs> this is what it is, the crying, crying human Pepe. Pepe. <laughs> Got us uh, EFAP 100 artwork. Wonderful. Looking quite spiffy, I may say. Are you um? Are you like an award? I think so. It's like a trophy. I would be bronzed. Excellent. You can hit people with me. I just realized you have a keyhole <laughs> on your nose. I do. It unlocks the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> this is me preparing to kill some uh, video essays, I suppose. Or maybe Welcome helping up. helping are rags you, are you one of the, protect uh, people what, from Batwoman. What was his name? I can't remember. Kylo's people what were they called humans oh the knights of first order the knights of ren right <laughs> are those Cal the guys with the red armor or uh... um you know what they might as well be there's no way i'm hooking <laughs> oh. up with the knights of ren <laughs> that is not happening <laughs> <laughs> that's uh uh lesia blackbird who makes awesome artwork um, oh wow that is really good Al. super neat that looks great i like that you get some of the cooler shit man <laughs> <I like laughs> what the ears. I mean, the, it, 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 we've we've mentioned that it, they haven't seen it yet. It'll be in the recording. We don't know what to say to a lot of the artwork. We're just blown away. We're just like, this is incredibly amazing. So thank you so much. Like, yeah. the best, it's the best we got. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I I, I really like that. I think that's the run of the one of the really good ones. But, um, I feel like this one's closer to me oh, actually wow. being a skull with a mask. I don't know. Shocking. Crazy, man. See, without the flesh, the suit doesn't fit as well, but, you know, ultimately, flesh is overrated. That's what I think. Sure, flesh is yeah, for Chris, for Chris Moids. Would say. <laughs> Chris Moids like their flesh. I don't need it. Nice lighting on that one. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, this is one of our EFAP promotional 100 images. One of the posters you would have seen in your, in your cinema, sort of thing. I <laughs> 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 Since uh, you have I, the real enemy decided here, right? Sorry? The enemy is clearly decided for EFAP 100, right? Oh, Bob is 
He's been looming over EFAP since the beginning. He's just excellent. He's you know, and it, it just it knows so naturally fit. You need to see the uh, the episode where we read out his quotes versus quotes from Nazis. It's really hard to tell the difference. I believe that I've heard some. <laughs> Oh, this one Rob. has Wilford in it. Yeah, Rob Wilford is the Thanos of our of our story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got uh, there's, there's a lot of things happening here. We got wet ass P word. Is that Ben Shapiro? <laughs> He's... Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what am I holding up? I've got... Is that cookies? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what is that. It's a flag. It's spaghetti. X yeah, Xmas Dude, is, that, is the best holiday. Yeah. Is that Diabito yeah. in the top right? Because he is thick. I, I'm assuming. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I think yeah, they've even involved Peepo. He has been with us for a lot of this stream in fairness. He's a good, good boy. But yeah. Uh, oh, and we looked at the Rags and, and Mueller one, but they made a wolf one too. That's some plushies. Oh, yay! Oh, these Holy are shit. amazing. These are great. Oh Super my god. Cool. Collection is complete. And, uh, that's wow, really cool. Yeah, that's really yeah. cute. Awesome. And there's the keyhole. Yep. You can you can unlock the secrets with your plushie version too. <laughs> <laughs> what shall oh you find? That, that, that has a much darker connotation to it. <laughs> I <laughs> hope it opens up the face hugger just launches from outside. Oh, wow, that's on. cool too. <laughs> oh, this one's great. Yeah. Man, so. I got some rocking tits. <laughs> <laughs> I got like steam coming out of my eyes. Everyone's I looking so like cool. Christmas came That's early. A bad business deal. Yeah, someone crossed EFAP apparently. <laughs> he said, Everyone's hey, like, bones, excuse Cock, you. J, E, R, Smiler, Nerdrotic, Drinker, Teal Deer, There's Metal, The Pipeman, Pizzaman, Robot Head. They're all the list. Jeremy and we can. These are great. This yeah, is great. so awesome. This is fantastic. And it's kind of Bro, cool. Like, the characters, the people that come on EFAF, so individual, you know? Like, there's, there's nobody gets confused for other people, or like, if it ever it happens, it's just like extremely rare, is what I mean. It's like so many, so many crazy characters, so many zany characters could easily be a TV show. And uh, in a similar vein, I love this one too. Oh wow! I saw oh man, this on they got Twitter. all sorts of people. Really nice. Yeah. Now, if this oh, isn't yeah, wholesome, I don't know what list. is. That's everybody. Yeah, this is a pretty full roster. We got, yeah, like a uh, Sargon and Armored Skeptic are there, and they've only been on once. Um, you got both the dudes with red and blue eyes next to each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a thing. He, he no got your, your eyes right, too. Yeah. I can never remember. Which way did they go? I, can, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume that's so right. Long. I look through the damn things and I still don't know. Well, I mean. Well, can you just check yeah. the avatar? Jay sure. has an <laughs> Isle of Man shirt. He's representing the Isle of Man. That's the important thing. Even Votia's there. The little blue Iron Man. It's like he's trying to get kicked. Mm. This was uh, uh, the poster for the for the meme. I, I believe Omega Ridley made this. Some really good photoshopping. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the bob, dude. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. The chin actually fits with him. Oh, it's glorious. <laughs> Like, oh my god, the, the dark, <laughs> glorious, flowing hair with that uh, mascara. That's oh. a good one. That's one of the. We get a. There, there's a bunch of these, but this one is. Mm. Oh, I love that tonal does the samurai. I think I think CJ is slowly realizing it's like, oh my god, that's movie bob. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the movie bob in particular looks really good on this. Yeah, he looks glorious. Um, and yeah, so for those curious, this meme, we uh, we have reacted to it, and it shall be released after the re-upload of this very stream. So people listening to this on the re-upload, it'll be the day after listening to this. Look at that, future-proofing. Um, 
Oh yeah, and so then there's this one, which I mean, fucking hell. Yeah, this oh, is. Oh wow, one, I haven't seen it's this. Incredible. Absolutely wow. incredible. Um, the I rhinos. Love has glorious angel wings. Words escape me. You have to zoom Can't and just they? look around. It's like, whoa. I can't tell if Goliath <laughs> is the one that destroyed that Star Destroyer, or if we're just barking at it. <laughs> her face and her arms and the bats everywhere. <laughs> Chad's face is so funny. Yeah, it's awesome. We got Spirit Wolf there, and oh, yay. That's great. I love that Fringy's riding the Nor Rhino. <laughs> yeah. <Nor. laughs> the Don has got the big old wings. This is so good. Oh my god, this is so good. This is what I was saying. Dude. Absolutely incredible, man. You see, so, if this was that that <laughs> scene from Tross, this might have actually redeemed it. Yeah, we hey, we'll fixed it. The file name on this one is just Tilt the Ship. <laughs> <laughs> who was what's the name of the guy who uh, who sent this one? Yeah, oh, it was um the person who made it doesn't do social media. It was um oh, Okay. Their... It was I got their, you. their boyfriend who sent it. Because um, sometimes I like to put artist names before the ones that I save, just to make sure, but I'll yeah, just yeah. tilt the ship. Um, Peepo is so rude in the corner there, hold, covering his eyes. Yeah. We're putting dot .png at the end of this one. You bet your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that good. Goliath is probably biting that Star Destroyer down. That is awesome. That is so good. Oh, I didn't even think of him doing that. He's he was so big, him. I mistook him for like a cloud or a force of nature. <laughs> I thought that he, I thought that he was like barking out a laser that blew up the Star Destroyer. Metal may be crying, but he's crying for victory. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, that. Uh, what what can you say? You know, just incredible shit, guys. Uh. Thank you so much. This Stupid is way. why. This is why all the people of Pafe hate us. We people just stole all the good artists on YouTube. <laughs> Captured them. They're not allowed to leave. This is all well and good, but where's the Rule Thirty Four on you guys? Oh no. <laughs> um, Are you sure? I think there's. I come think on there's now. Some. Uh, I think there's some. <laughs> There, 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 is, uh, there, there is rule 34 of me and rags that predates efap unfortunately how far back it goes <laughs> timeless love um all right so uh yeah the 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 video i was mentioning uh i've been told it's copyright free so we should be all right is everybody oh well i'll just uh, repost this a sec everyone jump into the watch together so <laughs> Um, oh, just a second. Um, apparently, uh, we're here. I'll let you know. Um, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, this will, I doubt, contain Last of Us 2 spoilers, though if you are 100% uh, against that possibility, then um, turn away, I suppose. <laughs> but it's, 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 a, it's like a minute meme video, so you should be right. Uh, is everybody ready to go? Actually, I'll just I'll pull it up and see if... Can you see this? Yeah, yeah it's working. Yeah. Yep. Alrighty. Okay, yeah, so I haven't actually seen this yet as well. So. And I love that Domino's converted my 20 ounce of pop into a 2 liter of pop. Yay! <laughs> Just like they converted my marinara pasta into a Alfredo pasta. Truly, the Domino's. Pasta from where? From Domino's? Yeah. Any good? No, right. it, it's not what I wanted, so it's already not good. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> like they didn't get a single thing in my order correct. This stream brought to you by Domino's. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> of all things to be sponsored by, not bad. Right? I, I would argue otherwise. All Get right, here we, uh, here we go. So this is by, by Cine. Uh, is this a meme? Yes. Meme meme. Cool. Where's Abby? I'm fucking dead anyway. Why would I tell you anything? Because I can make it quick. Or I can make it so much worse. Yeah, that's kind of the deal. It's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know I am not afraid to use them. 
Oh, can, can we go back? I was laughing. I was going to say, this is going to take repeat viewings. This is funny shit. I didn't, I, I didn't expect for you to pop out of the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Just all nonchalant. Yep, yep, that's what <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of the deal. It's up to you. <laughs> I got a Molotov. I am not afraid of using it. <laughs> how many people are dead because of him? Yeah, how many dead people because of you? Last chance. I'm not giving up, my friend. All right, Molotov time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, wait, Ellie, now you gotta ask her again. You hit her once, now you gotta be like... This is some real <laughs> smooth <laughs> anime. <laughs> right? Well done. No, 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 you're gonna kill it. <laughs> Ellie. <laughs> Ellie, you're gonna kill it. <laughs> <laughs> that is insane! I what incredible talent there. Yeah. The animation is wow. fantastic, yeah. Very impressive. I like how on board I am with the killing until I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> but not yet, not yet. I got a question yeah. by the coloring book there. That needs to be a whole series. Is Mahler playing the Grim Reaper? <laughs> he picks up, he picks up one of the dead. He's just like, yeah, hey, you know, he's critiquing people on how to kill him. <laughs> that um, yes, yeah, so you got uh, that's from Sinius. Last of Us Two parody. Ellie and Mole interrogate Nora. Um. Play Creations and Manga Writer, or Manga Writer, uh, I believe had a hand in it. I'm not entirely sure what, what, what happened uh, with, with who, but that was fucking great. Thank you so you, much for making that, that was awesome. The amount of time that must have had to go into just animating the finger movements. <laughs> yeah, I kinda, I'm gonna play it right? again, cause that shit's funny. But also, uh, cine has got a coloring book, if you guys wanna check it out. Um, I have I, all kinds of monster girl coloring books, so just saying, there's gonna be something in there for everybody. Just saying. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna roll it back because uh, I find it amusing. Okay. <laughs> Fucking Jeremy, why would I tell you anything? Because I can make it quick, or I can make it so much worse. Yeah, that's kind of the deal. It's up to you. <laughs> I got a Molotov. I really I'm not enjoy it. Using. <laughs> About what he did. How many people are dead because of him? Yeah, how many dead people because of you? Last chance. I'm not giving up, my friend. All right, Molotov time. <laughs> okay, wait, Ellie. Now you gotta ask her again. You hit her once. Now you gotta be like, no, <laughs> no, no, no. You're gonna kill her, Ellie. <laughs> Ellie, you're gonna kill it. It's so good! <laughs> I love that you tell her... I love that you say, Ellie, you're gonna kill her after she's already said it. <laughs> <Yes>. Excellent. <coughs> Very good. I'm dying. <laughs> <clears throat> Excellent. Okay. Uh... Fucking this community, man. Nothing but good shit. Thank you very much. So good. <laughs> Everything you guys get is so good. Crazy. That is. We hold a patent on all good things. Yes. <laughs> no one else is allowed good things. <laughs> um. So, we did Ben Shapiro. Um. So that's off the table. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out with our current roster, like what what's the best thing to do. It's very difficult to figure out. Here. Could be, could be. What is does Star Wars work for this selection? Seems it's kind of like it's like fifty fifty here, isn't it? Hmm. Something. Do you all like? Have you all seen Lord of the Rings? <laughs> Yes. yes. I've never heard of it. Yeah, yeah, I, what is that? I watched all of them not too long ago, yeah. <gasps> How, J. Longbone, Lord of the Rings, go. Uh... Oh, no. <laughs> I, like, I have a vague, res vague re remembrance of it uh, when mm -hmm. it first came out, and that's it. 
Um, back when they came out in theaters, I wasn't really, I wasn't too into them for some reason. But uh, recently, my friend was just like, dude, you got to watch like the extent, not just the theatrical, but the extended ones. They're so fucking good. And then I did. And by the time the first one was finished, I was like, put on the next one, even though it was like one in the morning. I was just, I was hooked at that point. I had to finish they, them all. They really it's awesome. very good. Very good movies. Yeah. Um, there were dragons and the and a man with a pointy hat on a dragon. <laughs> yeah. How about Six Reasons Lord of the Rings is Racist from Cracked? Oh, oh yes. right on. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I it'll... consider myself an expert in racism. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well, we've already got our SME. Let's go. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Okay. Does anyone, anyone know anything about Cracked? I feel I feel out of the loop on this one. They're like a... Uh, it's a web, it used to be a magazine, and then they turned themselves into a website. Then they got involved with that Facebook money, and they started moving everything over to Facebook, and now I don't think they exist anymore. I actually used to read Cracked, so... Yeah, I like Cracked, too. Yeah. Or did like, you say crack? I like crack. 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 Cracked was a mad ED. ripoff. Yeah. It sucks. Oh, and uh, Cindy wanted yeah, to say it that, was. Um, That's true. That That's animation garbage. took uh, two weeks. I, with... I just refused to read it on principle. Uh, that animation. Give took me. Two... I, I need my Alfred E. Newman fix. That, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> that, that yeah. animation took uh, two weeks to make with plague uh, coloring the frames and no sleep. I almost died. It's like well. I'm not going to say it was wow. worth you almost dying, but holy shit, was it awesome. Super good. Super, super good. Loved it. Yes. All right, here goes. I think I've seen this video before, too. I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah, I have. I remember these two retards. Is there like a triangle of predator dots on my forehead or what's... You look like you want to talk about Lord of the Rings. What about me right now sitting here doing work tells you that Isn't I want that to talk about the guy with the channel? He made yeah. that video about um, how cancel culture isn't real. What? What is the argument for that? <laughs> oh God. Um, yeah, no because, shit. Oh, because celebrities aren't fully canceled. What? that means but cancel culture isn't real but like he fails to realize that cancel culture is a culture in which people think it's it's necessary to cancel people over bullshit it's a culture it's not well, about how it's carried out he's a fucking idiot. also the idea that like hey they're not dying in a gutter without any possible works <laughs> like yeah i mean okay <laughs> i guess they didn't get they that they're beating him with a bat i was like well, he's not dead yeah, I made this. I made this comparison. Of like people think rape culture is a thing in America, at least. And I was like, okay, so if all women in the world aren't raped, that means we're not in a rape culture, right? Is that? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, if, we're going to use that logic. Which I don't think they would want to use. They'd be like, ah, oh, no, 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 no. It's a different one. Different rules. <laughs> You're wearing a shirt. Everyone wears shirts. Pretty sure he doesn't. I can, at least according to all the fan art I'm familiar with. You ever notice how these movies are all about religion? Yes, I do know that Tolkien and C.S. Lewis were devout Christians who put. Did you say Tolkien? <laughs> Tolkien. <laughs> he is very familiar with the source material I see. First off, it's Tolkien. Second, they were Catholic. Third, it Catholic uh, is Lord, a Christian. Yeah, it's, but it's like that. You know, there's a dis enough of a distinction that Catholics feel the need to make that distinction. Um, it's like St. Baptist Cirque. I, I'm not going to disagree with you, I'm just saying. Um, and three, uh, Lord of the Rings does have Christian, um, or, uh, yeah, that Christian influence, but it is not based off of Christianity, or at least it's not about Christianity, unlike Narnia, which is a literal allegory for it. Who's Aslan? Is he Jesus? Oh, which biblical figure is Mr. Tumnus? <sighs> I don't fucking care. Uh, the the great three headed hydra is that yeah that's the bible right well they they have to go into uh they have to hide in a closet was they have no a wardrobe oh if it's a wardrobe it doesn't the joke doesn't work. damn it <laughs> excellent but it's thinly veiled christian themes in all of their works speaking of i would love to get back to that thing work what work you're sitting over there drawing penises on hot dogs i 
didn't think you could see that. Wow, there. that's so anyway, funny. Just... That's hilarious. Seems so hot. Those... Growing penises cringy. on hot dogs. That seems. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, not, I'm trying to picture like you get in hot dog pictures from like Google and just drawing. What are you doing? Buns he's ever gonna see. Weird. <laughs> Just rehashing. I'm talking about how Lord of the Rings deliberately and willfully takes a big old hobbit poop on every major religion except Christianity. Oh, you know hobbit poop is so stinky. It does? Not even true, but okay. Um, I, I guess uh, we'll have to <laughs> see what they say. That's a weird one. All right. I'd, I'd be yeah. shocked Everybody's how you'd find Hinduism, Buddhism. I don't even know how you'd fit Islam in there unless you're going to say, oh, black people are Muslims, even though that's not a thing. It's hey, we saw true. we saw the one black Gondorian in Return of the King. Okay, who was there? This the is like the, the worst reason. humor I've ever heard. Since one of the major religions <laughs> in the world, right? First, you got the hobbits. They're clearly pagan earth worshippers. There, no, they're earth not. <laughs> are you talking okay, about? they're clearly pagan earth worshippers. Let me stop you there. <laughs> no, carry on. <laughs> where, where, where did you even get this? <laughs> they're pagan because they live in holes in the ground you know like pagan earth worshippers <laughs> they who live in holes pagans in the live under the ground right <laughs> they, they yeah, worship they, their houses is what you're saying during halloween <laughs> i mean that's how they do it <laughs> you're looking at me like some <laughs> weird <laughs> for just letting you know that pagans sprout from the ground on halloween it's not about <laughs> like where you came correct. from it's about who you are <laughs> The earth. Oh. <laughs> Endless housing and smoke weed every day. The finest weed in the south. I didn't I realize that yes. smoking weed was pagan. I like how they put that clip in there. Like, did you know that they smoke weed in the film? I need you to see this clip. Otherwise. It's also not literal weed. But no, of course. No. <laughs> That's what I mean. No, they, they talk about pipe weed. Pipe weed. Fucking crazy smokers, dude. Pipe Attack on that religion, though. It's basically a utopia. I'm pretty sure Token would love to live in one of those igloos. Token, stop it. Please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. Token, this it. is his Token oh. misplacement. Yeah, Token, get it? Because they smoke weed? Token? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey! Learn how to read. Spot oh, the connection, weed. nice. You're it's tol it's Tolkien, right? You pronounce the I? To Tolkien. Tolkien. No, that's the verb. Okay. When you're writing a book, you're Tolkien. <laughs> and smoke weed every day. Sure, but the movies constantly remind us the importance of having a strong will. And the hobbits, as nice as they are, they just don't really have that. The only reason Frodo. What are you well, talking about? What? The, what? the most, most resilient to the ring don't have strong wills? How, how could you watch the film, see what Sam does, and go, eh, he doesn't have a strong will? <laughs> hey, Sam's just really a piece of shit when you get down to it. Interesting take. Just because you <sighs> want to chill in your little. Little Hobbiton with you with your weed and your in your beers doesn't mean you don't have a strong will. Like well that I mean they're super stubborn about staying too. Yeah, they're like fucking leave us alone. <laughs> yeah, like thing. you know, like those pagans. <laughs> those Fuck. stubborn weed smoking pagan face. Frodo is all the way to Mordor with the ring is because Sam is there to pick up his slack, and neither of them would have left the Shire in the first place if Gandalf hadn't have made them. If Wait, whoa. No, he doesn't force them to. They totally. I mean, you could maybe argue for Sam. Frodo but like, volunteers. Frodo accepts, yeah. Even at, when they get to Rivendell, like he's kind of you know. Going from Rivendell, yeah, yeah they all uh, volunteer. Gandalf down with the sickness. Gandalf does not make them leave the Shire. There's only two choices: run away to safety, or stay and die. That's not much of a choice. Gandalf just put them in the right direction to hopefully not die. Dude, Gandalf forcing mm -hmm. shit, man. Ugh. We're not. There's even... a war. Well, well, I guess this is going by quickly because they're too stupid to actually make arguments. They just <laughs> say shit and hope that you agree with it because they're little. Well, they're doing the thing. It's like if we get super broad and pick random pieces out, we can make it make it look like something else. You're like, fucking mm. pagan earth worshippers, and he just doesn't even begin <laughs> to qualify it. Or it's kind of understood that the Hobbiton would be annihilated. I mean, they're a naive, innocent people whose beliefs are nice and all, but they're not the chosen people. Frodo gets to go to heaven in the what end. What are you talking about? They're not the chosen people? What? Does he mean like they're not elves in that sense? Or like... I guess so. What does he mean? These the guys age of the hobbits is upon us. 
This is a weird one. Exception to the rule. Mm -hmm. Through good works, he regains his divinity. This is starting to sound a lot like church. And Through good works, he church, regains people, his divinity. The band? No, not the. Is that that's a yeah, thing for Frodo? Can, Through can good works, he regains. Because I want to hear what he said. I couldn't hear that. And all, but they're not the chosen people. Frodo gets to go to heaven in the end, but that's the exception to the rule. Through good works, he regains his divinity. No, well, that's not way. that's not why he goes to the Undying Lands. He goes there because he was a ring bearer. It's a yeah. Through his head. good works, there you go. Totally, there you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, that's you, you sort of. Still, but... It's not. It's not quite the same thing as heaven in the in the Christian sense. It's. I mean, I so wait, that, does, that part fits in with the Catholicism. Does that they're... qualify Sam as a ring bearer? Then what? What does it mean to qualify? Oh, yeah. Well, Sam does go. He as a ring bearer, he does eventually go over there too. Um, but it, it, the implication, or the, at least what I'm reading from what he's saying, is that the implication is that pretty much no one except for Frodo is going to go to the undying lands as though it was like exclusionary heaven or whatever the hell but it, it doesn't work the same way i'm not exactly well read on this because i haven't finished the silmarillion and i only read like the first 50 pages and then stopped well um there's probably someone who knows more than me but i know it's not the same uh well, according to chat frodo which he way. got his finger cut off and he can't play the guitar again oh. <laughs> 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 a lot like church and speaking of the chosen people what about the dwarves the band no not the why would i suddenly be talking no the dwarves and lord of the rings they're like anti-semitic caricature of the jewish people what are you talking <laughs> about <What? laughs> all right so oh, my dude my... i'm gonna i'm gonna lay this on really thick for you if you look at a dwarf and you think jew <laughs> i don't think that the issue <laughs> is with the dwarves per se yeah, I think no you might kidding. have some deep-seated Semitic <laughs> attitude that you need to work out with yourself. <laughs> it's a bit this of a projected top leap, top for sure. Yeah, so top the top dwarves top. are the chosen people? Um, so I'm the, actually shocked. The elves are going to be the chosen people, right? I'm assuming. Uh, I assume so. so. The dwarves are the Jew, right? That's... <laughs> Of course, because they covet gold and shit, right? That's gonna be okay. Short, hairy, gold-loving, giant noses yep, with legs there you who go. chase out their sacred oh homeland God. because their avarice made them dig too deep. They're like little Nazi flashcards, at least the ones that managed to survive the what? mass extra. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I gotta, I'm gonna share with you a, a little, little story. So, uh, I don't remember if it was exactly someone in the Nazi party or the Nazi party specifically. I might be misremembering it a little bit, but someone affiliated with Nazis sent Tolkien a letter saying like, Hey, will you support us in our hatred of Jews? And uh, Tolkien wrote them a letter saying, you know, fuck yourself. He was not anti-Semitic and he would not have made this as a caricature. But You're they like gold and have big noses. It's clear. And it's clear that he's reading into that, so clearly I think the stereotype is on this guy. No joke. Like, oh my god, is he gonna say orcs are black people? Please? Oh my god. I bet he does! <laughs> Holy shit, I bet he does! We got Place it. your bets, everybody! Place your bets! We do have- it's, apparently it's racist. So. Yeah, I'm going right on that. I'm saying- Crack thinks say dwarves are orcs. Jews. Who knows what they think orcs are? Extermination of dwarves. That happened. Sound familiar? You're grasping a little bit. Oh, am I? A little bit. They weren't yeah. exterminated. Oh my god, it was, no, it makes sense. It was done by the Balrog, which is super fiery, just like the ovens at Auschwitz. <gasps> <laughs> he's like so, a big walking Allegedly. Oven. He's trying to say that, like, the dwarves were almost exterminated. The, the dwarves were not relegated to this one mountain. Yes, they were. <laughs> yeah, because they were all in Israel. <laughs> This is a stupid question, but I just want to be clear. This this isn't a satirical position they're taking, right? This I don't is know. I don't it, no, no, this is absolutely I, not. I don't know what to make of it, because it seems like it would be like The Onion, where whatever their headline is or whatever the name of a video is, you're meant to interpret it the opposite way. But like, no, are when they're actually they, making this argument? that They're, they're actually crazy? making their, yes, 100%. When they started doing these videos, they were very serious. Um, this is actually an argument they're making a hundred percent fucking hell dude 
Okay. <laughs> Great. The dwarvish language that Tolkien made up is based on an ancient Jewish tongue. It's a direct quote from Tolkien. I do think of the dwarves like Jews. Why do you keep I would, saying token? I would love to see the context of that statement that I do yeah, not trust. The, the thing is, is like there's a whole bunch of quotes that people always take out of context, like wildly out of context. Yeah, I don't what's the question it. that led to him answering it and saying it like this, you know? Was there's it all, included oh, in the rundown there? Dude. Oh, we can't see shit. Cool. Yeah, we can't uh, we can't see the question, we can't see the rest language of the that Tolkien answer. Made up is based on an ancient Jewish tongue is a direct quote from Tolkien. Okay, hold on. Just basing it off of another language does not mean shit. Because a lot of The Lord of the Rings was also based on Norse mythology. Like, almost all of the names for shit he pulled directly from Norse mythology and Beowulf. At once native and alien in their habitation, speaking the languages of the country but with an accent due to their private tongue. So, he's not saying it in reference to anything other than they are native and alien in their habitations, speaking the languages of the country, but with an accent due to their own private tongue. That's all he means you in reference take, to? You could take that whole sentence and switch Jews for Amish, and it would still be 100% accurate. There's a good and chance that, that he would agree with that. Yeah. Well, this is what I mean. If you just take that part out, then you can make it be about anything. Yeah, this doesn't... <sighs> I don't see how this is different from taking any aspect of any culture and using that in some way for a fantasy world, which is done mention, like, all the time. Even if we go strictly by what they're saying, like, sure, let's assume that the dwarves are allegorical for Jews directly. The dwarves are portrayed as the good guys in both The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, so what exactly is your point? Racism. I'd love to know what they think of the goblins in Harry Potter. Oh yeah, there's this the thing that happened oh, recently Peruvians. about um, Alien and Predator being racist. Oh, uh, yeah, I did see that. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> the, aliens, the aliens represent uh, black women. Yeah, right. they're, they're <laughs> pregnant in the world, yes. <laughs> um, somebody, somebody in chat said, um, Tolkien stated he wanted the dwarves to have a rich history and culture ingrained with them, hence he picked the Jews. Not that they were physically based off of them, etc. Who like that gold? No, they like gold. That's it. Yeah. They like gold. I mean, I love gold, but I'm not a Jew. That's a reference so. to gold member. I call that gold member. I love gold. I love. <laughs> I do think of the dwarves like Jews. End of quote. Full context. Okay. Oh, so, okay, I'm, so they are fucking around. No. They must be fucking around. <laughs> they're not. I'm telling you, they're not. I remember watching and reading these things years ago. Um, they are not fucking around. Sounds like they want to straddle the line between we totally mean it and we totally don't. Like plausible deniability on both ends. Yeah. Like I say stupid shit in a funny voice. Not you. <laughs> Although I would say it is risky for a publication like them to be anti woke. I don't know. Yeah. Because there's obviously there's a money to be made right now in like turning woke and then, you know, a set, just one satirical website now becomes this site where the headlines they published are in complete earnest. This is hard to believe for me, but uh, I don't know. Yeah. That, um, it seems to be on the line. I don't, really don't know what to make of it one way or the other. But like the fact that he just said full context when you could pause to see it wasn't, don't you think? That just uh, makes mm. him a liar. It doesn't make it doesn't mean he's trying to be satirical mm. or, or, or doing parody. It just makes him a liar. Yeah. I concede you have some sort of point there, but like what about Muslims and Hindus? Two of the biggest religions on the planet, and I don't recall seeing the Easter eggs. That's a made up word. You made that mm, word the up. The Easterlings, the dark skin, they ride the giant elephants, they look like evil dervishes. Oh, yeah. They don't look like evil. Racist police sketch of anyone living in the middle. You think they look evil? What is that? They what are you saying there? They just look like <laughs> soldiers. Yeah, see, this guy's injecting a whole lot of his own personal biases into this. Like, I, like look at, there's even a scene in uh, The Two Towers where they first meet Faramir where he looks at one of the guys he's killed with an arrow and he's like, man. It's a shame that war brought this guy so far from home just so he could die here. Like, that's really shitty. I wish that didn't happen, that yeah. thing. But, mm. uh, okay. All right. 
Middle East or India. They are technologically advanced, but they're in cahoots with the wrong god, so they can't be trusted. Okay, but no, like, racist white Christian thinks that Muslims have all the technology. The stereotypical evil Muslim has, like, a long beard and lives in a cave. <sighs> Maybe it's dwarves again. Tolkien was a student of medieval history and literature. And if Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves taught me anything, it did. it's the Muslims during the Crusades had things like math and telescopes that just confounded all the white people. Is he oh, literally... That's not a real... But that movie's wrong. Wow. We, we, okay, now I do believe this this video is trying to make it like a definitive point now. This is such a weird yeah, no, video. Seriously, they're taking it serious. They were like some of the early woke publications. The Weird exchange shit, between those two guys is really awkward because it's written, it's like pre-written, like as a script to sound conversational, mm -hmm. in which case, I don't know why they don't just sit down and like not write anything, just ha have an actual conversation and record it. But it's like they wrote this out first as if this was supposed to be funny to watch. I don't really. All of their videos were like this. All of oh my relax. God. Good Lord. Well, Tolkien's version of Muslims have a bunch of real. People are saying Shad is triggered. Is Shad in chat? <laughs> uh, yeah. um, th not to mention, he keeps saying that these guys are Muslims. Where where does it say? Well, in they the look movie? evil. Didn't you hear him? They look oh, evil. Oh, wait, so they're brown and they look evil. Therefore, they're Muslims. <laughs> yes. oh, I wonder if that says something about you, not about the film slash books. Oh, Shad is I there. Think... Um, the problem is we're already stacked and this... I'll just I'll jump just... out. No, 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 this is... You got nothing as... to say anyway. No, this is, much... this is like four of the people. I don't even know what Lord of the Rings is. Who the fuck is Jer Tolkien? No, shut up. <laughs> don't you try it. <laughs> I see you trying to escape. There's, there's seriously a lot of people that are still waiting to come in and stuff, so like I want to make sure we get we get a decent chunk of as many people as we can. Um, but don't worry, Shad. This video is awful. <laughs> <laughs> awesome uh, shit, but their souls are still corrupted. Who are the Christians then? Humans? No. Wrong. The humans are atheists or agnostics. Basically, all the people that stop going to church. Because when they should- <laughs> All the people that stop going they to stop church. going to church. <laughs> Why? It doesn't save you any time to just say they just don't believe in God. Does they stop going to church? Well, that includes theists. What a strange way to describe them. Yeah. Like, and Please show supporting evidence. Oh, uh, wait. Look, look, this is Aragorn opening doors. Isn't that enough for you? Just like <laughs> atheists open doors. I, I wonder if perhaps <laughs> religion wasn't the main part of the Lies. story, either the Bad. book or the movies, and therefore it was not relevant to the current plot. And maybe you're reaching <laughs> across the planet. Mm hmm Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't like this video. No. No. I'm not convinced. I guess I don't hate it as much as I hated Cinema Virgin's video, but... Oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> I imagine all of EFAB is curious to <laughs> hear your thoughts on that video. I don't know. Should I do that now, or should we wait until the video's done? I don't... I assume I now the, the mere idea of you giving your thoughts on cinematic... Uh, Venom's uh, video. Cinema but, Virgin. <laughs> <they'll>, um, <laughs> I clearly <laughs> fucked the dude at the end, so that can't be true. Yeah, you you, you missed the gay sex? Like, what the fuck? He, he simulated it. He was not into it. You could tell. So, what did you think of that video, Wolf? Tell the people. Okay, so, I know that I am seen as the most facetious of probably anyone that has been on this show, much less, uh, Hosted. Really? Um, yeah, you know, people. I people think I think consider myself a little facetious. Yeah, people think I'm pretty hyperbolic and all that shit. God's um, different. <laughs> shut the fuck up, Rags. I'm not dealing with your shit tonight. So, um, yeah, you know, there's a. Uh, I'm maybe a little bit hyperbolic on some things, but I gotta say, of literally every YouTuber I have ever seen in the decade plus that i've been using this website mm -hmm. i have never seen anyone worse than cinema virgin i would consider wow. the, worst, the worst the worst by far i mean it I, was pretty bad i will give you wow he, he, I, I would so i'm going to quantify this and or qualify this rather in such a way that is indisputable 
First being that he didn't get a single fucking thing right in that entire hour and a half of worthless garbage ass video. He literally stretched so far that he couldn't even manage to pluck a point that made any level of sense. Not even like the it, it, it's insane to me that he managed to make that video without even addressing the points that most people make that are still almost universally incorrect. I don't know. Like. You, first off, drop the whole attempt at being Doug Walker because aside from him not being a good YouTuber and never having been a good YouTuber, it's not someone you want to look up to. You're also not funny in any respect or intelligent for that matter. Couple that with your inability to make a single cogent point with any supporting evidence and your willingness to accuse the entire EFAP audience of insulting your family that doesn't exist. And Wait, what? Uh, he in, he uh, said that the EFAP audience was attacking his family. Oh, yeah, I don't like, believe that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't believe that yeah. for a fucking second. Well, I don't believe it because I don't believe he has a family in the first place. <laughs> What, you think he paid for that house on his own? <laughs> well, you know, it's all up to your subjective interpretation, of course. Um, the fact that you act like a little bitch when people insult you, when you insulted people it, like every five minutes of your video, goes to show what a spineless loser you are, and a complete tool. You need to get some talent before deciding to make YouTube videos or anything else for the rest of your life and you need to shave off that disgusting hair please, <laughs> please. <laughs> I, okay I, this is a psa to anyone who has thinning hair or receding hairline as someone who had both and then shaved it before it ever got bad so you will save yourself so much self-respect if you just shave the damn thing off rather than pretending like it's ever going to get better it's really embarrassing when you keep it there and perhaps hide it under a beanie or <laughs> don't hide it at all or proudly present it while you are simulating gay sex with your weird pseudo boyfriend, whoever that dude was. <laughs> oh, that was a weird... It's an odd one. So please just shave it off. You might... I mean, you're not going to gain any intelligence from it, unfortunately. I think you yeah. need to go back into the public school system or any school system for that matter to gain that. But yeah, I guess I could rip into you, but I'm just too tired to do that. That's not ripping into it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was, that was very reserved. <laughs> you, you sound like my wife when she talks to our cat. The thing is, I, I, I would have had to have been in that call because I'm probably forgetting so much shit that was in that episode that, for the most part, the guys broke down pretty well, aside from forgetting a few things they could have brought up and their insult game wasn't half as good as mine would have been. <laughs> if I was there. Not to disparage you, but man, I would have made this person cry and then complain about his <laughs> manic depression. That's another thing. Um, don't tell people you have manic depression as a get out of jail free card, aside from it being just pathetic on a level that not even a child would go to because they wouldn't know what manic depression is in the first place. It's just really sad that you would use that after insulting people consistently. You can stop your pissy little snipes on Twitter acting like a five year old pretending like you have any say with your audience of four people who actually give a shit about your god awful content. If you decide to delete comments that are literally just constructive criticism and pretending like people are attacking your non existent family, you make it a little difficult to sympathize with you. Kind of like it's a little si difficult to sympathize with a guy who pretends like it is uh, body harassment to ask why he's wearing a jacket indoors. Well, there we are. Uh, All right, there you it, have it. This is the thing. I react to that last part. If memory serves, did he actually make a point, like a good point, Rags? Do you remember? The I'm, one. I'm trying to think if there was a point that he made that was legitimate, or at least could be 
like understandable, like wrong, but still, you know, like you, like you understand why a lay person would be like, oh yeah, it's a problem that they didn't ride the Eagles to Mordor. And then you just explain it to them and they go, oh. So I'm I don't trying think, to think explaining of, anything to them would work. I don't Aside think so from either. Aside from screeching in a tree about how much he's very disturbed by the gays. You know, um, I, don't, I don't think there's any way we can really... The gays are pretty spooky, come on. I love I love how he's like, guys, I'm totally not homophobic. I just really don't like the gays for some strange reason. I would like it if they were openly gay, but because they're not, because they're literally not gay, that I don't... He doesn't make sense. Oh, that's another thing. There were so many things in that video that didn't make <laughs> sense. I love how he um, tried to, quote-unquote, call out Peter Jackson for... Um, not including like the most irrelevant character in the entire book series that absolutely no one in their right mind like actually cares that he wasn't there. He didn't even Tom call Bombadil. out. No, not Tom Bombadil. Like not even a character who I even remembered the point of being in the book. Like it would make sense if he said Tom Bombadil. The problem is that he's too stupid to make sense. So he who didn't did he reference. Say? I don't know. I genuinely don't remember <laughs> who it was. It's like I I can think of like. The two people that led Pippin through uh, Minas Tirith in the books, they weren't in the movie. I didn't think it was a big deal, but I can understand why people would be a little disappointed in that. And then he didn't even reference uh, Tom Bombadil. He referenced some other guy. I don't even rem remember who it was. Not Hal, dear chat. He... Um, someone, um, someone said Horn Guy. No, Hal, dear. Erkenbrand. I think it started with an H, but I can't remember. I'd have to go back and rewatch the video. Uh, but yeah, it was really strange that he would make that argument when like 20 minutes earlier, he was like, I didn't like the books. I didn't think they were supposed to be in there anyway. He sounded like Bernie Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> there are some who call a dwarf. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Also, fix the hole in your wall. Did you Jared. like that his favorite that. characters were Lurtz, the Rig Wraiths, <laughs> and Grima Wimtung? They were his three oh favorites. Oh my god, dude. Ugh, fucking Harry Potter. I, you know, I don't have that much against Harry Potter, but after watching that, um, that video, I now hate Harry Potter and everything and anyone associated with it. Yeah, I can't say I'm the biggest fan of Harry Potter after that. Yeah, it's like I didn't even really have anything that much against it. Now it I weird. do. He, just kept, he kept appealing to Harry Potter. It was really weird. It's the only it movie you've ever seen. At least Harry Potter means something. <laughs> do you, are you talking about the franchise broadly or just the books or the movies? Oh, it's just that he kept bringing them up Wait. as like a counterpoint to Lord of the Rings. Like, hey, this is what Lord of the Rings does. Look at how Harry Potter does it better. It was like, what? Wait, what? Stop. What did Sorry, right? Yeah. Do anything better than Lord of the Rings? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, I be, I, I don't even know what you would compliment Harry Potter over Lord. Of the Rings. It's like he he was like Harry is a better character than Frodo. And it's like, why are we doing this? Why is it? Why is this? <laughs> oh my God! And the Gimli wanted Frodo dead. You have like the no, I'm not reading comprehension the perception skills of a fucking dead goldfish I don't know how you managed to listen to that quote more than once unless you didn't watch the movies which is probably the case and ever come away with the idea that Gimli wanted Frodo dead and that he listed that as a criticism it didn't even call out why that would be a inconsistent part of the character it's an odd one he didn't even justify his wrong opinion on anything well i he tried to justify the um the the gimli thing he went through the quote and the scenes like and he a, got it totally I wrong but he tried it's one That's of my favorite shocking. things ever it wasn't a casual thought it was no i checked gimli wants them dead <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> double check to make sure uh, calling bilbo dildo it's hilarious though it is so funny though oh wow it's it's so it's so creative he he replaced the bees with d's probably <sighs> some truly, truly like galaxy brain jokes there 
I'm pretty sure I would have died of a violent aneurysm in the middle of streaming if I was with you guys. So it's probably <laughs> good that I wasn't there. Excellent. Yeah, I know those are some very scrambled thoughts. I thought of actually writing something out, but then I was like, no, I probably shouldn't do that because that would just be like getting back into like the reason why I left YouTube in the first place. So yeah, your video was awful. You're awful. Your attempts at sniping at Mahler repeatedly because you're too much of a sour little pussy to come on the show and debate your terrible opinions go to show what a insignificant weasel of a human being you are. And I'm only glad that no one cares enough about your shitty YouTube channel to actually give a shit about this failure of a feud you're trying to start based on your awful video. You went after Lord of the Rings. Wolf doesn't like when you do it. <laughs> I don't like, yeah, I don't like you as a person. And I'd like to confirm that this was you taking it easy on him? Yes. This, this, this is me, like, not, not giving enough of a shit to really <laughs> collect all of my thoughts. I had an Alfredo pasta when I asked for a marinara. Marinara pasta! <laughs> I, no, I, have eight, I, have eight, I have I have a two liter of cherry coke when I wanted a twenty ounce of cherry coke, and they didn't even bring me so they, my god my goddamn parmesan bites. Wait, wait, so isn't the cherry coke thing kind of all right? Because you got more cherry coke than you were expecting. Not what he ordered. I don't know. Rag is. I already had more than I should have had today in the first place. So I only wanted the 20 ounce so that I didn't have to drink all this, which means I'm going to have to probably throw this away. Put it in the fridge. <laughs> no, I don't want yeah, to. We, you could, we have these boxes that, that are cold inside. You could save it for later. And, and you know what? I'm, I'm even more disappointed because I was like, man, it, this would be great because I'm on the stream tonight. And then I ate that disgusting Alfredo shit because chicken sausage and pepperoni do not go with alfredo <laughs> um and then i ate it and i was like wow i really regret doing that and now i'm just like well what do i do with myself i guess you drink it too i guess we continue oh this god. lord of the rings video yeah i mean oh god yeah we were watching a video it's from pretty racist Lover. so far and we're about to find out about the atheists Oh, great. Oh, boy. To, uh, that's when all the magic in Middle-earth starts to disappear, because all the world of man cares about is building we solve kingdoms the world's problems, or yeah. industry or things you can touch with your, with your hand. No more magic because we want to build buildings. Okay, well. <laughs> chicken doesn't... No, Domino's chicken doesn't go with Domino's Alfredo chat. I need to make that clear. That's pretty bad if you can't make Alfredo and chicken go together. Well, that's the thing. That's Domino's... I don't even know why I bothered order well no i ordered from them because i can't order from pizza hut are they closed down in your area Cause... no i just have a very bad relationship with the people who work there. <laughs> you're, running, you're running out of pizza places man well, i, like, I <laughs> heard that, that uh, they like had to close a bunch of stores or some shit pizza hut's losing out to dominoes right now uh wolf do you have a do you have a chuck e cheeses around you <laughs> Why? Well, first off, no. Second, why would I go to a Chuck E. Cheese? Because have they have Father pizza John's? Chuck E. Cheese. A Father John's? Is that near you? Yes. I just Father wanted to... A... John? Oh, Father Jonathan. <laughs> My Father name is Father Jonathan. Jonathan. The pizza man. Father Jonathan the pizza man. I just wanted a pasta. <laughs> That's all I wanted. And now... How about you pass the pizza over to me? <laughs> Speechless. I'm having a night. You know, it, <laughs> it started great with Tonald, and then he left, and it's like all joy was sapped from the world. Much all like early. the atheist humans of Lord of the Rings sapped the world of magic by creating buildings. Once Tonald left, the, the stream, yeah. stream's that's, magic was sapped. Because that's how it worked. Yes. And he totally has references for those. But they lost the their humans are the only good characters. That's why the elves jump on their boats and bounce the fuck out of there. Jimmy Rollins? Elves, elves, the Christians. Exactly, yeah. Divine, perfect beings who only fight when it's absolutely necessary. And at the end of the Oh, yes, Christians. Wait, he said only <laughs> fight when it's absolutely necessary. It's not absolutely necessary for the elves to fight in Helm's Deep. They're doing it to help the men. Mm hmm. What does he mean, absolutely necessary, by the way? <laughs> like like self defense? Yeah, but yeah, because again, the Helm's Deep wouldn't count, surely. 
in the movies, when all the other religions of Middle Earth have to go back and scoop up giant mounds of elephant poop or trim the beards of giant wooden tree people, the elves get to move on to paradise because they were right all along. Also, Gandalf is straight up an angel sent down from heaven. Read the Silmarillion. Oh my God, that's about the only accurate thing he said so far. Yeah, but angels and divine beings sent as agents of a greater, you know, being down to earth. That's not exclusive to Christianity. I don't even know why no, he brought that in. A lot of stuff. Why yeah. is this guy saying that you should read the Silmarillion when it's clear he? Oh, he probably just read that on Reddit and put that in the script. He hasn't mm -hmm. read the Silmarillion. I can guarantee yeah. it. Lies. He probably read the Wikipedia though. Or. <laughs> The elves are like Buddhists or Shintoists because they're a super exclusive group of warriors who only fight when they have to and they live in a monastery. There are a lot of waterfalls. Seems vaguely Buddhist. All the elves' armor and weaponry looks vaguely Japanese, and when they vanquish the ultimate evil, vaguely Japanese. To Nirvana. The band? No, not the band. But why would Tolkien, a self described turbo Christian, there's no way he said write that. a Oh, these two are like the most unfunny people. This is script, have yeah, they too. got a chuckle out of anyone yet? No. Um, no. I, even people are scared. Laugh too. So it's, like... it's hurting my brain. I literally oh. have a headache. Oh, I'm not man. even kidding. And I and it only started with this. So it, it's either because of this or it's because of Wolf talking about the past. Of... I have AIDS <laughs> I, I, now. Man, I don't, I don't know if my headache is induced by these two idiots or my Alfredo pasta or both. <laughs> well, could be a I hate Alfredo. How much of that two liter have you drank so far? Not much. You uh, better get on that, man. Get on that, Not that shit. Then. Yeah, get, yeah, drink some I, more. I, should, I already had a Pepsi before getting this. I'm not thirsty enough to drink two liters of cherry You don't coke. have to drink it all at once. <laughs> Just hook up an IV. Oh, That's Just why I, cup. That's why I said I'm not drinking all of it. <laughs> Story glorifying Eastern religions. Oh, no, 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 no. They're, they're, they're not Christians at all. The elves are a super exclusive group of beautiful, wealthy white people who live in a giant temple mansion and follow a leader named Elrond. Elrond is not their leader. He's like upper management. And so he corrects that, but he doesn't correct token. Well, <laughs> this is this is pain. Like I don't know what to. Mm -hmm. I, the joke is at the expense. If this is a joke, then it's done at the expense of something people really like. Or is this like a really forty chess, five D, twelve connect four style of saying that this is actually making fun of people who think the Lord of the Rings is racist yeah, because they're trying to make those help. people seem really crazy? Yeah. It was very poorly received, uh, and there's shit tons of corrections in the comments. So, whatever they tried to do, it didn't work out. Yeah, if this was supposed to be a parody of people, they failed because they're not funny or intelligent. If this was serious, then it failed because they're not funny or intelligent. <laughs> um. At the end of the, they follow Elrond to space. What do you know, you person with Things, ridiculous things coming out of face. I spent the past 12 <gasps> goddamn hours oh. watching Lord of the Rings. I am the authority here. Oh, 12 hours, man. Are you okay? Yeah, I mean, sure. There's some eye strain and mild light sensitivity. So you're saying the light hurts us? No, shut up. Like it hurts the pressure. Stop it! Go! Go! Oh my god. Okay. Getting. All right. I'm losing <sighs> yeah. years. Um, now I know it's not a joke because they're failing pretty hard right here in particular. Yes, this uh, is them trying to be funny. Yeah. I felt the hair on my arms rise when he did that. Yes. That, that hit, I, man. Like, it triggered my gag reflex. You shouldn't I'm expose probably... people to stuff like this without warning. <laughs> How fucked up. I'm pretty, sure this, I'm pretty sure this video violates the Geneva Convention. Yeah. I'm broke you, it's weird. Mm -hmm. Wow, I Why? hate it. Why? Oh, no. Why? Shit. <laughs> was Smaller, I'm gonna ask you a personal question. I didn't do it on Pip, I was... Never, ever, ever for any re- well... 
My family had a gun to their head, okay? That's why I did it. So they circumcised okay. you because they had a gun to their head? All okay, of the well, guns aside, were at all of their heads. Aside from oh. that, never, um, never show me a cracked video ever again for as long as <laughs> we are friends. I'll make a note of that myself. <laughs> Wolf can't handle that crack. I mean, that wasn't as bad as Cinema Virgin, but that's it's only like because shorter? it was... Well, yeah, because it was an hour and 14 minutes shorter. <laughs> what a terrible name, too. Like, the last person I want a movie opinion on is from somebody called Cinema Virgin. I want a cinema <laughs> prostitute. Somebody who's been around the block a little bit knows what they're talking about. So, another video they have is why the world no longer needs James Bond. <laughs> um, uh, mm -hmm. it's, too, it's too much. You just sit there and you're like, well, so, did you... because <sighs> needs him like like we like we did before he was protecting us i don't know i i got one guess about what this video what that video is about fucking misogyny and that's it we don't need him because yeah. he treats women like shit because he we don't need him anymore because he's not a misogynist and i just um, that's very strange. we need more misogyny very unusual <laughs> baller 2020 yes i will run on that platform can I be your VP? Sure. Sweet. <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay, fuck it. Can I be your Secretary of State? Yes. No. Secretary of Defense. What the fuck? Secretary of Defense. No, I want to be. I want to be the. You know I th isn't the Secretary of State third in line if two of you were to die in a sudden vehicular accident because of brake failure? If something bad happened to you? We don't need to answer this question. We actually got, uh, this, this should be better, okay? It's not why Lord of the Rings is racist, it's why Lord of the Rings sucks. Oh, another one of these, I'm ready. Let's do oh, it. Oh, I'm glad Wolf's here. Born fry, legendary badass. No Ow. What the fuck? <laughs> what am I looking at? Is this an ad? What the fuck is that? It's a okay, bullet, I guess. I want to say after yeah. Lord of the Rings. That is the bullet. Von Fry will die. All right. What a what a name. Not shy, telling you how it is. Bon I hope this is not copyrighted. <laughs> yeah, no one, no one. Die. This is not copyrighted. No one would claim credit. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be too careful on the internet. Oh, oh! If only the bullet went through your head and killed you. Before. Oh my God! It's, that oh, it's negatonal. Uh, dude, he looks. I can't. He looks ready to I review a movie. I, bu I, I busted okay, I, out my best plastic cup for this I review. I, I'm. Well, yeah, that is a plastic. Cup. It, it kind of reminds me of, of uh, Jared's cup, dude. You know, the gr with the green liquid. We all had that cup <laughs> that was smooth on top, but was ribbed. You know, for most of it on the way. We all had one of those cups from just wherever. We they were gathered from vacations and restaurants and gift baskets. Man, we all had them in our cupboard. Someone help me out here. What's the problem with his face? Is it his eyes are too big, <laughs> his eyebrows are too bulky, or his forehead is too large? I he, think it, it might just be his... Long. He's got a scowly kind of expression. He feels Maybe like, we just caught him at a bad he, screen. Yeah, he, he, looks, he looks like he wants to hurt me. Well, I was just going to say, he feels like he's in he my looked, personal space no matter how far away I am. Yeah, <laughs> he looks like a not-so-bad bad guy in a not-so-good movie. Oh yeah, my like, god. Oh, guys, he's the henchman guys, bad guy. Uh, oh, that would explain why you all went silent for me for a while. If it's hopefully it's back up. But we were there was incredible comedy there. The well, we can save those jokes for missed. Me. Well, yeah. Uh, well, all the last thing I heard was we need to do the test, and then it was silence. <laughs> oh, oh. So, okay, so I'll I'll give the test to you now. Okay. Okay. So. Move your body like left and right and watch as his eyes follow you no matter what part of the screen you're looking at. It's oh, yeah, like... I already agreed with that shit. Because, yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess it helps that they're centered. So, you know, but yes. That's the thing. It's like, you know, those bookmarks that are kind of like 3D, but they're not really. And if you change it, it slightly changes too. His face is like that. It just changes as you move around, and it's really unsettling. 
Hopefully the streams are still yeah please, it's intact. Please Good. fix yourself, sir. He's got some opinions to drop on the, those shitty to token films, okay? Okay. It's one thing to say that the Lord of the Rings is overrated. It's a whole nother thing to say it completely sucks dick, which is what I'm trying to tell you folks. <laughs> oh my god, I'm cringing already. So, I'm bold it's... statement. I'm willing to hear some arguments. Yeah, I doubt same. you'll change my mind. Um, I love how his voice does not fit his face. So... Not at all. It's so whiny. I immediately dislike this person. You Why guys, the video like a... is black and white. That means it's legitimate, okay? Dude, he yeah. sounds like someone just going through puberty, but he also looks like he's edging <laughs> toward 50. He I mean... looks like that crazy reporter from Predator 2. Oh, <laughs> shit. I don't know what he does. Hmm. I feel the need to finally I feel air the need my to finally air my because grievances. of the time of Festivus around us and Festivus. The Festivus. Don't you fucking drag <laughs> don't you fucking drag the yeah, best holiday. <laughs> like, you know you know what this video like goes Halloween? to prove about your shitty holiday? No, like, what this proves is that it's shot in black and white like a horror movie in Halloween. These are your people, Rags. These are your people. <laughs> this this video is a horror video. Just by virtue of the fact that he says Festivus, he is automatically distancing himself from the glorious Christmas army. He's, claw he's clawing his way toward it. He's desperately trying. You can keep those doors closed, but he's going to keep on knocking. This guy probably, no, this guy probably, like, he, he, like, I don't know, what holidays? He's like, I don't know, Kwanzaa. You guys, Wait, I understand why he's making this video. Him, this is the airing Festivus. of grievances. Let him celebrate Festivus. Fucking hell. Hold on. Festivus is an actual word meaning. A secular holiday celebrated on December 23rd as an alternative to the pressures and commercialism of the Christmas season. As an alternative to Christmas. Yeah, that's what I thought. But it's not Halloween. So it's you, not you Halloween. Don't know Christmas? Christmas? He's in the, so he's a sister of Christmas. I see. He's trying to be, he's like those, he, he's what? a fucking asshole who's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, like, I, I can't do Christmas. I gotta okay, do this, Festivus. And everyone's this like, guy is doing is Festivus and... absolutely wrong because at the start he had a Christmas tree, not an aluminum pole. <laughs> <laughs> well, he he went to a restaurant and got a fucking plastic cup, and he's he's drinking alone from Fuck his plastic. Fuck you! That's a Festivus cup. cup. <laughs> Someone it's in Festivus the chat. cup from a barbecue restaurant. Yes, I'm sorry. To. Someone the in the chat said, "Why is I hate Lord of the Rings and male genitalia a trend?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, male genitalia. Sometimes you can't explain these things. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why does he look like Ray William Johnson's long lost twin? I'm doing me a big confuse right now. Oh, hold on. Because of Ray William Johnson? Because of the... Uh, just a lot of things. <laughs> a, a big heckin' confuser, you'll, you know. You'll, you'll know who Ray William Johnson I'm, is. Yeah. I'm getting you a I'm picture. Good. He's like that... He's like one of the YouTubers that is kind of an embarrassment to everyone else who uses the platform. He was one of I the first. Him. Yeah, he was the first big YouTuber, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, he was the first Eagles really big three. One. Remember this guy? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. can kind of see the resemblance now. I can. Oh see man! It. After after Zane left the Backstreet Boys, it was all downhill from there. I think you mean uphill? He had a successful YouTube show. He looks like a fake person that people make to be, yeah. you know, <laughs> like the the boy band super cool. <laughs> like if. He's like the he's like a shitty version of Chip Skylark. Wow, really? <laughs> <laughs> he looks fifteen and fifty five at the same time. <laughs> I actually agree with that one. Yeah. Of course, The Hobbit: An Unexpected Journey, which, if I'm not mistaken, is what one book turned into three movies that are three hours plus a piece. All right, so not so, the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Okay. No First one of all, I want to start that? talking about the dynamics of the ring. Oh boy. Let me see if I got this straight. Let me see if I got this straight. All right. I would. I would like before he be he goes on. I would like to propose we take ourselves a guess here in this call. Is this going to? This is going to be nine minutes of a a, a one take one shot, Ooh. or will there be cuts and editing in this video? I think editing. I think since, he rehearsed the shit out of this, and he's probably going to flub a bunch of times. Since he black and white it, and there was the bullet intro, there's a chance it was edited. I'm gonna, I'm well, gonna I, put I, my money on I, yes. I, it was, it was. It's gonna cut to different bits. 
Yeah, editing. Though I yeah. do think there's reason to believe this will be one one shot. I do think that you could guess that. I, I'm gonna go with that one. I don't. I'm not confident on it. I wouldn't put a lot of money on it. But the odds are long, so maybe I'd win, right? You know what I mean? So it yeah. is one shot. It's definitely not gonna be well spoken or articulated <laughs> or. I mean, it's already not well spoken or. Ladies and gentlemen, the votes okay. are in. <laughs> I see. This dude's got to get Let's like see, a. Yeah. Like a voice synthesizer to make himself sound like he... Dude, if it like is one shot, Trump. imagine thinking you can take down the Lord of the Rings trilogy in eight minutes of just rambly. Like, Good luck, my good man. Sauron had the ring, and yeah, if I get any names wrong, it's because I've seen each of these movies once and don't give a shit. Oh, <laughs> oh so it's perfect to make a video on. Excellent. Great, that's Gadelbig. <laughs> I've seen each of these movies once and I don't give a shit. Here's my video with my controversial opinion. No joke. I find it very ironic that it's usually these idiots. I saw the movie one time and I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, why even? Okay, what? What? If you don't remember, why are you angry though? <laughs> why would you care? To ever see them again. All right, so Sauron, if I believe I'm correct here, has the ring that controls all the other rings and is the most powerful and is very important. And with this ring, he can conquer the whole Middle Earth world or wherever we call this place. <laughs> He's so dismissive. <laughs> There's no fucking, world or whatever. Fucking Middle <laughs> dude, Top Oops, or Bottom God, Earth. I don't know. Is point. Thank you. I'm so glad I can perfectly imitate my favorite YouTuber, Cosmonaut Retarded Hour. Uh, I don't know, he's got a ring of something. I guess. I mean, if he starts the movie out in ancient times with the ring, and he's easily defeated by humans, what difference does it goddamn really. make Doesn't if he be. gets the ring back? What the fuck are you doing, you idiot? <laughs> That's a weird first point. All right. That okay. is an interesting okay, So, so allow me to dismantle this. First off, the movie makes it explicitly clear that it was the last alliance of men and elves that went to go fight Sauron. That was not easily done. That was like all that was left. That was That's the first scene of the movie, you fucking imbecile. Second... The movie, he, Sauron, it, in the movie, it's different in the books, but in the movie, he is... Uh, he's cheap just, shot, let's be he, honest. He's, de he's destroyed once the ring is severed from his head. Head. Hand, sorry. I mean, um, technically. Yeah, yeah, technically right. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yeah, anyway. <laughs> he, I, I can't remember the exact quote off the top of my head, but when Gandalf meets Saruman, at Orthanc, Sauron or Saruman says that Sauron uh, is not like his body is not reformed yet. He needs the ring to get his power and body back. Once again, it's different in the books, but he's going by the movies because I don't think he's actually intelligent enough to read anything. So he's certainly not reading a script. You're just, so. wrong. Yeah. You're just wrong. You're just wrong. Why are you um, so stupid? The implication of the criticism as well seems to be that it's like, okay, so Sauron did X with the ring and he was stopped. So why do we care that he's, you know, maybe going to get it back? We can just beat him again. It's like, look, if there's a crazy axe murderer running around town killing people and you take his axe off him and then, like, with ease, then it's like, oh, he might get it back, by the way. It's like, yeah, we might want to do something about that, actually. It's like, the crazy axe murderer <laughs> guy, there's a couple kids running around, you know, I don't, I don't think, you know, it's, it's a bit of a risk. But on a Middle Earth scale where he's, you know, destroying several countrysides burning and destroying. I think it's worth looking into, to say the least. Apparently not. Oh. None. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> then we've got humor in this film. That was so perfect. None. <laughs> Shit. Dude, this, uh... The, he's not, like, I'm not trying to be too mean here, but you did not get a good voice when you gambled voice-wise. <laughs> <laughs> the genetic lottery was not kind to you. Nah, shit. Oh, I 
I'm also going to double down on the he did not edit anything into this video. <laughs> I, I was totally wrong. I, re, I thought this was going to be overly cut, but it's, oh my God, it's horrifying. The mistake I made was like, take. it's nine minutes. Surely he's cut it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm doubling down Maybe on Maybe somewhere down the line, but it's definitely he sat down with the intention of saying as much as he could in one in one take. Yeah. Maybe like he gets up at one point to like do something, you know, answer Shit. the door. Or, and then what cuts it there. What difference does it goddamn make if he gets the ring back? None. He gets his body back. Shit. That's Wait, why something. does he think it makes no difference? That's really weird. Of all the things what? you could criticize. The movie literally says he needs it to get his powers back. If he doesn't have his powers, he can't really do much, can he? It's very concerning if he gets his power back, just saying. Yeah, he almost destroyed the world that last time. Humor in this film's... Which is limited humor, to slapstick. In its films. Very sparingly. Um, and it's juvenile. I mean, it's like, oh, you get some hobbits playing around with fireworks. <laughs> that's, that's the humor in all of Lord of the Rings. Hobbits play with fireworks. Oh my god. What a terrible take. There's a couple of other jokes, you know, here and there. That's your humor for the Fellowship film. Wow, that was real funny. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that meant, wasn't that meant more as like character establishment? The, yeah, no, really. Well, or I mean, most of the jokes the are going to be establishing a sense of place. I mean, for sure, well, yeah. a sense of place, but also a sense of like these are the mischievous ones. Yeah, um, right. And, and they're having a good time. Times are good, right? It's right, like a, right. Yeah, but but like, most of the jokes are going to be comboed up with you know other events happening. Fucking like this is he's like um. He comes across as a parody reviewer to me, like he'd be in a movie. You'd, you'd, like someone's like, "Oh, check out YouTube," in some like really shit like Hollywood thing, and, and no, it's like this no, guy. No, no. He, this this guy is what Ryan Johnson thinks all of us are. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, it's shit. No. <laughs> all right. <laughs> no, no one cracks a small at all. In fact, the only time anybody laughs during these movies is. When they're not supposed to, like Smeagol talking to himself. Right. The <laughs> hey, look, that was a when cut. That was a cut. Out. He's talking about fellowship. Fellowship has tons of people laughing. That was a cut. We were right. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. We did it. Is he actually gonna? It's a lazy cut, though. No, I don't know for sure. But that's what it. I was kind of expecting. <laughs> He's gonna cut out the times he drank, probably. Precious. We shouldn't betray Frodo. That's the thing that everybody laughs at, is that, How is that? jump cut between the two personas. How is that something people laughed at? That brings okay. me to okay, a I'm, Okay, I'm sorry. Thing. Pause it, pause it. <laughs> okay, okay, Mr. Retard. Um, please find me one human being on the face of the earth who laughed at Smeagol speaking to himself yeah, about that was killing Frodo. Those are some of the best scenes. He's like arguing whether or not he should help the master or betray him, right? That's like one of the big shit. It's, it's not exactly. I don't remember being a funny scene. There may have been like one or two moments where you might crack a smile at him losing his shit, but I don't know. I, I don't. This, this is really weird that yeah. he would pick that. Also, it's such strange. The the viability of allowing Sauron his ring returned, then slapstick humor, then. This like it's like what is this structure? What are we doing? <laughs> we're just we're just running on with anything, huh? Wait, so when he says nobody laughs in these movies, does he mean nobody watching them laughs, or does he mean nobody in the movies laughs? Now I'm confused. He's saying the only at first he said nobody laughs in these movies, and then he's like, he's got... and the only thing people laugh at is mm. Gollum talking to himself. Well, yeah, it's, it's really. St I, I don't think so. He nobody laughs at these movies. Saying. Yeah, but he's picking why, the wrong words. Why should I have to laugh at the mush movie? Mouth. He's just he I can't tell about the humor being juvenile before, and now he's saying, "Oh, there's nothing to laugh at." Also, I can't tell. Does he look really concerned or anxious or scared yeah. here to anybody else? A man of a million faces. I mm -hmm. guess we just paused him in the middle of a. Dude, word. why didn't you get I like a, a, it's a, a bad word. take every time we pause it? If every time we pause it, it's a bad take on his face. Okay, man. first off. I said the first one might have been. It's been two pauses total that I've seen. Not really established in a huge strong trend, but he's in the middle of saying something. So I don't, I don't know. He's just, I don't know. Dude, why of all the 
glasses or cups in your house did you get the fucking baby sippy cup with like the pig on the <laughs> yeah that's his festivus cup you fuck dude, <laughs> leave dude, him alone stop drinking the soy milk maybe it'll make you look and sound like a man <laughs> um wow that was real funny no no one cracks a small at all in fact the only no one time cracks a small laughs during these yeah. movies is <laughs> When they're not supposed to, like Smeagol talking to himself, the precious, we shouldn't betray Frodo. That's the thing that everybody laughs at, is that jump no. cut between the two personas. That's a thing. Oh, that boy. brings me to a whole nother thing. And I just love the idea that he's like, well, that criticism's over. Next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Andy Enough Circus's said. performance as Gollum. Oh my god, don't not dare. Not that amazing, people. Oh, kill yourself. Okay? <laughs> I mean, didn't he win a fucking? He won like several awards. Yeah, he did. He did incredible. They, they, didn't they work. make up something for him? Yeah, they had to make a new like category of award because Andy Serkis was so good doing that. I'm not curious what he thinks a good happened. performance is, so I can get a kind of comparison to work with. Sorry, what? So, like, if if he thinks that Andy Serkis here as Smeagol wasn't that good. I'm very curious to see what he thinks a really good performance is, so I can get some kind of a gauge on what his scale is for good acting. Probably Benna Bilbo Bumba Bumba as a Smaug. Makes sense. It would be him in the mocap suit. He would do yes. a much better job. Benny Dude, Bunch he's just picturing him doing the scene. He's like, are we crazy? No. Well, I'm, I feel that I am. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think that actually would have been something to laugh at. Motion capture stuff, I mean, anybody can do it. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, That's an interesting opinion. All right, then. Anyone can do it. All it's right, easy Kratos. To edit around. It's easy to edit out when you goof. <laughs> It's not. <laughs> it was that's, like all, as much... that's all acting, as long as you're not doing like a live yeah. play. What does he mean? This is... does, he, does he think that movies are filmed live? Yeah, except for the mocap. Film <laughs> <laughs> in real time. Actually being there and doing some voices. What did he do? <laughs> oh my god, this isn't real. Wow. Is it? Like <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Doing some voices. Some voices. What did he do? do? Yeah, to every uh, every voice actor out there in the world, super dismissive. Um, yeah, yeah, you guys suck. You guys yeah. aren't real actors at all. You're, You're... practically motion. <laughs> the only thing easier than voice acting is mocap acting. Like, all right, yeah, that's, uh, that is certainly an opinion. All right, I would like shot. to see him do this. Uh, do this acting. Yeah, he's we, acting now. We have to get the precious. What would he do? do? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, all right. And he hey. plays every role. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Guy, if voice acting is so easy, can you give yourself a voice that sounds like the age and gender you are? What would he do? Like, please, if you think that's Oscar caliber stuff, then you need to quit watching movies altogether. <laughs> <laughs> See, at this point, I'm like, wait a minute. You fucking with me. Like, Jesus. This guy's uh, like, this guy's like a slightly more handsome, slightly more eloquent Chris Chan with his argumentation. Yeah. No kidding. I just, this guy's definitely got like some kind of tism going on. I, I want to watch like Ian McKellen watch this video. I just want to see his face. Just to be like, I think he just wow. laughed the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, you'd be like, this you is very really funny. Family, like, yeah. what, what, what's the, why did you make this? <laughs> Talk about the people in the fellowship, okay? Oh boy. Time and again, they get into redundant battles where they're the only redundant. ones who get out alive. <laughs> and there's way too many Jews. They get into fights where they Where they're the only ones who get out alive. <laughs> Except for Boromir. Except for... Well, who else is there to get out alive? This is what I mean. I'm very confused by the statement. He's like, they always get into fights, and they're always the ones that get out. You're like, he also said the fights are redundant. I don't think he knows what that word means. Well, in fairness, mm. you know, what did the fight in Moria achieve? Nothing, really. The Balrog wouldn't have done anything. It's fine. 
redundant. Gandalf died, redundant. Boromir died, like the redundant. the second movie, okay? The Two Towers. Oh How many kids died? How many knights died? And yet, our main group is completely okay. <laughs> Blow my so, ass. What? They're, so they're a little bit better than your um, average warrior for starters. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to pass on that offer, I'm sorry. I don't wanna blow ass, yeah, not a, not a fan. But I just- Blow Aragorn, ass? How is it that Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli survive where random farmers don't? Explain this to me. I wonder if there's, like, a skill or something involved. No, that would make sense. And to make it even worse, they just come running right out the gate, and we have these thousands of CGI orcs just fall over out of clumsiness all in the they same They should have had real, thousands of real orcs doing it, I say. What is he talking about? Falling, <laughs> falling out of clumsiness. Does he think that getting an arrow to the face is clumsy? I'm trying to think of what he's. But what part is he referring to? I actually have no idea what his argument is here. I have legitimately no idea what he's actually arguing. Is he talking about the Moria fight where the doors open and they kind of come in full or because he's a, I don't... he said the doors open and the orcs fall down from clumsiness. Well, I don't know what the orcs falling down from clumsiness part is, but the doors open. If he's talking about two towers, I'm assuming he means the final charge before Gandalf comes to help at Helm's Deep. Maybe yeah. he's mistaken. It was saving Private Ryan. Oh, of course, that can happen. And we have these thousands of CGI orcs just fall over out of clumsiness all in the same pattern. And they're untouchable. It's like these heroes with... Except for when they I aren't. Say, I going to say, except yeah, the Aragorn, ones that die. Yeah, Bormir dies. Gandalf dies. Aragorn gets knocked off a cliff. Um, let's see. Aramir gets shot three times. Aramir gets, yeah, twice. he gets fucked up pretty bad. Eowyn gets her arm broken. Uh, Mary gets Tism armed by the stab stab. Mm -hmm. um, Frodo and Sam, they go through a bit of beating. Oh, yeah, Theoden Christian. dies. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, Haldir died, of course. Oh, Haldir has died, yeah. Haldir. He gives Sauron um, the ring so that these heroes actually have some kind of challenge because they seem to be in battle. <laughs> what? Okay. I gotta, so they I have gotta... a challenge because nothing okay. was challenging in the three movies I'm, for our heroes. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to give you a <laughs> little, a little ring. piece of information here. If Sauron gets the ring, they're all going to die and the story's over. Well, that'd be more interesting because they never face any challenges unless that happens. It's too easy. <laughs> Frodo almost dies in like multiple times in every movie. No. No, no they, challenge. They just yeah. cannot lose a battle. They don't can't lose. <laughs> they can't lose a battle. Uh -oh. except, except for the entire ending of the first movie. I mean, yeah, it's not they it would be you'd be hard pressed to call a lot of the things that happened in Lord of the Rings strict victories. It's like some of them are just oof. Don't get hurt. A lot of them are just like Remember oh, the several we, victories we at Oskiliath. Like, uh, Helm's Deep is literally just like, okay, we held out long enough for other people to come save us. Yeah. We didn't die. All right. Let's 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 try and do that again. I think I he's know. in the middle of saying nobody gets hurt as well. Like, lose a limb or no shit? I mean, outside of Sean Bean, no, who right? is <laughs> obligated to die in every movie. Does he not remember the other people who died? Apparently not. They're obligated to die, too. Oh, shit. King Theoden, Ian McClellan, I knew from movie. the first moment I saw him, obligated to die. It's Ian McClellan. He's a dead man. Saruman, obligated to die. Obligated to die. Rima Warmtongue, he's a dyer. Obligated to die. This is some good shit. The rest of them, they just can't be touched. Frodo gets Gandalf like, pisses almost me killed. Off. In the Gandalf, Gandalf pisses me off. <laughs> 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 fucking wizards, man. <laughs> fucking wizards. <laughs> I, you know what? I hope he has some really good arguments. Scathing will, critiques of Gandalf's beard. Do it. Doesn't right. do anything Except useful. Just reasons. shine some light For several out of his reasons. Light. Shit, several. First, he's walking around with all this magic. 
Uh, he's like having a nuke. Just okay. in his pockets. He's, he's and got a you know? great dig sex machina thing going for him. Dig sex hey. machina? <laughs> I, almost, uh. I almost thought he said dick sex machina. <laughs> <laughs> like dick sex from the machine. He's like, yeah, it's it's a modern world, I guess. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> he's got a pocket full of dick sex. So, okay, can, uh, can this guy explain to me where the dick sex machina <laughs> helped him at Moria? I hate Gandalf walking Frodo, around with dick sex box. my pocket and see if you can find my stuff. <laughs> 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 Fucking wizards with the dick sex machina. It's magic. I, it's like having a nuke, okay? This, he's got this great <laughs> dick sex machina thing. <laughs> well, oh, he did it again. Problem? Well, I'll just use painful. magic. Problem solved. Why don't you just- What are you talking about? The, he fucking dies trying to defend- Like, the- <sighs> You can't. The dick sex machina is my new favorite. Dick sex machina. Use that now. <laughs> if you go through all of Lord of the Rings, it's actually rare that Gandalf like just stri We go from losing to just oh automatic win because Gandalf like he shines a light when coming down in Helm's Deep. It's not exactly OP. You can do that if you have like a big torch. I actually um, don't think that was Gandalf. I think that was the light of the sun. Oh, okay. He wrote it at the same at the right time, right? He well, did say he rides precisely when he means to, so yeah. that allowed. See, it's set up and payoff. In that case, then that's even the, the Balrog fight. It's like they kill each other. So he uses I don't the know. shield. He uses his magic to to stop the Balrog from hitting him with his sword. Yeah, which you know the Balrog can just swing again. In fact, he does try that shit. You know, and what else is there? It's like um, when he shines the light at the Nazgul to help Faramir's soldiers, which, by the way, were torn to shreds at that point. So it's not like it. You know, it's not like it's hyper open. He's calling it dick sex machina, which I think is unfair. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you realize whenever Deus Ex Machina comes up, we have to call it dick sex machina. Yeah, <laughs> forever dick now. Sex machina. That's it. <laughs> it's magic your ass to the mountain you're going to. Magic your instead ass. of what? <laughs> Do you think he could magic teleport? <laughs> magic your ass. I think it's pretty to reasonable mountain. to assume that Gandalf cannot teleport, else he would have done it. Yeah, probably. Mm. Walking the whole time. Or how about whenever you encounter he something summons that a can magic walk horse king. Yeah. Fly and take you somewhere. How about you ride it the whole way? What is up with this? Just ride a horse into Mordor? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, shit, why didn't we think of that? We're halfway through the arguments, so going good so far. Then you okay. got Gandalf's fight with this dragon. He comes plummeting down <laughs> and scattering into this water. And like dragon, everybody thinks man. he's dead. Except the people who read the book or some shit. Which by the way <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess if you read the book beforehand you would know Fucking... how the story goes. Like, Once again, <laughs> rescued by book, so Dick Sex Machina. Ball? I like this guy. I want to review all stuff. Why didn't the Eagles ride the horses into Mordor? That's this what is... I want to know. This is only slightly more coherent than a Jared video. Yeah. Wow. Way, I'm talking Truly about evolution. I didn't read the books. I saw oh. the movies, and now I definitely am not reading the books. So I believe that. Good for you, man. <laughs> Who can't I, read? Yes. Falls continues fighting the goddamn dragon. Hell yeah. What, he what else is he gonna on do? top of a mountain in the Hell snow? Yeah. Not quite entirely exhausted. Defeats the dragon and I he believe fall, dies he falls, in the He falls over dead. What do you mean he wasn't exhausted? I think he was exhausted, yeah, it's pretty clear. So, um, I was looking at this guy's channel just now. He has a video called Why YouTube Sucks. Thumbs down. He doesn't like <laughs> that the that YouTube has dislikes. Oh. Oh, can't I imagine. can't imagine why it's, he has uh, an issue with that. He does yeah, I, comedy. I, I can't think of a reason why that would be, but um Interesting. Yeah, gotta think okay. about Guys, that one. we have to watch some of his stand-up comedy. It's really short, and it's at like That's 9, 15, 22% likes. Oh my god. Right. Wait, find, <laughs> find like the one, and we'll check it out after this. God, he has two channels. He has a channel where he's still uploading now. 13 hours ago. Dude, I hope this guy reviews till the end of time. He's so good at it. Excellent. This is important. Gandalf the White. He transitions from Gandalf the Grey into Gandalf the White. He essentially dies... And the spirit of whatever the hell says, oh, your quest is not finished. I'm going to give you a second chance. 
thus making it entirely unimportant if anybody else dies for the rest of these films because no. we know there is a chance they can come back to life. Boromir didn't. Yeah, no one, no one else. He's a fucking wizard. You have to assume that the rules don't quite work the same for humans. The uh, uh, Gandalf, the wizards in general are angels. It's not the same for everybody else. If they die, they die. I just like the idea that he's like, yeah, Boromir could just come right back. He doesn't. It's like, yeah, well, he coulda. Boromir. <laughs> yeah, well, he coulda, but he just didn't. Because he's didn't Sean use... Bean, he's obligated to stay dead. Didn't use the dick sex machina. That was the big problem. And that might just be the stupidest thing about all of it. It just may very well be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so what? You know, I just... Stop drinking in the middle of your video. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. I like the way he talks. It's so funny. Like, <laughs> how he structures everything. It's just... You're, a, you're an interesting person, uh, reviewer man. I can't tell you how many defend a castle that is built on the side of a mountain. Twice. And we do the same battle again and again. Twice. Right. Well, that battle was better the first time I saw it when they were defending that castle, which looks a whole shitload like that one right there. Helm's Deep and Minister don't look fucking similar. What do you mean? <laughs> they're so insanely different in how they're structured. Um, a fortress the versus where... a city. I wonder if there is possibly a difference between them. Well, everything's different. The factions involved, the strategies that are used, the stakes, it's just all so different. Apparently not. It's we what you show in film school to be like, yeah, here's a castle assault, here's a castle assault, this is how you do them completely differently. So they stay fresh. There. There's worse, the structure. Oh, oh, oh Jesus. Oh, 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 real close. <laughs> What's on your lip? Dude, he's getting serious cold. now, you guys. The lip is peeling. <laughs> Like it's it's been there the whole time. Like, like, like a popcorn kernel on his lip. It's been annoying me the whole time. <laughs> oh god. Which looks a whole shitload like that one right this there. This guy looks like a less manly to Ben make Stiller. Worse, the structure of these stories does not suit well for a trilogy. Okay. After the first movie, what have we done? We've started our quest. We haven't. <laughs> just, like, just, this is so much fun. I don't know. He's such a weird man. Like, what? What are you? What are you up to? What is this criticism? We started you the really quest. Like... This stupid the structure for trilogies can't do that. <laughs> can, I just don't know where he's gonna go with this. It's just so. Uh... <laughs> Accomplished. Oh, I don't know. Destroy the Death Star. Um. Oh. <laughs> so he's saying. So I just want to point out that if two castle assaults are both boring because they're similar, surely attacking two Death Stars is gonna be similarly really boring, right? Dude, that's. I... Mm. Yeah. That's actually pretty I'm creepy. I, I kind of feel like his brain must have oh, like, been shut down here. That. If if Star Wars, <laughs> if the original Dude, the three of us posted Star Wars that, <laughs> we all grabbed the exact same. Thing. I'm seeing you know like before he as he turns the head, it makes the grudge sound like everything goes even darker. It reminds me of G Man from Half Life. Yeah, he, he, he's like a robot that just like. Lost power here. We're boosting people. Are you saying that he's a replicant? <laughs> <laughs> Can we go back like 10, 15 seconds? I need to see how this became a thing. It's so creepy. Which looks a whole shitload like that one right there. He's pointing! To make matters worse, the structure of these stories does not yeah. suit Let's well. Let's see if we can see trilogy. the exact moment where the After charge is. After the first movie, what have we done? <laughs> We've started our quest. We haven't accomplished anything like, oh, I don't know, destroy the Death Star. So I guess the, I guess <laughs> okay. the point yeah. he's making here. Dude, it's so is terrifying. That, <laughs> yeah, so, like, so I guess the point he's making here is that in A New Hope, there's a huge battle at the end that's very monumental and important to the story. And Amon Hen isn't like that, so well, it, it doesn't count. Someone in the chat if said Star it Wars looks it, hollow. If Star Wars had been planned from the start to be a trilogy, do you really think they would have had the main big bad thing blow up and have to make a second one just to make the other movies work? Like, well, you'd still have Darth Vader. Yeah, like they wouldn't they wouldn't have had the first movie end with blowing up the Death Star, I don't think. If they had said we're going to make Maybe. three movies, we're definitely going to make three. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's very Were possible. there three Lord of the Rings books? What the fuck's this guy even talking about? But here's the I'd thing. Say, 
three books are pretty apt for like a trilogy of movies. I think that makes sense. In fairness, though, if me, you don't destroy a Death Star, what the fuck's the point? Well, Boromir dying and the the Fellowship splintering into those technically three groups are really, really impactful on a personal level, whereas the destruction of the Death Star isn't as personal. Hmm. I mean, yeah, like, it's still, like, I... Like, you get the Han and the Luke and the using the Force and the Explody Boom Booms. And it's really, yeah. really good. I don't mean to undersell it, but I feel like it's just two different things. Yeah, I'm To compare there. them would be really lame because they're just not trying to be the same thing. Right. Finally, they try to make some kind of resolve effort by giving everybody an ending that fades How out in a way like, oh, Time to roll the credits. Okay. Oh no, we got another scene. Oh, okay. We're fading. Man, I'm such a Who fan gets of this an meme. ending? Well, like, I guess Boromir, but even then, they elaborate more on him in the future, and his death plays a pivotal role in the way the plot develops going forwards. Was he, I thought he was doing the multiple ending meme, like the uh, Lord of the Rings ends too many times. Boo. Now he's talking about Lurtz, the coolest character, Lurtz. the best character. Best character, Lurtz. yeah. If only we got more of Lurtz to learn more yeah. about Lurtz. Why was Lurtz there? <laughs> who was who? Who did Lurtz love? What did, what did Lurtz think time? about while he was in that pod in the ground? Yeah. <laughs> what did Lurtz dream about? <laughs> I do want to know the answer to that question. Oh, no. Oh, okay. We've got another another credit scene here. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's another ending. I don't know how they it, can get by with this stuff. And you think that Peter it's Jackson 20 is minutes talented... out of a four and a half hour movie. Yeah, that's too long. Oh, the God. Fellowship of the Ring movie? He is or is it, as he skipped to... He's talking about the trilogy's ending, right? Like, he's talking about... So, he's yeah, talking something... about Return of the King's it's... ending. It's 20 minutes out of a four and a half hour movie. I mean, like, really, it's oh, a 20 wow. minute ending out of a 11 and a half hour trilogy. Yeah, I would argue yeah. that. Yep. And if plus, you took it's, the credits it's out in much, between yeah, the movies, minutes, I would right say it's, dot. Just, it's barely even a trilogy. It's almost like just one big giant movie. Well, they really. shot it all at once. And it's awesome. Yeah, like, I mean, if you take the credit sequences out, you could cut it together into one big giant file and Nobody would know the nobody would be the wiser, I don't think, really. Filmmaker, he can't control the length of his films, okay? What? There are other filmmakers who have made three hour movies, like Steven Spielberg, James Cameron, <laughs> and then they're able to bounce back and make a two hour film or two and a half or what What is this point? Short what is, so is he trying to argue that shortness is good? Is he saying a long man bad? Is he doing a long man bad? <laughs> I think so. I think he might be doing a long man bad. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I mean, it's not like everything has to be three hours. And I'll tell you what what what, what is what? I tell you what, Bobby. Not everything doesn't what. have to be at two. Counted the point. I just get so pissed at anything that's based off a book becoming a movie because. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't like books. But you never I read the books because you can't read. Oh. <laughs> don't tell people. He told you that in confidence. That's why he calls. It, he... If you know the material. You're going to get pissed when anything you know is left out. Like, aha, no. they left out that detail over there. Meh. And I'm like, Look, not necessarily. Why are you even here? You... <laughs> that's a question. You... That's a question I'm asking myself right now. Yeah. Why that, am I here? What, what does that have to do with anything? If you like the book, why are you even here? If why you like you... the book, why would you want to see the movie? You don't I want to see like, the movie. Ugh. You've already read the book. <laughs> yeah, that's a book is like I'm... a movie you get to direct in your head. Oh, oh, oh I just want to, I just want to point out this guy has a Patreon. He's got oh. one patron giving him two dollars a month. Oh, that's nice of his mom. <laughs> <laughs> For yeah, a two dollar well, pledge, well, you can get your name. You can on a plastic get, cup. Wait, 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 <laughs> at least that confirms that this is real. Movie in our Netflix commentary track. <gasps> that's not worth two dollars. So, like, is it, at least that confirms this is real because if it were like a parody channel it would probably be a, have more success than this like this is definitely real he he feels this way I, I dearly hope that that two dollars is his 
and he's just <laughs> giving it to himself to try and promote people into thinking that people actually he sends want. himself the message of what to cover on Netflix. <laughs> but he might be he might be dumb enough to have tricked himself into giving himself money. <laughs> he doesn't realize that's what he is doing. <laughs> and then he realized that he bamboozled himself but forgot how to take it back. I don't know. Oh you know the story then you're wasting your own time watching this right so maybe the movie should be for the people who haven't read the book and this in that movie case, is that yeah they feel like they have to stick to it just so that you don't get pissed off well i don't know how he's wow. informed enough to make this point if he hasn't read the books he wouldn't have any real clue off out of well, what they left out and he's suggesting that that's the reality of it the this is what they all do, you know, they, they can't adhere fully to the book reader's requests, but simultaneously they will pander to them. And you're like, what? Oh. Insightful. Yeah, I mean, what do you do with that? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> and if you're going because you're a fan of the book, and it's different than what you expected, in a different story, you're gonna get pissed off even more. Like, I'll, I'm gonna just go out and say this, and you can come kill me you if you say want. It. I mean, I you can come kill me! <laughs> I mean, I don't think you're worth the gas. I was gonna say, that's a lot of effort, dude. Hey, I'll, I'll do it. Please, give me your address. I'll come to your house right now. It, you I see, the thing it. is, it's like, I don't think that's worth it, because this guy seems, <laughs> this guy seems like he could, like, blow a blood vessel after getting mildly irritated by almost anything. So I think he might, like, accidentally kill himself by thinking too hard. People say yes. Goodell, but yeah, I guess I should just Possibly. say, like... If he's gonna perish from come a and kill tragic me. dick sex monkey. I, I, I cannot <laughs> believe he just said, you can come kill me if you want. Come kill me. <laughs> wow. This guy sucks. <laughs> Someone in the chat said, he will literally die on this hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'm gonna just go out and say this, and you can come kill you me don't if go you out. Want. I mean, I don't give a shit. I <laughs> can't. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta add that in now. I, I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> Me. He's. This is such a character. Like seriously. Why don't you take it? Take that. There is an argument to be made that the Resident Evil film series is better than the Lord <laughs> of the Rings film series. <laughs> wow. I think. <laughs> um. I. I guess. Well. I'll. I'll give you. I'll give you the benefit is of the this... doubt and say that there, there is probably an argument, yes, but whether it's good or not, it's a completely different question. Is this real? I can't... Or is this just fantasy? I, you know, I, earlier I was going to joke that this seems like the kind of guy who only has an attention span long enough to last through the Fast and the Furious movies, but the Resident Evil movies are a pretty close second. <laughs> yeah, everyone knows, yeah. like, you know, Lord of the Rings... Resident Evil, <laughs> Citizen Kane. Look, you know, this, it's, you know it's, it's like, this is one of those ones where even the su super subjective crowd are gonna be like, okay, no, stop, sit down. All right. That's enough. Like, I know I said opinions can't be wrong, but like, there's <laughs> we gotta put a line somewhere. We're not animals, oh, is this, okay? Is this his last upload? Maybe somebody did kill him right after that. <laughs> no, this was made back in 2012, but it's, oh, okay. it's just as fresh. It's funny because I thought he was gonna say something innocuous, and we'd have to joke about how, like, why would he say that? It was like, no, that was that was fair that he said, like, you can come and kill me for this. Like, yeah, that was a hard take. <gasps> oh my god, said... guys, 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 guys! He has stand-up comedy. Yeah, no, yeah, I've Rex got one queued that, up yeah. and, and, and watch together. We're gonna take oh a look. My god, I can't wait to see how I'm, I'm nobody excited. laughs. I'm excited too. It's gonna be great. They're very poorly received, so. <laughs> No, you just don't understand comedy. <laughs> oh, I can't, can't wait. Yeah, I did. Because when I first saw the Resident Evil films, I thought, well, this is nothing like Resident Evil the game. This this really blows. Why but was it like the books? From the game? And then it kind of dawned on me that you don't want to use the characters from the game because then you know what's going to happen. They do. They have, they, have, they do have characters in the game. They have Chris Wesker and everything. Yeah, but he's saying oh, you, you don't want to use them because you'll know what yeah. happens to them. It's like, not necessarily. Why would you have to copy the story one-to-one -one if you're copying that you could have? Well, I want to see a live-action Chris do. Redfield punch a boulder. That's actually what they do in <laughs> Resident Evil movies. They take the characters from the games, they give them completely different plot lines. so he's just wrong. God, did you see the one where they bring in the African executioner from the shantytown from Resident yeah. Evil 5? But it's yes. like an urban environment, so there's no fucking reason for that yeah, character to be there. It. 
they're just putting it there. Like people will remember this. We've got to eat fat movies. That shit. Yeah. Marathon. I'm gonna do all <laughs> the Resident Evil. Be a fan of the games and be surprised at the same time. Then, of course, they later mixed in characters from the games to the point that it is completely stupid. But they don't have magic now, do they? <laughs> <laughs> big point. So let me. Oh, I think I'm gonna, make a, I'm gonna make a light suggestion. Maybe fantasy isn't your genre. I have a light suggestion. Don't sit next to the window like that, where the blinds are closed, and it makes that weird glow. <laughs> but they don't have magic now, do they? <laughs> What is so, this? And so he's here's the thing. I, I don't know if this is parody or not, but I think that after we watch his stand-up, we'll know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, apparently oh, oh, Anna okay. knows who this is. Oh. You are going to come and kill me. <laughs> okay, well... Um, well know, no, we established we don't want right? to put that much effort. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Good lord, you can't oh, even- Oh no, I was wrong, somebody did take credit for that. Oh no. <laughs> the music lyrics. I was oh. horribly, horribly wrong. <laughs> Alright, All right, well, fellas, uh... here we go. So, yeah. Let's see this stand-up comedy. We're not climbing the rocks on the bridge. He wasn't that funny. Um, hopefully, so, before the end of the night, hopefully we'll get somebody funny enough for you guys to clap for on the way up. Ouch! Yeah. It's not the same guy. Well, this guy's introducing, right? He's intro. Oh, okay. oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, he's so short. Alright, so this story is called The First Time a SWAT Team Descended Upon Me at a Movie Theater. See if you can tell where this is going. Oh so, my god, this ago, is actually critic, more embarrassing. Was... You're interrupting his incredible story about the SWAT team that descended upon him the first time in the theater. <laughs> oh, oh, shut up. <laughs> the presenter has been getting more laughs than him so far. Not a good sign. This is more embarrassing than the Arthur Fleck stand-up in Joker. <laughs> oh. And he couldn't even speak. <laughs> so, a few years ago, I was a movie critic, and I had these uh, tickets for advanced screening of The Amazing Spider-Man. And this is in Derby, small theater, Spider-Man, not a whole lot else to do around town, free tickets. It's going to be pretty crowded, so I show up about an hour and a half early, and I'm looking for a good seat, and I find a good seat in the middle. And next to me are two girls, and they're young. And oh no, get him out of there. I thought, hey, this would be a great time to do a case study. See if it's really no. that important to have a Spider-Man reboot already, it only been 10 years. Uh, do they know of Tobey Maguire? I mean, like, who doesn't already know Spider-Man's origin story? I mean, you guys can say it with me. Peter Parker is from the planet Krypton. <laughs> so, I'm talking to him. Hey, you know about the Spider-Man? Yeah, no, I gotta pause for Oh, uh, my God. <laughs> no, I was, the cringe. I was, the cringe. I was stunned. No. That's why I didn't pause. Like, <laughs> wow. Listen, melting. you are, you, you Philistine. <laughs> you are not an art lover, okay? This is this is gold. <laughs> yes. Say it with me, Peter this is Parker. Amazing. It's from Krypton. <laughs> see, he mixed up. See her. The joke is that Peter Parker isn't from Krypton. That's Superman. That's a different superhero. Oh, he's, he's he's mixing them up. Because you expect right? that that one would know it very well, but in yeah. truth, one does not know it very well. Exactly. Yeah. Know about it, and the, you know that's all good. And they got up and left. There's like musical chairs going <laughs> on the theater. Nobody wants to sit behind Shaq, right? So th this is going down. An hour into the movie, uh, Spider-Man he's fighting the lizard on the bridge, and I get a tap on my shoulder, and I hear, uh, "You need to come outside now." And I'm like, "Okay, uh, let's see what this is about." Uh, and I was kind of hopeful, actually, because this was actually on July 3rd, 2012. This was one day before a segment I shot for Tosh Tosh and, was story, here, yeah. and I thought, oh, maybe they weren't talking about that. Maybe you weren't. I had a thought to myself. I was like, I am listening to make sure I follow the events. And then my brain was like, why, though? Like, <laughs> Because I got to see how the SWAT team is involved. Yeah, we got to see how this ends, brain. Come on. I think I already I... know how this ends. Pretty sure he talked to a... 
couple underage girls. Don't ruin it! Don't ruin it! Don't ruin it! Don't ruin it! This is a Spoilers, genius. Man, come on! That work. Jeez. I'm walking over to uh, the hallway, thinking, okay, this is way it, I guess. And that's the I hallway was to. about 15 feet and from the door. One of the cops said, the it's painted, painted more of a so, uh, There's a complaint that you're trying to abduct two young girls. <gasps> and I was like, you know. What an absurd situation. How does this conclude? Oh, a I little hope... caught off guard about that. And I could have said, hey, I'm a movie critic. Here's the magazine I write for. Here's the website. I just want to know if it was really that necessary to retell Spider Man. I can't be story. creepy. That's I'm a movie awesome. critic. But I didn't say that. <laughs> I, I said, uh, have you seen Fight Club? And I, mean, like, I don't talk to cops on a regular basis. I, I don't know. I'm white. Uh, how am I supposed to know you're not supposed to say stuff like that? So <laughs> I love how she showed it. Wow. Racist. Okay. Like, here's the thing. I know what I know a thing or two about being white. You're not funny. It's what oh, I dare uh, say white uh, yeah. people jokes almost. <laughs> like, oh yeah, white ugh. people jokes are great. I can do those. Those are really great. But I mean, yeah, like it's possibly the simplest, dullest, racist joke you could ever make. Like, mm -hmm. all right, there you go. I'm not a movie critic now, and uh, I can't go within a hundred yards of a school. So, show of hands, who's really excited about dying? Oh, okay. I thought this was a, what, was that like, a joke. Open -minded that was the end of the I'm story. Dead. That was the end of the. Was that a just a that was like a one line of bonus at the end there, the dying one? That wasn't connected to the story, I... right? Not connected. Yeah, right. Or was that just him being like, "Okay, that didn't work. Who wants to die? <laughs> I guess me." <laughs> like, I so, you can come and kill me if you want to. I, I love how <laughs> he said, uh, "I used to be a movie critic. Now he's." <laughs> he failed at that. Now I'm out. a stand-up comedian. I just realized the fucking name of the sef sex trafficking at movie theater. Like, oh, that's... <laughs> this is beyond cringe at this point. I, I, I feel bad for him, really. Yeah. The only thing that will save him now is dick sex machina. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Don't knock it till you try it, right? So I would like to think about how I'm going to get murdered, and I, I kind of assume it's going to be by cyborgs from the future sent back in time to take me out, because I'm going to be much more important later in life, of course. Uh, I just kind of hope it doesn't happen yeah. yet. I've got a few things to check off on my bucket list. Uh, primarily, i got to wipe my hard drive of child porn. Hey, follow me on Twitter, um, one Friday. Oh, he's trying to be the edgy comic. These are all so lame. Yeah. Um, Before the cyborgs kill me, I gotta get rid of my child porn. You're like, um, I'm I'm gonna have to tell you, buddy, that uh, that joke didn't quite land. <sighs> yeah. You kind of gotta, you gotta kind of uh, like set up that you're the edgy comic before you just randomly say that too. Otherwise, it's yeah, because just... because everyone's like, oh, everyone's like, oh, oh, are we doing edgy? Are we doing edgy? I guess I is he act is he. A yeah, I mean, before like, it was just he talked to two girls in a movie theater and asked them a question about Spider-Man. Is he like... That doesn't really set up child the, uh, porn. You're like, attitude. oh, okay. That's what... Yeah. yeah okay. All right. Well, that was okay. possibly the worst joke I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah, that and was to be clear, not, he not good. So good. He uploaded it himself. He, he uploaded this. Yep. Even worse, who's filming this? Peepo. Is the camera know, moving, or did he just set up a tripod in the back? Well, I thought I saw the camera moving at the beginning of the video. It's handheld, he might have bumped it? it. Yeah, he might have done that. That's true. Thank you. Oh, that's it. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Somebody's, yeah. somebody's holding the camera. Oh, pity, pity clap. I mean, you gotta, because... No, he's... they're clapping because he's leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did he just stop on the child porn thing? Like, yeah, that was, that that was, yeah, gotta that delete was my zinga. child porn. Okay, bye guys. That's the big zinga. <laughs> the zinga. I'll see y'all later. Check me out. I got my Twitter at Kitty Diddler nine one two. Oh, wow. That was something, buddy. You gotta, you gotta figure out what your strengths are in life, because you're failing. It's not talking. No. <laughs> Uh, so, having watched this, um, you can now tell that his video was fully sincere. Yes. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. And now so, I know why Lord of the Rings sucks. You're right. Because <laughs> I was thinking maybe this is. I I I I assumed from the ratio, five up and thirty down, uh, that there would be like a a difference. It would be the same. I I had a suspicion that it would be the same thing, just in video I, format. I yeah. can't believe it, but Arthur Flex stand up was legitimately better than that. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you're right. I was yeah. joking at first, but wow. That is there was... horrendous. That's the I worst stand up I've ever seen. That's that's the thing. I think I'm really easy to make laugh, right? I, I think that I find the humor in these things and I, I can laugh really easily. I love stand up. I watch I watch bad stand up. I don't watch Amy Schumer or anything, but I like I watch bad stand up because I, I'm it's fine. This was really painful. It was hard to watch. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I think I think Stephen Hawking had better stand up than that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he couldn't even stand up, so I don't even I I, I'm also. this. I'm the same. I like watching amateur comedians. I like watching people bomb. I've seen people bomb. This I've never seen anything like that though. Yeah, this was like drone strike into an Afghan wedding bomb. It was really bad. <laughs> yeah. I I'm very curious about his video about why YouTube sucks because of dislikes. I mean, I'm not. you're not. You're not curious. You think you know exactly why? I'm, I'm no just gonna read the transcript. The same things. I'm just reading the auto transcript. That's what I'm gonna do. Auto transcripts because I don't want to listen to his fucking. Yeah, I, I don't want to. I don't want to hear it now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the uh, subtitles YouTube are does funnier give than you the ability to ban some accounts from watching your shit, but they don't let you see who thumbs it down. <laughs> oh, he uh, really is talking about his brother know. over here. Too. <laughs> uh, YouTube just go ahead and lets haters hate it. Lets the cyber bullies hide under the cloak of total darkness. They can make up a name to comment and hate on you, or they can just not even bother commenting. They, they just thumb down your shit so you don't even find it in search results forever. Mm. Man. Okay. Yeah, that, that, um, yeah. Oh, God. I'm sorry. Someone, the only comment on that video was, uh, was this. The only one. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. <laughs> oh, good. That comment is more funny than the stand-up. Congratulations. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Look, he couldn't hack it as a movie reviewer. He couldn't quite get it as a stand-up. Look, let's see what else is next. You know what? What's next in the world of this guy? I'm I'm sure it'll work out. Third time's the charm. He got oh. three movie tickets out of that. Yeah. That's crazy. Assuming Somebody that's true. Somebody actually gave him free movie tickets. And he used it to hit on underage girls. <laughs> no, he just asked them if they knew about Spider-Man was from Krypton, because that sh that's gold. Hey, mm. you girls want to come and sling a web with me? That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, th this, this has been floating around uh, for a while. It's called In Defense of Bad Movies from the Devil's Advocate. Oh, boy. So I'm I'm interested. We all we all here have seen movies, right? Oh mm -hmm. yeah. Hands up, Never hands up. Movies. There you go. Lots of you. Good. So, I saw a movie. Yeah. Let's 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 check it out. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Taylor, and I what am the that? advocate oh, of the devil. <laughs> Last week I ranted and raved about No. Okay. What is oh. this outfit? What yeah. are you what's going on with this day? <laughs> rubber duckies on this time. You got a little duck tie. How adorable. Aww, to be fair, fun. I would super wear that myself. The just the tie. <laughs> just <laughs> like really. and nothing else. So you'd be naked except for the tie. <laughs> yes. Sure. Why? I mean we can yeah. you know this we'll, guy, talk, we'll talk this in private, guy, right? This guy reminds me of a dude I used to work with. Oh no. Who was uh he was forty six and hadn't had sex because he said he was wait saving himself until after marriage. Oh, he looks exactly the same. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> I think it's the same guy. <laughs> same dude. He just wanted to make the, this video. At The Last Jedi, the line of Star Wars videos, and certainly not the first of its kind either. To be quite honest, considering this is being filmed at the same time as that one, I'm not too sure what the audience reaction is going to be. 
But I do know that a wide variety of people have claimed that Star Wars Episode Eight was a bad movie. While I disagree wholeheartedly, <laughs> it's gay, it Doctor think, Who. <laughs> what exactly is a bad movie? It's one of those things that I think means something different for everyone. For some, it'll be a plot that doesn't make well, that's sense. Not a useful for standard. others, there will be issues with pacing or the acting or the CGI. Whatever the case may be, there isn't a hundred percent consensus. It's all subjective. Because of that, no, it's not all subjective. Well, <laughs> hey, listen to his argument for why God. Mostly opinion. Maybe the movie in question isn't bad. Maybe it's just that you personally don't like it. Oh, and Lost Jedi's oh, example. That's a good movie, yeah. Oh, Lost Jedi's great. No, that's what bad. I think, anyways, and that's why I can look at so-called bad films like Jurassic Park 3 or Batman and Robin and still see oh. some good within them. Then I there are... Oh, that's different. That's different. Also, Saying a yeah. film is bad doesn't mean that it's 100% failure on every conceivable level. Also, how can you say that like there's no such thing as a bad movie and then say, I can still see good and bad? And you're like, wait, but wait. So wait. there are good and bad elements. Oh. How does that work? I'm confused. There's no such thing as good and bad, you know? It's all opinion. But then, also, you can see good in the bad. Like, what? Very strange. What? Very strange. Films like Bur Catwoman. Or The Room. Movies that no matter what Why way you slice it, Why did he cringe at The are... Room? The Room is the best of those three. Is... Yeah, that's the best <laughs> of the three. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. to appreciate Catwoman. cinema, okay? Not good films. They're the kind of movies that are practically I thought it was all subjective. But here's the thing. Defending yeah. the undefendable is my job. At least on this channel. Ind and today, I'm going to generalize a bit and explain what is so good about bad flicks. Sweet. But they're bad. What, what is this? Oh, is wow. Your, your shirt's too short, my dude. Someone in the chat said he's uh, wearing all the clothes he owns. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the fact that his intro is different hair but same clothes does imply, like, consistency. Okay, am I, am I just... Maybe I'm insane. What's wrong with the look of his hand? Why does it look like clay? Because of the green screen cutout. Yeah, out. I can't get between the fingers quite right. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's all fucky. Um, and with his ducky. You think Did that... I, I can believe it because there's no way they would let this person into an actual courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> Unless he was a defendant. Oh, look, he's not being honest. Oh. But a devil's advocate is trying to steal man a position. That's no, not... it just means you oh. lie. Okay. I want you guys to join me as I hop aboard a little something called the Wayback Machine. That's right, it's time to delve a little deeper into my own past. It was the year Why? 2000 and something. During those marvelous personality shaping- So you were shaping 10? <laughs> Who knows? High school years that we'd all love to binge oh. drink into forgetfulness. During most of my English classes- You were not old enough to drink in 2000. <laughs> you were a naughty man. You're to be fair, he did say 2000 and something, so it could be 2017. Oh, yeah. 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 Yesterday, when I reached the legal <laughs> age of surviving. English classes. Classes I can look back at now and wish I paid. He looks like a really shitty Southpaw. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Southpaw, yeah, he... help him out. What did you do? <laughs> He's like if you removed a This is Northpaw. <laughs> North Discount Paw. Paw. No, he looks like a, a Mormon like, Mark After Dark. I, I feel like Northpaw would look like a very manly Viking. This guy's like Southwest Paw. Um, <laughs> Mouthpaw? <laughs> Mouthpaw. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, now we have to. <laughs> Mouthpaw. <laughs> like he should put his paw in his mouth. I don't know. No. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm okay. No, it's all good. It's the only laugh we've had in a while after that last stand up. So, oh, so good mouth paw. I like it. Paid more attention to. There were several times when book reports and oral presentations were due. I do believe I've mentioned this before, but I've never felt overly comfortable doing public speaking. It sounds strange given what I do here, but this, this isn't is public speaking. You're in an empty room. room. Yeah. 
no one comes to your house with your weird green screen. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> This is just me in front of one dude and his camera with words that I've written and read through at least one time first. Wait, there's Not another crowd. dude? Apparently. The worst of times were when what was the he point of help? that? He has help what was making the point this? Of that I don't know. Is... He doesn't need help making this. The camera doesn't even move. Hmm. That's weird. That is strange. And the... Why he doesn't just go into the movie? Else? Oh, I'm <laughs> sad. He hasn't I mean, said anything in three years. Imagine being the lucky man behind that camera. Oh. <laughs> ah. He got himself a winner. Whoa. Holy shit. I need to show you guys this. All this right. Is, so his last right. video was uploaded two and a half years ago. And you gotta see, yeah, you got to see how much he's changed. Uh, is he fatter? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, no. Look at him. You got to see this shit. All right. Holy mm -hmm. Fuck. Oh, <laughs> you turned into Louis C.K.? That's not even... <laughs> There's no way Wait, that... The whoa, no. You said... This no. Is... No. That, it's the same guy. I scrolled through the rest of the video. These are the only two dudes in this video. You is it the bald guy? I, I don't... think so. He's got the, sh he's got that... the facial no, hair. The shit, the, uh... But he just talked about The Last Jedi. This is at, at most, what, three years ago? Compared to There's two... No like, way. what happened? What the fuck yeah. happened, crap? <laughs> Wait, I still don't know which one he is. I, I can't tell them apart. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make sense. All, all white purpose, people, how could he be either of these people? Body. I don't think I could do that. I don't think he can be these people. I don't think... <laughs> I mean, I could look through some other videos to see if maybe these are a couple friends, but that was the last video he uploaded. Did he, like, sell his channel to somebody? Oh, my God, no. These are just every single video. You look through them. It's just these two dudes. But they're not this guy. Wait, not, what is he? Is he the beardy baldy? I, if I had to guess, it would it would be that guy, I guess. But like the beard hair I mean, color is wrong. That's the one that we have to ask. Oh my god! No, I have I have definitive proof now. I have to. He's wearing. Okay, here we go. This. Oh, uh, <laughs> it, Give it to me straight, is, Doc. This is terrifying okay, stuff. Look, there is only one person in the world. Who would wear this tie? It's him. I knew it. In one, the fact that we couldn't figure out which one of those two that guy morphed into is telling in and of its own. I don't happened? understand how this happened. I don't understand. Dude, he lost the color in his beard. Lost all, all of his, his hair. hair. He's aged ten years in the span of one. Are you sure? Well, well, hold up, hold up. What if he had like cancer or something? Yeah, but you're you're right. It is like one year. I'm looking through the feed. He has he has the 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 the, the face and the look and the get up that we're looking at. And then well, does like he have two a videos later, chemotherapy treatment or something. He went Chad. Well, chemotherapy wouldn't let him keep his beard. That's true. I don't I don't know how key, I don't. I'm <laughs> trying to come up with logical <laughs> explanations as to how this happened, bro. Um. Well, I, what is what is the is it actually one year? Because I just I don't know that I believe this. This seems too <laughs> trippy can't to me. Be the same person. Maybe, so maybe these are re-uploads. Like maybe. Yeah, that could be it. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it's what weird because there it's like it alternates between like young looking him and old looking him. And the the reason why I'm convinced it's him is because like why would there be two dudes wearing the same tie? <laughs> no, it, it's literally like it's consistent... young him on April 25th and old him on May 4th. <laughs> maybe they share the tie amongst them. I was gonna say maybe the tie is like a chattel thing. They all wear the tie. All right, the so right, so his name is Chris. So do Dude. they have like a, a blurb thing at the bottom that says their names they... on it? I don't believe it. Well, I in the comments I don't... on the old him video, wait, wait. In the comments, it says "Good introduction, BD." We will miss Chris. We will miss Chris. Keep well, yeah, his eyes were a different color. Whoa, so the lighting's different. Maybe? Why did Chris leave? Chris left. He left, and then he left them the tie. And they <laughs> a it? little something to remember me by my duck tie. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was flipping. The channel I was, is insane. I was flipping back and forth between young, young him and old him, and I still honestly thought it was the same guy. And then it turns like, out, no, he's, he's a full-on different guy. 
It's because yeah. I just pulled another one out of the two. Look, you scared Cause... everyone for a moment there. Okay? Yeah, yeah I, I just noticed your, his ears are different. It, it's just, <laughs> yes, yeah. Of ears. It's just strange because they got like the same facial hair and they wear the same tie. It's like, I, he was convincing for a moment. Like the episode of of the Outer Limits. Okay, okay, <laughs> I, I, I'm act, I'm actually like relieved. Good thing Chris didn't do math and got himself to like. <laughs> You're okay, White Chris. Status. Keep keep reviewing movies, Chris. You'll be all right. Well, they the channel's been dead for two years. I don't think he's reviewing. You'll be all right. Anything. You'll be all right. <laughs> no, no. How far went on? I I feel it. I feel it in my bones. Mouth the morals is still and the book books were the same bloody thing. What do you think identical means? Identical. Did he just same, say bloody? Person, same person. Me. Wait, what was I that about the same person? Go back. Go back 10 what, seconds. What just happened? One of one dude and his camera with words that I've written and read through at least one time first. Not a crowd. The worst of times were when the orals and the book reports were the same bloody thing. What do you think identical means? Ident, same, equal person, same person. Me. I love to read. That was directly then, after we were discussing to... if he was the same person. In yeah, I know. It was kind of creepy. <laughs> he knew. Isn't that creepy? To yeah. explain to a class of people who couldn't care less about something that I did in fact care about? Well, that was difficult to say the least. As in most things in life, there were times when I did better than others. Either the material wasn't clicking as easily with me, or other times where I just flat out was too lazy meth to paw. do meth <laughs> <laughs> anything. Actually, a lot of times it was just the lazy part. Here's the kicker. They both took approximately the same amount of effort. I'm not kidding. The reports that were great and the reports that were but just done out were. of necessity, it still took the same amount of time. I see where he's going with this. Good Dude. good movies and bad movies, they take, they take a lot of effort. <laughs> yeah. We already knew that. And I... I think the the question is interesting, like because there's different ways of measuring what's bad. Like there's plenty of movies that are bad that I would watch. It doesn't necessarily mean unwatchable, but this guy does seem to be definitely going down the everything is subjective route. And I don't like his um, his mission statement. Well, he's just, just be... saying he defending the indefensible just because it's indefensible. Like hopefully you would think there's something he finds about it that's redeeming at the very least, and he's not just doing it because yeah. like. Yeah, He's digging up bad stuff and trying to redeem it. Yeah, with the whole so he simultaneously says, "I look for the good in the bad," but then also is like, "Haha, I'm gonna lie." You're like, "Okay, I'm getting." Mm -hmm. But um, the the part that gets me is just like, you know, you have to appreciate the effort goes into stuff that ends up being bad. And you have to appreciate that still. And it's like that's usually like a given. I'm afraid. Yeah, like, we, we it takes effort to make a lot of stuff. The same resources, and that is my first point. Bad movies take just as much time and effort as good movies to make. You were very wrong. on point there. You read it very well. I mean, but he's still wrong, because right, fucking okay. movies that go, like, hyper in detail, I'm thinking, like, like Alien, or Aliens, uh, getting the sets um, mm. to, to, like, meticulously be in detail. Well, I imagine the room was more... Let us go to the shop. Table. Yeah, but, but Mahler, think about how much time they spent on Lord of the Rings, and those suck. True. <laughs> you know, the room probably wasn't a great example because they did a lot of their own shit in that, right? Like, didn't he put like loads of money into it? I don't know. There, the, the, you know what I mean. There are examples where people don't give a fuck at all, and they're just like, I don't know, record this thing, do that, Ugh. and to try and <laughs> we got you got to be. This is actually on 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 the viewer sometimes to try and notice how much uh, has actually gone into a thing versus you know going to the production details and finding out and then appreciating them according to that. Mm -hmm. I have an odd feeling that uh, the room took a lot more emotional effort on the part of everyone who had to work <laughs> with Tommy <laughs> than, than like say I don't know Lord of the Rings took for the actors you keep using the word I don't think it means what you think it means what actors? in fact there are plenty right. of times where bad movies are actually more heartfelt and sincere than better ones that I, I, don't, I, don't I don't know what to do with that. I think I want some examples for that one because Neil you know. Breen. <laughs> like so, someone, someone was like desperately trying to make a good thing, then fails miserably, and then some guy who casually poops out something great. I guess is the comparison there. But again, doesn't really matter if we if we're trying to be 
objective about the piece. It's like it's not how much effort the person put in or how much heart the person put in. But that usually yeah. shows in a lot of work anyway, how much heart people put in. I'll give you an example. Let's take a look at the Phase 2 Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. There's a good chunk of the audience that I'm sure has seen them all, probably multiple times, myself included. Now, some of those movies were really well put together, like Captain America Winter Soldier and Guardians of the Galaxy. Hell, Winter Soldier right. is still probably my favorite flick of the MCU. Okay, okay I'm on board. But then you had movies like Thor Dark World and Ant-Man. Movies that did very little with their own existence, and to me, always felt more like necessities to further move along the greater plot of the universe, rather than focusing on being a good movie on its own. Thor 2 and Ant-Man didn't take risks. I have trouble remembering most of Thor 2 since it really didn't do anything. Yeah, most people have that problem. Most people don't even know if they've Wait, seen it. there was a Thor 2? <laughs> <laughs> I legitimately can't so remember. So that's that where like... I left the lasagna. Blah, 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 blah. It's kind of worth studying. Like, people really can't remember Thor 2. Loads of people. It's just like, what was Thor 2 about? It's like elves or something? They were fighting on top of, like, a spaceship or, like, a platform that was... You know, I can point. remember like bits and pieces of like the beginning of the movie, but I genuinely can't remember a single thing in the last act. Well, isn't phase two where they had that they had one of the superheroes and he could never keep his balance? Um, it's called Slant Man. <laughs> <laughs> that sucked. Boo. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Still better than the stat that we watched, okay? It true. And Ant Man, you take a character whose big power is to grow big or small, and then use him to remind us all about the Avengers about a thousand times. That's a waste. I think our first move should be calling the Avengers. No, that's actually a plus in that film, as far as I'm concerned, because every fucking MCU movie up to that point pretended like nobody else existed. They're about to yeah. deal with something incredibly important, and Ant Man's like, maybe we should call the Avengers. And this is after he's been told by Hank, the guy there, that he fucking hates Stark. What? So, so and, and he, he sighs. He's like, oh, for fuck's sake. And, and, you know, they don't call the Avengers. So I don't... Oh, I, I, it, see, I see this as a plus for the Ant-Man uh, movie, not a, oh my god, stop reminding us of the... I don't even know... What's the... It's a universe. What's the problem? Oh, I, Reminds I me that, of... That uh, line actually made sense, yeah. What, remember it reminds in me of Deadpool, Iron Man, Iron Man where 3? they're just hanging out in the mansion. No one else is there. Yeah. In Iron Man 3, where the president is kidnapped and the, the fucking Iron Man suit gets stolen, and it's like, where's, where's Cap? Where's Thor? Did anyone know? Okay. Right. In Winter Soldier's shield comes crashing down, uh, fucking Fury is almost assassinated by Hydra. Where the fuck is Iron Man in that whole film? And, like, th th I think they casually mention him. They're like, are we sure we can trust him? It's like, tr what? Why the fuck would Tony be with Hydra? Like, after everything that's happened, really? Like, oh. I like Winter Soldier, by the way, but that's still stupid. But I can't call them bad movies either. They exist, they serve their purpose, but they weren't bad. And I would they serve their purpose, say but that... they don't justify their own, ex do anything with their own existence? What is... Like, what do you mean they serve their purpose? What is this really qualification for bad? That's weird. I don't understand. What is uh, bad well, to you, Well, Ant-Man's purpose was to introduce a man who is an ant. And he says, <laughs> yeah. and he acknowledges the existence of the Avengers so that later he can interact with the Avengers in a future film. Dun, 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 dun. It, it could have really just been like a, a, a small card. They could have just held it up. Hello, audience. Just before the real movie starts, we would like to inform you there is a man who dresses as an ant. He can cha he can change significantly. He in dresses size. as an ant. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Could you, could you I, have replacing the whole film with just a guy holding a card? Up? <laughs> I, I just want to point out something that the chat pointed out, which is that this man is dangerously close to making the white supremacist symbol, and that is very triggering. Yes. Oh boy. Also, I didn't even spot this meme. Dominoes. Oh, there we go. <laughs> we'll get your pasta wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's worse than being a bad movie. 
because at the end of the day, they weren't memorable. What does it mean to be oh, bad? Hitler was memorable. What does it mean to be bad? Tell me the answer, sir. Then you take a look at Birdemic or The Room. Movies that are absolute gutter trash. Have you ever tried to watch either of those movies on your own? It's a nightmare. Yes. With no, all those I moments that are endlessly quoted and repeated and The referenced. Room is not a nightmare, but... No, The Room is perfectly fine to get through. And I watched Birdemic and I was like, you're trying to be bad. Birdemic is genuinely difficult to get through. I had to it, like break it up. It's a real like, slog. Birdemic seems yeah. very insincere as a bad movie. Like it, it's too bad. They they knew how bad it was. Like come on. Mm. You know, I know I know people complain. I think there was a Birdemic too, and people complain. Oh well, they tried to to make that into a bad movie. Well, what was the first one? Come on, let's let's be real. Here. I think isn't the second one a little bit more like the first one might have been partially an accident. The second one's like all on purpose, trying to be bad. Yeah, I just think the first one was too. I mean, it seems. Shock seems, it, it, Five too, trying to be bad. I don't it, know. There needs to be a certain level of quality to make me suspend my disbelief that they're <laughs> not just trying to be bad. Like the yeah. room, I'm like, yeah, no, that he, I don't think he was trying to make a bad movie. Like the first Birdemic is so bad that not even a high schooler would make such a terrible film. Yeah, the lack like, of self awareness you would need. I, I just don't buy it. There's absolutely no conceivable way that none of the actors just knew that that was horrible. Like, to be yeah. fair, the actors in the room mostly probably knew it was horrible. Well, yeah, but this is like a new level of horrible. Yeah, yeah. No, it's totally, it's different. I mentioned last week how as long as there's a reaction, that's a sign. You either succeeded or you succeeded at finding something that didn't work. The just existing Marvel uh, movies At what point are... does the word succeed lose value? Yeah. Hmm. As long as you got a reaction that isn't, I fell asleep, you won. You're like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Unmemorable. But some of those terrible movies just stick out at you. And have you seen the people who have worked on them? I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did So, again... Because I had to stop myself. Like a lot of effort actually did go into the room, right? Like it wasn't wasn't a shit as a lot people thought. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much time. How long? Wasn't did there, like they a shit ton filming? of takes as well. It's just that they weren't very talented. That's all. I'm sorry. Did not hit her. I did not. Oh hi, Mark. Guys like there was Tommy a case Rousseau of like or... there was quite a few actors in the room that were like desperate for any kind of work to put on a resume to actually get into Hollywood, and that's mm. part of the reason why they stayed. Principal photography was four months on the room. Damn. Four months? Four <laughs> months. It was just like, wait, oh my what would I spend that on? What the fuck? So that is absolutely not just shit out right there. You know? If we put together a couple thousand dollars and spent four months, we could have something way better. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. It probably so vain. We wouldn't even you have to be in the same room. <laughs> like we, we, we could just do this. Just talk on Discord and make a, oh, a better be. movie in four months. Six million dollars <laughs> and four months. <laughs> I I know a bunch of actors through my uh, film program that I Dude. took, and a lot of them are are old, like you know, forties, some fifties, some of them. And they they're still doing like student films, and they'll grab a hold of they'll do anything that they get a hold of. Like they'll just like send me the script. Yep, I'll do it. They don't they don't even care like whether it's good or bad. They're just looking for exposure of any kind. Does that there's actually a, a lot help of... though, or does it or, or does it really hurt? Well, I think you run? can you can have a good actor doing really bad material, and someone will like see the potential there, and you know potentially cast them in a good film afterwards. I think you mean, that's like, why if they people elevate do it. the material type of thing. Yeah, if they they try their best, yeah. I mean, if the writing shit, I mean, that's a really fucking hard thing to do. But I think sometimes you can tell, like, man, that actor or actress would be really fucking good with the right script. That's just the material is awful. Uh, yep, yeah, I think a lot of people just do. They just want as much exposure as they can get. They think, fuck it, I'll do whatever. Someone said Tommy was given cocaine as a baby for sustenance. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it explains a lot. Would actually Our explain quite a bit, yeah. In some respects, thank God, because that dude just freaks me out. But on the other hand, they are Wait, so what? passionate about what they're doing. They don't think that they're making bad movies. 
they are putting every effort and resource in their heart and souls into creating the absolute best thing that they can. Which means what? Why? What are you saying? <laughs> I don't like that he's throwing. He's already declared there's no good or bad, and then he's like, they don't think they're making bad movies. It's like, are you saying it's possible to do that? <laughs> What are you doing? I don't understand. And yeah, they <laughs> failed. Did they really? Yes, that's a definite yes. Yeah. If we're still able to talk about it to this day, is that a failure? Yes. <laughs> what else is this? <laughs> a failure at the original goal, put it that way. <clears throat> yeah, they might have worked out well. I mean, Troll 2, you know, they have a fan following, the like, room, same thing. The reason so, I mean, they're successful it worked out is way. because they failed. <laughs> But as far as the original goal, massive total failure. Massive total. Maybe it's not the cinematic masterpiece that they were trying for, but there's just some undefinable, ineffable thing about truly bad movies that keep us going back to them. It's that- They're funny. It's they're, they're really funny, yeah. Yeah. It's not hard. It's not some kind of crazy thing that none of us can grasp. <laughs> One thing that I think, personally, a lot of people need. I think everyone on the planet has that one dream, but not everyone tries to accomplish it. Maybe it's a book they want to write, or maybe it's being an actor or an astronaut. Oh, this video is someone's dream that died, so... <laughs> <laughs> one dream gives them hope. It gives them strength. It's what makes their eyes light up whenever they talk about it. It's what makes these terrible flicks so memorable. Because deep down, the people involved were putting their all into it. Not just checking things off on a list of things that needed to be put into a movie. It's why so many rom-coms just fall flat with me. Because you swap out the names and they're all pretty much identical. There's that word again. It's why I long for television shows and hell, every form of entertainment. Yeah, I didn't think I'd say this, but like, leave rom-coms alone. They have differences. <laughs> how, could you, <laughs> how could you say that? So mean. Entertainment why I search for things that try something new and different, something I haven't seen before. Yes, a lot of bad movies are the cinematic equivalent of a train wreck. It What do you mean by that, though? What did they, because he hasn't, he, he, he keeps talking about like different levels of, I'm assuming he's gonna get them for filmmaking um, and then start to get like some specifics. He mentioned plot holes really early on and then he mentioned like some other aspects. What I'm gathering from this video as a whole is like, hey, there's some fun to be had in bad movies. And I'd be like, yep, that's, we do we do like them for that. Doesn't really make them good movies though, does it? No, yeah, that's the that's the thing for sure. People in the chat are calling him Duck Tymon. <laughs> Duck Tymon. <laughs> Serves you on a personal level, and yet you can't look away. But to those involved, that could very well have been the greatest achievement of their lives. And finally, there is one other special something about bad movies that separates them from others. All right. The fan base. You love me. You really love me. <laughs> All right. Movie clip. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. The sense of community. See, The Room on the Surface is a terrible movie. And I hate to keep bringing it up, but it's also probably the greatest terrible movie. And because of that, it's still being shown all the time. There are traditions in place. I'm not even sure he knows what point he's making anymore. Like, yeah, he... I'm. I'm kind of. That I don't have. I don't feel like I have a lot to comment on here. This is a shit video. This is such a meandering video. Doesn't really make any sense. Like, he's just labeled a bunch of fu the the fun aspects of bad movies. It's like you haven't really defended bad movies. You just pointed out what we like about bad movies. It's like yeah, a sense of enjoying it together for its badness. But what about the ones that aren't enjoyable for their badness? I mean, there's a lot. The, the worst bad movies are the ones that you don't even want to watch because there's nothing to get from them. So yeah, pretty much. Video. And the yeah. reason why The Room is so funny is because it's so structurally broken in every conceivable way that our brains, we can't turn it off and just be like, oh, yeah, this makes sense. The reason it's funny is because it doesn't make sense. Mm hmm. And also, Guys, some of the worst bad movies are the really cynical ones that clearly nobody gave a shit about. Like, <laughs> the studio said, here, have some money, do a stupid movie, and then, you know what the audience will like, put in more whatever, you know, put Explosions. in... Explosions. 
explosion. That are exclusive to the viewing but experience in of it. The movie tours all year long, sometimes followed by Q and A's with the actors themselves. Meaning what? What have you? Yeah, what does so? it prove? What's your point? I will always remember the first time I watched this movie. I was with my roommates. I'll forget I your don't video. Care. I'm not using that as an excuse to point out a pun, although I did just now. I had to ask them to pause the movie about a dozen times because People I literally my couldn't puns. breathe from laughter at points. They were pointing things out to me that had I ever tried to watch this movie alone, I never would have noticed. What is it? What? Do you, what, 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 what? All right. What does that mean? <laughs> like the room, apparently. Meaning, this would be the way does that take you? It's like, right then, there are things in this movie that I hadn't laughed at prior to having someone show me them. You're like, okay. So? Yeah, yeah, really, that's my response so far to a lot of the things he's saying is just, uh, okay. okay. I just want him to take us somewhere else. He keeps presenting these things and then leaving them alone. And you're like, do something with that. Where is it going? What is it for? If we ever watch good movies together, and we do, all the time, then we have a good time. But the bad movies, those are instances that I will cherish. Because we all suffered together. You're not helping your point. You said you suffered. <laughs> oh. Despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary, I do hope I manage to shed some light into the goodness you did nothing. in bad movies. You oh, did. Wait, that was you done nothing because that's what we all knew about bad movies. That's like the whole I, appeal. I somehow remember more of the last guy's video <laughs> than I remember of anything that's happened. Did we just one. did we just watch a video without even knowing what the hell happened? <laughs> just, I, 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 I I'm, I'm a little can't a single thing he said. I think uh, I remember more of our like trying to figure out if he like got fucked up on meth and died then I, <laughs> then I remember about this oh yes mouth paw excellent mouth paw. <laughs> if he's saying like bad movies have their place in life like i have no problem with that like i'm glad they're around but, but if, he's, if he's trying to say that bad movies are actually good and you're wrong then uh obviously that's a we watched this video and we don't know what he was saying well, he started yeah. off saying that everything is subjective, but he's been talking about, like, <laughs> a room as an objectively bad movie, basically. I mean, I, yeah. I'm very confused by it. It's really hard to follow. I remember the well, beat of the music in the background more than I remember anything he said. <laughs> there was music the in the background. That is clearly visible in every misguided oh, effort or the memories you create while watching them. Bad movies can, at times, be so much more spectacular than good ones. That was his point? I guess. No one was going to disagree with that. I'm going to take him at his word that that is his point. Thor The Dark World is my favorite Avengers movie because it's so much more spectacular. There are some films that are just so bad that they're more enjoyable than a good movie. How about that? Bet you didn't know that. Good stuff. Thanks for watching. Ten minutes. Put an ad in the middle. Mm, yeah. There's a quote guy from is super one of naturally Jun forgettable. Junkies, Dan Merle, <laughs> Wait, who is? Talking about Jurassic <laughs> World. <laughs> Although it could have been Max Landis. <laughs> Wait. Max uh, Landis, what? Jurassic World, he mentioned. I'm, I'm peaked. Spectacular than good ones. There's a quote from one of the screen junkies, Dan Merle, I think. Talking about Jurassic World. Although it could have been Max Landis. He said that it is better for a movie to fail spectacularly than for it to just exist. You forget things that- Yeah, because people will talk about it. That's pretty much probably what they're gunning for. It'd be nice to know the context of what they were saying. Like, nah. Never mind. Just exist. But you remember the truly great and the truly terrible. As always, don't forget to hit that subscribe- So how about hit- I love that he says that as if like, there you go. So if ever you're reaching a middle area, make sure you tank your project. You're like, what? Yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> Useless this guy has more personality than he does. <laughs> That's true. Subscribe by everything we do That's here why he Genius left it Advocacy. behind. <laughs> and click the link in the description below to keep the conversation going on Discord. We love getting to what know this... our fans. You, you don't have any fans. Those. Much love must go in the direction of our patrons for giving us the support. But why? Hey, he's got four times more than the last guy. <laughs> <laughs> keep us going. You guys are the real heroes here.
Finally, what? but absolutely. How, how, how are four patrons? Let us know in the comments going. below what you think. <laughs> one of them are there was some one truly of bad movies that you just keep going back to time after time? Oh, it's one of those things. Or maybe you think. Tell us exactly how you feel. This is like stuff. Tell us how you feel in the comments below. We read all of our comments need because we get four of them and it takes just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I think they're just a waste of time. By all means, let your own views clash with my own, so that I may proceed to prove you wrong. Oh, left YouTube two years ago. But for now, in the case of bad movies, oh my God. the defense rests. Oh, that's, I'm glad this stick died. Oh. I mean, he needs someone... a fedora too. That's the that's the missing piece of the puzzle. Really? I tip my fedora to bad movies. In defense of arguments. Wait, what? This guy's such a loser. He could buy a fedora, but it's actually argument. a trilby. <laughs> I question how you know the difference. Huh? I, I love how this the thumbnail is just a guy pointing to a gap in his mouth and it says shit happens. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah. Well, that was worthless. Yeah. Moving was, on. We did it. Uh, woo yeah, what's next? Oh, it, on this adventure, who who knows though? In defense of arguments, why is that a video? <laughs> <laughs> in defense of argument, the argument, did he have a bad argument arguments. or something? And people called him out for it. He's like, well, in defense of bad arguments. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. But yeah. Uh. Beach. Jay Longbone, do you need are you are you do you be heading out? Yeah, my head's starting to hurt. I, I understand. After that last video, I can't believe it. <laughs> what in the world could have caused that? My head's been hurting for the past two hours. Mm hmm Um But you know, that that's I mean, I expected that coming in. That's why I tried to jump out right away. I see yeah, we we caught you. <laughs> I think you can escape. Cool. Um, yeah. Thank, uh, thank you for coming. Of course, and um, I, I don't know if we'll see you again before we close out. I don't even know how long Rags and I have left, but the trucking shall continue on as supposed to. And uh, thank you, thank you for coming as well. We go. Thank you for having me. Train. See you. I'll see bye you guys. Bye bye. Dun, dun, dun. bye. Have a good one. Oh Thanks my you. God. After that cracked video, I got recommended another cracked video called How Avatar Will Actually Be Remembered Throughout History. Oh! Um. The problem is, is that I kind of forgot Avatar ten years ago after I first watched it. The Last Airbender or the uh, Blue People? The Blue, Blue people. people. Oh my god. <laughs> also, hello everyone. Oh, oh my god. Hello. 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 Who is it? Oh, it's, it's Face Chase. Some uh, fucking uh, asshole race. hookers. Welcoming. Hello, yeah, everyone. No. Oh, oh, it's oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm used to it. It's okay. Oh, it's their odd oh. way of showing their appreciation for me. Um, Hi. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, yeah, like, no, just, uh, just go ahead and type. It's I'm, fine. I'm capturing a uh, footage of Metal Gear Solid because I'm I'm actually hardcore grinding towards that uh, Death Stranding video. So anyone in chat who's looking forward to that, it's uh, in progress. Why do you have to rip into things when people worked really hard on them? That's why I just learned. Why can't you evil. like shit? <laughs> just appreciate. Just turn your brain off. They're trying, and you're shitting all over them. <laughs> Let's see you make a game. Yeah, Get you guys have no idea how grateful i am that youtube has the stop recommending this channel option because yeah one, be better cracked if it was video, just stop. one cracked video and now it's recommending me every single thing they've made you yeah, know what works really works. well is just turn your watch history off i did that like a year ago and man you youtube is so much better since then <laughs> well hmm. no i don't want to do that because sometimes i'll like watch a video and then i'll get distracted and then my phone will just automatically like oh yeah that is a pain in the ass that's, Which that's is fucking just why annoying. it's nice to have the, the, uh, the watch history there, so I can be like, oh, there it is. Yeah. No, I wish you could just have that part, like resume the video on a different thing or something, like a different device yeah. or whatever. Yeah. It kind of already has that, doesn't it? Like if you just 
like at night when I turn off my computer and then I go and I try to resume the video from a mobile device or my PS4 or whatever, it usually picks up right where it left off, but like maybe 30 seconds behind. Oh, yeah, but like if I don't remember what So video. not where you left off. With your watch history <laughs> off? Touche. Ah, touchy. With, with your watch history off, it does that? Um. Oh, I, my watch history is never off, so I, I don't know. Yeah, I just assumed I mean. it was like a. I assumed it was like a default feature, like all the time. No, no. It's 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 the watch history. It, it remembers like what you watched and where you were, and it stalks you. It just fucking stalk. It keeps all of the like. Oh, you watched three minutes of this video six years ago. Daddy Thanks, Google YouTube. is everywhere. I've just grown to accept it. The watch history isn't even accurate all the time. Like it'll have that red line at the bottom of the thumbnail, and yeah. it'll it'll show you like you watch the whole video, and it's like I watched the first second of it. What are you talking about, YouTube? Yeah, it does that a lot too for me. But how is everyone? Good. I'm all right. Why are you implying otherwise? The fuck. <laughs> <laughs> are you offended? Are you, are you upset? Are you mad? I have been Trigger, the triggered. Triggered. Yeah. You gonna shit and come? Oh. <laughs> you, I mean, you, I will. Dick sex machina. <laughs> dick sex machina. You say that like so you don't, don't understand dick sex machina. What's wrong with you? Dick sex machina. I mean, I've heard the first one, but you know. Dick sex machina. machina. All right. You guys ready for an incredible video that was supposed to be covered like a million years ago, but never, never did. Okay, but it's actually going to be incredible. Yes, this one's got high production value. Listen, the Plus. thumbnail, the thumbnail. Let me show you this shit. Okay. Also, Muller, how many fucking times are you going to change your avatar tonight? I was watching earlier when a uh, fucking Tonald was in the call, and uh, oh, you changed it like eight times. <laughs> I was very impressed. All so the that's not many, have. is it? Is it, She's changed honest. his thumbnail more times in this one stream than I have in every stream I've ever been in. He <laughs> changes his icon more in one stream yeah, than most You can tell the production values are high lives. because they did a little jealous. thing where the words were... in the thumbnail go behind the characters in the thumbnail. That's when you know it's pristine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Is I everybody mean, everybody in the watch together? Yeah, are you doing? Are you, mm? uh, I am. Uh, no, I don't know. Mm, look at me! Is. I turn up to the, well, you fat, but don't get in the watch together. That's you. Oh, the very <laughs> top, or no? I just reposted it. Thank you. That's very Honestly, kind of you. Baller, I don't no even problem. know how I've been able to change your profile that you. much. I remember when I tried to do that, and I got stuck as Stalin for two and a half hours. Damn See? it! I hate it when I get stuck as Stalin. <laughs> Someone in the chat actually mentioned that. That's beautiful. I'm glad someone right, remember when go. I was stuck as Joseph Stalin. Okay. Make stuff presents. Yeah. This, so I, I believe uh, Smudcast may have covered this at some point. I'm not sure. This is the first time for us restoring balance to the Star Wars fandom. As you guys know, it's a bit splintered after everything that happened. But this, this <laughs> yeah, will bring be, us together. This should be an easy fix. Let's do it. You can tell he's serious with the different font types and the four periods. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, four the periods. sans serif on the bottom. <laughs> okay. Are you or have you ever been uh -huh. a fan of Star Wars? Yes, disturb. 100%. Hiya, I am Brandon, and I am a Star Wars fan. I have been ever since I was a kid. Oh, yeah, ever since I was a kid. Yeah, this is going to be good. I'm getting into the groove. All right, we're like, hey, look, all Star Wars fans, everything's documentary great. style. And then, and then the music will sour, and then everyone's gonna get really sad. They'll be like, Star Wars is good anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Genesis I better know be. It's not the movie's fault. It's all those people who don't like its fault. Space, those fucking haters. Saga, and it's it's just really fun. I am currently a Star Wars fan. When I was younger, I was a Star Wars fanatic. I wish you were I'm a Barber a fan. fan. <laughs> I was going to say, that's a hell of a neckbeard. That's beard. two in a row with terrible facial hair. Guys, that come on. That was the greatest neckbeard I've ever seen. Look, yeah, it's not clipping that thing. Guys, choice, come on, style. please. Hey, you don't, maybe they like this rag. Maybe this is their preference. What do you know? Maybe that's the problem, Mahler. <laughs> as, a, as a beard connoisseur myself, that was quite sickening. Yeah, you have a nice beard, unlike that guy. I'm proud of my unlike beard. That. I'm proud of that. So I can, like, what does your beard smell like? Yeah. What? What does your beard smell like? Do you use, like? Do you you use like beard oil? Do I? No, I can't. Well, I tried using beard oil, but it's too thick for it to really 
do anything. Maybe I'm using the wrong oil. But... <laughs> like movie Bob, he's too thick to really do anything. Dude, he floats, oh, what do you mean? Shit. <laughs> we fucking doing it, boy. Oh, good. He, uh, he does the floating thing, what do you mean? He can still move. <laughs> like a zeppelin? Yeah, they can move. <laughs> like what? I don't know why Sable said he rolls, though. No, he developed powers. Remember, there's whole lore about this. Diabetes. Uh, he oh. can eventually move downhill really fast. He fell into a vat of <laughs> levitation. It makes complete sense Momentum. from Reddit. Evan Monroe said, by the way, this guy has self-admitted to deleting negative comments in this video. He admitted it on the Smudcast. In fairness, he's trying to restore balance to the Star Wars fandom. <laughs> <laughs> in his comments section. And by balance, all the comments have to I be picture, positive. I picture yeah. him being a paladin of sorts. He's like, I must destroy the negative comments. They are tearing us apart. I am... I'm... I'm lawful selfish. <laughs> A very young child since I saw the original trilogy no. and growing up and watching the prequels. Imagine having a TLJ. TLJ. Yeah. Jesus. Imagine seeing that every day. <laughs> I want him to show someone who's like, oh, I love the OT. I love the prequels. It was great. I love Ten. Them. They're great. He watched the, <laughs> the, 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 the sequel After films and it just cuts yeah. to him in a fucking alleyway and he's just like, that. it's all. William <laughs> Wallace died to give me freedom so I could fall in love with The Last Jedi. I really want someone to draw a mauler, like, with a switchblade in a dark alleyway approaching, like, a, a current Star Wars fan. Why? Just a what, menacing what I, expression. What, why? What? <laughs> <laughs> That's just the illustration I, I got it. in my head. I need it. Illustrate it right now. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> I need it in my life right now. I like Star new Wars? Star Wars. You can come and kill me now. Jokes on them, vaginas are icky. Vaginas. Been a Star Wars fan for as long as I can. My remember. Macintosh Since computer has a TLJ screenshot on it. <laughs> I have calls. got it because it's Macintosh. That's how you know he's a fan, by the way. Putting TLJ <laughs> on his little Mac back there. Nice. I saw it. Good stuff. Am I or have I ever been a fan of Star Wars? Yes, absolutely. Have been since I was. Since before oh, I. Oh, God, this is a 30 minute video. Uh -huh. If you can't remember, then how do you know you were a fan of it? Checkmate, Look. atheist. Get fucked. Oh shit. He's figuring why, himself why they... out. Let him let him do his thing. Why are they asking it so weird? It's like, are you or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? Well, this is the thing. I guess is that the point? The treatment like it because now it's like a statement to say you're a fan of Star Wars? Like, oh my god. Is that what it, it's supposed to it's supposed to be reminiscent of that, is what you're saying? I don't know if that's what they're going for, but it's um I'm just waiting for it to turn. Get, get to the power, it turns. Do it. Yeah, cuts to black and then. But oh. then. Part part zero. zero. Oh my god, this is the most pretentious <laughs> thing. As a part zero. Isn't this supposed to start up. in part one? You just one? don't understand art, you fucking plebe. Yeah. Or like ground zero for bad video. Oh, nice. Oh, take oh. a really big shit. <laughs> so, <I have> <laughs> intro. What do you mean? We got and... that covered over here. Have fun. Jeez. <laughs> so he goes for the real fancy creative font that he found on Fontface. And then he goes for a uh, Trajan Pro. I think this might be standard ass Windows font. He you can just ignore the glance. The opening crawl of a Star Wars. This might be the single ugliest, I don't know, screen I've ever seen. I don't like that the T <laughs> is smaller just... than the I. I don't know. We saw some pretty atrocious yeah. beards back there. I don't know. Like... It's... Wow. Like, I'm keeping wow. it. It disturbs me that it's a capital T, but it's sitting underneath the I, okay? It gives me flumbles. I'm keeping it forever, because it's the worst. Piano music. Oh, look, it's that overrated character in that show. God. Oh god, no, no, I do not need all the Last Jedi haters dogpiling into my comments. This is a positive space. Get out of here, Kylo. Shoo. At a least positive space? My Last Jedi video. That's promising. You might even call it a safe space. I released a video back in January that mentioned a couple of similarities between Avatar The Last Airbender and Star Wars Episode VIII, The Last Jedi. Oh, they're both bad. I didn't say Last Jedi was good or bad, I just acknowledged its existence. I even said that thing about not wanting The Last Jedi haters to pile into the comments, but so hey, What do you think they do? What? This is the internet, my dude. Also, like, just, have you learned nothing? I still like the whole, like, hey, leave me alone. <laughs> leave me alone. Come on, you've got to know better the opposite. than this. 
People will do you literally the opposite of anything you say. Also, if you say I'm not a furry, played, bro. <laughs> if you say I'm not a furry, people will scramble to find as many furry connections on you as possible. I, the, That's just one one. Yeah. <laughs> the um, the last Jedi haters it's like, oh, don't don't do that. Don't. Do that. Well, people? last thing I want is last Jedi lovers in my comments. It just sounds so gay. Just, <laughs> just call it something else. <laughs> Last Jedi was garb. Last Jedi was garb. <laughs> Last Jedi was garb. Fight garb. Me. It's not even it's worth the full word garbage. garbage. Crap. You like Last Jedi? Grrr. Perfect video. Get I like it. Better. I like hey. how you did grrr for the emoji. <laughs> grrr. I also referenced something Rose says after she stops Finn from getting himself killed. Getting himself killed. Interesting Why? way to phrase that. Mm -hmm. Wow. The That's an stupid, interesting phrasing. Quite possibly right the stupidest part of the whole fucking movie. That's how we're gonna win, letting the people we love die. <laughs> <laughs> they can't kill us if we're dead. We win. Not fighting what we hate. Saving what we love. You know, I don't have and, everything you said to me whipped out the roast tea cup for. Yeah, that's the most shitty, insane so, quote I I'm, think I've ever heard in cinema. Yeah, I'm curious. Oh, wait, they just referenced me. Why? How come. Are people not allowed to say this stuff? Are they not allowed to say that quote is stupid and I disagree with your analysis by using it as a positive reference? Are they not allowed to do that? Why do you have your comments on? Just so you could watch people jerk you off? Apparently, I mean, that's why some people use them. It's a safe space, rag. Is he's trying to mend the fandom? Safe <laughs> means telling me I'm right. You know how to make the comments extra safe is to not read them. No, they have to be purged. They think wrong. It's the safest you can possibly get from your commenters. Funny thing is. That quote is exactly what the Star Wars fandom needs right now. Oh, I knew he was gonna say you. that. I knew it. <laughs> oh my goodness. I had suspicions, you know, but I didn't. Oh. The Star Wars fandom needs this right now. This movie's about being something that I need it to be, so shut up. Really don't like that. Um, it's the video essay voice. It drives me nuts. Yeah, he was just starting it. I was about to say earlier, like, oh, good, he's not doing the voice. We need and then to... he just started like doing the voice full on. It's not he the quote we doing deserve, the voice the quote we full need. on. We need him to get softer. Star we need more emotional music. Jedi. Piano. Get it in there. Kermit the Frog here. <laughs> there is <laughs> Kermit the Frog here. There are the people who love The Last Jedi, and there are the people who hate it. I like how you portray the people who love it as the hero winning the day, and the people who dislike it as the wounded, Kylo crazy Rin. people. <laughs> Leading fucking events. sliced in the face. Look yeah. at you, you nutcases. Now, let's are you on the right way. side of history? I hope so. <laughs> or do you hate The Last Jedi? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. true answer. Immediately, no Hating The Last Jedi does not make you a racist <laughs> Thank you oh, so okay. much. You are so much better than a lot of people. Thank, <laughs> thank you for doing me this incredible favor. Yeah, I'll give it to him. You know, thank necessary. you so very much. You didn't have to tell me I'm not racist and sexist, but most don't, so appreciate it. Yeah. Sexist Acknowledgement garbage. was good. Yes, there are absolutely racist, sexist, oh. garbage humans that hate The Last Jedi. And okay, so garbage why oh, this okay. video is not about the, the last Jedi backlash amplified by Ryan Russian Hill. bots. Yeah, yeah, Trump election, Russian bots. The last Jedi, so it's election bots. Yeah, I love yeah, the yeah, idea that Russia will like get after the last Jedi. Fuck that movie. We can't let them, you can't let those pig dog westerners like a Star Wars movie. No, it's just guys, don't... Putin really didn't like it. He was like, fuck this movie. It's just it's annoying me. <laughs> Don't you guys Those feel people. lucky? Like this this video, I thought this video was gonna be about us, but it's not about racist, sexist, garbage humans. Yay! Yay! The, the graphics have drop shadows and whip animations. It can't be bad. Yeah, it's boy. automatically a good video. <laughs> a checkmate this Russian video bots. Is about the significant or should I say, uh, uh, That's probably cultural appropriation. <laughs> and a few Russian bots, apparently. This video is not about those people or bots. Why'd you bring him up? This video. I like the idea that a bot was watching this, like, up? oh, I am not counted. That is disappointing.
is about the significant amount of people who hate the film for non-sexist, non-racist reasons. So 100% of them, okay. Well, no, do you remember that video made by that really popular YouTuber that said, like, I hate it because there's women in it and black people in it? Oh, Mahler. Yeah, <laughs> that guy. <laughs> for hours, I, I like he just repeated dude. that point. I like how this dude is operating under the logic that, like, that is the predominant reason why people dislike <laughs> it instead of all the main reasons. It's just like, hey, all of you, the majority of you that fucking hate women and black people, I'm not talking about you this time. It's just... <laughs> but next time... <laughs> Yeah. People who want to force that hatred onto others. Force um, that hatred. We put hatred in red. This guy means fucking <laughs> business. Watch out, incels. Spell. Force hatred onto others. What does that mean? Does that mean know. to like? So would it? Would if? So if I said fuck you guys, would that be me forcing hatred onto you, or is it more so where I'm like, it's guys, you need to hate that over there? It's my ears to hear your hatred. It's when you tie someone up and just show them like Alex Jones and stuff. Oh. I'm is coming he... to the realization this is actually a video that is directly aimed at you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Guilty I got the impression charged. of that, but... Like, directly. So, people don't like us? Yes. Apparently. <laughs> I have a feeling this is going to be the video that melts your icy so hearts. People anymore. He's going to he's gonna crack open the cold steel box that is Rags and Ice Hearts. I love the blacks. That's not possible. Oh, that's exactly what a black hater would say. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> God damn it. Goes back to your notes. <laughs> what do I say? <laughs> I'll have to fool them it's further. Their love of the film onto others. This video is about that division. It's also about answering two questions. What are we so, owed wait, as uh, fans? It's not divisive. What are we owed as call, fans? call, like, a large section of the people who are complaining about plot points in the movie racist, sexist, garbage humans? No, you don't understand. It's categorical. He's saying the racist garbage humans are the racist garbage because they say racist garbage things. Like, it's it's unquestionable. And then you're like, ooh, give me but an then example. The and then there's someone who's like, Holdo's hair is pretty dumb. It's like, see, sexist. <laughs> like, oh. I thought Rostico was a really like a annoying character. It's like, why'd you hate know. Asian people? This is, they always jump. They just jump I don't know right what over. Rose Tico is too close to being white. Oh my god. No, that is. <laughs> and I, don't, I don't like my race represented that way. I'm glad that that's what I came back to hear. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna, he said he's gonna answer two questions. The first is, what are we owed as fans? Which is an interesting question. I'm not even sure. You guys got any suggestions for that? Um, something that just respects the source material as a very bottom kind of standard. I think that we're owed that. I mean, if the source material is what turned us into fans, so I would expect that that would be respected. You really low bar, point. yeah. But that's a good place to start. Start, yeah. Even the Ewoks. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you respect the Ewoks, okay? Respect <laughs> the Ewoks. <laughs> Gotta I have, have a feeling this could turn walk. into a big argument if I if I if I push. Let's just stop that. Oh, if you think you, we think they're dumb, you're all right. Yeah, we hate <laughs> walks. What are you walks? Hey, you never know, man. Is That's that right. coded? You never know. Some the Ewoks like are actually guy. really well made. They make complete sense. I liked the Ewoks when I was in elementary school. I thought they were awesome. Why? They were the best part. I didn't care about the rest. I was like, oh, there's like people in weird clothes. It, it, by a metal building in the forest, I don't really care. And you're saying you don't like them now, so you're a flip flopper. I see. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I can't <laughs> make up my mind. Over. You're a Still racist, sexist, garbage Still flip flopper. Stupid Hillary Clinton worshiping liberal. <laughs> <laughs> How much did Extreme Joe Biden pay centrism. you to like Ewoks? Yeah. 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 Ma yeah. Mainly, mainly the reason I don't like them now is because it's pretty obvious that they're a racist depiction of black people. <laughs> and how do we coexist as a fandom again? Is this a man or a woman? This it's is definitely a, a guy. This okay. is a he has transcended gender. <laughs> which, means, which means he's a man. This that does is... the Doesn't this feel a tad melodramatic? He sounds so sad. Oh, there's the piano <laughs> music, and there's the words in red, and it's like he thinks that every still in his video has to be a shitty thumbnail. Mm -hmm. 
why is it that like all of these video essayists they gotta put the words up on the screen as though we're too stupid to hear what he's saying <laughs> yeah why and they, they color certain words that pisses me off in, in uh, the long chat why 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 do they all talk as though they're on the verge of tears <laughs> yeah <laughs> Because they are. Bring home that sentimentality. This is important. You want to listen to me. What do I think it'd be funny if they had do in red? I I think, um, (laughs) sorry to interrupt, but I think uh, Louis Laveau had one of my favorite lines where he was talking about an extra credits video and he said, All these fucking videos as essays are the same. It's like, I love you. Please let me control you. Video games matter. Please let me control you. Like, just everything about it. Oh, just, I want to dictate the terms. Remember when Extra Credits pissed off the entire internet with their video that no one liked? The, uh, I've done that a few times. The one with, it was like, <laughs> you shouldn't, one? playing as Nazis or whatever. Like, you, you need to, your video know. games need to tell everyone that Nazis are bad. And suddenly, you you're a Nazi. It. You didn't want it. And there but it is. you got it, baby! There it is. <laughs> Who are you to tell me that I didn't want it? Um, so, the whole, how do we coexist as a fandom again? I'd be like, if you thought for a second that in fandom fighting over what's good and bad about the whole fucking franchise is new, it, oh, this has been you thinking I want to coexist with you is <laughs> so cute. This video is about empathy. It's about the light and the dark. It's about restoring balance. Stop oh, it! Fuck. Ah, Stop putting it on the fucking person. screen! <laughs> Yes, yeah, seriously. We we know okay, what a nice person I am. I feel like you got to work hard to find videos this bad. Where do you find this shit? No, this Somebody is one of the good ones. Look at the editing. <laughs> Look at this. Look at that editing. Oh yeah, I forgot. Right, you're right. He actually did a bad job. Look, uh, look at the M. Wow. Wow, you just rip it. Look at whoa, Luke's cape is yeah. That's not. Yeah, he did a bad job. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like this is the big moment, right? Did you this forget big he, reveal? He just said he was looking for like safe spaces and happy places, and you're just running in I there, don't. being like, "Oh, look at the cable." <laughs> if, if he cared enough to do it, then I care enough to criticize it. This oh, is how that works. Man, I can feel my masculinity just dripping away, <laughs> being sapped. <laughs> Let me find my soy. Oh, part one. We're sweet. finally in part, part one. one. All right, nice part just one. Sunny. Why like is it? Adventure? Why is this the Master and Commander font? <laughs> <laughs> also, someone, someone in chat said this channel is so pretentious. It released a teaser for this video as a separate video. Oh, <laughs> oh I can see that. <laughs> bitch! Our memes got trailers. Yeah, many of the truths we cling to de- depend greatly on our own point of view. Really? Okay. It's a. Uh... Mm-hmm. It's pretty. It's pretty insightful. Oh, many of the truths we cling to depend greatly on our own point of view. Oh my God! Wow, Obi Kanowan Obi. Many of the truths we cling to <laughs> depend. Okay. Yeah, I know, right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I. Well, if someone said this to me, I'd just stand there and go like, "Yep, yeah." <laughs> Like the I was same expecting more subjectivity <laughs> shit. Well, it's, it's like the very oxygen we breathe is a part of the world, as we. And you're like, all right. Are a part of the world. <laughs> I I just wish that like someone like if he like hired someone else to edit this, that instead of this Obi Wan Kenobi quote, it was just like, I hate black people, Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that's like yeah, like the one Goodell was episode. Goodell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> quote from i don't know david duke like muhammad was in well you know just something offensive i think we, we, bilbo we baggins had the greatest wisdom yeah i was gonna say why isn't there a bilbo quote what the fuck come on Rags i think whether or not you enjoyed the last jedi ultimately boils down to something very simple music's too loud i mean it, a bunch yeah, of yeah it is well <laughs> yeah it's, it's like it's like you're listening to like I don't know a disco thing, and there's a guy in the corner. I'm like, I think the whole thing we're gonna talk about. Is the last <laughs> <laughs> like, what? What? Can what? All, of, all of you guys out there in the dance floor, I hope you enjoy the last Jedi. I feel we like need... this video was just engineered to piss off every video editor in the audience. <laughs> it's just like, oh, oh you got all of this yeah. wrong. Like, what yeah, are you doing, yeah. no. Stop! You got all of it wrong. Was the experience what you wanted? Jesus Christ. No, it was shit. Why did he put it on the screen? I feel like Star Wars. If I watch this at 2x, 
I would lose nothing. We could probably Normally, watch it muted. when we say show don't tell, it. it doesn't refer to like video essay narrative. <laughs> yeah, oh, dude, word. yeah, the, that is definitely a tell don't though. show. <laughs> Show don't tell. I put the words on screen. <laughs> they, they always speak it about. Yeah, exactly. Like you say, like you can watch it at double speed and not lose anything. Why? Why wouldn't you just speak like a human and get your point <laughs> out? Yeah. Um, Ev Evan was saying that in the call that he was in, uh, I guess with uh, some podcasts and stuff. That it, apparently he—that's just how he speaks. That sucks. That sucks. I fucking doubt that. So Kibikins <laughs> just sent me this. Well, apparently, I wonder. If... I was just gonna someone's say, I wonder like if, um... Keeping... Okay, you go. <laughs> someone's keeping this shit on in that kind of real-time-ish. There, there's already... They've already got memes posted about EFAP 100, about the memes that we've put in the Discord, and who's been on, and whether they chose uh, Christmas or the correct option, or, sorry, Halloween or the correct option. Oh, sorry, oh Freudian slip. We, yeah. Oh, we have our EFAP cast Don't rank. think we didn't Look hear that, Rags. So I actually had some choice words about that if you'd care to hear them. No. So <laughs> here we have our, our cast Jump ranking in the community ranking for the Star Wars movies. He's got these divided by parts as well. He's got part one finished. And he even has question marks for the time on part like, two that we're doing now. I like how part three stars me. They're not sure if it'll star you, Rex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at the bottom. I haven't noticed this. Look at the... Look at the at the bottom of the website. I know ascended. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so hey guys, happy we've, we've honored Wilfred his memory. Ripley ascended. I I can't help but feel personally responsible for bringing him up and then him dying like within a month later. Like I I. In fairness, I, I Rex was the one who brought him up. Yep. No, it was, um, was it? I, I thought it was me either. because. No, well, you, so you were doing. Um, I thought well, was, you were doing did, the the goofy voice, and I said, "Is that Wilfred Brimley?" And then Rags pointed out the alive in parentheses, and then that's when it kind of oh, was solidified. Yeah, is that how it worked? Because I thought it was Rags was like, "Who?" I thought Rags said, "Who's the guy who's alive?" I thought that who's was alive. How it I said, <laughs> "The guy oh, who's yeah. alive." And someone, I think someone guessed it. Wilfred Brimley. Yeah. Well, no, I'm pretty sure I did because that's the the meme is that he just seems to keep living, which seems very who's sad. Who's the guy in who's alive? Oh, Wilfred Brimley. What I'm getting from. Oh this, yeah, I think that, that was Brimley. yeah. I'm just getting from this that everyone except for me is responsible for Wilford Brimley's death. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We all played a part. I yeah, mean, this, okay, this but is, I um... also tweeted at him that he was the most live man literally like an hour <laughs> before. <laughs> oh. I mean, okay. Okay, that, it, it was definitely your fault. <laughs> 911, 911, please help. I was going to say, by the way, I don't know if it's just me, but is, does Chase's microphone sound like it's overexposed? Like inside yeah, his mouth, someone is. Yeah, uh, is yeah, that, yeah. His voice is overexposed is that to better? it. Like as if, as though it's like it's. It, just listen, talk for a bit, and then listen to yourself on the stream. You'll know what I mean. You're an audio person. Uh, no, no, no. I know what you mean. My fucking mixer might be on the fritz, but I turn it down a bit. Is that better? I think better. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, I'll just keep it here. Yeah, I think Ooh. I was joking with one of my friends. I was too quiet, and I just fucking boosted, and I was just like, "Hello, <laughs> hello." <laughs> I just left it there. But go on, Chase. Give us your perspective on Cry's Mars versus Halloween. Okay, so there's plenty of reasons to like uh, Halloween, right? Especially when you're a kid. You get to go out, you get free candy, and candy's the shit, and you get to dress up as fucking Mario or Mega Man or whatever the fuck. Um, and that's all great. Uh, and Christmas is equally great as a child, because you get free shit, usually, unless you're poor, and you don't have to pay for it. And uh, But then when you get older... Halloween kind of just becomes about, I guess, if you have local friends, you can go and hang out and, and drink with them and, and dress up in, like, goofy, perverted costumes or whatever. But most of the time, if you're staying at home on Halloween, then you're just answering the door for kids or you stock up on candy and then no one comes and you're just disappointed for the entire evening. You feel like the the kid who didn't, like, get asked to prom or something. But, like, adult <laughs> yeah. version. And then, um, and then uh, you know, if, if you go out in a costume people look at you like a fucking sex predator yeah and, uh, so you can't do that so already that kind of strips away a lot of the fun but then as an adult it's like christmas you get to like rags was mentioning earlier it's like you know it's a nice time to to go and and buy stuff for your loved ones or even if you don't have much money if they're understanding they just uh appreciate your company and 
you like hanging out and you know it's like and on christmas all my friends who are super busy with their jobs or their their families or whatever it's like they always have the day off on christmas and everyone's kind of doing their own thing the kids are playing with their tablets or their video games so then they can always hop on steam and it's like hey let's fucking play some halo or, or are you gonna be the only motherfucker tonight who agrees with me uh I, i'm christmas I don't even know if I, <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, do, do, are you on the Christmas side? I could have swore I heard you saying that Halloween was your favorite. No, right? I'm Christmas. I like Halloween, okay. but Christmas is better. Yeah, okay. We we agree on something. Yeah, yeah okay, no, good. I'm, on your side. I'm, right. I'm Christmas too. Did I say that last time? I can't remember. I thought I did. Because Christmas is so clearly the best. Popular. Everyone else here popular. comes from broken homes and families where they're poor or some shit. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. How bad Ch the Chase is the one is, that just established if you go outside in a fucking costume, you no, look like a sex I, I predator. Like that's absolutely absurd. Parents mom. take their kids. Wow. Yeah. See yeah. all these incredibly amazing reasons. Ugh. It's a good perspective, yeah. Uh, and your whole reason is like, oh, I get to see my family, even though I can do that at literally <laughs> any other time. Yeah, of this, no, this is the weird family. fucking no, part of it all. It's like family meetings. You guys party. have to it's organize them uh, once uh, per no, year. It's, it's like, okay. Yeah, on we do. Because that. some of us on have like, happy families. On top of that, time of the year, it's it's also hard to organize that thing because families all over the country. If you don't, if you don't have anything better to do, it's just like, like when my girlfriend visited for the last like Christmas. Enough it literally depends on the proximity of people's families, then, because <laughs> mine when, is not that far away. Why are we only making way. the options Halloween and Christmas anyway? Well, you can choose stuff like Thanksgiving if you want to be. <laughs> you can like, choose Festivus. Like no, yeah. nobody, no love for like the light blue and pink eggs. What about Life Day? Easter? Yeah, Life Day's a good choice, I think. Like adorable little duckies and shit. You're gonna say that Easter is better that, than that fucking garbage? <laughs> nobody, no, <laughs> nobody, like nobody. Easter, no. there's gotta be somebody who likes Easter that. is like mm -mm. Christmas but shitty, <laughs> right? But there's gotta be someone who's like, I love those I would, little. I would happily candy eggs. Jesus stand up like Easter because he gets to come back to life and rule the universe. But other <laughs> than that, I don't really see if there's much of a reason to. It's fine. The Easter Bunny scared the shit out of me. Is it? Tiny person, <laughs> really? Why? I didn't understand because the it's a bunny. huge, scary ass anthropomorphic rabbit. Like who to what the hell was going on in your house, Rags? <laughs> it wasn't in my house. My, my parents were religious and everything, and they had these get-togethers, and there'd be the Easter Bunny because Easter is the most what, what kind of religious? What kind of we were Christian? Yeah, like like what well, like the, like the, the bloody Jesus on the cross type because that's the scarier part. Well, yeah, that's good. I like the idea okay, that people okay. listen to this the past 10 minutes and then they look on the screen and they're like, is this a discussion header? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see bloody Jesus on a cross in my Star Wars. <laughs> so our, the church that I uh, w went to um, back when I believed in that shit was he was like up there on the cross and everything and he had a loincloth on and he was all like fucking dead and he had blood coming out of his nails and everything and i'm like I, I would think that sometimes man like this is kind of fucking more really? like, yeah, like, like they think it's just some knives under his fingernails before they put him like an active blood drip from the statue at all times yeah. or like he was metal he was clawing at the wood trying to get down oh <laughs> yeah see real, for me the real man i think there was an attempt to argue it was the easter bunny for a little bit when i was younger and then i remember just being like a giant bunny i don't i don't think i this seems too giant ridiculous bunny. Like, and it was Jesus. funny because I'd be the kind of kid to be like, yeah, Santa, that that's fine. But the Easter Bunny, nah, I'm not believing that it's, one. It's really much. funny that you mentioned that because when I was a kid, I knew from like the fucking crib that Santa wasn't a real thing. I just, I knew that human beings can't like go down a chimney and then float back up effortlessly. So I caught my mom one time because she got me like a, a, a giant gummy like crocodile thing or whatever. And I just looked at her. I was like eight and I just said, oh, this is really cool. Where did you get this? And she's like, oh, I just got it from Walmart. And then she kind of caught herself and I pointed. I was just like, bitch, I fucking knew it. <laughs> the, the only <laughs> that I called the bluff on like immediately was the tooth fairy. And it was because my parents would not realize that I lost teeth. And then, like, eventually I was like, I wonder if I ask them. And then I did. And then, of course, that would be when the teeth would disappear and I'd get, like, $2. And <laughs> oh, then I was like, oh, uh, I think I know what's going on here. Tooth is creepy. <laughs> the concept is too creepy. Yeah. I like, hope I don't wake you, you child. <laughs> Give me your like, teeth. I collect the teeth. I put them in my jar. What I do with them, it's none of your business. I imagine the tooth fairy would be, like, some barbarian with like necklaces of teeth around them as they yeah. like <laughs> gnaw on the like rotting corpses of roadkill 
or something. Like, like a giant yeah. orc or something. <laughs> yeah. Great war why does she drop the teeth? Does it make sense? So anyway, so, uh, yeah. what, what was the what was the experience you wanted from a Star? <laughs> Wait, was the experience what you wanted from a Star Wars movie? That's a strange question. Was the experience what you wanted from a Star Wars movie? <laughs> the experience. <laughs> experience. I, I assume that's what... There's something I apparently need to discuss before we get into this. Apparently. And that's the Boy. argument that The Last Jedi is objectively bad. Yay! Yes. <laughs> you finally come around. An objective Text badness on based on screen. quantifiable, unbiased facts and science Correct. and mathematics. And hold on. I well, maybe not mathematics. You could use scientific principles to establish like a methodology. Sure. I mean, science is best under process. And there's no reason you can't use that same kind of methodology to, to, or to assess film as long as you have criteria you stick to objectively. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Why not? Mm -hmm. I know you mm -hmm. said it. And for some reason, you sit, you're like, oh, that sounds stupid. Hey, he's about to provide his counter argument. He's going to destroy you. You ready? Oh, okay. <laughs> Hold on, I need to check something real it's quick. It's nice but not Oh god, what's this? Oh, yeah, no. All of my pills? crazy pills are still here. I haven't taken any of them, so... <laughs> oh. Uh, hey, wow. Randy. Have you oh. taken your crazy pills? Mm. No, I had a pizza earlier. Oh. Well... <laughs> <laughs> not only did I... Not only did I order... Not my order right. <laughs> Okay, Moriarty does have a pretty great laugh. I, I do compete. Yeah. Right. Marx is think... fucking great, but it's really hard to compete with this genuine joy emitting from that big yellow M. <laughs> look up the Bone Fairy. Why do I feel like this is going to be a very bad idea to the look up? The Bone Fairy? Jesus. Bone Fairy. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Holy fuck. Bone share, Fairy? Share it. Okay, uh, hold on. I'm getting this. This is... Kind of impressive, but also kind of terrifying. I think that's kind of cool. I've got a bone I could give her. What's so? What's yeah, the dealio? The say, fairy takes that? bones back to the giant fairy. What's oh, what this weird? Got some big old tit. <laughs> 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 that that skeleton is trying to get at that tit. That's what he's doing. I, I will say it is very very good art. <laughs> Me high cheeks sent me high. <laughs> this shit's so Isn't that an potential. actual name you used in Gadelb? Well, yeah, it's, high uh, cheeks it's an actual guy. <laughs> yeah. high me it's high man. cheeks sent me high. I'll never forget <laughs> high cheeks sent me high. Lord <laughs> cheeks sent me high. He's such a legend. Reminds, that reminds me of that thing with with like the Malaysian airline thing where they had the we too low. <laughs> they had the name oh, of the pilot. Yeah. Oh, some oh, some ting wong. Yeah, some ting wong. wong. I can't Bang believe, ding ow. <laughs> I can't believe that woman didn't notice after like the first. Oh no. She like, played how, super straight. Like, how did she not know after holy fuck? You probably just get disconnected and read it right off the teleprompter. You're just like, I just want to go home to my family. I'm, I'm actually Chinese names and she says no those can't be real names those sound ridiculous she'd come out as double racist so she like, they were just... probably just like racing to get what they thought was like exclusive info and like we gotta air it we gotta air it right fucking now Not the names we got an anonymous chip from the hacker 4chan anonymous chip <laughs> an anonymous, anonymous chip yeah. is it uh, an anonymous chip like a like a fry <laughs> chip. is it a Lay's chip is it a Dorito Does it, Pringle? it's anonymous Apple? why would it tell yeah. you yeah. That's true. I didn't think about the anonymity, the anonymity of Doritos. Yeah. You guys demanding that shit. Okay. Look, the, he didn't take his crazy pills, so we're about to go on a, a ride. So, why does it feel like I'm taking crazy pills? God, I don't know. It really feels like I'm taking crazy God pills. Damn, it's this whole. Why did, Stop why did they need to put putting, text on the screen? Like, we can hear you! Dude, you, I feel like if we taught a class on, like, stop doing shit that video essays do, it's like, lesson one, day one. Stop putting shit on the screen! Like, just say it. Jesus. You're just he's being crazy. Some people, some people don't have ears at all. Oh. That's why he's doing it. <laughs> yeah, don't you feel bad, dude? Put on the auto subtitles, they'll be funny. If it was crazy, wouldn't the subtitles be all fucked up and everything? That's why they'd be funny. Art is subjective. Art oh, here we go. 
So that would, uh, that would conversation... drive me fucking crazy to edit if I had to put text over every single fucking word I was saying. So if he was here right now, I'd be like, stop. We didn't say art. Move away from that word. That word just poisons the whole conversation because nobody agrees on exactly what it means to even be or create art. So stick to other words, such as craft, such as filmmaking, script, writing. Uh, what about, this is a fun one, life drawing. Is that something we can determine quality-wise, objectively or subjectively? Seems like we've got things to actually... It's just funny, I want people to meet the art teacher I had in Foundation for life drawing. He he just didn't pull any punches. He was like, yeah, that's not how a human looks. Try again. <laughs> like, oh, man. Based in Red Pilled. I mean, there's also the conversation about video games as art. Apparently, they're... Video games are only art, like, while you're playing them, apparently. But, like, they're not art otherwise. Like, that's the last um, official word I heard on it. I don't know if that's verifiable. Movies the are only really art while you're watching them. Word. Yeah, no, that, that's actually what, like, I heard from, like, some fucking big artsy-fartsy organization. They literally said, well, video games only count as art, like, while you're experiencing them, but as their own, that they're, they're just, like, toys or pieces of media or something. I could be wrong. Someone, like, look that up for me. You're wrong. What if, what if they don't? I, I yeah. hope I'm wrong. It's fucking bullshit. Art is abstract. Art is emotional. Art is abstract. That's is why a painting one... abstract? Well, it can... I can, like, hold in my hand. Stuff. Abstract is, like, a... A, a type like what, what, what does he mean like it's entirely uh, this is what i mean i'm already annoyed i'm like you're moving away from you're getting too broad already it's hard to even know how yeah. to respond you can't say that all art is abstract yeah, well it's not because so. art <laughs> so existent, that thought or fundamentally like, like, physical or concrete existence so Unless yeah like a painter we don't know what abstract art means or abstract in general means you can't say that all art is abstract some of it's very blatant by design. Yes. Some kind of like, really shitty modern you know? art sculptures outside in parks that are very abstract to the point where I wish they were just a thought in someone's head. One person can love something that another person hates. Wow. Art's success or failure is determined on an individual basis purely by the experiences I mean, and the you've biases already shifted. and the value. We're talking about goals and intentions. I feel like we're, we're well away from any like, what am I supposed to do with this? He's Plus, just looking like, at his fucking dictionary now. Well, no, because he got the definition of abstract wrong. <laughs> it's I didn't say it was a good dictionary. Values of each observer, a certain point of view. Show me any objective rule for storytelling, and I can show you a hundred amazing films. Yeah, okay. It, events have to progress. Uh, you have to have events happening. Um, continuity. <laughs> How's that? Like, events have to happen. Something... Yeah, you can't... There is no... Like, categorically, you can't even have a story without continuity. Otherwise, it's not even categorically that anymore. So, let's start there. And he's saying, like, whatever rule you come up with, I'm gonna find you a thousand examples of great things that don't do that. It'll be like... E when, now I'm getting lost. Logical consistency. Logical internal consistency. Well, because you... you you will not be able to find something that is uh, logically inconsistent with the rules it sets up that's good. Well, by this guy's definition, yes, he can, because he pulled up... Yeah, he can find up. thousands, apparently. Well, yeah, well, if, you think that good things are, if you think that bad things are good, then sure, you can make up whatever well, stupid definition you This is want. why the conversation goes nowhere anyway, because you establish this, and then he goes, let me show an example of something that's great, and it def defies your objective rule, and you go, oh yeah, what is that? And he goes, The Last Jedi, and you're like... I <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, I could think of like David Lynch movies or something, but if you're talking about sort of direct, like straightforward narrative storytelling, like Star Wars is, it just doesn't, yeah, it, it doesn't make sense to to say, oh, just throw it all out the window. Well, I mean, it's tough to build upon your work when someone tells you, like, fuck it, just throw it out there, see what happens. You're like, oh. <laughs> um, there's, like, we've said this before, but, like, you don't, there's never a time where someone says, I really hated that film because it made sense. You so never, the half-finished bullshit stories I wrote in high school? You never hurt yourself by making things make sense. Because a lot of the time, they, you get the whole, um, you can't, and this is seriously repeated by so many YouTubers and established writers, don't be sacrificing amazing emotional payoffs just because you gotta get the logic right. 
It's like, how about we have both? Why do you always treat it like a dichotomy? It's really fucking hard. That's hard. And that's hard, though, and I'm not good enough to do that, so don't worry about it. Like, it's crunch time. Imagine your math teacher saying that. It's like, yeah, the numbers don't add up, but, you know, it's satisfying for me to tell you that the answer is right. So just, I could see you were sweating. You were really trying. As long as you think you did a good job. Yeah. As long as you feel like the numbers add up in your heart, then, you know, it's all good. In your heart of hearts. In your heart. That role to perfection. When it comes to art, good and bad are a matter of personal opinion. No, one, just develop no. a standard. Once you have a standard, then you can judge it based yeah, on the standard. Break apart good and bad. What do they? What do they mean? It's just like, yeah. well, it's the degree to which a standard is achieved. It's like, what's the standard? And you, you go further, and they're just going because I know a lot of people like to default to well, good and bad automatically just means how much you like it, right? It's like, well, how about we go a little further than that? Because that's obviously pretty useless. Because that's just how much you like it. Yeah. Which we can all answer how much you like easily. something isn't really a standard. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you it's can useless. treat it as though for yourself, like you're writing your little lists and you're just like, yeah, I like that a lot. I don't like that much. I like that a lot. That's like a nine on the liking scale and that's like a three on the liking. You know, and you can you can run your list like that. The problem with those lists is they'll change in a year's time, like completely. You'll look back and be like, oh, fuck. Which isn't uh, a problem, by the way. It's just that's how that works. And it's oftentimes... You can't go much further in a lot of conversations when you have stuff like that happening. And you're just like, ah, I mean, I liked that scene. I didn't like that scene. That scene, I could watch it three times and didn't get bored. And you're like, okay. Right, um, yeah. Mahler, I wanted to ask you specifically, because I'm, I'm always of the school of thought that, like, it's okay, it's perfectly okay to have, like, guilty pleasures and enjoy shitty things, as long as you don't go around parading it like it's, it's like, this amazing piece of art. Like, are there any, is there anything you can think of off the top of your head that it's like, I really like this, but I know that objectively, like, from a writing standpoint, oh, there's loads. it's just not good at all. I would say the newest yeah, like, example would be Batwoman. That's some of my favorite shit, and it's, like, the worst true, shit ever. True. It's actually <laughs> garbage, but it's so funny. And it wouldn't be the same if I wasn't watching it with friends, too, because, like... Right. It's, just, it's like the guy said in defense of bad movies, which wasn't the video we watched, really. It was more just why bad movies are fun to watch. Um, and, yeah, the, the same. If, if, if I was like, no, no, don't you understand? Like, our enjoyment means Batwoman is well made. It's like, no. No. The whole reason it's funny is because of how poorly made it is. They copied Wikipedia pages into the big journal that Lucius Fox made. It was the worst thing ever, okay? You need to... You guys need to know more about Batwoman. It's some, some next-level bad shit. Not too long ago, I watched this movie called Who Killed Captain Alex? Oh, yeah. It's like uh, made in Uganda on a shoestring budget. Terrible effects. <laughs> I was the crying thing? laughing for like yeah. almost two hours. I can't remember exactly how long it is. But I was laughing pretty much the whole way through. And I loved that movie. Like That's I love watching it. The, the Ugandan Knuckles meme, right? Like, <laughs> do you know the way? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't Why know are you running? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, I guess it might have been. I don't know. Film is widely considered to be good or bad. That still doesn't make it objective. That just makes it a popular opinion. Yeah, we don't use that as a standard and we never have. No, so never I have. don't. And oftentimes it can fuck you up all, too. Yeah. Like, in terms of understanding fucking anything. If you take, like, what the popular vote is on every single movie and what the popular like negative vote is i don't even know what you can gather statistically you probably i guess you come out with marvel films is that the where we're at now like the careful balance of comedy and drama while also getting a decent chunk of character in there that seems to be like the way to go nowadays not that that wasn't always the way to go i think people right. like comedy and drama mm -hmm. This is so tightly to quote unquote plot holes. They see those quote as quote unquote. Holes. Yeah, quote unquote. They don't really exist. Breaches in <laughs> continuity. Like it, it's like Bigfoot. Well, they. they <laughs> yeah. Plot holes is like quote a naughty word. Bigfoot. Like if you use that as your complaint, then you're shallow. That's like how they kind of portray it. It's like, what if I changed it to breaches in continuity? Does that make it sound scarier? I don't know. Yeah. I'm scared. Yeah. No, now you're just using big words. You're a big, pretentious asshole. It's just funny because <laughs> we've had people be like, why do you care about plot holes instead of, like, the world it's creating or the characters and the, the very actions they take? And it's like, you do get the plot holes can affect all plot of those things. Destroy the world. Yeah. Flaws that... Add. Like, stop, remember, stop and remember that plot holes do not exist in reality. Yeah, everything is explained. Right? To, like, either we know the explanation or we don't, but there is one. Because yeah, that's the reality we're in. There are, plot holes don't exist. 
they exist only within fictional media. Just remember that every time, you know, this just sort of pops up. Like, they don't match with anything in reality. So, yeah. But yep. that's how films work. Virtually every one of those... You're right, it's how they don't work. Because plot <laughs> home is, is something broken. What is he suggesting? That, like, the plot, the plot being uh, st straight and narrow versus holy as fuck, it, it doesn't matter. Whatever. Choose whatever you want. Can be a Star Wars. Like, I don't believe these people think this. I'm like, let me just tell me what you enjoyed about anything, and then I'll just add some plot holes in there, and I'll see if you enjoy it just as much in that alternate universe, because I seriously fucking doubt it. Also, I think it's kind of funny how he has a video from Eric Ha Gaming, and you like it, we don't, with like 100 and 200 views each. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mahler, where's yours on there? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Maybe it's kind of pop up. Maybe mine will hmm. slam onto the top as the worst one. Worst <laughs> films, and that never hurt anyone. Twenty nine views. Look at that one. No. <laughs> it's just ignoring <laughs> yours. Throughout the first movie, and now we're killing him near the end of the second one without an ounce of explanation as to where he came from. Oh Jesus Christ! We're doing this one. So. They killed Snoke without explaining where he came from, but we never knew where the Emperor came from in Episode 6 when he died, so why are you complaining about Snoke? It's like, how many, time, Rex, how many times have we from. done this now in EFAP history? Uh, three, four, five, Thousands. I don't know, I lost count. It's, so, the I don't know how to explain this faster, <laughs> but like, Snoke connects everything from Episode 6 to 7 in both the, the, the characters and the world. He's the only thing we have to make sense of how everything turned from X to Y, and you couldn't, you, you don't, it's not necessarily a plot hole until we get the information, but until then it's yeah, just this plot huge hole is contradictory. Gap. And so he dies and we're like, fuck, we didn't get anything. Like, why, how did, why is the world this way? Because TFA fucked everything up. But a lot of mm -hmm. us believed that in The Last Jedi and future films that we'd get all of the padding we needed that we missed out on. That was really naive of us. Like, we... I've talked about this before. I think I mentioned it in TFA Part 3, but it's like, we need to stop assuming that the future stuff will fix the past broken stuff. Instead, they just break even more. They just yeah, keep just going. Yeah, just assume it makes it worse. So... Hey. Go ahead. Uh, so, I think I'm going to hop out temporarily, probably for like... All right. ...hours, just rest of my eyes and then come back for that last video yes sir. sure i'll i'll set my alarm for like what do you think <laughs> like two hours you'll probably be done with this three um <laughs> oh, that's cute if i had a remote control to like a vibrator that you had in your asshole <laughs> then i could get you to wake up whenever we needed um T well, two, two, two should do it. I mean, and do two, and then you can come and finish the video with us. How about that? Okay, yeah, I'll set my alarm for two hours from now, and uh, yeah, I'll be back. All right. But before before Wolf leaves, I just wanted to tell everyone, uh, I'm 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 glad Wolf. I'm glad you're back. I love you, man. You're fucking awesome. It's it's nice to have you on here again. And I just want to say to everyone who likes Wolf and thinks he's a sweetheart. He's actually been like super cool to me lately, and like we've just been chatting about fucking just Halo like, Two and I like Wolf, he's Halo nice Two and God, no, he just he fucking he, he, bag chase. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. Accept my love, man. I'm straight. I'm sorry. Damn it. <laughs> okay. Have a good. I'm sleep. not, but we're <laughs> just. <laughs> I'm not, but the door's still closed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you uh, near future. Yeah, man. See, See you later. Wolf, sir. Wait Have for a the good buzz. night, man. God, Wolf's so fucking hot. You, had, you left the mic on, dude. Shit. <laughs> um, uh... <laughs> 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 Is that a funny joke? Yeah, I, 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 told a, I told a very funny joke and he laughed at it. Yeah. Yeah, I figured it wasn't right. a me. It's okay. Got chest hopes up for a second. Leave. Yeah, no, I figured that would be the reaction. So, yeah, that's why the Emperor and Snoke dying. So, uh, the Emperor dying without explaining what two people birthed him and what his life's journey was up till episode fucking four doesn't change anything. Um, and I hate that they never address this. None of these fucking videos do. Like I said, Rags and I have addressed this argument. A thousand times. Not to say that all of these videos should be aware of the counter-argument, it's just a sad fact that all these different creators didn't even look into it. 
Why do people have this problem? Well, it's just because Snoke died, and he's a big bad. Emperor's a big bad. It's, it's just... ugh. They eat... Also, this is whataboutism, <laughs> I just realized. I fucking hate going down the whataboutism rabbit hole. getting away with it. Like, they make you go all the way down, and then you, you pull, you're like, hang on a second, why are you making me go down this rabbit hole? They're just like, I don't know, I just wanted to see what would happen, I guess. <laughs> this casino scene was horrible for the movie. It was horrible. It didn't even happen. It had no point. It had no overall meaning to the movie. What's that? I, th th this, 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 one, this one's new. Rooms, tell me without moving the plot. So, Casino what? sucks because it doesn't matter to the film overall. It's like, um, not, I don't even know if the, those are necessarily the criticisms I gun for with cas Casino Bite. Ca Casio can Canto Bite. Casino um, Shite. <laughs> oh. Um, and then comparatively he's got, so, spends three scenes inside a Space Wim's tummy without moving the plot forward. So, do you see how he had to say moving the plot forward because he couldn't say no progress was made? Because do you know what happens while we're here? Han and Leia's characters progress. Their relationship right. moves forward. Ooh. Yeah. So we can't be doing... Um, while in Canto Bite, um, this, is, this, is, this is why I feel like this is a weird argument, because like I, I don't actually necessarily am on team Canto Bite. Uh, like, nothing is achieved, because lots of weird things happen there in terms of... Um, we, got, we got the Broom Boy stuff. We got the fuck capitalism stuff. We got the free the free the animals, not the slaves stuff. Um, animals are slaves. Well, I meant the human slaves. I guess I should have been more slaves, specific. Yeah. yeah. Uh, f well, because screw them, animals. For the yeah, win. Uh, I guess. So yeah, I don't know. Like, this is the thing. I got like fucking seven thousand criticisms for Canto Bite. Uh, that don't necessarily involve that it, it. Uh, Self defeats, but I mean, Finn and Rose's journey is pretty embarrassing when you think about it. It's just like they were sent to go get a code breaker, they fucked it up, and then they uh, found a different code breaker that essentially didn't do well, it betrayed them, but didn't intend to originally. It just sort of happened that way, and they didn't get the breaker, and then they went to Crate, which is I don't know where they may have ended up anyway. It's a Many people feel uh, unfulfilled with that plot line because it just if if Finn and Rose had stayed on the Radis, like things would have been the same if not better, which is uh, you know. But but I'm not exactly on on the team that um if a plot line doesn't necessarily pay off in a significant way in the plot that it therefore is bad. You know, like I feel like we could probably find examples or plot lines that don't necessarily uh, pay off. Or do self defeat, but but serve some level of narrative purpose. As strange as that sounds, right? Yeah, like the, in the second Guardians movie, when uh, what's his name stuck on the planet, pretty much the whole movie, Qu Quill, Quinn, mm -hmm. I can't remember. But like, it's all that stuff with his dad, right? That's the whole like that's the purpose of the movie, really. The one of the cores of it, anyway. So the TIE Fighters bomb the bridge and Leia is floating out in the- Oh shit, it's Wolf! Hey! And he just left. Wolf's gone, he left! <laughs> He's always been with us, really. Um... And this is the interesting thing, it's like, uh, I wonder if... These... We're dealing with another sort of Jim Sterling style thing here, where he's gonna like address all of these arguments, like, ah, you're all hypocritical if you truly believe these blah 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 blah, but then simultaneously be like, by the way, none of this matters because it's all subjective. And she'd be like, ah, fucking hell. I don't know, I mean... Horrible. Didn't he yeah, it, it is also, it also subjective. He'd already said that. That's what I mean, though. Like, like, why are you putting this effort into counteracting you? Also, we have some guns on the desk there. Are they, uh... Wait, who did that? I Wait, what? think I did accident. Oh, uh, no, there. no spoiler, no spoiler. I... Spoiler me, no, I see me, cheek sent me, I... Where, 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 where? Is this old diggy diggy old? Biased back oh, 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 God. These crazy pills are past something. that. <laughs> We're definitely past crazy pills. 5.30 to, like, pills. 6. 5.30 to 6 around there. Somewhere in here? Bling Sorry, I was trying to turn the volume up. I know, Thanks. that happens to me too sometimes because of the... Oh, let's, we'll jump, uh, that about... Yeah, there we go. 
And so the TIE fighters bomb the bridge and Leia is floating out in the vacuum of space for an extended period of time, right? By all means, she should be dead even if she wasn't hit by any debris. The vacuum of space would have rendered her dead anyway. Yeah, crazy. Why do you think Wolf would be okay with this? <laughs> he survives that because they decided... Okay, first off, you probably have a better chance of surviving if you're cut in half than if you um, are in the vacuum of space. Yeah, I mean, this is a planet. He's he's not falling into space. He's falling down some, like, chute. So... Yeah. Also, know. they just decided after the fact that he survived this. Yeah, they threw him into the Clone Wars. But th this is the thing... He just assumes that, like, you'll you'll just approve of everything else in the Star Wars canon. Everything else. Yeah, I think it's silly that Darth Maul survives this. Yeah, I agree. I guess not a point. He does. We we watch it happen. Yeah, he, he falls it, into it, a chute, lands at an angle. Yeah, the, it, like, it seems to be that they like debris collectors or some shit. It looks like it's deliberate. Yeah. And of course, yeah, you, if you're sliding down a tube, even at high speeds, you'll eventually slow down. Yeah, again, it's not the fall that kills you, it's the sudden stop at the end. So if mm -hmm. you gradually slow down, like parachutes and whatnot, or land on a gentle incline, mm. then you're alright, you can live through that. I mean, barely, but I mean, you can survive that. I'm not entirely, because like, I think when we rewatched it, I was like, why is it that the fire gives out? Shouldn't it kill him? Shouldn't it just kill him? No, is, I think it just force? runs out of stuff to burn, like the cloth and the... But doesn't... He's a skinny, mm, he's a skinny boy. It's not, I don't think it's on him, it's not on his skin long <laughs> enough to make his skin, like, catch fire. And skin and stuff has moisture in here, your, your body has a lot of moisture in it. The cloth will catch fire and the hair will singe off, but it's not on fire for long enough in sustained heat to... Make also, his skin catch fire? I'd like to point out, still kicking. It's like, um, I mean, it's pretty generous Not considering really. what happens to him. <laughs> he, he can't yeah. really kick. He hasn't got any legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, <laughs> alright. And if those things you consider to be plot holes or inconsistencies really do ruin the film for you, that's fine. I also yeah. think a lot of the people bringing up those plot holes In are using them to mask the underlying and uh -oh. totally valid reason why they didn't enjoy the film and that's that well that's not masking that's scenarios. an explanation no it's he's the opposite of no he's suggesting that like they they're hiding the true reason with this false reason oh that what's the true reason oh, he's, he's, I... he's about to say what and the true reason is totally i'm curious valid reason why they didn't enjoy the film and that's that in either of those scenarios it wasn't the experience they <sighs> Yeah, we wanted something good, and it's shit for answer. these reasons. I was expecting him to go the route of, like, um, they they were subverting their expectations, or they didn't like the women who were in charge, but instead he's like, it's not the experience they wanted. Well, yeah, because I want things that are enjoyable and good. Wow. So if it's bad, it won't be what I want. Elegism. Correct. Elegism. Wanted from a Star Wars film. The original Star Wars is so easy to love because it has something for everyone. Yeah, like really good Ryan. Mm, I mean... There's a lot of things I want from a Star Wars movie, but I would say compelling characters is like I mean, if one. I wanted hits, I'm not going to give that from A New Hope. I wouldn't say it has something in there for everybody. <laughs> I've met a bunch of people who really don't like the original Star Wars. Yeah, it's not, it's not for everybody. Any movie that's for everybody is for no button. It's know, probably it's not going to be that great, yeah. Bam, bam. Why do I like Star Wars? I don't care, woman. I mean, wow. that's a big question. <laughs> Jeez. I think the larger-than-life <laughs> aspect of it is really what, what grabs me. The larger-than-life aspect. The larger-than-life aspect. Hmm. Look how Rags just sees a woman. He's just like, get the fuck out. Fuck out. He's had enough. I love the adventure, and it's just it's just a riot to watch. It, it makes you feel like a kid. It's It's... It's magical, in a sense. I like that it's hopeful, dark, Oh, you it's love these new ones. I was gonna say, what is this out. fucking midi-ass piano, by the way? Yeah. Doesn't it sound like a better cover? It sounds so dinky and shitty. It's Star Wars, uh, though. matches the rest of the video. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I have totally a friend. Consistent. A friend of mine's a pianist, and I know for a fact if he heard that, he <laughs> would have fucking wanted to hunt him down and strangle him. <laughs> oh, no. And it does sound like penis, yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, what? I love the apple. Yeah, I guess. I, I... I guess. He was just laughing really... at the funny word pianist, not penis. What the fuck? Yeah, I thought that's what you thought I said. No. I'm a pianist. I'm a, I'm a pianist. I know how to play the piano. <laughs> I'm thinking about penis now. It's just not all I'm thinking about right Jesus now. Jesus Christ with you, Pete. I can play with hot you penises. Buns, so hot crust buns. So I'm a pianist too. Hot cross hot buns. Hot dog buns. <laughs> hot dog buns, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always a favorite. Star Wars, a lot of characters like Boba Fett that are underutilized in the movies can get their, you know, time to shine in like the books, the outside lore, things like that. I think that it's open to basically anyone from any part of the world that they can come in and find something they can love about this universe. I like that, you know, there's just this theme of rebellion and resistance. Chris Kadar. The... What is hmm? this outfit with the plaid shirt and the tie Sweet. and? Uh, they call it Pussy Slayer. I don't know if you're familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try yeah. it sometime. Like a woman would kill herself before going out with you? <laughs> yeah, I can believe that. It's like some AVGN knockoff or something. <laughs> the world that's been created now, you can basically find any small detail and just fall in love with it at this point because the oh, world's wow, so intricate and cool and interesting. I Star know, Wars right? Is the definition of a cool phenomenon. <laughs> oh, wow. It's also just kind of awesome, really. For me, what I love about Star Wars is getting to feel like a kid again. Feeling like I'm actually on this adventure, feeling that excitement like and shock. Made this. <laughs> You're not wrong. He's just sharing his hearts of heart of hearts, and you just yeah, you, that's you, what kids do, and it's annoying, and I wish they wouldn't, because I don't. What about when an adult shares their heart of hearts? Are they automatically well, a child. Is it someone that I could fuck later? I mean, it's up to you, really. Actually? Like, is it, maybe do, 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 I might do, care. Are you are you attracted to this person in the video? Uh, no, I am. No, I am not. You mean the guy with the tie? Definitely uh, not. not that one. No, I'm not. That's not. That wasn't no, the Pussy Slayer. Oh, um, Pussy Slayer. I want that to be his odd light handle. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't believe me, well, have you seen my tie? Adventure, feeling that excitement and shock, feeling sincerely scared for the characters, and that explosion of joy when they triumph over those massive obstacles in a way that really matters. I love the mountains so, of creativity hey. they put into building this galaxy. He's got two two lightsaber blades. The mountains of creativity. I mean, <laughs> the dumbest weapon ever put on screen. Wow. I I just I'm I, I don't know what to say. Like it's just like. All the yeah, stuff he's saying sounds like something a kid would say. Well, the there's cool, not only like, there's like, lots of criticisms to Levy, but if we but, got like specifics, like tell me what about the characters you really love, and then he, he explains like Luke, for example. I'm like, so did did that love manage to get in the way uh, of your love for the Last Jedi, considering it's completely incongruent? He'd probably be like, no, he's old. I don't think they could ever do anything that wouldn't be considered by this guy to be. I just. This, hmm. That's what he I mean. rationalized it would be interesting to test it out, right? Given. Like to just keep fucking with the movie and replaying the universe to see if he still enjoys it. Like, just add one more plot hole and another one and another one until he cracks and he's like, "Okay, that's enough. I can't handle this." <laughs> Nothing makes any sense. Help! I love the wisdom. I love being challenged by it to become better and stronger and more caring. Growing I, I, with tell the me characters. what you mean. I mean, this is some flowery stuff, man. Like, just yeah, this is just the it. emotional appeal part. Yeah. Enjoy the He's ride. Just like, think of your feelings. Think of how you feel when you feel things. Search your feelings. You <laughs> know it to be true. <laughs> you said it, Kermit. You said it, buddy. <laughs> this is the experience I want out of a Star Wars movie. Aww. And The Last well, Jedi, yeah, but I personally... I feel like this is such a broad thing applied to, the la to Star Wars that... You could kind of say it about anything, and it could still kind of apply. It's well, just so broad and ambiguous. Yeah, you can't question any of it. You're just like, mm-hmm, yeah, I, mm, the world feels big, and the, the characters, I learn things, and there is wisdom. And you're like, yep, all right. Yeah, it's, yeah, okay. I like the prequels, too. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> like, wait a sec. Made me feel those I love stronger <laughs> than any Star Wars films.
He's like, I feel like I could say this about Mein Kampf, and I'd just be curious what he has to say about it. It's like, what's well, just how I feel? It's a I book, like, it's an artwork. It's like an artwork. Yeah. Since the Empire Strikes Back, but there are a million other things to love about the Star Wars experience. One of them. Name 17. <laughs> <laughs> hey, give him a chance. Exactly 17. <laughs> OT Star Wars' is biggest. Oh, you said a million. Was... Yeah, he said. Well, I mean, a... yeah, that's why I was, I was like, if he only said like 20, I would have lowered it down to like three or four, but he said a million, so. I mean, 17 is pretty reasonable. Like, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. How great of an audience surrogate Luke Skywalker was. As Mark Hamill said, you need one character who relates to everyday life so that people can say, I could be him. Someone who doesn't scare or astound you. I think Luke is that character. I don't really, I don't, I don't care really about what the actors have to say necessarily. Like, it's not right because they're the actor. Also, plenty of people wanted to be Han. Plenty of people wanted to be Vader. Like, Absolutely. People on. fantasize as being things that are definitely not, like, believable. I want to be a dragon. <laughs> dragon my come. balls across Leia's... Oh, never mind. Oh, no. Oh. Wow. I think Luke hey, does I... astonishing things, like, in the movie. Like, I at the end the or in the... Subs this this uh the later movies so I, I don't think his statement is really that accurate but i kind of get what he's saying like he's you just need a, an um, everyman kind of main character that the audience can relate to i think he's just yeah like useful in terms of there. he'll be like a uh the the point in which all the information gets spread to so we're just like yeah i'm 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 along with luke i'm i'm he's he's like we're just we're just along for the ride together because everyone else seems to know what's going on but we don't do we luke but then mm. Certainly, as the films progress, you'd be like, Luke, what are you doing strangling people? Luke, <laughs> Luke. Yeah. And that any one of the young people watching the picture can say, I'm Luke. Now, imagine being one of those fans that saw themselves as Luke, and then Last Jedi's all, hey, you know that character you've literally equated yourself with since childhood? Okay, well, now he's literally. Dead. That's not quite what they're doing there. I just, I just like the idea, though, that. The Last Jedi just shits all over him, but he's about to set that up as being possibly like interpretable as a bad thing. But then you need to see the other side of the coin, which is that he's grown and he now he's represents old. something else. And you're like, oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, he's a grumpy old cynic who's given up on everything he's cared about in his life that isn't oddly colored milks. That can feel like a total slap in the face. In yeah, fact, Star it's Wars has weird. almost always been escapist, while this film actively confronts and challenges you. Do you usually root for the hotshot pilot whose big gambles always pay off? Yeah. You're demoted. We're gonna wow. Yeah, but Leia was wrong. Yeah, That's the weird, thing. Like you it's... say all these things, but the film does not support this thematic element that you want it to. His gamble did pay off. <laughs> I don't understand. He saved the fleet. Stop it. Much like challenge. Joel, Poe yeah. is right. I'm telling you, man, Joel you Dameron, the all the way. Come from some significant lineage to make a difference or be worthy of her. Nobody ever said that was no a thing. No one thought that. Oh, I'm so tired of I'm this shit. I'm solo. You know, to be important in the Star Wars universe, you have to be a Skywalker. You have to be a yeah, Kenobi. Bib Fortuna was just a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. I wonder how this guy felt about. Uh, Look at him. Like he got, he got to be Jabba's major domo. Like, come on, it's. Uh, it's God. true. It's true. I just, Skywalker uh, must have been such a bombshell. The idea that like, the, the, what are you it's suggesting true. that Leia and Han just suck? Like in in the OT, it's, it's only Luke that matters because of his bloodline. Nobody else matters. It's like, what's Yoda then? Like, nah, fuck him. He comes from a long line of Yodas. I know you guys don't like The Last Jedi, but I'm curious, do you think that w the movie's uh, holding Luke in a bad light? Do you think that was a mistake? Yes. Right, okay. When, <laughs> when you say mistake, do you mean like they shouldn't have fucking done it? <laughs> right, because I know it wasn't done well, but the idea that it, it took the character Luke and kind of turned, like made him... And put him in a very unflattering light, especially at the start, where he's just kind of this hermit. He's drinking fucking whatever that stuff is, that alien milk or whatever. I kind of like what it was doing there, where it's just like you had a, a character who had this legacy and is like famous throughout the galaxy. And then you've it's like a never meet your heroes kind of thing where you find the person who everyone thought was the shit. And he's like, oh, but he's like, not we so did, great after all. We did meet him. You, that's just why you liked it. 
Uh, I, because I thought it that, does shit on him? I thought it, when I saw that, when I first realized that in the movie, I thought, oh, the movie could potentially do something interesting with this, right? Maybe there's going to be a big redemption arc where, you know, he's not doing so hot right now, but later on, people will think he's the shit again. Like, I, I just, like, what's the alternative where the first introduction of Luke Literally in the trilogy is like, he's fucking awesome and cutting people's heads off. Like, no, there's like a million, there's, there's literally an uncountable amount of things they could have done apart from how, this. How about he was just sitting okay. in a chair, you know? How about that? That's one. What about right. he was doing his washing? We could have been training <laughs> Jedi. What about he was on a spaceship giving orders, because that's just someone you, there are, Actually, maybe when he options. heard that his sister was in mortal peril, he actually went to go help her. Maybe when he found out the galaxy was under the foot of the first order, which is it, it, worse than the Empire, he might have done something. This is the problem. We know him right. very well, and to be like, "Hey, wouldn't it be cool if we flip him completely?" It's like, "Oh, I a nice little experiment you want to do? Go and destroy your own franchise, please, Ryan." Like, I know you want to like, "Whoa, -ho -ho, I'm gonna 180 everything," but if you don't yeah. earn it, like, please experiment with someone else's IP. That would be cool if you could go ahead and do that. It's... Fair enough, yeah. The If you want to... This is the thing. To, to do what Ryan wanted to do, we need a, a whole other trilogy between the two we had. We need a lot of time to uh, justify all this. To get Luke to the point where he abandons the world and his family. It's like, wow. That's mm -hmm. impressive. That is a... Just from a just thinking tactically, from how do we get people to like this movie and engage with it and fans to come back and like make money, even a bizarre decision. Mm. Um, I don't know why. I I'm shocked that Disney signed off on that. Honestly, yeah, you think there'd be a bean yeah. counter? Like this is probably not a wise decision. Yeah, they're like, don't destroy one of the most beloved characters in all of cinematic history. I, right. They let him do it. I don't understand why they didn't have somebody plot out the three movies. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a plus, wouldn't it? Yeah, Disney made a lot of weird decisions. I, I super don't get that one. That makes no sense why they just allowed uh, individuals to determine everything. Was, someone just said uh, to Tyler in chat, it's like going from episode one Anakin straight to Darth Vader. And, and then if the justification was, isn't it crazy that that, that like wide-eyed, you know, adventurous, altruistic little boy turns out, now he's older, he's this villainous person who just executes people and tries to dominate the galaxy. I'd just be like, yeah, that's a flip, but I don't, like, why is it meaningful? You just, you just, it's like they're two different people. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. For power, we're gonna challenge you on that. Do you think the good guy has to dice up the bad guy to defeat him? No. We're did you really just frame Anakin as the good guy, dicing Count Dooku the bad guy as like as like yeah. a plus? Anakin was not he was not a good person there. Why do he people did a, keep he did a big bad? That's he the second time now bad. that a YouTuber has like commented on that scene as if it was like a like a woohoo, but it's clearly like a oh shit. Oh, this was you did a bad thing, Anakin. You did a really. The film bad is thing. very aware of this too. It, it, the sound Anakin effects. Anakin even says right silence. afterwards, he's like, oh fuck. Yeah, I shouldn't also, does, does it have the does it have the effect on any of you that like any video essay that uses exclusively piano covers of like geeky music or like violin covers just makes it that much more extra pretentious? It's so yeah, it that way. I agree. Yeah, I don't like the fact that I can read this video. Like <laughs> the captions are built in; they're fucking baked into the video. You just don't like change. I wish I was baked. Yeah. This video. <laughs> I don't like I'm change. We're gonna challenge you on that. The Last Jedi isn't that satisfying power fantasy or escapist entertainment. Doesn't the have other to be. Yeah, that's the only two options: rags, power fantasy, or crazy subversion. Apparently, I, yeah, I, I that's feel all like, that there could be. I feel like most of these arguments boil down to like it builds character, and you don't like that. You don't like being challenged. You're you're throwing a tantrum because it isn't a carbon copy of exactly what you want like i've heard that argument like 30 times oh yeah now. we hear it it's it's a it's one of those popular ones one that oddly enough we do here is people assuming that the only thing that luke could do is one of two things uh we we get that every once in a while as well it's like do these people not like watch each other's videos at all apparently i think that it's like a no. super unique take i, mean, I think it's because there's coverage. only so many things you can do to defend a movie like the last jedi well, yeah, I mean, it's no coincidence we've seen the same counter arguments tried out over and over again because they're the one, they're the last ones you get before they're counted for good. 
They avoid those last pieces of information. I'll tell you what happens when you finally get someone to acknowledge the the further counter arguments. You get just right stammering and then go in, didn't bother me though. <laughs> just like, yeah, okay, that wasn't the conversation, but fine. Films, but I like the films about failing and it did a great job. <laughs> I got it. Thematically <laughs> beautiful, structurally it failing. Every mark. Moving past that failure, I love it for that. Other people hate it for that, and that's okay. <laughs> all right, this and guy. that's okay. Just oh well. Does it, right, doesn't it feel like a TLJ Moving anonymous? On? video it's like did you like the tlj that is okay so he's trying to change our correct opinion into a different correct opinion either you that's you liked it or didn't of... like it that is totally cool i, I feel like that's the preface to like some other loaded statement it's just like if you he's didn't like it or if you didn't like it that's okay and then like the next sentence is going to be like but but <laughs> Whether it's the comedy or the pacing or the character portrayals, there's a thousand valid reasons to love or hate any movie, including... Can they coexist, though? Like, if someone says, I like it because XYZ, and then someone says, I like it because it lacks XYZ. So can, can, would those two be valid? Do you know what I mean? Like, um, purporting that something is and something isn't too, too... Everything's valid. I just all feel like, surely we can... Okay. You're never wrong. Here's a participation trophy. I feel I, I feel like some some views may clash, and then we can have a discussion. It's like no, everyone can feel how they feel. It's odd. You're like okay, oh sorry, I'm gonna sit down. I didn't mean it. How dare you, Mauler? How dare? I apologize. How dare you? I'm a lady right now. You can't speak to me that way. <laughs> Shit, you're right. You are. Damn. <laughs> we don't want to hate women, fellas. Yeah. I'm oh, gonna so jump out of here, guys. No I got preferred stuff to do tomorrow, Star Wars so. experience oh, I gotcha. is more or less valid yeah. than any right. other. It fun. Fun. Hey, Logic. Yeah, it was good to see you. Oh wait, yeah, nice hearing from you, yeah, man. I, I, Someone's what? abandoning us. I did not hear a word you said. You sound very strange. Someone's abandoning us. Yes, I'm abandoning. You. Oh my god, that's okay. I hope you can. I hope you can stay awake. You sound very tired. We, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely, the, the eyes are getting heavier, but that doesn't mean I'm defeated yet. He has enough love for his crap. We are under Get a coffee, thing. man. Get a coffee. What if I do? All right, what anyway, do do? Uh, yeah, good talking to you guys. See you later. Do yeah, likewise, man. Later. See you later. What a nerd. He <laughs> fuck that guy. <laughs> fucking asshole. This fucking stupid glasses. Who's he? Who's he how do you, how do you see things in red and blue at the same time? That doesn't even fucking sense. You don't. It's that easy. He's blind. I bet you it's to help read these texts on because you know how you got the <laughs> bolt. Like <laughs> some of it fades it out. Stand out more. Each lens helps him. Preferred Star Wars. You can't read experience. well enough. No preferred heard... Star Wars experience is more or less valid than any other preferred Star Wars experience. That doesn't mean anything. No, this is... mean anything. <laughs> I think that's the point that's of the it. It's... it's a whole bunch of nothing. It's not even an argument. It's just like you can like stuff or you don't have to. It's all fine in my book. No preference is more or less valid than any other preference. It's like, what is happening? <laughs> Whether you hate it or love it, that's okay. Hey, I still care about you. It's just like, <laughs> I'm trying to say. He just hugs you, and you're like, I don't know. Why are we... Why? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You're valid. I accept you. You're valid, yeah. <laughs> I forget what this because guy's position it... is. Like, at the beginning, did he say... He acknowledged that the movie was objectively bad, right? But then no, he no. just said, that's okay? No. He's... Or... Was that another guy? So This guy's saying, no such thing as objectively bad, and that, um... Everybody's like reasoning for disliking, liking, for saying whatever. It's it's all down to individual. Like I don't know how many times he said this already, but just it's it's all p opinion, it's all perspective, all POV. It's okay. all just we're yeah, all just we're all just oh, stardust floating through big, the world. A big undefinable blob, and uh, yeah, yeah, the, the least it. helpful thing an artist can get in terms of response. Can you imagine this shit giving out like to your friends? Like I need help, or to your teachers, and then it's like you're valid. You're like, yeah, yeah no, okay. whatever you decide to do is okay. It's like it's not what I asked <laughs> before, though. It, it was uh, it was the last video with Mouthpaw who was saying that everything, yeah, 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 yeah. 
I feel like he's just trying to butter up everyone by being like, you know, if you don't like this, you know, uh, movie, that's completely okay. Just please don't fucking trash me on Twitter. Please don't make angry responses to me on YouTube. Like, he's really just... Don't ruin I feel like my nice comment section with your yeah, evil. He's, he's trying to play it as safe as possible, just so that way he can, he can <laughs> fire back. Just like, I said it's okay if you don't like it. Why are you mad at me? Stop being <laughs> mad. He should give some thought into thinking whether or not this line of thinking would incentivize any filmmaker to actually make a Star Wars film that's any good. Because, like, you know, if any if anything's valid, right? It's just like, well, this is a bunch of filmmakers. A director can show up on the day and just be there for the check and be like, oh, whatever, take one. Yeah, that was great. Moving on. And this, this trash. I think, pushes us to the ultimate valid, question. So. Yeah. If I presented you Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker and you watched it and it was Indiana Jones, would you be like? Okay, it's your valid. experience is valid, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean about pushing him to his limits. I'd be like, dude, there must be something. There's gotta be something, right? And I feel like at that breaking point, you'd be like, okay, but this is, this is has shares no continuity whatsoever. And I'd be like, aha! So, once it shares zero, it's a problem. But 0 0.1 is like, okay, I guess? Hmm. Assuming he does say that, we package, you know, and 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 publish Star Wars Episode Nine as Indiana Jones. I wonder if he would just be like, "This is a really cool take." Um, I'm not sure who's who, or how the story connects, but I'm enjoying this. <laughs> yeah, it's subjective. It's art. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. It's Only absolute. a Sith deals in absolutes. So I'm going to try and repurpose a Star Wars quote. Doesn't it really make sense? Also, and try and make it my video thingy. My, how can you turn script. this on us? You just said that it's not possible to be objective about it. Like, it, you can't have an objective status. Like, is that an absolute? All objective. Sounds like an absolute. All of it. Don't, don't give me this quote. Stop it. <laughs> don't, this is... Which means you are allowed to not like The Last Jedi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, yeah, kind of, sir. I needed your permission. Also, as chat, yeah, I agree with chat, actually. He's like, oh, yeah, Sith deals with that, so he's like, all right, I'm a Sith. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Someone in chat just said, this guy's so wishy-washy, he just did my laundry. Oh, hey, nice. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. That was a good, I that was like clever. That too. It was good. Damn it, you're not a it woman anymore. It is 1 million God, percent fuck. valid to not enjoy the experience of watching The Last Jedi, and I feel sincerely awful for you if that's the case not Wait, loving what? The I know all that why so you know how sincere I am why does he feel awful I missed that to not like the last Jedi it is one million percent valid to not enjoy the experience of watching the last Jedi and I feel sincerely awful for you <laughs> Because we didn't like a Star Wars movie? I guess because like, he would argue, like, he got so much out of it and you didn't, and that's sad for you. It was like, oh, we oh. got a lot out of it. But, well, I noticed but that he's framing it to not be if you think it's bad. He keeps saying if you didn't enjoy it. Like, yeah. th there's no, in this argument, there is no possibility that you can think that the movie is bad. It seems like he's mostly just pointing to, oh, you're subjective, you know. Well, yeah, but that's, that's his thesis statement, right? He's, he'd be like, yeah, you think it's bad, but that's as far as it goes. It's not actually bad, you just feel it is. And I feel awful for you because you couldn't experience the good. Well, the, also, the, the happy. I, I really like how uh, I really like how he had to make the text really fucking big. Like, please believe me when I say just how bad I feel for you. Yeah. Mm. Well, and this is the thing. It doesn't. Um, I'd be like, I'd be able to lay it out for you why uh, it didn't work for me, quote unquote. It's not. The, it's. I don't sit here going like, oh man, if only I could have enjoyed it. It's like, no, it's very clear why I didn't. I know exactly why, and it's not something I would. If that changed. Then something about the way I'm consuming uh, media and my standards would have had to have altered, like, fundamentally. So it's uh, not necessarily a, an issue for me that it was, the, as a conduit, that's how it came back out of me after being consumed. It's just, it's almost inevitable with how much shit they got backwards. Like, the, how much... The, dare I, like, because we haven't even gone over it, but, like, just the space chase itself is, like, actually embarrassing. There's so much it about it that is absolute nonsense, and the film gives like pays lip service to the idea of making sense. It's like, how come we can't catch up with them? Well, because they're smaller. Oh, that's it. Oh, oh, 
doesn't address like the 17 other ways they could catch up to him. It's like, all right, then. They know they're supposed to explain <laughs> it. Like, that kind of makes it hurt more in a weird way. Well, yeah, because right. Ryan would have been like, shit, I got to put an explanation in it. And then he does like, pl plugs up one hole and 17 spring out of it. And he's like, oh, whatever. <laughs> I'll just leave it. Next scene. <laughs> If that's the case, not loving a Star Wars film is one of the absolute worst feelings in the universe for a- What? Okay. Um. Hold the fuck up. Uh, I need you to- down. I need you to go to a dictionary, and I need you to look up the word perspective. Dude. Absolute. I, uh, so, there's a lot of experiences in life. I think all of us here have probably got a decent sort of variety of them. Dead relatives, debilitating diseases, living with autism. I mean, Stepping on a Lego. Stepping on a Lego. I mean, like, pain, suffering. I mean, horrible emotional trauma. Um, I, I want to clarify, because he ends it with saying, for a Star Wars fan, I could, I could hear him. Oh, yeah, 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 it's, yeah, that, that that's helps. included, if, if, because people are caps locking, let him finish, it's like, that's included in the fucking statement. If you're a Star Wars <laughs> fan, the worst absolute, <laughs> like, fuck off, yeah, Jesus. for a Star Wars fan, but, I mean, that doesn't, like, there are people who are, like, allergic to air and stuff like that. I, I don't. <laughs> Like, I just don't, like, I need to, I feel like this is written, well, I said this video was written by, like, a child, and it, it sounds like a, a child who has no kind of perspective actually wrote this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it over again, though, to make sure I don't upset everybody, but I'm pretty sure he said something really stupid, okay? We're gonna play it again. As a Jedi, and I feel sincerely awful for you if that's the case. Not loving a Star Wars film is one of the absolute worst feelings in the universe. Oh, uh, what a bullshit a Star argument. Wars that fan. sucks. It sucks. Yeah, guys, okay. that one was just as stupid as we thought it was, okay? Star Wars fan. Just want to clarify, we let him finish and it's just as fucking he, stupid as we thought it was. <laughs> yeah, he said this he said the thing he said the first time, but again. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. Go outside, see the world, actually suffer hardship. He never had it. It's crazy I, as well because know. he said not loving. He, he didn't say hating it. Just not loving. Just not loving. Even liking it falls under that category. I mean, I don't know. I feel like if your attachment to media is this great, you have some kind of a mental issue. It, you're not supposed to treat things this way you know like your attachment to to fictional ips and franchises it shouldn't be this great that not loving it is one of the worst feelings in the universe you know what you guys are just bitter because you're in a black chasm of despair because you just oh, uh -huh. and it feels great <laughs> they do not there's beat. a void in your life guys i know <laughs> <laughs> It is a sucky, terrible feeling. <laughs> and, I mean, for a little sucky. bit. Now I laugh at it, and it gives me incredible sucky on joy. The screen. What fucking wordsmithery here? <laughs> fucking sucky in a video <laughs> essay. He put it on the screen. He put sucky on the screen. <laughs> this Why would you do that? Last that I get sucky. I would. I would describe it as that. It was. It's sucky. Terrible. <laughs> this poo poo stinky bad. It's a <laughs> please put that on the screen. No, fuck it up. We put that Goodell. <laughs> it's poo poo stinky bad. <laughs> put on the screen. <laughs> Make me feel bad in my no no zone. <laughs> that said. Why would you try to make anyone else feel that way too? Uh, fuck by, off. Because I don't believe that, and it's by telling them, and telling them how wrong they are for enjoying it. No, okay. no, no. They, yeah. So they're not. Oh, okay, let's pause it. Okay, they're not wrong. When I say that they're wrong for enjoying it, that's a joke. So yeah, no. Yeah. Um. Yeah, just crack his ground, grounding that kid. If there is anyone in the chat at this point who actually thinks that we feel that way, no, it's just a joke. We're just having some funsies, but communists still aren't people. I mean, we, we would be However, hypocrites anyway, because at that point, we'd be like, well, you enjoy Batman and Robin, so does, is that wrong? That I'd have to be like, oh, God, yes, no, it is. Yeah, no, it's not wrong because, again, you know, enjoying things and having those things be good, totally different things. That's kind of 
kind of the core of EFAP, I'd say. It's yeah. You know, um, but we, I think that the truth of something is more important than whether or not it is or isn't comforting. And I think that in, there's enough value in the discussion itself. Also, fuck me, um, I get bored if someone just, like, if, uh, Rags, did you like it? And you go, yeah. And I'm like, can you maybe, yeah. can we talk about more than that? And then you go, yeah, I, I, I loved just, Holdo's plan. I thought it was so great. And I'm like, oof, I didn't really like it. And it's because I thought it didn't make sense. And then Rags is like, okay, now my choice is to either argue it does make sense or run the fuck away because I can't handle this shit. I just liked it because I just, I mean, I just liked it, you know? I just liked it because... And there you go. <sighs> Wrong um, for enjoying it. Yeah, if... I, I don't, like this, just looking at this still, you should just enjoy everything. I mean, can't you apply this to someone who, like, is a, like, like let's say someone's a Nazi, right? Or a racist or something terrible, and they enjoy being a racist, they enjoy being a Nazi, they enjoy being a communist or something like that then, like, why would you want to take that away from them by telling them how wrong they are for enjoying those things? Well, isn't know? it right? Ju just right yeah. about the whole taking enjoyment out of the world? Like, why would you want to do that? Yeah, this isn't a kind of principle that you can actually operate on. This is just mm -hmm. one of those... It's just a nonsense nothing that doesn't solve any problems or issues. This is almost like I'm trying to use your guilt as a weapon against you, yeah, Francisco de Anconia style, so that I can get you to j just see my argument is true. Also, to add to that sort of little weird thing I was doing with the Holdo plan thing, it's like if if I was like, no, it does make sense because this, 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 and I go this, 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 then he goes this, 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 then I go this, 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 and I'm like, see, it doesn't make sense. Also, there's like a helicopter in the background. Sorry about that, but no. Uh, you, you you conclude, and then Rags is like, no, you're telling me I'm wrong for enjoying it. And I'm like, whoa, no, I was just saying Holder's plan doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, why did you change it to that? Yeah. It's annoying, but they do it all the time. Like, discussing these elements means that you're trying to take feelings away from people. We, we make memes about this. Like, I think Jay even put out a tweet saying, like, he's scared that Maul's gonna take his feelings away. <laughs> it's like, oh no, he's coming. <laughs> Like with a hoover, a feelings hoover. I feel like I'm right. I feel like you're wrong. I feel like what you are enjoying is built on something that's empty and there's no standard to it. And if I can convince you that you like something bad, really, how much of the work am I doing and how much of the work is your brain doing? Like, don't you want to have standards for stuff? Like, right, yeah. yeah. Well, that's it, isn't it? That like it, it's like uh, they're distancing themselves from the idea of standard specificity, things being objective. Everything's just this fucking foggy cloud that you, of feelings that you can't penetrate. I mean, don't you? Yeah, don't you want in your life? Uh, I guess uh, maybe some people don't. But for me, I want to know why I like the things I like, and I want to know why I hate the things I hate. I want to know the reasons behind oh, yeah, things. It's... I just don't want to skip to the end point where I get my conclusion and I have no idea how I got there. Hi, Fringy. Oh, hey, hi, Fringy. Right, hey, dude. <laughs> Bro, oh, hello, Froggy. So, uh, what, what's 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 happened in the last few hours? All right. Nothing well, Fringy, much. you you came in at a Nothing good point good. because we're discussing a still right now in the watch together. Um, okay. We're talking about the Last Jedi, as we do. And the still that we're on right now is he's got text on the screen, as you do. Um, right. And it as says... He does every single frame. Of course. Uh, it says, why would you try to make anyone else feel that way, too, by telling them how wrong they are for enjoying it? Sound familiar? Why, uh, right, okay. Why would you try to make anyone else feel that way, too, by telling them how wrong they are for enjoying it? I, I don't... What, what does that mean? It means that you're stealing people's feelings. Stop it. But, right, okay, so uh, other people aren't, like, capable of making you feel anything really at all other than what you decide or, like, what the consequences of learning the truth. <laughs> like, what do you mean you are stealing that feeling from them? Well, his you position should... seems to be that if you watch The Last Jedi, you if you didn't like it, that or any Star Wars movie, you're secretly in this emotional pit of despair because oh. you didn't like the movie you like to see. Sorry, I'm going to read out that okay. quote for him as well. For, for you, this, this is from this video, okay? You ready? 
The okay. absolute worst feeling for a Star Wars fan is not loving a Star Wars film. <laughs> <laughs> Do it so well. <laughs> <laughs> so you just need to sound a little more sad and you fucking nail it like you're just on the verge of depression <laughs> star wars fans out there there is no feeling worse than not loving a star wars movie <laughs> uh, yeah like i wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy surviving the uh, holocaust nope <laughs> it's uh yeah it's that's something. pretty melodramatic Oh, this, that's this video. This has been quite intense. He treats it as though it's, a, a, like, the end of the world, and we've got to get the Star Wars fandom back on track. Alright, well, I have jumped into the watch together, and I'm looking at that frame now, so if you want to, like, continue. Oh, God, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that right there everything you know about this video. That was... Yeah. <laughs> That was not planned. I just, I just love that you, you came in on that. That's great. It is about to get worse because he's gonna put in a subtitle. He's gonna put yeah, in a subtitle. A, like, oh boy, he's gonna this put is in a really quote. big important point. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but he does it for literally fucking every word of every sentence. Like, if, there, did even, it, if it even requires like slight emphasis. What was the one he like did it for? Splatter the shit on the screen. Poopy. What was the one he did it for? <laughs> what was the word? It was shiny. I don't know. It was a stupid word. Fuck, I forgot what it was. But he, sucky. Sucky. That was it. He did one. He put a word on screen when he said sucky. Friggy. How great is that? Why? <laughs> Why do I do that? Okay. All right. Go another second, and you're gonna see how much worse this guy gets. <laughs> All right. I'm pumped. I really don't like this font. I mean, it's fucking Star Wars, and he's using this chicken scratch Pirates of the Caribbean font. Yeah, it makes no sense. That that P looks like an O with a line drawn. <laughs> it looks at him at the bottom there. It looks artistic like and genuine. Or you guys don't understand. Artistic and genuine. You're missing. That's that's what it is. Ugh. Is he gonna put Yoda? <laughs> piano though, dude. I can't get over the fucking midi ass. Oh, fucking MIDI. Luke right. <laughs> this is one of the most okay. This is one of the most the like videos quote, right? that we have ever watched. Just so that we got we're it from very like a two thousand and three website, and he's just like, "Yeah, fuck it, this works. I can't get DMCA for this. Good enough. <laughs> These people are fucking morons anyway. They'll click any video I make. Apparently." Oh, I thought you were going to make a point. All right, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm agreeing, apparently. People watched this. <laughs> no, they didn't. We're the first. <laughs> 80,000 people. I don't remember I like how it's all slow and sad, I watched too. it. I was literally too Why is he speaking so quietly? <laughs> he's, <that's laughs> yeah, he's, no, he's, he's, he's a wounded he's animal in the forest. You've got to... He's clearly on purpose. <laughs> oh, the Star Wars, you know, it's it meant so much to me growing up. Like, what the fuck is this? Just Listen speak to up. how convincingly <laughs> like, emotional I am about this very emotional he's topic. This, he's a hobbling rabbit, and you found him in the woods. And you're just like, what is your opinion on Star Wars? He's like, I'm going to tell you. I just need to sit down. Okay, right. here goes. Always a Star Wars. I don't remember the first time I watched it. I was. He sounds like he's on the verge of tears. <laughs> yeah, everyone in chat has been saying that. Everyone in yeah. chat has been pointing that. They're like, "Who's this fucker that sounds like he's about to cry?" Yes, That's, but this, so but this is terrible. this is rather common in a lot of these style of videos. You know, like the, this is the voice. The I, I said it isn't the it very TFA, melodramatic. Isn't TFA part one where I said fragile? I can't remember how I described it. Fra and I showed a clip of someone crying when I said it because I was like, "That's how they do yeah. it." He was loose. I think you said, like, gotta bring in that existential weariness or something like that. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm fully ennui. prepared to see some uh, really dramatic pauses as well. Uh, <laughs> oh, really yes. inappropriate pauses. Yes. Do you think oh. anyone, like, watched this and they were actually moved to tears by it? Like, yes. literal fucking tears? He was. Oh, <laughs> there are people, <laughs> dude, there are people this works wow. on. This is, like, the fast food of uh, video essays. Like, it's just... Yeah. Oh, it funny right because it it's like that but it's it's almost masquerading as though it's not like so what what what's like a step up from fast food but still not actually a restaurant like um fuck um uh <laughs> i like no, i like, guess i would say like subway it's like oh this is like, like really garden tier. i think it's like tier fast yeah. food so you have two tiers of fast food you have like the mcdonald's at the bottom and shit like that but then you move up to the nice things like the 
like a Chick-fil-A, you know, where it's fast food, but it's not bad. Mm -hmm. I guess it's more like the idea that it's almost masquerading as like a, an actual, you know, restaurant, if you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, we got a few of those here. Like an Applebee's? Well, I don't. We don't have those here. That's the problem. Oh, uh, like all we have is McDonald's, KFC, and Hungry Jack's, which is like Burger King, but not. Hmm. He doesn't really seem to know what his position is. Because on the one hand, he's <laughs> arguing for like a balance, which would imply like the haters have their place, the people who like it have their place. But then he's saying that the people who didn't like it shouldn't engage in a dialogue with the people who did. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting uh, contradictions in a lot, like, one of the common ones being people say, well, no, the balance means that there's good and bad in the Star Wars universe, right. but yet there is no, that's that's not how it works. Like, the good guys are the balance, the balance is the light. <laughs> like, yeah. And people seem to forget that every time. <laughs> red Rooster, somebody mentioned, yeah. How many Red Roosters are there left in Australia at this point? Like, ten? I don't I'm know how, sure how long did you build a fence for him? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. Oh, good. Young good. to create memories, but it didn't become an obsession <laughs> until I sat down in a theater at seven years old. It is funny if you strip away all of the manipulation, it, it gets funny. That's just how it works. Yeah, no, like, I, I can't take any of this shit seriously. But he, you can tell he, it's very fucking meaningful, like, what he's trying to convey. But it's just, it's to the point of comedy. Yeah. This is one of the most pretentious videos we've ever watched. It is. I dude, think so. It's definitely top it's tier. Like... It, could, it could be number one for pretentious. I'm not sure. We oh, have to check out. Oof. Maybe. <coughs> and saw this part was all right this part of the movie was all right I'm yeah sure it was pretty cool yeah i didn't mind that, that points cool. you well, this make. part was pretty cool yeah we had to sit through a lot of bullshit to that get to it but you know, yeah I, that's for sure i was a jedi what <laughs> you okay. were a jedi oh my yeah, god that's jedi. Jedi. what are you Mahler talking about sure pussy um, what you saying? So when he saw the pod race, he was like, oh my god, I'm a Jedi. Okay, so that's an interesting take, that when you saw cars racing, like future hover cars, you were like, <laughs> man, I feel like the lightsaber-wielding people I have barely seen yet in this film. <laughs> what, like, what a weird... It feels like this is backwards. Well, I mean, what we know is, this is made up. When you were seven years old, you didn't know what a Jedi was. Yeah. Probably by this point, you didn't. <laughs> What are you- Okay. You heard him say the word, though. That counts. Uh, okay. You've been here for 30 seconds! You're not allowed to be as frustrated as we are! I, well, the thing is, right, I'm just, like, trying this to figure- This isn't Fringy's that. first episode. Yeah, Fringy's been <laughs> through Fringy's a lot, Fringy's been okay. through a lot. He's been through a lot. <laughs> With us. Yeah, he's been through a lot. He's our blood brother. Just, he's a, he's just a picture so of Fringy. Well, picture of I Fringy with like... a thousand yard stare. Yeah, whenever I see these, like, sort of, there's so many telltale signs, and it feels like, you know, those Vietnam flashbacks. <laughs> uh, I'm li I'm running out of words. <laughs> I mean, just to clarify, you've all seen this shit before, right? Like, you just, you've been around YouTube. You, you, Honest, you, pretty. <laughs> like, this, yeah. this kind of, like, all, this video is filled with hallmarks. It's kind of cool. It it's all of it, man. Like you could little, just take um, this and be like, here's YouTube. A little museum? <laughs> almost here's YouTube. Yeah. At this point in the video, he should put in footage of himself like Star Wars kid in his garage with like a toy lightsaber knocking bottles off tables. <laughs> yeah, like that, uh, that's, what was that, that Star Wars video from like 2006? <laughs> the guy... <laughs> Damn, that's a long time ago. <laughs> I feel like that would be more emotionally compelling if he was just knocking oh, shit over in his sure, garage yeah. with a toy lightsaber. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you know, I, I buy that this dude is a hardcore original fan. That's a true <laughs> fan right there. True toxic brooder. Since that moment, my life has been Star Wars. Star Wars birthday parties with pin the tongue on the jar. I think you're getting Star what Wars you asked for. I mean, well, well, <laughs> what, right, is, what is the point of this? I think you're actually getting exactly what you asked for. I just like the idea that we're like, we're not questioning your Star Wars, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, 
Move yeah. on. We, I believe you. Yeah. Of backpacks, t-shirts, cups, notebooks, lightsabers, every last one of those f***ing pop cans. Oh my god, all the Lego sets. I had a $300 sand crawler set. That's not even I, cool. uh, Here's the thing. I, I don't care. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry. Here's the thing. I don't care. <laughs> Uh, here's I the thing. I fucking there. hate Star Wars. <laughs> Hello, Vito. <laughs> Hello! Hello. Hey, Hi, we're watching going? a Hello. video essay on Star Wars. That's like your favorite you thing, got... right? I love that Last Jedi movie. Is he talking about uh, how it inspired him to be a Jedi? And I He's talking it. about... Oh, shit. Sorry. He's talking about, uh, well, just... he. What is it? Balancing the Star Wars fandom. Restoring balance. Right. Right. Which... That movie definitely did that. Well, he's gonna do it. <laughs> he's gonna. He's gonna. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna, gonna do it single-handedly. He's gonna heal those wounds. To a franchise watched by millions. <laughs> well, don't. What he figured out was that people need to know that when they hate and like, it's really just down to them, and they shouldn't be trying to make other people hate and like. Mm -hmm. Do you think you'll have a section on that? Hey, fans, stop trying to make other people love the film. Okay, it's toxic. Do you think you'll have that section? Because I don't. Well, I mean, this that's the double standard, right? If you think something's awesome, that's cool. But if you think it sucks, you're opinionated, you should shut up. You're trying to deprive joy from the world. Isn't that basically just saying criticism shouldn't exist? You should never try to change anyone's opinion on anything? Well, yeah, I think it's just right. the whole idea of a lot of people hold the perspective that any if you have anything that's negative, then you shouldn't say it. But if it's positive, that's cool, and it doesn't need to be criticized or judged skeptically at all. It's really frustrating. It's um, it's like everyone's everyone's quick to to talk about how uh, beautiful a thing is, how great a thing is, how well made a thing is. It's like the second you do the other one, they're like, "Whoa, now you can keep that to yourself." And then just like, "Well, but isn't the point of like celebrating the good and condemning the bad to ultimately progress, or is well, it, or is I it mean, more if so? We, if we don't get to like, talk about it all overall, good and bad, then what's the point in having a conversation if I know that you're just going to say it's good? Because there's nothing else that's allowed. Well, I think that not we got two different types of people in the conversation at the same time who are under different pretenses. Like, the ones who are saying, yes, that is well made, and then they refuse to say that things are badly made. Their only goal the whole time was to make people feel good about stuff. Which is like, okay. Mm -hmm. But then there were other people in the conversation at the time who were like, oh, that's what we're doing? I was actually concerned about, like, fucking, I didn't like the house with the, the one wall. I thought that was a bit... No? Alright, well, <laughs> yeah, we can, you know, and it's like, yeah, you I shut do up. Almost, I do like the idea that, you know, especially when it's a series that has a continuity, and the things that come afterwards do affect the things that come before it. You know, it's almost like you've got this really nice house, and you're standing in it, and you say, this is a cool house, and someone comes in with a sledgehammer and just busts a hole in the wall. <laughs> um, naturally, you're a little bit pissed off that there's a hole yeah. in your wall, and it's like, well, then, you know, you got to take the good and the bad, all right? Jeez. <laughs> you got a nice cup yeah. holder, a horizontal cup holder. It's the same thing. <laughs> 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 Plenty of easy airflow. There's lots of good things to like here. You're just being a bigot. I mean, oh, you're right. So, so where we're at in this video, if if you're in the thing, he's talking about how he used to collect Lego sets about Star Wars because. That's important to whatever points. Yeah, coming. yeah. One relevant. of those f***ing pop cans. Oh my god, all the Lego sets. I had a three hundred dollar sand like crawler oh set. That's not even cool. It's just a sand crawler, and I bought. Well, it was it. cool. Then you bought one. Oh, yeah, Le leave now young nobody you alone. Them. He's allowed to find the sound crawler cool. I'm defending. I just love when that something him. is scripted and the person is trying to sound so enthusiastic and like organic, and he just threw in the. Oh my god. Like he's oh, actually oh, having yeah. like a fan yeah, girl moment. Yeah, that wasn't in the yes. script. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, I've got a note here that says to remember. Yeah, let me go totally yeah. off the cuff and tell you just, let me just spaz <laughs> out just completely off script. It's just, it's so real, so organic, you guys. Yeah. It's a weird thing to say. I think the sand crawler's cool. What's not cool, cool about sand crawlers? I think they're right. slow and ugly. I, I, yeah, I mean, but that's cool. I like that. As a, as a okay. fantasy. Okay. Junk traders. As a fantasy a whole, thing. Yeah, Jawers are cool. Yeah, they got a giant moving sand crawler full of half constructed droids. It adds a lot to that universe. I like it. And they got vaporized by Mando. Yeah, yeah. For three hundred dollars, I even spent a hundred bucks on an out of print paperback book about the making of Empire Strikes That's Back. That's uh, a weird financial decision. <laughs> That's a weird. Play. 
now he's just trying fact. to brag. Now he's just yeah. like, look at all the money I had as a kid. Fuck you. Totally. <laughs> also, wait, <laughs> hang on. Oh, I guess I was about to say, shit. like, how does he have the Amazon record if it was when he was a kid? And I was like, oh god, it wasn't like two years ago, was it? When he was a kid? <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like he's is. currently a kid. No, I'm guessing he just got this. He, he does sound. It's not that he's young. He's fragile, Rags. That's Na important. Naive. He's immature. But didn't didn't he say when he watched? Um, he said he watched Phantom Menace when he was seven. That means he's like at least in his mid twenties. Oh God, he's at least my age. He's a wounded woodland creature, Maybe. and you keep treating him like he's some kind of adult. Stop it. <laughs> I really Monsters. wish at the outset of these videos, people would establish what age they were when the prequel came out. <laughs> <You're> just, <laughs> Cause like, I am 14, you're point, like, oh, I'm out, I'm out. Yeah. I, yeah, I can go, oh, I know what your opinion is, and it's probably very bad. Uh, but yeah. I'm uh, turning into Ben Shapiro right now, where I'm just like, ah, oh, fuck kids. No. <laughs> <laughs> can you change your avatar to Ben Shapiro for me? No. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you, you can change you can change your avatar to Ben Shapiro if you want to. No, I'm Smash Mouth right now. I like Smash Mouth. Oh, okay, well, that's fair. Well, I would I would dare I'd never ask you to change your your profile from Smash Mouth to something yeah. else. That's the correct response. Yes. Biggest influence Star Wars had on my life came from those making of documentaries on the prequel DVDs. They showed me that filmmaking was a thing people did. They made me realize that I could create something that affects other people as much as Star Wars has affected me. This channel would not exist without those documentaries. They're what made me want to So they're to stuff. blame. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Go back in time. Change it. Change All your right, timeline, please. So that section was why I like making stuff. Like, Okay. Right. I don't get Could it. He, he had to watch a documentary to understand that movies are made by people. He was like, a young man. He was a young woodland creature at that point. <laughs> Wait, these I aren't just burned picked him off the trees if there's a film orchard somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys seen that feature length documentary making of the Phantom Menace? It's fucking hilarious, dude. <laughs> what do you have a like, clips that they're always funny? Yeah, like you know, the, you know the Red Letter Media Plinket reviews, yeah. like all right. the, the the behind the scenes clips. They're all from that movie. It's like one feature length. The one the, where he's just the like, oh, you know, it all rhymes. I may have gone yeah, exactly. Too far in and there's places. there's so many cringy moments where you're watching George <laughs> Lucas in a room full of people, and, like they're all like giving each other nervous looks. It's just like, okay, I guess we're <laughs> well, doing that. Yeah, like George right. is completely oblivious to it. There's so much of that, and like it's so dense. Yeah. It's, uh... What was the, what was that part where I think they they watched the film like they had the first cut and um George Lucas is like oh I might have gone a bit too far. In <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it's from that movie as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, why I would will you say though that on the documentary like what a terrible idea to use that. <laughs> well, I, you know people it's, it's funny. Like, you might people as well just say quoting, uh, I've made a people... horrible mistake. Yeah. People in chat are quoting Jar Jar is the key to all of this. What I will say is, we yeah. got to like we, we get Jar Jar working. Like he has a key shaped play. head, or like what? Is this Rather than saying like, oh my god, like why would you release that? It's so embarrassing. It's like, god damn it! I wish we got more of those kinds of things. Because you know, imagine the Rise of Skywalker initial screenings. They must have been like, fuck, dude. Yeah, yeah. That would, that's what I mean. I I actually really like the behind the scenes stuff where they're honest. I mean, I always the, the most stuck, and I'm, this is on my mind because I'm talking to Wolf about like fucking Halo. Like you watch the Halo two and three behind the scenes stuff, and they're always talking about like development. They're talking about the decisions that they're they great. make and how they make them. Yeah, yeah I've really seen some good. of those. They're really fascinating. Um, and then you mm -hmm. compare it to three four three, where they just like declare the things that they've chosen to do without explaining why or anything, and it's like night and day. I really like. The behind the scenes stuff where there's actual discussion about the things that didn't work. Like, yeah, to me, that's yeah. more it's like we turned up the auto aim so you don't even have to fucking even look at it. Now oh, we decided yeah, to right. shit on the main character yeah. people, love. Uh, moving on. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 this is a total tangent. You guys are aware of like Halo Infinite's apparently the development's not going great. Oh, oh really? No. I heard, I heard. What's, what's, wait, what's, what's, what's the newest? Uh, well, Informed. you tell. The, the the main thing being that uh, apparently a lot of it's being outsourced to contractors. So they oh. and also oh thank apparently... God three four three can't ruin it. Yeah, we touched a bullet there. <laughs> apparently the uh, the the real interesting part is that apparently the upper echelon at three four three are more concerned with the Halo show than Halo Infinite. I don't Halo understand what? that. There's a Halo TV show coming on Showtime. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, 
I, know, I, I thought that was never happening, but apparently they're spending a lot of time working <sighs> on that video game that they should be focusing on. Oh my god. It's, I mean, it's not yeah. even coming out at the launch of the new Xbox. So, like, who the fuck is going to get that? Like, Well, uh, yeah, Xbox... Well, it yeah, would have if they would have worked on it harder. I know I sound like a super elitist asshole saying that, but it's kind of true. <laughs> You're correct. You have, You've had yeah. plenty of time, you know? Well, five years. It's been five years. Like, this is a long time. There's <laughs> not know? many well, reasons to really like a hard Halo horror. Infinite is five years? Well, Halo 5 came out in 2015. Um, mm-hmm. And, hmm. okay. and, but then it... I get. I mean, like it, it's. I feel like Halo at this point is like it really is a shell of its former self. Um, I oh, think Halo absolutely. Four, like people were willing to give it, cut it some slack, but Halo Five was like four hours long, uh, and I didn't even get it. I was just like, I d- don't care. There's like, nothing to never... get. It's just it's terrible. It was TLJ before TLJ. Ouch. <laughs> Uh, going back yeah. to the documentaries for a moment, um, I agree. The the ones about Bungie, uh, especially the first one, were way more fascinating than 343. And 343 was was founded like at the height of Halo's popularity, really, Yeah, I think. And so like they had a big group of people and a bunch of money. And I've heard some weird things about that, about how like Frank O'Connor was only hiring people specifically who hated Halo because he wanted yeah. to like mix up the development. Like... It, like, I thought wow. that was a really bad idea. Well, he's like but... Neil Druckmann, in a way, where the stuff that people love is the thing that you really don't want to make, and well, now you have the power to make what you want to make, and now people hate it. You well, must be yeah, able to yeah. sleep well at night. It's, yeah. I think of Ryan Johnson, where you go, he probably hated Star Wars. It's like, let's yeah. switch it up. Yeah, well, and, I, uh, I, I, that's I think with Halo, that's just really, like, fat. Because you, you were... When you watch, like, especially Halo 4, people should have probably picked up on that early. There are a lot of things that were just said. Like, I, I think there was a quote where they said, basically, every everything is completely unrecognizable, but it still feels like Halo. It's like, how can you say these things? Like, these oxymorons that it are didn't, completely by the way, absurd. It didn't feel like Halo. No, it didn't. Not, well, it, how Which could isn't it? necessarily it bad. Different? It's just, no, not it wasn't necessarily. good. Um, it me- wasn't better. It wasn't... It wasn't even a sidestep. <clears throat> it wasn't different. In a those leaks it's not like we're going from been... Battlefield Four to Battlefield One, where you're like, this isn't as good, but it's still different enough to be, you know, interesting. And I like it overall, and I can stick with this. It was just worse. Meme repository yeah. reckons those leaks have been debunked. By the way, I'm assuming it's in reference oh, to which the new ones? stuff, uh, the newest things that are coming out. I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, I remember watching a video about two or three weeks ago where I think it was Review Tech USA was looking at, uh, you know, oh, like shit, how I haven't heard websites. that name in ages. <laughs> like yeah there, there, there was um you know those company review websites where like employees can talk about their problems a lot of the employees who were giving negative reviews were talking about the massive amount of contract work um and the 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 mismanagement was the big criticism and it all makes sense to me just reading it I, you know i could be hmm. wrong but um but yeah we'll see suppose the mm-hmm. proof mm-hmm. shall be in the pudding yeah um, I guess we'll go back to make stuff. Yeah, let's. Sorry. We, ju- <laughs> we just learned the law on how he began to make stuff. So how about oh, that? Oh boy. Also, I figured I would I would give him the out, but Moriarty posted in chat that he's getting super tired. Yeah, I'm gonna hop out of here. I am. I'm fading, and uh, <laughs> I, I've had a, a blast. But I'm. I'm oh, we're fading. very happy to have had you, sir. Thank you for popping on. Yeah, Absolutely. It was fun. I'm always happy to come. I enjoy hanging out with you Me guys. Me too. A lot of people well, isn't happy to come, often right? report that <laughs> you know, coming man. is a fun experience. Yeah, this is good stuff. <laughs> I've enjoyed the five minutes we've spent together. Yeah. Aw. <laughs> well, you know, it I meant mean... a lot. It, it could have been, you know, four minutes. That would have been worse. <laughs> yeah, <That's> true. <laughs> I'll miss you, buddy. Yeah. There you go. All right, guys. Have a wonderful evening. Sleep yeah, well. Absolutely. Have a good night. Uh, what do you mean? It's you 10 a.m. for me now. I'm, I'm in my late morning. Have a wonderful morning, then. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and good night. Bye bye. I want to lose Every <laughs> time. <laughs> Not every time. Most times. <laughs> I would never do it to you, Fringy, because I love you. You don't. I'm, sh- I'm confident. You I was about to say, how would you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, these aren't recorded or anything. Nope. There's a lot of a lot of random comments just coming up from these different accounts. Are they all bots? Like, who are these people? It's, it's really weird, because this is offline, definitely, 100%.
But still, a favorite thing about Star Wars, other than Star Wars, was the Water virginity. Oh. I have had the virginity. <laughs> <laughs> The land, <laughs> the land. This is um, yeah, it's seriously the worst font you could choose. In Venice, though, it does look it's it's horrible. Like yeah. Originally, I thought they had the tandem. Looks like an upside down L with like a little line sticking yeah, out. Well, that's because you don't understand this is proper writing, okay? Proper writing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Proper. In it. In it. Fucking proper. Yeah. Countless incredible interactions with the fan film community, the con goers, the cosplayers, the R2D2 builders. Con goers? Like so people who do congos? Cos cosplayers. You know, I, I want to. Like, con go enthusiasts. You'd think, right, um, with all things having equal and opposites and stuff, the idea of being like, I love being in a collective that all enjoy a piece of content. We all get to discuss it. That's really cool. And it's like, so theoretically, is there enjoyment to be found in all collectively discussing ripping apart a thing? Like, a collective shared disdain? And I was like, well... Wow, Game, Game of Thrones, be, right? Season like, 8, being... uh, obviously The Last of Us 2, the, the recently, like, like TLJ, it's like, yes, well, I mean, actually. what, about, uh, what the... about, like, you know, The Room and, and movies well, what I'm, so bad? Those ones, I would just, what I'm trying to specify is, like, the like the meme creation from the, the Game of Thrones and The Last of Us 2 subreddits. Uh, yeah. It's like fueled by a passionate hatred, and they are hilarious memes. Like, and mm -hmm. everyone gets to sort of. If there was a con for this shit, like everyone turns up and you basically cosplay as like fucking the writers or something, like as the meme, <laughs> and you're just like, look at me. And everyone's just like, oh, like, what episode did you hate the most? It's like, oh, it's gotta be this one. It's like, what moment? Which character arc do you think was damaged? That I just love the idea that everyone's having fun and it's all a con based around how shit the product <laughs> is. It's like, oh, yeah. wow. I want to go to a convention where half the people are dressed as Holdo and the other half are Poe, and all the uh, Holdo cosplayers just lecture the Poe cosplayers. Keep doing oh, fucking how annoying that would be. Learn a lesson. Like, uh, uh, I feel like what would be really cool is like if you had a, a mini game that was like bowling, but you're bowling with the Radis and the pins are all of the fleet. Holdo blast through. <laughs> Some people chat like, isn't that what EFAP is? It's like, hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, hmm. Yeah. It's a little little collective. Everyone hangs out and talks about which which fucking IP hurt them the most. Has been destroyed today. Yeah, it is eventually going to be a today sort of thing. We've had too many at this point. It's just is the Star Wars the IP that uh it's damaging mattered the most to you, Mahler? Because I know you're also a trans mm. uh, Terminator fan. That's I feel a really like Terminator was painful. Genuinely yeah. great question. It's really hard to gauge my emotional reaction, but. It might be Game Terminator. Of is also one. Game of Thrones is that... high scoring, so is Star Wars, and it's specifically the um the Luke Skywalker, John Connor, and um Danny Daenerys, uh, da Daenerys Jamie. Like uh, the it's it's always gonna be when those characters as much as I fucking hate when they destroy wheel building. Like it's always gonna be yeah. when the characters like fundamentally betray their core traits, it really gets to me. <laughs> Funnily enough, I say that when of course John Connor wasn't assassinated in, like his character wasn't assassinated in dark fate <laughs> he, was, he was just he literally was assassinated. assassinated literally yeah <laughs> but like that really pissed me off watching him get killed i was like oof. well it, it feels like uh john connor in particular is going through the ringer in genesis they're like lol bad guy and then in in dark fate they're like oh just kill him you i know? still have not been able to muster up the courage to watch dark fate it's just too much. Dude, in the cinema, when they play that scene, because I had already heard about the leak, like, like the, yeah. um, and I think that there was video, just seeing it, I was just like, uh, it, it's... <laughs> I did have to watch that clip on YouTube, and I was, like, just actually upset. It's it hurts. something else. Uh, and it's, it, the, the, when, when, like, dealing with backlash, didn't the director say, like, yeah, well, Terminator was never about John Connor, it's about Sarah. Uh, it was about John Connor. But, uh... <laughs> like, how about it's about Well, I know both that director uh, fought with James Cameron a lot, so I don't know which of them came up with that terrible idea. Well, yeah, but James Cameron was like, hey, D Genesis, man, this is like the real sequel to Terminator 2. <laughs> I mean, that, he said that, so I'm not sure how much I still it's remember worth the stupid he... promotional video where he. Because it almost got me, like, into the, the idea that like, this will be a good one. It's like a trailer, and it shows the recreation of Terminator 1's, like, uh, when, when Arnie first comes in, and James yeah. Cameron's there, and he's like, 
they've uh, you know i'm seeing these things and i recognize them it's just it's amazing they've and i was just like oh they're gonna this is gonna be like a really respected thing like it's, it's gonna take care of like the ip they're like oh cool and the genesis just takes a huge shit all over they delete them they do it with you are a relic from a deleted timeline <laughs> It's yeah, I was gonna say, someone, someone in chat said the worst part was that it was by a Terminator from the timeline they already deleted. Just so insulting. Yeah, well, the T-800 apparently just turned... He was like one of the few that got through after Skynet was defeated. He was just like, I guess I killed John Connor. And of course, as we all know her, Sarah Connor just chilling on a beach with John. And then he just walks up to him and kills him. It's just like, oh... Damn it. <laughs> you couldn't have done it in a more fucking lame way. And it just comes across as like, yeah, fuck John Connor. We want to do something else. Like, okay, well. Yeah, he's dead. Now we can move on to other things. Right, okay, I guess you Literally can. the exact same movie, but now it's a girl and it's not Skynet, it's Legion. It's like, this is the same Which thing. Which is a way worse name. Oh yeah, Sky a, Skynet's uh, so much cooler. Yeah. I wanted Legion like a doesn't... it sounds so like try hard. Legion. Yeah. I, I would love to see a Terminator comedy where it's just John Connor dealing with the fact that they already solved the future and now he's just a schlubby loser who uh, he's like, you know, in a different timeline, I was the leader of the human race, and they're like, Always. all right, man. Uh, I can't cool. remember who came up with this joke before, <laughs> but it was like the Terminators just keep showing up in awkward places. Like he's about to do, like go go out on his prom night sort of thing, and it's just like, oh, <laughs> there he is again. You're like, no. Oh. Sarah's there with a minigun. We'll be fine. I we, so we got. I like we we went on this tangent from him establishing that it's nice that fandoms like celebrate things together. <laughs> we're just like, yeah. hey, we're like everything sucks. You're like, hey guys, let's let's have another funeral over all the things that we um, used to like. Bum, bum, bum. Like, you could have cods around that. You you lay all the other seasons of Game of Thrones in a coffin. <laughs> Lower it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, someone in the chat brought up that uh, the director and James Cameron were at, were at odds with each other during production. And I'm just like, how how do you not like agree to be on the same page before you get to this point, right? Imagine, why, why, does this, why are we on the set? of the movie and we're at odds like we should have fucking well, yeah, agreed beforehand hard, yeah hard it's like scripts, right? and being here's like, the yeah, script the we script. agree this is what we're gonna do yeah like, dude imagine I mean, being at every... odds with the guy who created the first two be like mm. yeah that's like every hollywood project though it's like you know Zack snyder starts making justice league and they're like yeah this is terrible you know, we need to change this or yeah, uh, it's ridiculous. what do you call it suicide squad I think what happens is the director starts making the Terminator movie and James Cameron is like, yeah, this will be fine. And they watch as a rough cut. And he's like, let's change everything. Yeah. What was, There's um, so Rags, help me out. What was the context for Silence Call Me? <laughs> I think I forgot. <laughs> Silence Call Me? Oh, that was Jim Sterling in, uh, wasn't it? Oh, when he was like, yeah, when he Same accused me shit. people of countering him as being like, oh, call me logic. That, that, I like my dragon flag. So I was like, fucking silence, communist. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very flattering image for a uh, gym, by the way. Wonderful. Um, is is that what communists dress like? Yes. That's what oh, okay. this one dresses like. Well, with That's top what hats and monocle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then sunglasses again. <laughs> See, that seems kind of like a capitalist caricature. Yeah, I was well, watching when you guys started, and every time Jim Sterling came on with that aristocrat character, I was cringing myself into a grave but it's so funny <laughs> isn't it so funny though yeah oh, 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 it's, it's the, hilarious and the comments he was grabbing to represent was so like mad <laughs> it's like look how crazy these elitists are i can't even connect the dots on like what what is the connection there that the people making the comments are acting like uh, there is no connection he just doesn't like he just wanted to them. put on a costume for some reason and make stupid noises with his mouth. He certainly showed them. That's all. That's that's what I got to say about that. The 501st Legion, a group of stormtrooper cosplayers that have raised hundreds of thousands of dollars in charitable events. The fandom was always this force for Plus. good. Ooh. Oh, oh God. God. for good. Sneaky. <laughs> now, okay. now we're seeing the narrative. Force for good. Yeah. <laughs> what does it mean to be a force for bad? I wonder.
I'm just picturing, like, like, like I said, in this in this very con, there's just a corner of the auditorium where all the 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 toxic fans hang out. This black hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was smoking cigarettes. <laughs> Fuck this movie. And then you walk over there, like, hey guys, do you want to hang out? It's like, which film yeah. do you hate the most? Is it TLJ? I hope so. <laughs> I, I just want I... some coffee. Oh my god. <laughs> Coffee, yeah, like the golf <laughs> yeah. kids and stuff, fuck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Are you guys gonna actually watch this movie and enjoy it? Are you just gonna sit here and drink coffee? Says, like, J.J. <laughs> Abrams or Kathleen Kennedy or something? Yeah. Being extremely antisocial growing up, Star Wars was my way of making immediate friends, whether Aww. it was at school or conventions or comic shops. So you're shops. autistic, okay. And while we might have disagreed on the prequels <laughs> or Ewoks, we could always agree on one That means thing. that someone Social in your friends group back. liked the Ewoks? I hope it wasn't you. Uh, we, it, it was. We established you. earlier. It was you. You gotta leave the Ewoks alone. Oh my god, is that the Hornroom Glasses guy from Heroes? Why is that your image right now? Because it bears a vague resemblance to me, and I'm just trying to fucking... It's Noah Bennett, and I'm just trying to, like, cycle between anything that could perceivably look like my avatar. You say Noah... That's his character name, right? That's not his name name. No, I, I don't know the actor's name. I okay. just know his character name. Right. Or conventions or comic shops. And while we might have disagreed on the prequels or Ewoks, we could always... <laughs> I just find that music. <laughs> we may have disagreed on Ewoks, but ultimately, <laughs> we made it through. <laughs> We may have disagreed on Ewoks. <laughs> I like to imagine he goes to these conventions and there's just heated Ewok debates every day. <laughs> Topic of contention. One guy dresses oh. up like an Ewok and everyone starts freaking out and screaming. You know what? I thought they were fun, okay? I said it. <laughs> I like them. Oh shit, we got another one. Uh, oh, oh my god. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, it's relevant too to to <gasps> Fringle. Oh. Oh, we did got you watch the? Did you watch the recent Red Letter Media where he points out how they uh, Star Wars broke the Prime Directive by not informing the Ewoks that C three PO is not actually a god? <laughs> well, they never did. That. <laughs> it's like so now they leave, and like hundreds of years later, the Ewoks are still worshiping this so golden great. man who walked among them. <laughs> Meanwhile, in North Australia. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> No, Australia. <laughs> this is great. I love that. The turkey yeah, and totally really good. <laughs> Take that Calls clown, clown boy. boy. You guys were fast. <laughs> yeah. That was only like a few hours ago. <laughs> oh, this is <laughs> great. Awesome. Yeah. This yeah, it's not awesome. like rushed or anything. They actually like took their time to do like oh, proper yeah. shading yeah. and everything Freaking too, it. especially a Mar. Once you jumped out and the memes discussion started to die down a bit, Tonald had like full on we we talked a lot about like the hardships of YouTubing and it was a yeah. It was great. I fully recommend anyone who hasn't didn't even know that conversation exists. Check it out. It was, uh, it was some good shit. He was a great guest, yeah. and I say that I completely. I, I listened to that. I yeah, I thought that was terrific. Um, and he was talking about how like he's he he felt like he wasn't making uh content that was like satisfying or fulfilling whatsoever, but matched an algorithm, and that these days he's putting his heart in there and he's he's enjoying it way much. Just like oh my god, this is. Yeah. This is good shit. Like some soul searching shit, yeah. Yeah. But we still got memes out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, makes <Mike, laughs> carry on. What what was the Ewok argument? Please agree on one thing. Star Wars Empire Strikes Back is easily one of my favorite movies of all time. The best Star Wars movie, hands down, Boba Fett. Best lightsaber duel in any of the Star Wars movies. Cinematically, it's phenomenal. It's just like a beautifully made film. My opinion of The Empire Strikes Back is that it is the best of all the Star Wars films. I have a really personal connection. <gasps> <gasps> it's Jacob. Hello. He's the pointing man. It's our point man. Please point. Don't, that film because don't make fun of his jacket. Me want to tell stories of my own. He's not wearing I a love jacket. The Empire Strikes oh man. Oh, thank you. He didn't point. <laughs> he kept oh. his... Did you see what he was he doing? He was confused. He'd closed he had his to hands hold around his themselves. Hands together, so yeah. Yeah. He wouldn't let them point. Oh yeah, so for those who don't know, it's like his tick, as as Vito just referenced. If you remember back in EFAP 1996, 97, something like that, we covered uh, Mr. Pointyman, and I get like I'm gonna call you out a little bit here, Rags, because it was a bit harsh. So Jacob, he was <laughs> was wearing a jacket, and Rags, in his usual style, was oh, like, yeah. oh. He's looking over there, probably at a closet where you should put the jacket. 
And I know, I remember everyone in chat was like, what the fuck, Rags? Everyone went crazy. <laughs> but like, why would you say it was so basic. horrible? It was, it was pretty... I... I... I'm, I didn't think so at the time, but Dark time, now that I look up. back on it, I could see that I've I went a little of over course, the line by just jacket shaming is uh, is not cool. We're suggesting that he yeah, should take his jacket really off the doors. Mad on Twitter about that, didn't well, they? Well, I went back into the stream and I deleted that portion. I can't let that spread. And unfortunately, yeah. he got a yeah. hold of it and he put it online and he said, "Mola, stop, stop like being so uh. hateful. I have body issues." <laughs> No, I didn't know what the fuck was happening because I didn't even speak in the clip. Like the biggest fucking asshole I'm ever alternatively attractive. Joke. I didn't even say anything in the clip. And, uh, people like that'd be like that'd be like if he had big glasses and you're like, why do you have such big glasses? He's like, oh great, you reminded me that my fucking sister died. It's like Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Wait, what? My sister used to wear glasses and now she's dead. Yeah, How could it's you? Like, fucking calm down, dude. Um, Holy shit. I'm so sorry. Yeah, because people are so confused. Just... So. Apparently he wore the jacket because he felt insecure about his, his body in some way, shape, or form. And so us commenting on him wearing a jacket brought that back up. And of course, he was like, Mola, this is all your fault, you piece of shit. And, and you check it out and it's just, it's just Rags saying casually, you can put the jacket in a closet. Yeah, you know, it's just a little... And uh, little, people pointed this yeah. out, and the response was, yes, but Mola allows such hateful comments to go unchallenged. Um, so, okay, I'm not sure... Right, so it's the on the onus is on people to think that if you're wearing a jacket indoors, instead of it being like that's kind of weird, they need to be thinking ahead to like, well, maybe he's wearing a jacket to conceal his shame. Like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. Uh, so here's like can... the thing: when I made that jacket comment, I was just jerking around. Oh. Oh ho ho! <laughs> oh ho! Because. A jerkin is a sleeveless jacket. Nailed it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, someone out there appreciates. I got it. it. I got thank it. I, I like thank it. you. I thought thank it was. You. I think that's funny. I put it thank in the I, bank. I, thank you. I get how he would probably feel like a sting there, but I mean, there is something silly about sitting indoors wearing a jacket where you, you like you look at yourself in the mirror before a podcast starts and you put on the jacket and you're just like, I'm ready. No. This is my moment. You're just like, you could take the jacket off and stick around. You know, you're going to hang yeah. out a bit. You're like, you, you don't, don't have to go once you're done. It's performative and show you like, you don't need the jacket. Just fucking. Just also away. imagine watching a video that rips on all your ideas and opinions and you go, can't believe they made fun of my jacket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they made fun of your inability to parse media, but you're not worried about that for some reason. That's what I mean. We all found it really odd. We were just like, why would you go for that of all that? We had just got done watching Doom Annihilation. It was a great night. And then suddenly, you know, it's unacceptable. And so, of I course, mean, I apologize. Worth, I think he looks very handsome in just the t-shirt. I don't think he has any reason to worry about his, his body image. He looks like a very healthy weight. As I'm, long as a guy like Jim Sterling can amass an audience, you don't got to worry about your body at all, buddy. Yeah, let's talk about pogs fine. and be British. And Though I put on as many jackets fun. as you need. I do want to I can say... Agree. I agree, no one can amass masks like Jim Sterling. Don't jacket shame in hey future, okay? Oh, shit. Do not jacket shame in future. I know in John's avatar, looks like he's wearing like a hoodie, and though we're in, we're inside, clearly. I was camping, okay? Leave him alone. Totally different. I'm telling them <laughs> not to hoodie oranges. shame you. It's okay. I'm protecting you. Oh. Watch after the VOD becomes available. People are going to be like, wow, they fucking ripped on the jacket thing even more for 15 minutes. These guys are actual fucking neckbeards. <laughs> well, we wouldn't have talked about the fucking jacket. If you you missed brought. the part where they all say... Right, all right, all right. Can we, can we stop with the J word? I mean, that's their word. They, they did it, it for 30 hours. It's just 30 that's, hours. That's, that's Jaxist. Jigger. Wow. Oh my god. Oh, oh. Getting a little close there. What? Wow. <laughs> uh, Rags dipping the toe in the lava there. <laughs> I, I took a trip last week and there's a little town in Arkansas called Biggers. And we went through that. And I know my dad snickered when we got to Biggers. <laughs> <laughs> personal connection to that film because it's the film that made me want to tell stories of my own. I love Empire Strikes Back. I, I grew up watching it a lot. Probably the best Star Wars movie, which is an uninspired take, but yeah. Well, that's yeah, just me. I love The Empire Strikes Back. It is a classic. Hey, we what? You got TOJ on your on Yeah. Your What's the problem? Yeah. You, you can like two movies. Okay. No. Also, uh, okay. also, Rykar, Rykar McCoy in the chat said, "You can say jacket, just don't use the hard T." 
Ha! <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Jacque. Or Jacques. We could always agree oh, Empire is amazing, and its director, Irvin Kirshner, was an actual god amongst humans. Now, I definitely want to point out that diversity and acceptance has always been an issue within the fandom, and I'm sure oh, a lot of female fans when? and people of color weren't exposed to that same level of acceptance. Uh, when? Okay. All right. <laughs> that's, that's you about... know, I've never, I've never, I've never, I don't, yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. All right. Yeah. I'm leaving. As I was, which is something I <laughs> hoped would get better with the diversity of the new films. Spoiler alert, it didn't. It did not. It got worse. The thing. Well, yeah, I've because you're trying to shove it in and trying to make a big deal out of it and acting like you're so and, pure and oh, wonderful oh, and sorry. angelic because you're like, oh, I hired I, I a black like, person. I'm not bad. I do like the idea of it talking about diversity in a film series that has a bunch of aliens in it. Yeah. Like. Is it not already plenty diverse what with the <laughs> non-human beings in the film? No, I'm just, we don't care about these stinky aliens. We want diversity on our planet, obviously. <laughs> I'm just us. counting the minutes before we end up saying, people didn't like Rose because, it's like, please get this right, because she's Asian. You're like, oh, okay. Mm. About my relationship with Star Wars is... The longer it's been in my life, the more time I invest in its community and the more money I spent on its merchandise, the stronger the sense of ownership of Star Wars I felt. Oh, not the All right, I see what you're going to do. You're going to like project that onto other people. Um, yeah, like I I was a just fool just like that. you. Yeah. I was mistaken just like you. I um, used to be a horrible entire... racist homophobic bigot. <laughs> yeah, he just he just like but goes then on. I a, grew out of it when I bought more Legos. He goes on a <laughs> he goes on a whole section about like I hated it when anyone who wasn't white showed up. So I know what it feels like, audience. You're like, what the fuck? Are you, what? <laughs> I remember being just visibly like disgusted whenever Lando was on screen, just like other Star Wars fans. I remember <laughs> spitting in the theater when I saw it. Well, you know, uh, none of us felt like that, man. You sure? Yeah. Was I was so relieved when they took off Veda's like, oh, mask okay. and he was white. About that. Let's talk about that weird fucking moment. <laughs> Anger, fear, aggression, the dark side of the force are they. Easily they flow, quick to join you in a fight. If you start down the dark path forever or dominate your destiny, consume you its will. So I guess we're gonna go into how hate and, 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 and stuff. Like, Dash Yoda <laughs> next of to this. Is he gonna say Jedi Master Yoda? Let's see. The the tension's killing me. Oh I oh I'm oh, so just Yoda. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, there he is. Can we discuss real quick how stupid it is to say that Star Wars fans are in any way relate like the Sith? Like if you don't like Star Wars, you're part of the dark side of the oh, force dude. now. Yeah, you, you probably know all the time. Uh, you probably know this, as well it's as the most. The stupidest allegory. Like, just if you yeah, don't like not, it, just talk about it in real only, only the only the Sith deal in absolutes. Oh, oh no no! You missed the part where he said oh, that. He did that earlier. That's not... <laughs> um, oh, did you? Yeah. No, no, too, he did it. As in, like it, in the video, stupid. he did it. Mm -hmm. It's like all the people who like compare uh, Voldemort to I don't know Donald Trump or whatever. You're like, can you just talk about this <laughs> on like a real level without these terrible metaphors that don't work at all? Well, this when didn't cut um... people's heads off. It has nothing to do with not liking a movie. Do you, do you remember yeah. the, the comic that was going around all over the place where it was like it was describing Kylo Ren and all these different panels, um, but but the language was broad enough that it was obviously trying to describe uh, haters of the TLJ, and the final panel was like. Don't you understand? Ryan is trying to hold a mirror to you. It's like, oh, <laughs> Kylo Ren is us. He doesn't like things. <laughs> he's, he's a big old meanie head. Also, I would say that he wasn't because we saw what happens when Ryan Johnson tries to represent his uh, TLJ haters in a movie. Anyone here see Knives oh, Out? Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I used to be a pretty big fan of game theory, but as their videos started to become less about interesting theories and more about their merch store, it started going in this direction that I really wasn't on board for. Oh. And I was angry. I only spend so money on like Legos. Yeah, but Legos are pure. Already, yeah. I can see what the problem's gonna be. He's gonna be like framing how he felt like he had ownership over something that he liked, and so he acted like a dickhead 
and then he's going to try and project that onto everybody else. Well, yeah, because he learned. He overcame. Mm -hmm. Now it's time yeah, for us to learned. do the same. Like, you did this. He learned to love Big Brother. <laughs> you know, <laughs> all those ads were actually... They didn't bother me. I just thought they did. And I started typing up my angry comment. And that's when I re... <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. Dude... <laughs> Can can we show that live? Is that I don't know. Jeez. Not sure. I guess some police are on their way. Realized they owe me nothing. Congratulations. Wait, the game theory? I guess yeah, because that's what he must be referencing right now. Unless he's referencing Star Wars too. I mean, I don't know. I think that as a default, you owe people like integrity and you know some de you know, basic level of respect you know something like that well yeah because when when you throw this kind of statement out they owe me nothing i'd be like all right we need some qualifiers and asterisks in there like i need to look at well yeah because um that's it's kind of like because the, the my mind always goes back to video games where people forget that there is like a transaction happening here like yeah once i bought the game you do owe me something at this point yeah, like if i buy a game yeah. and it doesn't work you owe me now like you yeah. do because you promised me something that I didn't get, and I paid for it, so you do owe me. So, like, yeah, there are instances where you might actually be owed something. You can't just throw this out like that's not the case all the time for any piece of media that's made. Well, this is free content to watch a YouTube video, but if I pay you $14 for a movie ticket, you owe me a decent movie. Well, like, you if, don't deliver, uh, I can, have the right to be well, mad. We can all agree that if you pay for the movie and it doesn't play, and then they ask you to leave, you'd be like, oh, you stole my money. <laughs> so, so if, oh, you think you're owed something just because you gave us legal tender for all well, of debts, course, both public and private? Ooh, look at he'll, that. he'll he'll say like, well, in that case, they do because because you paid. It's like, so what 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 do they owe you with a YouTube video? It's like, okay, well, I guess you know. Just, again, like, what what does game theory owe you? I'd be like, I don't know. I guess in like a broad sense, nothing. I, I don't really. It's just a YouTube channel uploading videos, but I mean. Maybe maybe this person's like they uh, they got some kind of payment plan and and they did some kind of community thing. I don't know. It's just you always feel like where are you jumping to? Let's just find out. If anything, yeah. I owed them for the hours of entertainment. You no, that you didn't. I know. No, 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 you don't. No. no, that's not how this works. No, they got your advertising dollar, uh, buddy. You did. You gave them what they want. It's like that's kind of the beauty of the system right now. Yeah. Is that if you give your free content to enough people, there will be some of those who will give you money because they like supporting people that, you know, that they get content from, right? It's very yeah. interesting concept. It is an interesting concept for sure, yeah. I don't think, like, the feeling of being owed something is a necessary component of being, like, good to other people on a general level. I agree. But I don't, it's not, uh, I don't think it's a bad way to conduct yourself either to like and what this guy's saying i think like there's nothing wrong with wanting to reciprocate value that like you've received yeah for right? sure to like give give something back but to say concretely that that like you owe this person like it's just that's not true i don't think yeah um yeah, and I like that he, he tried the reverse he was like if anything i owe that we were all like whoa stop yeah <laughs> spend a cent on but i was actively doing something that i knew would even in some extremely small way hurt them because i mean you can you didn't you wanna... hurt them by not paying them also don't dislikes help ultimately isn't that a thing like it yeah i think the algorithm just wants engagement regardless yes I'm that's correct sure. and i mean it's that's a form correct you're welcome to protest in your small way if you feel uh his videos became too much focus on merchandise or whatever he said like if, if if you feel like he's losing his way in terms of uh making content that he loves instead just trying to make money or something if, if you genuinely feel that about the channel like i don't think you should feel bad for being like you know i love this channel for x reason and i feel like x reason is being lost because yeah. they weren't making mm -hmm. the videos i wanted them to make for me so yeah so you I don't have to support them yeah Exactly. Well, in, yeah. in fairness, the wider fucking narrative will be coming in soon about Star Wars. That's the only reason um, bringing this up. Like, are you not allowed to? 
in the same sense that somebody is allowed to make whatever they want, are you not allowed to tell them what you think of it? Like, no. is that is that not even? You know, what if you hurt them, Frank? Right. It, I mean, if you think about it on a different level, a dislike and a and a bad comment can be giving them something. You're giving them feedback that could theoretically make their content better. Uh, I just want putting, honest, a, putting a thumbs down and then giving a comment. It doesn't have to be positive for it to be valuable. That's kind of what criticism is, you know? You Well, this is... I feel like we're going to get into that the more this view goes on. What is the difference? Because, like, the whole... The way it's... You know, like, even the colors he's using? Like, when we get to the criticism, the angry fan, the blah, 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 it's always framed <laughs> so evilly. Yeah. And I'm just like, when do we... Where does criticism fall? And he's like, obviously that falls on the good side. And you're like, right. Hmm... <laughs> Stopped writing my. They got. They got to resort to like everything video. else possible in lieu of an actual fucking argument. You know, like, mm -hmm. like big, big text, angry colors, just thing, everything else to distract you. Everything but actually. Oh, dude, like, we've we've been making a sound point. They do the same thing every time. They pick the worst of the worst right now, which is uh, people who say the horrible things to the the actors. That's like the the worst people they find in relation to toxic fandom. And then those people will be the representative of everyone who's mean to the TLJ, everyone who's mean to Star Wars in general. Which, by the way, is pretty funny because, you know, people like Patrick Willems, Just Right, etc., they'll, they'll be proponents of that, like, concept, but they will simultaneously, as soon as The Rise of Skywalker comes out, shit all over it, put out a tweet <laughs> that says yeah. fucking, what was it? Uh, fuck J.J. Abrams? And it was like, whoa, yeah, dude! Right. Yeah. Like, that's actually, yeah. surely that qualifies in your own book as targeted harassment. Your fan mate base might go right after him. You're not gonna... And he, and he was just like, it's not, and then people will quote the whole Space Wizard movie for children. Shit, that <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Right. What a fucking roller coaster. what can I say? Yeah. You know, and just started watching the near infinite amount of other media on the internet. Make stuff's okay. wonderful content. All right. Who searches with exclamation points? Who calls their own content wonderful? It's okay. Bitch, my content is fabulous. Yeah, fabulous is fine, like but wonderful. I, I do like the idea that he, it, you know, if he watched a video where it's like game theory and it said, I don't know, the, the secret hit, I don't know, the secret mystery secret behind hit? like Super Mario Sunshine, mm -hmm. and he clicks on the video and it's just like Matt Pat sitting on the toilet, like reading a newspaper while shit. <laughs> and he's just like, well, it's just not for me, you know? It's just why, not for me. Yeah, it's care? a different direction. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and imagine, imagine it was like, Secret to Mario's jump, and then he, he says you press A, and he jumps, right? And then the, the rest of the 30 <laughs> minutes are him selling things. And in the style, like, you see on those, you know, like, infomercial whatever thing, where he's like, for just nine ninety nine, you can pick up the blah 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 blah, and then it moves to the next thing. He's like, "This is a knife that cuts through anything, I anything. Cuts right through brick." And this is the cutty knife. <laughs> and he's just like, "This is an interesting direction." It's like, dude, you can you can protest in some way, shape, or form. It's okay. You can say, "Hey, man, I'm not liking this that much. It's a bit weird. Yeah. The, the knife that cuts through anything, cool, but I don't know. It feels like you're trying to sell it to me." <laughs> Because their videos just weren't for me anymore, which is fine, because they owe me nothing. And even if that wasn't the case, even if I had spent hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars on their merch, how much money would I have to spend to make it okay to harass something? Oh, why are we talking about okay. that? Yeah. Where did harass uh, come from? We can't conflate harassment and criticism. Right. Yeah. That's a, and he knows it's a spooky word. Look how red everything is and how dark those words are. Spooky. At this, point, at this point, he's not even like addressing actual criticisms or arguments. He's just addressing the way people go about criticisms and like his perceived like way. This, this is just, just low hanging. Like, yeah, we all know to not harass people. You don't make. Yes. You don't need to make a whole video about. It. Well, you know, Nobody's you know out here saying I like. I mean, Star Wars I, so much. I, I don't know. Yeah. I would personally love some helpful pointers. I, I'm always trying to step up my game, you know? Hey, leave the jacket <laughs> people love, alone, Rag. You got a lot of I love the implication <laughs> that if you financially back someone that they don't owe you anything, it's like, ah, uh, I mean, kind of, but, like, it's it's kind of painting I any, like, that, detractors um, as unreasonable. I think that with, like, merchandise, it's like, the transaction was for the clothes, right? The tra Like, it doesn't necessarily extend to the content itself. Um, but I, I feel like it's a non-starter because you've conflated c criticism with harassment and they're not the same thing. 
Words are violence, you guys. Why can't you oh, stop yeah, abusing right, this poor person? I like the idea that because that's the thing. If he's gonna stroll out the shit out of this side, I just be like, you walk up to you like, hey man, did you like TLJ? He looks like he says that to you, and you go. Um, and he goes, ah, and runs away. He's <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> shit, well, I, I, why did you be harassed? Gets, like, a suit of armor, just in case. The Star Wars fandom has a very, very big entitlement and harassment problem. Sure. The most extreme the instances. Yeah, but, 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 oh, wait, wait, but, but you were there talking about how fucking great it all was when it was the prequels and there were minor disagreements, but are you neglecting the fact that, uh, what was the guy who played I'm Anakin? Best. Like, in episode one, Jake he Lloyd. got harassed to shit. That was before TLJ and all that. Well, yeah, yeah because people are shits, unfortunately. Yeah, This isn't, much. you know, like, as if this is some new thing. Death threats and racist <laughs> and sexist language. <laughs> Racist attacks against Kelly Marie Tran's posted a Rose Tico's Wikipedia page. You, we checked that out. Do you remember they they renamed her Wing Wong Ching Chong or some stupid shit yeah, like that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh, wow, that is the most horrific racist attack. Like, I hope like, she dude. survived. <laughs> also, can I just can I just highlight? So obviously, people have noticed that Vito and I are mirrored, but someone commented they'll be like Pac Men moving towards the center. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rags is already prepared for this. He's jumped onto the ceiling. <laughs> Harassment that has led to Dave Tran quitting social media. This is every time this gets brought up. We we used to actually like way early EFAP, We used to just concede this. And then our fans were like, there's no proof of this, by the way. And we were like, there's no proof? Like, because we never looked into it. We just, because everyone was echoing this shit. Like, it's always harassment, definitely harassment. But it's like, you, you look for the specifics and you can't find them. Not, not that it's hard to believe that some disgruntled Star Wars fan said something really mean to someone on Instagram. Like, that's not in really it's, in question. It's kind of like... It's sort of like if you want immediate sympathy, you just say, I got death threats. And then if you question it, they're like, D what? You're part of the problem. It's like, yeah, if you got death threats, just share them. And it's like, oh, shut up. And then they block you. That's just what they want. They want you to share the death threats. <laughs> Written everyone to death. And imagine if you're super famous, you would already have like a, a, an indifference to social media on some level already. Just because no yeah. matter what, you're gonna get a bunch of people seeing your thought, piece of shit or whatever. You thought someone yeah, would like, why, why would them? you assign a lot of like meaning or weight to it? It's just like, oh, people are retarded. Like, what are you gonna do about it? They need right. Like, agents need to learn this shit in Hollywood. Apparently, they need to tell their like, actors. Be like, right. So if you start social media, you're gonna get all these weird people saying weird shit. You ready for this? You know about this? I don't know. Get them a little YouTube video that explains hey, it. So you're gonna be a your celebrity now, which means everybody. It's really weird, but everyone knows about you, but they don't really know you, but they think they do, and some people just want to fuck with you, and a lot of people love you, and you're rich and stuff, but it's weird. There are people yeah, who will say stuff yeah, just to see how you react, right? Like, it, it actually means nothing, but they will say it just to see if you fl flip out. So, the uh, key mm -hmm. is, don't flip out. I just imagine Mahler's idea of this video is just, so, you're gonna be a celebrity on the internet, here's what to expect. He's <laughs> fucking paper clip. And so I see you're becoming a celebrity, would you like some help? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The little so paper clip shows up from our yeah. Twitter. Media and Jake Lloyd, an eight-year-old boy, getting relentlessly bullied and quitting acting, and Ahmed Best, who played Jar Jar Banks, nearly committing suicide. So you okay. do agree that this has been a problem for a long time? Yeah. So like that's this seems like a people thing. Hmm. Yep. Those pesky humans. And these are just actors playing the roles they were given. But it doesn't have to be racist or sexist or they life They given these roles. It was a job that they Racist, were... sexist, life It isn't necessarily racist or sexist or life-threatening. I love how that's just lumped in. It's like, this, is, this is harassment, therefore it's based yeah, on their gender weird. or race. The weird thing as well is that life-threatening is, like, smaller than the top <laughs> two, when I would consider that the last one is a lot more important than the first two. I, honestly, though, honestly, oh, I do I mean, feel like, yeah. if you would ask me, it's like, what, what is someone going to flip out more for? 
a sexist comment, a racist comment, or a I'll kill you comment. It's like probably the racist one, then it's a toss up between the last two. I'm not sure. Yeah. And to clarify, before someone takes a sound bite, we think that doing all of these and harassing any celebrity for any reason, at least I do, is pretty shitty. Dude, or, I, got, I, got I got you covered. I got you covered. Yeah, if they're, if they're a communist, like send them knives and shit, you know? Pe like, I just don't official understand. E send them knives. Just yeah. a box of knives. Yeah, just a hint, you know? Just like, you know what to do with these. Why Cut make yourself. this point? Like, no one is making the argument that because you love Star Wars enough, you get to be racist. <laughs> like, I want to see that, that video. That's that anyone has ever said. That's the yeah. last I like the idea that he seems to video. apply. You know, if you've spent enough money, you now have the right to be racist. Like, <laughs> you don't understand. I've bought so many Star Wars Legos, I get to be as racist as I want. You like, get no to use the hard R. You earned it. Uh, hard T. Um, yeah, hard T. I Sorry. love the idea that you, you, come, you, you do the recording in your car, and you're like, okay, I just got in from TLJ. It is so bad I'm being racist uh, enough. It's, it's, this is happening. I, it's it's like a key has unlocked it, okay? Once you contradict enough shit, I get to be racist. That's how it works. There's other people in like the chat room that are like, yeah, man, no, that's fair. If, did you spot seven plot holes that you unlock sexist and then ten plot holes and it's racist? It's pretty neat. Yeah. Don't tell anyone, though. And I was gonna say, we're covered mm -hmm. because Peepo is actually the spokesman of EFAB and he looks terrified at the, at the thought <laughs> alone. <laughs> Of racist or sexist or life-threatening things. Look at him, he's so scared. People's a good boy. It's horrible. We raised him right. Yeah, we did. To be harassment. <laughs> the definition of harassment is to bother, intimidate, or aggressively You're pressure someone. Me. You don't need to fucking define it, mate. Like, you, only unless so you're clear. Like, I've I talked have a about feeling... harassment for like fucking 20, 20 minutes. So now I'll just define it for you. I have a feeling he's doing this to be it. like. By the way, you see, it does apply to everything. But like, if I if if I go like, wait, you liked the Last Jedi twice to someone, he would probably be like, that does qualify. You did it more than once. I'm like, sorry, I asked you. I'm I'm just, I'll go away. Like, I can only I can only be suspicious of someone defining harassment. I'm like, here we go. He's gonna blanket fucking everything. One in a right. constant or repeated way. See, but repeated means you just the one time more than once, and you're good. It's harassment. Now. I, I think like the older celebrities getting like mean messages on in, uh, social media is one thing because they can just put it down. But I do have some sympathy for like, kids like Jake Lloyd, who like they have to go to school oh, for sure. yeah. after like the they make the school, Phantom Menace. Got it from. Right. Yeah. I just I imagine him like getting bullied in like class in the halls and shit like that, ripping it on ripping on him for being in that movie and ruining Star Wars and stuff. Like what an immense amount of pressure to put on a, a kid, sure. you know? And at the beginning he was probably just like totally stoked, right? And now he's just like he's 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 kind of the fa the face in a sense for like when Star Wars took a massive turn. And like, I'd still be pretty stoked about the million dollars I got to be in a movie. Regardless. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I, I, think, I, 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 yeah. I think I'd I stomach that. That would get the bullet oh, out of your head. Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'd be good with that. I don't know if a million dollars is is enough for that. You know what I mean? Yeah, pretty fucking good. good. Yeah, a million dollars. Uh, I'd, I'd be okay with it. I'd be fine. Yeah, I'd be like, yeah make like fun of whatever. I shoot up towers. I don't care. Also, yeah, but wait, it's, wait, it's wait, one thing to it's one thing to make fun of someone who's like an adult and they're emotionally hopefully emotionally more mature but someone that young like yeah. they don't that's more money than they could even comprehend or know yeah, what to like, do with and it doesn't just yeah. equal happiness was, so. was, was the question there like does the money counteract the bullying is that what we were because especially for children like i don't know how much that's going to change oh, for, for older actors definitely like well, but yeah, because I, they can, they can probably way. block it out. They can just be like, whatever, yeah. it's my phone. Oh, I mean, Kelly Marie Tran had to quit Instagram? That's worth half a mil, I think. I'd oh, be okay yeah. With that. Also, I looked up the uh, definition of harassment. I can't find his quote at all, like the repeated part. It's just aggressive pressure or intimidation. Like, I've looked up like 10 definitions, and I think he just forced in the fucking, in a constant or repeated way. I've heard the repeated element a couple times i'll be honest it with you it depends on uh repeated is it is, is critical repeated is the critical element of harassment it needs well, to be repeated more than once th th and this is what i mean like i've heard it but like it's usually brought up because it can repeat it as like ah so twice and it's always like you know that it, it, in spirit it's obviously looking for more than twice just two com like mm. and i feel like that's what people end up using it for 
and that's exactly how I would describe almost all of the discourse surrounding The Last Jedi. That's absurd. Really? All, all of that it is, is that is absurd. absurd. Well, like, wow, that's, that's ridiculous. That's a worthless uh, definition. Uh, I hate this. I hate this so much. <laughs> Muller, I know you've been dealing with this for a year or two. I've been dealing with this for a year or two. We we we, we haven't said anything horrible about women or people of color. Uh, maybe, maybe maybe about like some demographics, the disgusting ones, but I've no, mainly no, mainly no. A few times, but I don't I trust those choice people. words on minorities. But beyond that, it's tiring. I mean, like I found cause... people just lying about my content. I found a reset era thread where they're like, "Yeah, you ever see that Vito's video where he says, look at this yellow bitch?'" And I'm like, "What? <laughs> you ever no, see that Vito hit video where he says Heil Hitler? Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> fucked up what he's There's yeah. like four of those ones, yep. Seems a little unnecessary, but oh well, I guess he's got to be banned. It yeah. seems like one of these things where if these guys just repeat it long enough where they're like, "Yeah, all most or the majority of the criticism was cuz these people just hate the women." Uh, it becomes true. Nobody listens to reason. It's driving me nuts. Also, Mr. Hack Fraud Media, how do you do? Hello, hello. Welcome I see back. You're, you're talking about uh, my favorite subject here. Well, what's funny is that you're yet another YouTuber that makes videos that relate to criticism for the sequel trilogy. How does it feel to be a harasser? Oh, it feels great. You piece yeah, of great. shit. Also, I, Vito, I really like how you made that very clear parody where you pretended to buy Belle Delphine's water, her bath water, and vape it. And then at the end of the video, you showed that you just like took a pickle jar or some shit and emptied right. it out and removed the label. And then you said, everyone who believed this video is stupid. And people on Twitter kept going, oh, yeah, isn't that the fucking guy that vaped Belle Delphine's bath water? Like, <laughs> well, no one was interested in being honest or like, was it, I was going to say, it's, it's like, oh, fuck it's this the same guy. shit. I learned yeah. a very interesting lesson from that video. And it's if the fiction is more interesting than the truth, people will just go with the fiction. And it's much yeah. more interesting to say people just hate The Last Jedi because of racism and sexism, and it's a symptom of this toxic culture. It's not yeah. interesting to say, uh, no, the characters were just written badly. Well, what's, what sounds more interesting to you? The whole basement dweller thing ever since the dawn of time. You have, like, the fucking the comic fan from The Simpsons who's just like, um, actually, about, like, yeah. everything. So believing that they're just these genuine degenerate pieces of shit that hate everyone based on, like, really insignificant reasons most normal people will be like oh yeah those fucking assholes um what 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 sounds more interesting to you a bunch of guys talking about different things related to media but then mainly about joker for a bit and then about responses to the community or three misogynists ranting for 11 hours about a woman having an opinion oh i'm mad already <laughs> that spread like wildfire <laughs> someone should yeah. stop them Good old Jenny I'm... Nicholson. Oh, she's uh, she's legendary. You you saw her tweet recently, right? Where she was like, "It sucks that people spread lies about me." <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, yeah. I was like, irony yeah. the tweet. Jenny Snake in the Grass Nicholson. My God, I had a, I had a run with her. I've been ranting on Twitter because we met at a Battle Angel Alita event, and we were perfectly cordial. We were like, I, we were filming a whole thing. It was fun, and then her and her friend later go, Vito was objectifying us and filming our feet and i'm like what on earth are you talking about and i go watch the video there's like a 10 second part where it was like a physical challenge where you got to run on a platform to gain points and they're like he was panning up and down my legs i'm like Ugh. yeah so wait because <laughs> to, to, to help you out right it's a game where you have to like run on the spot and if you yeah. if you're trying to film and that in like an interesting way you you'll show as you do you show everyone reacting to it and then maybe you you show her running on the spot, and so you go down to her feet. You're like, look at her go, and it's like, wow, pivot. I mean, I've just I learned that show people... her feet that much. Like, I had no point was I filming that. It's not sexually interesting at all. Yeah, She's if people like, don't oh, like you on the internet, they are going to try to find as much information that matches their current impression of you. I just saw oh, that guy's a fucking piece of shit. I knew it. I absolutely knew that was the case. I'll just add this to my big oh, well, book. Yeah, dude, if it, if it came out that Rags and I have a warehouse filled with corpses, they'd be like, I knew it. I, those well, two, uh, <laughs> of course. It's, it's, yeah. the whole, it's the whole idea that like confirmation bias is very well documented and yes. many, 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 many people are very susceptible to it. It is oh, yeah. so, I, I, like, it's something you need to be vigilant about in yourself and a lot of people yeah. aren't. 
You look at a picture of me and you go, eh, that guy probably films women's feet. I believe it. Well, I, it's, it's more <laughs> like just like, them. well, it, it's more like, you know, the whole idea, news is the obvious example, right? Like the existence of, of specific news channels and newspapers is an ode to confirmation bias just being prevalent in people. You just got to be careful with it. Right. Jenny also, Snake someone, in the said, someone said in the chat, if it came out, Hmm. Like the what, you have, like, oh about where, my where corpse like warehouse. Corpses. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I use that as an example because it's absurd. It's not something the mean rags would have done. That's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's move. Let's move on, guys. Let's uh, let's watch the video. <laughs> oh yeah, are you uh, you in the watch together, Mister Hack Fraud Media? Uh, I am not. Uh, if I can find the link here. Yes. I want to hear more about how it harasses. Yeah. Misogynists. <laughs> oh, tell me, tell me just how bad of a man I am, please. <laughs> way. And that's exactly how I would describe almost all of the discourse surrounding ah. the last gen. Can you, uh, can you see the video? Yes. Okay. All of the discourse surrounding the last Jedi. As of the writing of this script, The Last Jedi came out 11 months ago, and I still get comments on the Avatar video about how terrible The Last Jedi was. I still can't- I mean, The Last Jedi okay. was really bad, though. Yeah, it was <laughs> really, really <laughs> shitty. It took a long time for that to stop being a topic that kept coming up. It still comes up, of course, it's just not as much now. ...tweet about liking The Last Jedi without people immediately telling me how dumb I am for liking I'm it. People who dislike The Last Jedi immediately being told that they're racist pieces of shit. Or yeah. harassers. Like, how do you think it is? Like, yeah. we, we, get, we get really deep character assessments made about us because we didn't like a movie. We've been called Nazis, homophobes, <laughs> racists, <laughs> that, that, that bigots, shut up. of That's everything. Not, just because we didn't like about. a Star Wars movie. Like, it's I just, just, I don't feel sympathy for you. More people I can't. for the warehouse. You're a pretentious right? asshole. Actually, here's a fun drinking game. Oh, Go no. look up whatever Last Jedi director Ryan Johnson's most recent tweet is and scroll down. Take a sip for every person calling The Last Jedi garbage. Well, maybe he should have made a it. shitty Star Wars. Welcome movie. to fucking Twitter, by the way. So, yeah. the equivalent, like, you, we need to get used to this shit. If you have a bunch of people in the public square walking around, chilling out, then Ryan Johnson goes, like, Hey, check out my food. I took a photo of it. It's pretty cool. And someone goes, fuck you. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, I, I actually have a really funny anecdote. There's like this this friend of mine from college who was like a super insane stoner who always just talked like an absolute idiot, but he had like the greatest wisdom ever. And he told me at one point, yeah, I've learned that there's literally just no point on leaving a comment on anything because uh, for like whatever the name is of like the greatest soccer player ever in America or like the, the, the British guy, I forget his name, but like the really handsome guy. Um, there was like some video of him like as a little kid playing soccer when he was like six and he just scrolled down and everyone's just like he's a fucking piece of shit and he was just like okay there's nothing constructive to be had here <laughs> that's just when he realized like don't even try is that David Beckham you're talking about yeah David Beckham the name escaped right. me yeah yeah it's Fuck um that guy, though. I'm tired of like being because the thing is the more hypersensitive you are to people being mean to you on the internet the more rules that'll come down the more uh you're not allowed certain words will be banned the more and more i'm just like guys i don't think you want this like it's gonna get really sanitized every single wait yeah because recently wasn't wasn't leafy banned uh yeah like yesterday or something everybody's debating yeah. whether or not that's valid like everyone's like unsure as to should you? Because the uh, the current thing is like, yeah, well, he harassed Pokimane, and then it's like, did he? And then like, he made like seven videos videos on her, and it's like, yeah, but none of them were about her. It's like, why was she in the title of thumbnail? Clickbait. If you watched any of them, he like randomly rambles about stocks and shit. It's like yeah. it's barely anything to do with Pokimane. <laughs> and so, it almost to me is like a giant experiment. It's like, does that does that count as harassment? I wonder when. The title is "Lol Pokemon Lost Tier Three Subs," and then the video itself has nothing to do with it, or very little. That is, if I mean, clickbait titles are technically against the rules. 
but it's one of those I don't think it's ever been enforced for like yeah. false How could it have ever been enforced on like YouTube yeah. of all platforms? He's also using stand. clickbait titles as a clear comedic device, I feel. Leafy was banned at some point, right? And he came back and the he word left. is now that he, he was banned left. again. I think he just left. Oh, yeah, okay. This time he was banned, and this, he was like, given yeah. a message specifically by YouTube to say he's he's uh, violated uh, harassment too many times. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, which, of course, as he just laid out the harassmentisms there, uh, I guess Leafy would qualify. But I, I still think you have to be a little generous with the definition sometimes. And um, then yeah. it gets really spooky because it's like, wait, who's throwing the ban hammer around, and what are their biases? Mm-hmm a shot for Eric. Congratulations, you have alcohol poisoning now. What a fun game. So my question to everyone doing this is why though? On <laughs> oh, I don't know. Why why don't you you're just you're just talking why into the ether at these things? random people like, who yeah. might do that. Yeah, like you, you like, take you take a comment that says you suck, go eat poop and he's like, "Why would you say that?" It's like, "I don't why does anyone say anything, dude?" Like, I don't know. It's just a Randy and his how it could be like because five years old. Because you make videos like this talking a back to them. Why it's call like... me poopy face? <sighs> Honestly, what are you accomplishing? I just hold on. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, no, they're still all here, even though it really seems like you've been taking my crazy pill. Wow, this is so again. This is really. Oh, if you say it a fourth time, it'll be funny. He's turned it on us now. We're taking the crazy pills. <laughs> Criticism is healthy and necessary. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> what? So you're not actually going to address any criticism of the movie, are you? Well, I'm okay with the idea that that's not what this video is specifically about. I'm curious about this whole separating criticism from harassment thing. Let's see where his line I'm is. Sure. Criticism on your personal Facebook or Twitter feed is 100% fine. Okay. Yelling that criticism yelling? at How the director of the film. How can you be yelling at film? it on Twitter? Yeah, so I was about to question, like, so if I post a tweet saying, boo boo, lame lame, poo 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 poo, but if I put that tweet on someone's tweet saying, TLJ good good, woohoo, yay yay yay. That's what yeah, Twitter's yeah, yeah, yeah. for! Well, that's what Twitter I mean, like, is it harassment to reply to a tweet? With poo poo. <laughs> Could you imagine? I don't know. <laughs> poo poo on two tweets, the police bust down your door. <laughs> Why don't you just shoot him in the fucking head, Molly? It's the same <laughs> just thing. get it over yeah. with, Jesus. Also, Chase, yes. do you do you wish do you wish to exit our wonderful menagerie of nonsense? I uh, I regret to inform you that I must. It is uh, five in the morning, but I've had a very good ah, time. Gotcha. Um, but uh, I will say before I leave. The only reason why I give a shit about going to bed at a slightly reasonable hour is tomorrow I will be on a D&D &D stream with Nick Ricada and the Ralph Retort. Ralph Report? I forget it. And uh, I'm that tired. And uh, it's going to be fun. So if you give a shit, then watch my Twitter or something. But otherwise... Uh, is, it, is Ralph yeah. Retort the guy with the really high-pitched voice? He's the one that did the I famous... Don't... Now wait a minute, Matt. No! I, I barely know anything about him. I just know that he's a very contentious figure who drinks a lot. So I, I think it'll be right. it'll be a time. So Oh, you're going to have some uh, fun with Ralph, buddy. Yes. <laughs> That's what I've heard. Yeah, I'm but, a uh, frequent acquaintance of that gentleman. We're gonna be in deep RP lore, in which he's apparently uh, Nick Ricada is uh, is like a Bill Clinton knockoff, and his character is a paladin that loves like thick women. So it'll it'll be something. But uh, <laughs> anyway, thank you for having me. Love you, chat. Mwah. Uh, except you, you know who you are. And uh, th yeah, thanks for having me. It was fun. And uh, I wish I could have gotten to see the rest of this piece of shit video, but I'll just be left wondering. So <laughs> thanks for coming, you disgusting, terrible, ugly, wonderful. Why would you say something like that to me? I, the last one was nice. <laughs> also, wow, that you like, oh, that icon. <laughs> what? Uh, Peepo is now reacting to that. Okay, in in the law. <gasps> Peepo is spooked. Film who's already heard those criticisms eight million times, eleven months after the film came out. Does that matter if the person doesn't know? Like yeah, if. I don't really if I, I post care. on someone's tweet, like, hey, it wasn't very good, though, and then they go, eight million people told me that already. It's like, oh, well.
does this asshole think he's the first one to say oh, harassment's <laughs> bad in a YouTube video? I just uh, again, I'm starting to get lost on like, wait, what do you think Twitter is? Like, what, what, is, what's happened? Why does everybody tr tr fucking hell words treat Twitter as though they express something and that like only approval is is allowed? Because they they desperately try and generate that with blockchains and stuff. But I'm just like, damn, I don't think you. Like, knew what you were signing up to when you went to Twitter in the first place. Like, I agree it's a cesspool, but it's still a cesspool where people can reply. It reminds me of, you know, when we were, bleh, we were talking about online gaming and how, like, uh, you're being exposed to a bunch of players who are in a highly competitive environment. They're all anonymous and they're going to say some crazy shit. Uh, it's kind of like Twitter is a very. I don't know. It's almost like an anti-human tool where uh, it, one, yeah. it's like a permanent log of knee-jerk reactions forever stored on the internet. And human con communication, I don't think, was ever really meant to be that. Like, you're not supposed to fucking let your thoughts pour out of your head. Just like, you're supposed to, like, think about what you're saying and then, like, be able to, like, be face-to-face -face with a person and read their body language and because so much of communication is nonverbal, right? Let them be and real you're and have to, like, truth. Empathize with like the way they're feeling and stuff, but then Twitter is just like it, it is very well, stupid that they expect it course, to be nothing but compliments, with, of course. The problem with Twitter as well is that it heavily rewards you for being snarky and mouthing off. Right. Um there's an incentive and and the fact that, you know, people like, you know, human beings are kind of status seekers. So, like, if people are all approving and retweeting and liking, then if, if that's the kind of thing that gets people excited, then it gives people more of an incentive to act like a dick. And so right. then it becomes almost like a cycle. And it's really beneficial for Twitter, like, you know, as a company. But it's not super beneficial for the people using the platform. No. I wish people that's... would just realize Twi Twitter's just a rage arcade where you get points for uh, going nuts on people. Don't take it yeah. too serious. It's just it's just a stupid little point game where whoever yells the loudest gets the most points. It's not even it's... Yeah, I don't feel like my life got worse when I got banned from Twitter. Yeah, like there's a snark factor on there that you the the like the the stronger the response and the lower amount of words the more points you get. It is like disgusting, yeah. honestly. Negativity drives engagement. It's, um okay. And yeah, and this is the thing, like, people are like, I'm only entitled to positive responses. I'm like, on Twitter? Jesus. Like, I don't know what you thought you were saying. Dude, to. It, it, this is all I ever think. I keep thinking it more like, the internet is, like, red, the story of Red Dead Redemption, right? It's like, you know, the old west is dying. Civilization, yes. you know? More and more civilization <laughs> going yeah. on, you know, my internet space. Um, uh, And it feels like, yeah, you know, the sort of, the crackdowns that are happening are like the Pinkertons, and the people who used to use the internet are like Dutch Vandalin's gang. It's kind of like, um, <laughs> yeah. Is it the, th it, it, the, the third Pirates in movie? In essence, I think that's true. Sorry, go ahead. The, yeah. th the third Pirates movie is kind of the same thing, where the, the Pirates <laughs> at one point were running around, everything's great, woohoo. Then the East India Trading Company make like the map, and they're filling in all the gaps, and they're controlling all the areas, and they have the powerful things in play. Like, I'm kind of... It's 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 a bit of a stretch, but you know, like running around on different sites. If you remember, like rewinds ten, fifteen years, there was actually um, a couple of sites for different things. When things got started yeah. up, it was all all kinds of. Play. But it's like as more time goes on, there's usually just one site per significant thing, and uh, well, they yeah, kept it consolidated. All the social media sites were like, "Why do you guys have your own websites? Why don't we just all upload videos to the same website? It'll be easier." And we went, "Okay," and they're like, "Oh, by the way, we're gonna ban you." For, uh, having the wrong opinion we're like well you didn't tell us that part of it when we signed up <laughs> and now 10 years we're into this thing and you can't re-establish a website because nobody yeah, cares like, sorry that i still anymore. think there's two genders and that's fox is sorry nazi um oh. well actually the nazi thing that's that's like what happens now right is like the the only other alternative sites are filled with nazis that's what people say and you got two choices yeah. are yeah. Harsh, harsh rules on nazis <laughs> if you want to choose a different platform, like people are always like, dude, you should upload on BitChute. I'm like, yeah, I would, but like then somebody goes to the front page and it's all questions about whether or not Jewish, uh, you know, vampires <laughs> Jews, are the Jews are behind it all. And uh, I don't want people to see that when they come looking for my content. I just don't. It's weird. <laughs> Do you say Jewish vampires? 
Yeah, yeah. Harvesting fear blood. Your adrenalized blood, because they have to terrify oh. children to uh, get adrenaline in the blood, which they can then harvest. Wow. So you learn something new every day. It's an actual thing, by the way. Is no longer criticism, it is harassment. If you're subtweeting a total stranger to tell them how stupid they are for liking something, or... Correct me if I'm wrong. I gotta, I gotta get my lingo correct. Quote tweeting is what he's referencing. Subtweeting is when you're um, talking about how Just someone's a dumbass without basically. actually like using their name. So uh, I thought like quote tweeting was when you put their tweet and then your tweet is visible around it and subtweeting is when you're just adding them, right? Or am I... I thought that's, sub that's exactly what I thought. I yeah. thought so. Yeah. I've, I've always... Tweeting is retweeting with a comment. Because yeah. I've heard it said loads of times that subtweeting is like when you, you're like, I fucking hate that dog with the glasses. And you're like, you're talking about rags? Like, no. Uh, so mm. sub oh, so subtweeting is the act of mentioning a person on Twitter without using the symbol at for their name so they don't see what you've written. Oh, okay. It is the internet equivalent of talking behind someone's back according to the Cambridge English Dictionary. And you know what? <laughs> it actually is because whenever someone fucking ats me into those kinds of conversations, the next comment down will be like, wow, telling on me. It's like, <laughs> it's like, if you don't want well, people to know that you say it, don't say it publicly on social media. This is what I mean, retard. I don't know, win stupid yeah. prizes, like, what do you want? I, I do like the idea, you know, like, in a classroom, you're like, hey, Timmy's a prick, and then, I don't know, like, Bobby's like, hey, just like, Timmy, hey, Timmy, Timmy Mike said that you're a prick. Hey, well, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I'm about to prove him right. Yeah. And he, hits, he hits block, and Timmy's like, what? I didn't even... <laughs> like... Talk to the block. It's a fucking mess. But of course, there's only one bad guy, and it's the one who is being talked about. Harassment. If you're subtweeting a total stranger to tell them how stupid they are for liking something or not liking something, it is harassment. Oh, fuck off. If there's, you're subtweeting, <laughs> but they're not tweeting at you. you how is that harassment? They're not, I mean, define targeting at that point. Like, wait, just to clarify, is yeah, is, so if I put out two tweets that weren't atting him, and I said, Mixed stuff is dumb for liking said thing, Mixed stuff is dumb for not hating said thing, he'd actually label me a harasser? Like, wow, dude. It's ridiculous. Interpreting someone's statement as negative is harassment. Like, yeah. you really have gotta... Interpreting their statement as dumb. We do- I mean, so many words have had this done to them in a fucking day and age. Like, these- these really grand words that really tell you something important's happening have just been reduced down to... Someone nudges you and you go, you just killed you, me. You gotta be careful with this, cause like, imagine if, uh, imagine if this guy, I don't know, he saw somebody like, Hey, I don't know, maybe he's driving in his car, and he gets cut off by some dude, he's like, Hey, dickhead! And then he honks his horn and says, dickhead again, and then the police just like, deploy the, uh... The wires to like cut his wheels. This <laughs> <laughs> is like get down on the ground. You're under arrest for harassment because you called someone a dickhead twice. Yeah, <sighs> society's you broken, I mean? man. This, the second we got into this rhetoric, where it's like your words can literally kill people, uh, the plot was yeah. lost. Hey, man, have you, have you not heard of Avada Kedavra? Have I heard of what? Avada Kedavra, words that can kill. Oh yeah, no, very true. I think it's more than magic. No, <laughs> it's the, it's just speaking. If I put in a tweet of Vada Kedavra at fucking make stuff, I'd be off that platform in a second. Harassment, murder. Um, but yeah, like this is getting a little little silly because you really yeah. like don't go down this road. I beg you, <laughs> it's gonna be bad for everyone. In particular, this is a really silly example. Like, if I were to ever get a tweet like that, and I have gotten tweets like that, where it's just, you're dumb for not liking this thing, but with no supporting evidence accompanying it, I just look at them right away as the dumb one. And I assume that everyone else who sees that tweet is the dumb one because they're calling me a name and not even saying why they think that my opinion is wrong. It's like, do why would I waste any time on that? Do you think but then if they, were, if they were to actually say, this is why you're wrong, then that's I see that as just an opportunity to respond and perhaps learn acknowledge some truth that you didn't before, you know, or yeah, just sure. 
you know, meet somewhere in between where maybe it's like, oh, yeah, I didn't think of it that way. Or you crush the other guy and say, no, actually, you're wrong. This is why. Do you think he'd defend my honor by all the different tweets from all these different content creators screenshotting my videos and saying they're long? Does that count as harassment? <laughs> um, against you? No, not possible. He'd probably be Are like, you know what he'd be jail? like? I swear to fucking God, if we put it all up to him, he'd be like, in fairness, your videos are pretty long. <laughs> <I'd be> like, <laughs> okay. Or not liking something, it is harassment. No, it isn't. Let's do a quick exercise in empathy. Oh, good if... God. Oh, fuck off. Can we go to another video? <laughs> <laughs> no, we have to defeat this video. We've got. I'm sorry. I need to define words for me because I'm. He's going to teach dumb. us about empathy. It's a wonderful word. Every single worthless. time you posted or tweeted about anything you liked, a dozen people immediately responded by telling you how idiotic you are for. Yeah, what about all the people who, when you said that there was something you didn't like? And then all of those people called you a piece of shit. It sucks, huh? We don't talk about that. That's the, the lame side of things. This is the important one. You you should be allowed to love stuff. You should not be allowed to experience the other emotion, the evil one. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. it's like, welcome to social media and the internet. Yeah, welcome also, to the internet. Maybe you should stop liking shitty things. Well, that's the two <laughs> options, right? Accept it, understand it, move the fuck on, or... Let's work on stomping this out to the point where everybody's not allowed to say anything mean anymore. It's like, oh, it's, like, it's at this yeah. point where you feel like you just want people to tell you that you're right on the Internet. Yes, that's what you want. That's all you want to do that. This video has taught me that this is all you think the Internet should be. And that's all you want from it. Well, can you imagine just... if the Internet really was the, the sanitization to the point where everyone just goes, hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I am good. It sounds like fucking Flat. equilibrium or some shit. <laughs> Wasn't that like, uh, what was that Simpsons episode where, uh, Fla it was the Treehouse of Horror where, like, Flanders had taken over the, the ultimate <laughs> universe? Yeah. And then everybody, yeah, their bra part of their brain ripped out. <laughs> it's not so bad. <laughs> they go in through your nose, and they let you keep the piece of brain they cut out. <laughs> oh, hello, hello, who's that big man there? Who's that? Join us, Father. <laughs> no! <laughs> I prefer the concept that the idea of everyone being nice to each other is too much for Homer. He can't take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think this, this kind of thinking is rooted definitely in a skewed idea of what a utopian state of existence is, oh, where yeah. pain, pain yeah. just plays no role, right? Well, but then yeah, if you take yeah. pain out of it, you take growth away from that as well so like what's the purpose well like, what if, there is we really... no such thing as a peak if there's no trough you know if there's, right. if there's no peaks if there are no troughs it's all just flat yeah are we really all here to suck each other's dicks well, or are we here to like <laughs> yeah. you know I mean? I bump imagine... up against each other maybe break some bones but heal them as well and then grow stronger and I think that's what it, it's it's more about that, you know. I imagine people might even start like wanting to start a fight if everything was super sanitized. It's like, you know, I want a bit of I want a bit of excitement. This place is boring. What did what did what, even, what, what did you like yeah. about this film? And then that person goes, "Oh, I like this." You go, "I, I you know what? I kind of didn't like that." And then they get banned I'm, and they're like, "Wait, yeah. what?" <laughs> well, I'm, I'm also kind of like I'm not sure that you can have human nature without negativity. I mean, we we are very right. negative creatures. We had to be because if we weren't negative, we got eaten by saber-toothed tigers, you know, we had to be negative, we had to always hey, be, like, paranoid and looking out for the thing. I hate to say it, I don't like those saber-toothed tigers one bit. <laughs> Combine our pattern <laughs> like, recognition with our desire to solve problems, and that's yeah, enough already. Yeah, surprised that bad movies tend to upset people? <laughs> yeah. I just like this world, though. He's he's like all those innocent snowflakes saying, "Hey, I love this thing," and all these mean people come out of nowhere and say, "Dumb, garbage, awful, wrong, idiot, yeah. stupid." <laughs> yeah. How do you deal with it, man? I don't know. For enjoying that thing, and here's a list of a hundred reasons why that thing is stupid, and you're stupid for liking it. Would you feel grateful for their quote-unquote criticism? Or would you hate it because you're? I thought if they had a list of reasons, then why are you making it, it sound like yeah. criticism is in quotation marks? It is criticism if there's reasons for it at that point. Well, this this happens on Twitter when I like so, someone says something just fucking insane or like you know the ones that are like uh, Mola needs to be deleted from the universe or 
Your um, critiques are poor. Yes, the my critique. <laughs> and if I like critiques quote tweet with a Pepe, just being like shocked or crying, and then there's people who are like, "Hey, what what's what's up with this? Like, what what got you to the point where you just wanted to tweet about how Mole is the worst thing in the universe?" And then they will put out another tweet being like, "Great, I'm being harassed." It's like, well, hang on, <laughs> that mm, person just yeah. asked you a question. Like, chill out. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, yeah, but it's a fan of yours asking the question, so it's like, oh, blockchain it is, I guess. Wow, that's pretty prejudiced. Right. No, it's pretty reasonable, okay? They know they're evil. Because you're a sane human. Not doing that to someone else. They're the only two options, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Of course. About being a good Star Wars fan, it's about being a good person. Uh, d d d well, don't stop. do that. I don't, no. I don't get fucking <laughs> faggots trying to tell me how to be a good person. I'm like, I just don't have time for this shit. It's... <laughs> it's what like, it? they, didn't, they, don't, they don't like this Star Wars movie, so I have to lecture them on how to be a good person. It's the most pretentious, holier-than-thou bullshit I've ever seen Okay, in my that's life. an exaggeration. All he was doing was talking about empathy and how you probably lack it, and you need to understand it's Well, I it's spent important. all mine yesterday, and I gotta wait till next week to recharge, so I guess he's shit out of luck, isn't he? <laughs> This is what I mean, like, I don't understand how you can watch this and come away being like, Yeah, that was... I've learned so much. And that behavior is the opposite of what Star Wars is literally about. I don't give a shit. Oh, Star Wars? No. What is Star Wars about oh, now? Other than doing the, 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 the sadness You're and letting the dark side cloud you. I don't, I don't mean to... to return to the light. Yeah. Remember, the first time I think we came across this argument was when like, I, oh, I Hate Everything was like, Isn't the point of Star Wars to see the light? To overcome the doctor. Do you remember that? That it was all, weird. yeah. It's yeah. like to to keep, hold on to hope at all costs. Even though like the that. the films specifically point out that sometimes you need to combat the people who are opposed to you with well, force. It was better than that because we're talking 2017, right? This is a while ago, or uh, or late early 2018. But I had everything said that about Star Wars and that the fandom needs to realize, like, hey, Star Wars is about the light. And it's like. I hate everything. Faber's for ripping Destiny to shreds, which is about fighting the yeah. light. <laughs> it's like, it's about finding the light, yeah. I'm like, oh shit. This is what I mean, like, as if, as if there's a property that's all about shitting on everything, and everyone's like, yes, we can criticize that one. <laughs> that's what it's about. <laughs> it promotes Star Wars that. now is about subverting expectations, so I hope you like this, this world that you enjoy. I hope you like the new world of Star Wars. It's all about fucking subverting expectations. Jedi are peacekeepers, hatred and aggression. Oh fucking hell! I don't want to be like Jedi. Fuck that shit. I want to <laughs> fuck. It's like, what if I want to be like Palpatine? He's like, well, you're evil. Into some crazy ass mad space pussy. I want to be a <laughs> Jedi in a tower. Adventure franchise. You say Marvel's about you know uh, empathy and compassion. Like this is so stupid. It's not Star Wars fans are, have no more obligation to be good people than anyone else. When think... Indiana Jones was fighting, you know, on the airport, he should have been like, I will beat you by being nice to you, Nazis. <laughs> I will beat you with kindness. No, dude, go the Neil Druckmann way. He says, I forgive you, Nazis. <laughs> like, <laughs> Wait, what? He, he's like sitting there, the Ark of the Covenant's about to be opened. He's like, you know what? I should look at this. <laughs> you know, what's the harm in that? But yeah, um, if... Built. Best faith interpretation of this argument is by being familiar with Star Wars content, you should be familiar with being a good person. That's just laughable to me. Are the dark side. There was a child in the news a few months ago that refused to fight back against his bullies because, quote, because he's a pussy ass bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is not, like... Yeah. Bully the child Jedi, refuses uh, to fight back. A Jedi would fight back. Uh, yeah, a Jedi yeah. is the defender of the A Jedi the would defend himself, yeah. D defending What yourself. films have you been watching where the Jedi just stand there and get killed? Well, outside of Obi-Wan, really of course. <laughs> but like, he still didn't do that. Are seriously gonna character? advocate that it's a good idea not to defend yourself? Like... Yeah. That was my kid. I beat his ass a second time when he got home. <laughs> Do you remember, um, like, all the viral videos that get around when, when there's, like, a, a larger child- It doesn't even have to be a, a larger child, but they're, they're just, like, chilling out, and there's some annoying prick hitting them over and over again, and then they just turn around, whack them once, and they clean out, and everyone's just like, wow, that's awesome. It's like, yeah, the, the bully will not forget that shit. Um, a lot of parents will be like, when you're hit, hit twice as hard back. Like, you yeah, can... give them a reason to never fucking even think about touching you again. Defend you show your them damn that if they self. fuck with you, you'll fuck back twice as hard. I just, 
you, it's like it's not the Jedi way to fight back. Clip to fucking attack even though it. Jedi fight back. Just show You're the like, clip from people. Man, people but... confuse being nice and letting people walk all over you. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. When you show them the fucking army of Jedi going to war, it'd be like, that's not the Jedi way. <laughs> yeah. All of you are wrong. Wasn't, it wasn't the Jedi way when, uh, it wasn't the Jedi way when, like, Obi-Wan was defending himself. It wasn't the Jedi way when Luke was defending himself. Well, just, I, I'm yeah, picturing you, now, like... Because Obi-Wan, like, let himself get cut down, that was... The... How does like, a kid... The Jedi way is to die. die. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, I'm that's how you way. get slaughtered. Well, I mean, like TOJ, the, the it is the scene. Jedi way to not go and save your friends until the last minute and not even show up and then just die and leave. Yeah, the, the Jedi way is just get killed. Out. Yeah. What's the lightsaber for? I don't know. It's just, it's, I guess, exactly. Like a, Why even have it? Yeah. It's like a membership rage. Well, you know the, the scene with obviously Kylo stabbing through. Uh, Luke's ghost. Imagine, like, children were like, if the bully comes at you with a knife, just let him stab. <laughs> You're like, oh god, no. <laughs> like, the, there's, the a, there's a difference between just fighting anybody and then knowing how to fight, but not doing it until it's a la like a last yeah, resort. Exactly. Like, you have to. That's, I think, what this kid, like, he misinterpreted it. That this is what he took from that kind of thinking. Or well, like fighting is wrong. It's funny. Kid, uh, holding him by the scruff of the neck, punching him in the face, and he goes, I'm Qui Gon Jin. I'm Qui Gon Jin. I'm Qui Gon Jin. And they just slam in his face. <laughs> so, my, all, my, all we've done is really react to the the, the the sentence. We don't know how he's going to deal with this. Uh, well, I was thinking, I, I was raised uh, in a pretty religious household. My parents never, ever were like, Yeah, you need to just turn the other cheek when people attack you. Like don't that part just don't don't worry about that part yeah fuck them up eye for an eye don't let fucker. people don't let people beat you up it's fucking retarded yeah well, pe people keepers. end up not Peaches respecting you you know if you if you don't fight yeah. for yourself well, yeah, man, if you don't stand uh, your ground bullies yeah, like, you know they thrive on like targets that don't fight back right question mm -hmm. Are the dark side. There was a child in the news a few months ago that refused to fight back against his bullies because, quote, it's not the Jedi way. And that's the part. You mean, that quote, hurts because the it's not the Jedi the way, not, quote, because it's, it's, it's whatever. He said it this part hurts anyway, the most. Yeah, I, don't, that, I don't know why. That's that's bad. That's not, encur that's not something we need to be encouraging in kids is to not defend yourself. This whole you thing. When I was that seven-year-old kid with the pod racing backpack deflecting laser blasts from imaginary destroyer droids, if someone I came up to me, why are you, why are you fighting you back? Let yeah, you yeah, you should have just let them riddle with your whip to kill you. <laughs> Don't fight back against your robot bullies. Turn the other <laughs> cheek <laughs> like a good Jedi. Robot bullies. <laughs> I wanted him to say, when I was seven, I let people kick my ass all the time. I'm a real Jedi. I, he probably still gets his ass kicked. <laughs> oh. On Twitter. ...laser blasts from imaginary destroyer droids. If someone came up to me and said, Dude, what are you doing? Episode 1 is garbage. The writing is objectively terrible. Yeah. And Padme was a total Mary Sue. What? Padme was a Mary Sue. Padme was a Mary Sue. Yeah. What's going on? When I um, killed myself, only an idiot would enjoy that movie. Honestly. Oh, seriously. Like, so first of all, my brain went, oh, come on. People, like, let you enjoy shit. But then my brain was like, you know what? Fuck it. If people are saying this to you, get over it. Jesus Christ. Yeah. There's randoms Girl, coming up to you and saying, oh, you can't enjoy it because it's wrong to enjoy a random. I just like, just, just, it's fine. It's fine. Just, the, the, it's not an argument. It's fine. Just ignore it. Well, but dude, there's like twelve of them. It's like, oh my god, how do you how do you survive? Must be getting quote tweeted yeah. all the time by these these harassers. Yeah, you should just be laughing at them. Like they're the one wasting their time tweeting it. You know, senseless <laughs> insults. Yeah. At I you. mean, to be so honest, like, you, like, fuck you. I'm wrong. playing video no, games. Yeah. You guys yeah. have spent time on Twitter. If you have someone who like outwardly says, if you like the Last Jedi, you are wrong. If you quote tweet that as like a pro TLJ account, you're gonna get a shit ton of likes. Like, mm -hmm. look, look at this idiot person telling people that they can't like shit. It's like, I don't even know that these comments survive that well on stuff like Twitter. But no, they need to be zeroed in and blocked and stomped out. Or, you know, these, these accounts themselves need to learn about empathy. Right. 
I would have either become a very closeted Star Wars fan or would have stopped being a Star Why Wars fan Why are you doing entirely. your little trembly I... voice again? Stop it. Yeah, <laughs> quit. Like, if this is making you emotional, you need, you need to grow the fuck up. Well, yeah. in fairness, he said not enjoying a Star Wars film is the absolute worst thing for a Star Wars fan. So, <laughs> like this obviously upsets him, oh, Rags. Talking about the potential of not enjoying a Star Wars film, like, he has to feel that way temporarily, and even that, that sends him into almost a coma. Like, this guy who's trembling these words at this is the one trying to give us life advice? Like, I don't know, man. You don't seem like prime candidate material for teaching us how to live our lives well. Nope. He knows what's up. He's been around the block. I never would have been a part of the fandom, and I never would have been inspired to do what I do today. Oh, because as oh, a kid, oh, well. you're very... Whose responsibility is that, though, at the end of the day? What, the things that you allow to get to oh, well, you and the things that you allow let's be honest, to right? you to do? Tw Fringy, someone sends you a tweet saying, like, I hate you, you, you suck. And then you go, all right, well, you suck. And then you find out because you said that to them that they, they were going to be an astrophysicist, and now they're not. How do you feel? Well, it's like, that's your responsibility. Dude, it's like, what the fuck? Like, I didn't what do you do is on you. I, was like, I feel like if that's all it takes to make you not become a fan of something, you weren't really that invested in being a fan in the first place. Yeah, like, like yeah, I don't really care. Exactly, exactly. Like, if somebody would have come up to me and be like, fuck you, Fring, you should never try and write anything ever. It's like, okay. <laughs> like, I still gotta. I don't care. And then you have this like, guy exactly. making a video on your behalf. Fringy stopped writing after that mean tweet. How does that make you feel, mean people? But like, but if if I did, that would be my fault, ultimately, because that would be my decision. Nobody can make you do anything. You know, that's your decision. Weak spirit, as Dave Chappelle would say, weak spirit. It's like, I yeah, don't know. I mean, like, I, 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 I can't relate because obviously, when I was in school, like people made fun of the things I was interested in. That didn't stop me though. Why would it? If I like something. What do I care if some dipshits well, I don't yeah, I mean, like? Well, yeah, I mean, playing fucking. Right. It's dumb. If you play Mario Kart DS with a bunch of people, I can flick on and off. And someone goes past, it's like, lol, dudes, played on DS. Like, yeah, but it's fun, though. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Stop masturbating in public. What? <laughs> yeah, but it's fun, though. When I started making videos, I was terrible. But, and then people told me my videos were terrible, but I wanted to keep doing it because I knew, like, this is what I want to do. I want to get better at this. You know, and I just stuck with it. The people who succeed are the people who stick with it. You know? Right, yeah. Absolutely. I'm not going to let people say, oh, I guess I better not do this then. Like, of course you're going to suck at whatever it is you attempt. Yeah, it wasn't and perfect you just got to keep attempt. at it. Yeah, as long yeah. as you like it and it's what you want to get good at, you just keep at it, you know. Be easily influenced. You're trained to accept what adults tell you is good or bad, no matter how you feel about it. That whole you'll understand uh, when you're also uh, who's letting their kids uh, unsupervised in YouTube comment sections and Twitter accounts. Like, well, what you're what, showing all these kids, but it's like, you're, but even then, like, what they, if he's saying that oh, as kids, you just shoot. I don't know. I, there are a lot of people who who are adults who are like video games are stupid. That never changed my opinion on I them. Kinda, yeah, I, can I roll this like, back? I want to know what exactly he just said. The parents say to. Uh, oh. I do today. Because as a kid, you're very easily influenced. You're trained to accept what adults tell you is good or bad, no matter how you feel about it. That whole, no. you'll understand no. when you're older thing. No, no, and no, right now, no. First off, the last thing you need to be telling kids is that it's virtuous for them to get their ass kicked. <laughs> but it's the Jedi way. <laughs> <laughs> the Jedi way to like, This guy's literally, he's in this video, he's saying it's a good thing that this kid allowed himself to get bullied and beat up and now he's trying to grandstand to us and moralize about oh won't you think of the children it's like listen you fucking asshole you're telling kids it's good to let themselves get beat up well he uh, didn't necessarily he didn't seem to comment on the pro or con of it he just said it, it it's sad or something i don't i don't i don't know if he approves of the child not defending themselves i couldn't really tell I almost well, just... He's implying that it's virtuous not yeah, to he's ever fight it's good. at all, Which... even if it's you know for out of self preservation. Yeah, I want to. I want to make sure we cover that. That is retarded. Like you, is seriously, stick the... up for yourselves, guys. Does he know it's called Star Wars? I don't give a fuck. If it's the Jedi <laughs> way to just roll over and let people beat the shit out of you. <laughs> I feel like oh, I'm not a fan of the Jedi way. Also, does he realize how opinionated little kids can be? 
Are these the same kids who bullied the Jake Lloyd character that well, we mentioned earlier? They, 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 they almost always listen to adults, right? Yeah, let them onto Twitter and see how friendly they are. Why didn't the Rebels just let them blow up Yavin? Like, who cares? That's that's the Jedi way, man. <laughs> it's the Jedi way, come on. <laughs> uh. Luke's about to fire the torpedoes, <laughs> and Obi-Wan is like, yeah. no, Luke, that's <laughs> not the Jedi <laughs> way. <laughs> Maybe the Jedi way is stupid, like the Mandalorian not taking her helmet off thing. Like, that's fucking stupid. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I like the idea that uh, Luke's doing the Tron Tron and Obi-Wan comes in and he goes, Nah, don't. Don't do not do anything. He's like, I'm getting mixed messages. Didn't you say I was supposed to? It's like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> kind of like look that you want, like you want to win, but don't actually hit anyone. Obi Wan, wait. So, you, so that's why you just let Darth Vader kill you. Oh, it's all coming together. Oh my like, god. Why did you fight him at first? And he's like, that was sort of like a you can't beat me, but I'm gonna let you beat me. Just so you know that you couldn't have done it unless I let you. Yeah. I wasn't <laughs> even trying. <laughs> Vader's like, fuck yeah. you, man. I'm still killing you. <laughs> yeah. When those kids see anyone online talking about liking the Last Jedi, Are we seriously doing think of the children. I don't give yeah. a shit. About like this Think is... of all the children on Twitter, is what yeah. he is arguing. Are there even Before kids on Twitter? I don't know. Look at those faces. Have you no heart? The, who's Reverend Lovejoy's wife? We need her. Won't somebody Ellen please Lovejoy. think of the children? Yeah. Oh wait, doesn't Mo do it at one point? Won't somebody please remember. think of the children? When they go to the mayor's office, I think? I don't remember. Yeah, it's, point being, wow. You're wheeling out the kids to be like, stop being mean about the movie, okay? Look at the children, they're sad. They see a horde of people telling that person how wrong and stupid they are. So do you remember how we said that he won't do the flip of this, where kids come online to talk about how they did not enjoy the space movie, and a bunch of people say they're dumb, garbage, and awful for not liking it? You gonna cover that? <laughs> no. Because yeah. that doesn't happen. It's gotten to the point where certain people aren't welcome in the Star Wars fandom because they're a fan of a Star Wars film. But which... you're trying to do that the other way around. Yeah, do, saltier than crate was the web. The sorry, the subreddit. It was ex almost exclusively about like fuck the Last Jedi, and then saltier than crate spelt with a K was fuck the people who say fuck the Last Jedi. <laughs> um. So, uh, uh, and again, we had this recently with The Last of Us 1 is like, The Last of Us as a franchise is cool, thumbs up. The Last of Us 2 subreddit is like, The Last of Us 1 is great, The Last of Us 2 can suck a dick. <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> um, so the idea that there's only the, like, he's like, the, the, the haters are blocking people from the fandom. It's like, what do you mean? This is happening on both sides. Shut up. Right. It's yeah. lying. Do as I say, not as I do. And what does he want? Does he want the whole fandom to agree which movies are good and which movies are bad? Like, what, what is say, his this, goal? For this the is fandom? not new. Everybody is to be happy and everything's great and nothing's ever bad ever. Do you think? This, do you think this is explained by him just being new to all of this? It's like, Maybe. look how crazy, like, yeah, but, but angry, how is and rude. He not growing up on the, I don't know. I well, just, he I never like, grew up. Yeah, we, we, we've never talked about this before, up. but I think all yeah, yeah. six of us currently, we're all a part of a generation that got way worse than this, right to your ears yeah. on Xbox Live. Yeah. <laughs> Goddamn, Modern Warfare 2 Online, like Halo 3. That toughened Jesus. me up really quick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was a real trial by fire. And then it's like, someone on Twitter said I was dumb. You're like, oh no. Are you okay? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Just sit down. Deep. It's like, oh my god, what what about you were they criticizing that you liked a movie? Like, ah. Oh, wow. I'm imagining this South Park style scene where the kid's like in a hospital bed on an IV. The doctor's <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. it's the worst case of tweeting I've ever seen. He might not make it. <laughs> is nonsense but for those gatekeepers it's not about loving star wars anymore it's about owning star wars i said same fucking thing about you i see this yeah. from the other yep. side way more than our own yeah the, the the fandom menace the toxic brood the hate mongers of blah 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 that's what you guys do all the fucking time you didn't like it you think it's bad you're not real star wars fans real star wars fans yeah. fucking support product because course. that's what star wars fans do the, the key difference the key difference 
is that this guy is making a lot of value judgments about people as people, like as human beings fundamentally because of this. Whereas, like, yeah, I don't give I'm a not, shit if you like to. I'm not making stupid ass movie. I'm not making judgments about whether or not you're a good or bad person because you liked a movie that I didn't like. Yeah, you just have to kind of it. If we're gonna talk about who ascribes motivation first, like they don't even hesitate. They're just like boom, boom, all the motivations in the world. This is exactly who you are. Bye. And you're like, oh, I'm, I don't feel like I'm those things. I don't feel like yeah. I go down alleyways hunting waitresses with my opinions. That seems weird. Just pretend it's what you wanted and see if you like it. <coughs> that cough was perfectly timed, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not just kids that are being put off by it. Christopher McQuarrie, extremely talented director of Mission Impossible Fallout, said that he would have loved to have directed a Star Wars film, but the treatment of Ryan Johnson has cured him of that. Because okay. Uh, don't, what are we supposed to conclude about that? Man, if Ryan Johnson would have made a good movie and everyone said, thanks so much, Ryan Johnson. Well, there you go. But Ryan Johnson made a really fucking shitty Star Wars movie and he basically ruined the franchise and cost well, Disney hundreds we, of millions of dollars. Like, but like don't, what do you want it to say? Like, good job, Ryan. Better luck next fucking time. Don't get tricked. <laughs> this is this is just we, we went over this already. Fringy does a thing on Twitter, just casual interaction. And a wizard tells him. What you just did stopped cancer from being cured by the scientist. And, and, and you're like, what? What the fuck does that have to do with me? And it's like, look, when you're mean, Christopher McQuarrie doesn't make a Star Wars movie. You're like, what the fuck? I don't... Okay. Yeah. I, I don't understand. Like, what, what am I supposed to do about this? What are you, what are you suggesting? No more mean yeah. stuff, otherwise directors won't make movies anymore, guys. It's like, fucking hell. Yeah. We'll make room for more aggressive directors, I suppose. Mission Impossible Fallout was really good, though. Mm. Um, you mean Mission Impossible Fallout, right? Or did you say 4? Oh, I said Fallout, but it might have sounded like 4. Yeah, it did. For I like 4, but yeah, Fallout's the top tier. Which one's 4? Ghost uh, Protocol? Ghost Protocol, Ghost yeah. Protocol. And I like bam, that one. Bam, bam, I like bam, that one. Bam, I like uh, 4, 5, and 6 a lot. Though, make no mistake, Christopher Qu 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 Um If you make the next Mission Impossible movie about how Ethan Hunt is really old and cowardly and hates saving people's lives, the, the same thing will happen. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. it's not... This is what I mean, like, we don't get to... There's this giant elephant in the room that we were all bouncing around with this conversation. It's like, but Ryan Johnson's movie was really shit. And they're like, yeah, no, 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 no. This is just... No. S step away. From that elephant. I think really? if you're afraid to make a Star Wars movie, like, then yeah, you probably don't understand the franchise. But anyone who understands the franchise, it's not a daunting task to make a good Star Wars movie. The elements are like pretty it's easy. It's not that hard. Out. It's really not that hard. No, it's it's a pretty uh, cut and dry. Give us some heroes, some villains, you know, so a little bit of some themes that are interesting and whatever else. Just don't take Luke Skywalker and make him a, a sad old weirdo who drinks monster titty milk. Like, nobody wants that. But don't you understand? JJ left him no choice. He put him on an island. Oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> no choice. That's it. It's done. Because relentless hatred and destruction... What? What? <laughs> destruction? Destruction? <laughs> oh destruction. my god. Jesus Christ. Doesn't inspire creativity. Uh, gonna, gonna put a hang on there, Mater Rooney. So, when you have something like Season 8 Game of Thrones happen, and then everyone goes through, like, how fucking bad it was, and the reasons why, and like, what the characters should be doing, you get a lot of people out there who are like, Hey, I'm a, I'm a write something like a... I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna write that scene, but the way I think it should have gone. Actually, I'm gonna write the episode, uh, the season. Actually, fuck it, I'm just gonna write my own show. And then, boom! Creativity that came from what this guy calls destruction, I guess. Um, right. You'd be surprised how much, like, new writers are born out of being fucking pissed that their IPs were destroyed. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Spite is an incredibly powerful motivator. Yeah! Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Also, regarding this little graphic he's doing, I was like, I think it's pretty fair to say that when it came to The Last Jedi, Ryan Johnson was very creative in the way he destroyed Star Wars. Oh, as Weekend sure. Warriors just highlighted, uh, you know, Chris Stuckman was unhappy with Batman vs. Superman, and so he was inspired to write I mean, a little you... script of his own. Oh, did you guys, did you read that earlier? No. <laughs> oh. 
But, the, but, 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 wait, how long are you gonna be awake for free? Uh, I'm still good for like at least a few hours. Well, um, let's see if we can finish. We got what's our yeah, cap? Yeah, if we can finish this, then let's try and do that. That'll be. I'm already be spent. I should probably go. That is a okay, sir. It was it was fun to have you. Um, thanks you, for having me you, on. Pop on and say hi. Yeah, yeah. Because obviously you you um you um popped on the, in the in the same sort of way as a lot of other other people. But it was nice to see you. Are you, are you I hope you're doing well. Uh, of course, you um. Everyone, everyone's very uh, happy and waiting for new coverage of, well, sorry, new destruction and harassment. <laughs> yes, um, new creative <laughs> destruction. So yeah, uh, we'll see you about that the second that um, you release it. But yeah, thanks for popping in. It was, thank you. It was, it was good stuff. Yes, yes. Please continue. Oh, you, you bet. Catch you later. Have a good night, man. Have a good one. Good good. Um. All right. Let's see about this destruction. It just inspires more destruction, <laughs> which is why Disney has put all Star Wars spin-offs on indefinite. Um, I can think of other That's explanations because, for this. Yeah, Solo didn't make any money, being the yeah. big one. Solo lost yeah, money. No kidding. The films, the, the main films, have been uh, pretty. The, you, the last one made half what the first one did. Do you like, remember this yeah. narrative where it was like, "Look what you did, Star Wars haters! Now we're not getting more," and we were all like. Hmm. Good. <laughs> I mean, Just let it rest. Of all the things that could have gone wrong, I feel like we did okay. We're not gonna get a solo two, car. They wanted we're to do a trilogy, a, didn't they? We're not gonna get a big. They did want to do a trilogy. trilogy. How like fucking Darth crazy Wall is that? Stuff as well. Yeah. Get a Babu Frick prequel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we did lose some stuff. I will agree. Babu Frick prequel would have been cool. <laughs> would have developed or the Bobby character. Frick -flick. Yeah, uh, this was not bad news to me whatsoever. Um, you could you could call the whole like, do you want to gamble at this point with Star Wars is so ruined that you'll take, you know, an attempt. No Star Wars. But this this that's the two options. It's like, would you prefer another random quality movie roll of the dice from Disney, or just stop it? And you're like, hmm. I don't know. It's pro it's it's fun to talk about the shitty Star Wars movies. Honestly. But like, isn't it pretty bad that that's the point we're at though, where we're like, hmm, no more content. That is tempting. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, there's no. no movies coming out at all. I'm like, oh no, there's nothing to rip on. Come on, Hollywood. What am I gonna oh, do? Make fun of trolls including too? Including you and McGregor led <laughs> Obi Wan. They shouldn't feel any pressure. I don't think to make movies in like a trilogy. Like, I don't no. think that has to be a necessary component of so, Star Wars. It's like they need to come in threes. Wanted I think that's you monsters. Um, hasn't I don't care who wanted it. Their movies are really shit. And I'm not going to. I mean, if, they're, if they didn't make shit movies, I would be excited <laughs> to get more great movies. But their movies are garbage. And I'm not. I'll, remember that thing you're talking about earlier? Like what, what we're owed and what they're owed is like, well, if they make crappy movies, then they're not owed a good review. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Nor are they owed, like, some kind of ridiculously positive attitude. I am tired yeah, of the idea that, that you've got to be a fucking well-behaved, like, Disney. whole monitor online. Where you're just like, is everybody behaving? Nobody's using mean words like stupid poopy head. No, none of that. <laughs> like, Think of on. the children! Yeah, all, come those, on. all those kids regularly signing onto Twitter That's to talk about it. Star Wars. Oh, man. Look at them all go. All those fireworks who watched your review and had their lives shattered. <laughs> <laughs> like, why does this monster exist? How do we stop him? Like I said, I have always loved Star Wars. And oh, the delivery. And yeah, I used to. to. I used to love it. Yeah. Then... My love is conditional, and it must be earned. Well, that's where you're wrong. <laughs> this is like one of those guys. Like, I just love it no matter what. It's, I just no matter what it is. Fuck it. I'll love Star Wars because Star Wars is Star Wars, and brand and franchise and consumer and consume brand chise and i would have killed many a bothan or a youngling to get to write anything star wars but oh. now i'm terrified of doing this youtube video. oh, shut oh up. now he's one he, he's one of the people where when you mean he stops being creative look at what you've well, done well i know i could beat his ass and i don't have to worry about retaliation yeah I mean, <laughs> yeah but like seriously i'm not, not getting the jedi baited. way 
not getting baited by this. We called it before it even happened, and now it's the second instance. Being mean makes it so people stop being creative, okay? So that's the end of the argument, stop being mean. It's like, that's not gonna work. Try again. It's like, boo fucking who? About it. When it comes to discussing Star Wars online, I have a very complicated relationship with it. When I talk to people about it, they're just really negative. Um, I feel like you've been getting all of these, these candid things from the same group of people. I don't know. Could be that your friends are yours. Uh, confirmation be bias! But yeah, <laughs> it's not like we didn't talk about that. Dude, imagine if this one person the interview was just like, yeah, I think it's really good that we have multiple, like, diverse perspectives on the hatred and the love at the same time to really temper out exactly what it is this franchise achieving and what it isn't. You know, I think it's a really positive experience overall. I think we have a lot to gain from it. And he's like, no. That sounds like a hate monger. <laughs> no. There's obviously been backlash about the diverse characters in the film, which- Shut the fuck up. Uh, Shut the fuck up, woman. Why do they do this to me all the time? Like, Why? I don't give a shit about the diverse characters. No one cared about Leia being a woman. No one cared about Lando being black. No one cared about Chewbacca being a Wookiee. Nobody Walking cared copy. about Boba Fett being Australian. <laughs> <laughs> he's no good to me dead wow he's more new zealander i guess when when he's no good to me dead when like they hit the back of his jetpack and he's like no and fucking slams <laughs> <laughs> somebody's gonna make that meme <laughs> really upsets me as a woman of color because- Can I say- Oh, shut the fuck up with this woman of color bullshit. <laughs> I, I paused it because I wanted to ask, does that pillow have titties on it? Wait, what? <laughs> does that Which pillow one? have titties on it? Are you talking about the one on the left? I'm talking about the one with the titties on it! On the left! Where there's clearly- Oh, one. You, I, I see, I can titties. see. Yeah, it does. Yeah, uh, I think- Oh like my goodness, that. are we gonna get shut down? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, someone called someone else like a poo-poo head. Someone told someone to eat poop earlier, like in a comment. I feel like we're gonna get shut down for that. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. I mean, it's, it's, it's really her video, but... I, I don't know, that Indian chick down there, he's got a rocking pair of tits. Mm -hmm. On that pillow. <laughs> Having diversity in casting means a lot to me. I've definitely noticed me talking about it more. I just can't relate. I can't relate. Maybe, uh, maybe it's because, like, I grew up and my favorite characters were, like, talking space cats. Maybe and, like, they're too fucking young. Furries maybe, will save us. Is that what you're saying, Fringy? Well, uh, what I mean is, like, when I was a kid, it's like, all right, so, like, because, of course, key exposure was um, films, you know, kid, kid, like, Pixar movies, PlayStation 1, you know, uh, like, GameCube sort of era, and very few of those characters were, like, even human beings. And even the ones who were weren't like me, and it, it never bothered me. It wasn't like something I thought about. And so yeah. then when I get a lot older and I start hearing people say how important it is, I'm baffled, like genuinely baffled. I don't, I don't understand. I can't relate. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a form of virtue signaling. No, you know, people want to I look good is, saying yeah. those things. But like, is it's it's ah, uh, it's not. I, it, I don't well, I mean, like it feels it. like we're going really backwards a like bit. It. it feels like we're going backwards. Like, yeah, it does. It does. <sighs> I don't know. I feel, there was there was the the trifactor of whammons when I was was growing up for inspiration was Sarah Connor, Ellen Ripley, and obviously the many of the cast of Buffy. It was like, Buffy, yeah. but but I'm a boy. I can't oh. associate with that shit. That's not how it works. Also, by the way, another reason why I couldn't at all with with Ellen Ripley, she was from the future. I'm not in the mm -hmm. future. That's not happening. I mean, how could I relate to Ratchet? I'm not again a, a space cat. And Damn I mean, it. it's weird that why 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 do I like Daredevil more than Black Panther? I mean, I'm not blind. <laughs> <laughs> no. But that never stopped me. Yeah. But yeah, like I look at this this guy right here and I'm like, I wonder if he's like just ever he got didn't the experience fight back against his bullies because it wasn't the Jedi way. Well, I'm just Honestly, like, that, but online, right? Like, just the experience of actually fending for yourself and being able to, like, experience some of the the shits of humanity so you can get a bit of perspective about what you're dealing with in your everyday. But, like, because mm -hmm. what happens when you're in the environment that they're fostering already and stuff like Twitter? If you grow up where someone saying you're a meanie head is the worst thing you get? Because how long until those ones are shut down? It's like, hey, you're going a bit far with that. Hey. Right, yeah. Well, where the culture is the now, line? Like, 
much anti-bullying in schools. But then you get on the internet, and <laughs> adults are bullying the crap out of each other. So it's like, dude, yeah. you got to toughen these kids up a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. Let them learn some lessons. Don't tell them not to fight back. Fuck no, yeah, that's stupid. Or with people who aren't hardcore fans, just because it's easier, they'll just be like, oh, hey, you like that, that's cool. Whereas asking a hardcore Star Wars fan could easily lead to an hour-long debate about Ryan Johnson. No, you, you can, can fucking, leave. Uh, you, you don't have to it, engage in a debate if you want to, you don't want to. That's the first thought you and I have, and it just... Why? Because it's like, well, of course... Him? Yeah, that's what I mean, it's like, what are you... Dragged into a... You don't have to have a super hard stance on anything. It's fine. It's if the... you don't really care about something, you don't have to debate about it. And no. even if you do care, you don't want to debate. That's fine. Not to have a long form callback, but it's like the Jim Sterling shit with the um the the, the things in the Last of Us Two where he was referencing uh like so so someone makes a claim, he counters. They counter claim. He counter claims. They counter claim. He counter claims. Then he calls them the crazy nerd who's looking way too in depth with it. I imagine these people get into debates. And it's only, like, ten tweets down that they finally go, like, I can't believe you dragged me into this debate. It's like, what, what do you mean? Like, you're a participant. I'm not just, like... like I'm almost yeah. certain that's what's going on. I know you having agency makes it harder for you to pin all of your faults <laughs> on me, but you're gonna have to... You're gonna have to own up to it one day. <laughs> yeah. I just find it so exhausting. And when the topic comes up, it, it makes me want to change to another topic sometimes, because... Look at all these poor victims oh, are of we having just not to talk to people online. Anymore? Fuck off. This is what I mean. Like, how can I be sympathetic to this? This is embarrassing. Turn mm -hmm. off the phone. <laughs> you can't handle this shit. <laughs> I just want to put out a tweet where I say TLJ is good. Is that too much to ask? It's like, I don't know. If you shout so, it loud enough, this, someone's gonna respond. This will be really funny to me now, because uh, I've been reading a lot of, like, Stoic philosophy, and one of the key things that they talk about and that is, like, you know, nothing can actually upset you, really, because, like, you know, everything's neutral, and then you give it value, or whatever. And as I'm watching this, I'm just like, you know, you guys can, like, talk about whatever you want, and if it's upsetting you, you can you can just, like, get that, you know, like, get that in leave. control. Get, Wow, yeah, you've got a lot of options here. Take some responsibility for your the way that you're feeling. The frame, they can't tweet. No, oh, no, it, anything but that. It's like I'm sorry, what but did you maybe, do before Twitter? Maybe discussions and debate don't owe you fun. How about that? Well, I'm, yeah. when did Again, you think that you're entitled to have a good time in a debate? Picturing another South Park sketch with. Their Twitter gets banned, and they open their door, the sun shines them, they're like, ah. They walk outside, and then they see another kid, and they go, uh, d do you like ice cream? And he goes, no. And he goes, oh. And then he f figures out it's okay. It's like, people, now that there's actually debates to have about Star Wars quality, cause, well, I guess you have the prequels, but uh, enough time has passed recently where we can at least admire them, even if we don't agree if they're, you know, objectively good or not, you know? But nowadays, it seems that like, they just expect agreement. Like, th that's their, yeah. they, they, as the default, they expect, yeah, we need to agree on Star Wars. But we can't anymore, which means it's not fun. If we're not agreeing, it's not fun. I'm like, okay, all right. Kind of yeah. telling, but all right. <laughs> Metal and uh, EFAB podcast talks said, all these fucking pussies, my IRL friends mostly like the new Star Wars, and I talked to them about it. Get a fucking spine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Look, hey, all the people in this video that we're covering, it's okay. You'll be okay. It's okay. It's not your fault. You can like stuff. Hugs. You are love. You are valid. <laughs> you are, you are you are okay. It's just toxic and toxic. and so often I feel like I'm being told that my opinion is it wrong. It is. <laughs> Get used to it! I Get just find it funny, welcome man. To, welcome like, to the fucking planet Earth where there's other minds involved, if, and they're gonna tell you that your shitty opinion is wrong. But if I was given a yeah. tweet every single minute of every single day about, like, you're wrong, your opinion is wrong, I'd be like, oh, I'm off to my cave because I can't survive this. Just fucking hell, go to a different tab. Like, oh, why can't everyone just just tell me that I'm right? That's all, all I'm getting from this video. People yeah. just... Like, 
children bitching that everyone else on the internet doesn't just tell them that they're right. Also, he hasn't restored the balance of the fan base yet. He's only established that it's in tatters and ruined and destructive and harassment. I'm hoping that this video will end on a positive note, right? It's going to be like, the way to repair it is to be nice. I'm waiting oh, for it. Oh, yeah. It's really sad that it seems that the way that the entire discourse there. of the Star Wars fandom has degraded itself to. Oh, it degraded itself. For the first time in my entire life, I don't like being a part of the Star Wars fandom. I don't care. The first time? I couldn't. So when Jake Lloyd and everything, that was happening, you just didn't care. You didn't, you didn't know. It's okay. It didn't well, you count. didn't know, I guess, also, maybe. with the way you delivered that one, I could sort of, like, hear the tears, you know? They're coming. Yeah. This 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 one was an emotional delivery. Your life, I don't like being a part of the Star Wars. I don't anime. care what you like and don't like. I don't give a shit. I'm not your mother. <laughs> yeah, I'm crying tears here for this. He sounds so me. upset. Like, I do. Not what I want to be, because I'd have to live with knowing I raised such a fucking pussy. I I, I would be like like if he was just crying in the in the playground because no one like no one's being nice about Star Wars. I'd be like, oh, that's. Oh. <laughs> at what point? At what point do you just say "grow the fuck up" and act like an adult? I feel like yeah. we probably said it a few times this at guy this is point. The literal definition of the consumer meme: like, I <laughs> used to buy so many Star Wars toys, and now I feel bad. It's like, dude, just get you know, over it. There's so many other like, don't define your life by. Yeah, you went to some Star Wars conventions, and you had a good time, but not everybody. You don't have to love stormtroopers for the rest of your life. To live a life, man. Not everybody has to agree on what Star Wars movies like. What do you want? Because and have you ever have you ever like actually considered why so many people are really upset, or have you just decided that it's for really stupid, worthless reasons? Well, I I think if if you were if you were to ask me that about them, I would say that they have irrationally attached their identity to a brand that they should never have done. Right. And as that yeah. has gone on for years and years and years, it's only festered and become worse and worse. Well, yeah, it, it, it's it's that problem of um, if you if you affix your identity to something which can change and become worse, then it becomes a lot harder to reconcile that. You know, yeah, well, yeah. You haven't attached yourself to a principle or a position or a virtue or a way of life that something worth you know worthy of emulation and growth. You attached yourself to a product. That a corporation controls. Like, that wasn't very smart. Hey, he made also, it clear like, it's not the product, it's the people. It's the humans that are wrong. But hopefully Star you Wars is pure. Things. It's tainted by the you, mortals. This guy went to these conventions. You made friends. Okay, you, you experienced the fandom at what you thought was its height. Okay, but fandoms are always going to evolve. Okay, and it, 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 right now the fandom is, is pretty much in agreement that there were some bad Star Wars movies. And you just got to deal with that fact. It doesn't take away from what you, you used to love about the fandom. And if the fandom's moved on, I mean, you're a, you're a grown adult. Go live your life. Why is your identity tied up in this thing? Yeah, when we All right, you had some fun, get over it. When the five of us, one, two, three, four, five, five of us, when we get off the stream, it, of course, collapse from exhaustion, and then we wake back up again, and we're not at our computers, and we're not streaming, and we're not talking about Star Wars videos. We have like a life. We do stuff. It's pretty neat. Right? Uh, everything mm -hmm. that we have isn't hinged on this product in this really personal way. Despite, funnily enough, how much people will tell us that's the case. It's like, your life is Star Wars. We'll be like, no, actually. Like, but, no. All right. when, I, when I leave the computer, even when, mostly when I'm on the computer, I don't even give a shit about Star Wars. I'm, just, I'm, doing, I'm doing other stuff. I'm working on a project or I'm playing a game with friends. Or I'm doing something else. It's but but I feel like this guy lives and breathes Star Wars. And he's got all of his Legos, and he's got the I mean, fucking Funko Pops and everything. Yeah, I would say that he made that case clear. He does live and yeah, breathe. Yeah, very it, clear. Here, here's an example. I love Evangelion. It's one of my favorite things in the world. And I think the new Evangelion movies are complete dog shit. But <clears throat> I still can enjoy the fandom... Or whatever it is, I can still talk to people who like the old ones. Same as this guy, I can talk to people who like the original Star Wars or whatever else. I haven't tied my identity into every new product in that franchise that comes out. Everybody needs to be in agreement on it with me. Like, mm -hmm. what? what is this? 
yeah, the fandom is disagreeing about one movie, and you're like, oh my god, it's fractured. We have to bring it back to you. No, they just don't. Why does it have to be consistent and everybody has to agree? I have no idea what this guy is going on about. He's going on about mean comments. Fragility. You saw you saw it firsthand. Someone puts out a tweet that has a heart in it, so a nice nice little woodland creature, like I said. Then all these mean people say dumb and stupid and hit them with clubs. That's the problem. And then you you, st you think, what does that got to do with Star Wars? That just sounds like an asshole doing that, right? Is that is that what we're dealing with? And then he's like, yes, it is people. And you're like, why is it? Why are you framing this as Star Wars? Mm -hmm. I'm just like the conclusion. We must ban. <laughs> like, oh no. Almost no empathy in it. No, I you're I you're not entitled to my fucking empathy. Like you get you get the basics, like human rights, right? You know stuff like that. But after that, I don't know. I feel like you gotta earn the rest. You yeah, have to work a little harder. It's kind of like apologies. You don't throw it out haphazardly. Like someone goes, "Man, I was eating my chocolate bar pieces today, and one of them fell on the floor, and I can't quite reach it." You're like, "Oh." Empathy doesn't <laughs> mean that I just just roll over and let you win the argument. So, Empathy get... doesn't mean that I let you win. He's got one of those little grabby arms, and it, it keeps slipping out of the arm when he grabs the chocolate bar piece. It's like, this is horrifying. And you're like, oh. I mean, I guess his thesis is that the Star Wars fandom is now just full of harassers, but yeah. I just don't buy that thesis. Like, I think that thesis is fundamentally flawed. He's I mean, just he assuming did... that because people wow. passionately dislike the movie, that the, the fandom is now hostile to women and minorities. Well, the problem is there's, there's no way that he could ever... Like, has he done a study where he's talked to every single person in the world who's like Star Wars and then gone through their entire backlog of their online activity and then compiled it to figure out exactly how many are participating in this? Or is he just like, is this what he's seen and what he thinks is happening? And so he's projecting it again to a broader scale. There's no... Like, wouldn't it be wouldn't it be simpler to assume that most people aren't engaging in these online discussions at all, like the people who like Star Wars as a series? Yeah. I mean, and like the people he's mad at, like the people who are harassing what a lot of these people, even if they are being harassers, they're not part of your fandom, man. Like I rip on Star Wars, I don't consider myself a part of the Star Wars fandom. Me neither. So, so yeah, whatever yeah. harassment you're seeing, you can't say, well, the fandom is fractured. It's like, I, I, these might just be movie critics, man, or just people who don't like shitty movies. Well, that's what I, I mean. I don't know, um, there's, there's the lumping aspect. Because I've been, we've been lumped in with the people who harass the, the actors a lot over the years. Like, it, it just keeps One of their happening. their go-tos. And like, when, cool. when, as fans do, they're like, point to a time where Mulder or Rags has, has advocated for harassing actors. It's like, it doesn't matter whether or not they say to do it. It's that their attitude towards the franchise encourages people to do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And at that point, the you, worst. yeah, you've lost the no matter worst. what. You're done at that point. That argument is I'm fucking just, foolproof. Yeah, I'm, I'm just losing my mind. Like, how do you tie your whole identity? First of all, you've tied your identity up in a consumer product, which was the stupidest thing to do in the world. I understand liking Star Wars and wanting to hang out with other Star Wars fans, but but the idea that you need to exist in this weird uh, uh, homogenous bubble. Where everybody within that fandom shares, the, I don't know, the same opinions and views and whatever else on it, it it's insane. And the, and the way he's categorizing this, like, uh, are people at these Star Wars conventions and like a black guy walks in and they go, "Hey, get out of here! We're all a bunch of racist psychopaths now." Like, I what fandom is this guy participating in that that is ruled by harassment? Yeah, all of them. This video is terrible. <laughs> yeah, this one's tiring. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Oh, God. Oh, here we go. Canto shite. <laughs> oh, really? We're doing... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Obi-Wan was okay. talking about Twitter, and he was right. Like I said, this is a video about empathy, and empathy is very hard to come by these days. Because... Did he ever define empathy in this video? Um, be nice to people. Well, like, like Star Wars is empathy. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's kind of the vibe I get. Is like, agree with me. Tell me I'm correct. That's I empathy. Just, again, 
You know when Patrick Williams shot on the, the Rise of Skywalker? Because that happened after this. I wonder if he would be like, Patrick, have some empathy. Like, what are you doing? I just... Because... I can't help but feel as though that you're allowed to shit on some stuff and you're not allowed to shit on other stuff. Well, that's the thing. is like I keep thinking, I'm like, if any of us were making videos about how much the Transformers franchise sucks, no this guy would not fuck. be going... Think well, of the yeah. children, my um, god. You're ruining the fandom for these children. The, uh, what are those, like, the, the weird Netflix, like, romance movies that a lot of people, like, the, uh, Tall Girl Kissing Booth? Those, those are two. Um, does anyone defend those movies? <laughs> does anyone say, you know, the Tall Girl, uh, fandom, torted pieces? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, because they've been pre-approved to be hated on. We're allowed to do that with those ones. And the people who like them, they're smart enough to know to just shut the fuck up and like it <laughs> quietly. <laughs> There's like one fan who's like, yeah, it's shit, it's totally shit. Ooh. Oh yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> I sure hope they make a sequel so we can laugh at it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think Vito nailed it with like the uh, the they're tying up their identity in this thing, and they shouldn't be doing that. They they right. see an attack on the movie, they interpret it as attack on themselves. And I have a problem with people who do the same thing with like debating something. Like I, I get like if people are not in the mood to debate something, right? I mean, you got something you got to be in the mood for. But to be afraid of a debate because you're afraid that you're going to lose and look stupid, I think that's a reason a lot of people avoid debating things and it's like i think that's totally the wrong way of looking at debates you know and i mean you should be taking your ego your identity out of it and just you're there to pursue the truth right and you 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 find it somewhere in the middle or or maybe you're totally wrong or maybe the other person's totally wrong but you find that out right and, the, yeah. and the, when you avoid that and you instead attack the very idea of debate itself right that that's i have no i have no patience for that it's dumb because the internet has broken us. <laughs> Internet's broken us. Um, no, you sound that, pretty broken. That is a very. But I'm all right. ooh, that is. Oh, that's quite a revealing thing. Like that's that's pretty simplistic. Like you could extract. Is he implying that like humanity as a as a species has been like broken I mean, like, by the internet? First or, off, uh, speak for your fucking self. <laughs> I have a great time on yeah. the internet. I know you sound broken, but I'm having a gay old time. It's Why great. <laughs> He keeps doing it though every time. I'm I'm shocked still that he pulls out these stupid statements. I'm just like, oh Jesus, here we go again. The internet has broken us. Like, oh no. The music. When I would talk to killing me. To another Star Wars fan at much. a convention or comic shop, if we disagreed on something, it wasn't a big deal because before that disagreement, yeah, then y'all kept calling me a fucking Nazi because I didn't like a Star Wars movie and <laughs> bumped it up to the next fucking level. Also, so, I reject this idea that like fans who would defend an attack like aggressively only existed fucking recently. That's bullshit. Yeah, like I never called someone like, the idea that. People who hated, the, I guess, what was the re, what was the prequel version? Like, if you didn't like the Phantom Menace, you hated. Who did you hate? I don't know. They they must. I don't know. I think is that this Children. gets escalated because I don't make hers. Maybe I do against people like this, but it's not for like if if all I have in total isolation is that someone likes the Last Jedi or likes the Rise of Skywalker. I'm just like I need more. Give me more. It's like I don't. It's, it's like, I, I need more. Why do they like it? You know. Right. It, what do they think of the people who don't like it? What What do they say about this? That I, I need more. But constantly, over and over, what do we get? You guys are Nazis, sexist, misogynist, homophobe. Blah 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 blah. We hate women, all that stuff. <laughs> and that elevates this to the next level. And then it gets more heated, and then it gets more <clears throat> serious. And I'm like, well, guys, if you just wanted to talk about the movie, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. just, it's, it's all over the place, but of course it's, uh... He thinks he's doing the big brain view, when I would go as far as saying it's like, oh, it's very narrow, so. This is the pea brain view. Very narrow. Yeah. <laughs> Your mutual love of Star Wars, and you knew that was another living, breathing human being standing in front of you with their own tastes and That's opinions and experiences. You had 
actual context. Actual. Oh, because it's online as, now. As it's all fucking. To what context? Actual as opposed to what? Well, because, I don't need so... to have a flesh and blood person next to me to get context. No, you do because so when I say on Twitter or in a DM, this is what I really liked about the movie. You're like, ugh, disgusting text robot. But in person, when I say it, you're like, oh my god, I can see in your eyes that you fully I believe rather. it. I can see your heart. You're real. I know you. And then you kiss. And it's like, oh, that's sweet. <laughs> so, yeah, just educating you there. You probably didn't know that. I had no idea. <laughs> and I think that's one of the main factors in this division of the fandom. The internet lacks that context. If you see a tweet you disagree with pop up on your timeline, you don't see a living, breathing human being. You see a 50 by 50 pixel profile pic, a username. And I was fucking joking. <laughs> I was joking. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. He's serious. All right. Oh God. The old Waller. Uh, hmm. All right. Fucking wow. joking. And an opinion that is in total opposition with what you believe. In your mind, that is the entirety of that person. No other content. No, don't tell me what I fucking think, you shit. <laughs> 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 and when you hate everything you know about a person, when the internet boils people down to I a don't. name, a face, and an opinion, it makes people what, very what, what, easy uh, to hate. Is, what what are people if not names and faces and opinions, like in the real world too? <laughs> I, mean, <yeah. laughs> I like, you're listing these things off and I'm like, I'm running out of things that are left. <laughs> yeah. You just see eyes, noses, uh, hands, feet. Yeah, I know, you've named it. Anyway. Yeah, that, that fleshy bit. Right in the middle there. Oh. This kind of reminds me of this shit I, shit I used to read on Facebook where people would draw comics about like their mental illnesses or whatever, where they would just be like, depression is like this. It's like living in a bubble. And this is why I don't talk to people at parties oh, and blah, nice blah, blah. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, okay you pussy. God, sometimes you just need to fucking like nut up and talk to somebody, try and socialize and have a good time. Like fucking hell. Just. Mm hmm. Just constantly trying to convince the world, like, I have a problem and I'm going to shut myself in this little bubble forever and just please, please be understanding. I it's, definitely uh, feel there... like there is, a, there is a market for the, like, I'm neurotic, you know, type of comedy. Like, haha, I'm neurotic. Like, that seems to be a very <laughs> common thing. An odd know? romanticization of mental illness. Of, of and... negative traits, like, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. And they don't do themselves any favors, you know? It's like, okay cool you want to keep yourself sealed in this coffin of misery <laughs> like what well, yeah you're not going to make any effort yeah. to get yourself out of it and like well if i'm happy and successful then people won't feel pity for me <laughs> yeah to hate it makes entire groups of people very easy to hate what you mean like what you've done like in this video this video has only made me hate one person <laughs> <laughs> it's people, isn't it? it is a very, very <laughs> focused beam of hatred. All right, it's it's not it, it's not entire groups of people. Is disagree with you, which is why we need to actively remind ourselves of that context. What context? Are you kidding me? Is that mean, the lesson in this video? We need to mean? remember that the people who say stuff are human. Is this Last of Us Two? Yeah, it's like the person who calls me a Nazi for not liking Rose Tico. Like, I don't care if it's a dude and he's got a son with cerebral palsy. He's like, I don't just, I don't fucking care. That guy's an asshole. Pretty simple, yeah. There is a human being behind that tweet with their own feelings and passions and traumas and history. There's a hundred things that human being loves that you love too. This, re this reminds and me of when I you kill. Fan, oh I shit, sorry, I did the volume kid. thing because this oh, is no. I oh, oh, no. It happens all the oh, time because the UI is fucking worth it. But I, I was going to say, like, this reminds me of when you kill an NPC in The Last of Us 2 and they go, like, oh no, Amber. And they try to give you this faux sense of that. You're like, yeah, I, I know that, that person likes things. I'm aware that people like things. You don't need to remind me that people like things. Well, and similarly Please. to the argument we often use to counter that shit, I'd be like, the reason we find it annoying in the first place is that it came from a person, not that it came from a robot. Why would I care if it came from a robot? Yeah. But no, the truth is we forgot what it was to rec recognize humans in, in the... Ugh.
and history. <laughs> There's a hundred things that human being loves that you love too. So just remember, when you see some... Okay, so someone who calls me a Nazi for not liking Rose Tico, right? We could both like cheesecake, which is actually pie. We could both like that, but it doesn't matter. Like, some of the things we like are pretty inconsequential, but that one thing that they do kind of overrides all that other stuff. Um, you know? Yeah, for, for uh, ch cheesecake is a pie. You want to you wanna help me out there? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, a, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's surrounded by crust and it has a filling. Um, but how, how does that make it a pie? That's what a pie is. A pie is is a filling surrounded by crust. So is oh, basically pizza, yeah. Like is a pizza. A well, yeah, pizza has crust. Too? Yeah, so it's, it's the crust pie. is the big part. Yeah, that's why yeah, they're called pizza pie. pies. Yeah. Never heard of that. Yeah, that's I've, why they're called no, pizza pies. Um, all right, you haven't so, really. You really haven't heard of pizza I pie? I, I I don't know. So th this is it says a pie is a baked dish of fruit or meat and vegetables, typically with a top and a base of pastry, which is a pizza. And the yeah, cheese. Uh, no, because the pizza has a bottom of pastry, but it, the top and being the crust, the, the layer above the. That's the top. There's nothing about a crust here. It says the bottom and the top with a uh, pastry. That's, I mean, that's technically, a pizza is a flatbread, but pizza pie is a very common term. Okay. I think it's one of those loosely defined ideas. Pizza <laughs> pie that goes back from it goes back to like the long, long, long time ago. Oh, yeah. It was called pizza yeah. pie. And a cheesecake, huh. it has surrounded by the crust, it has crust on the bottom, and it's filled with, you know, the cheesecake portion. I am actually fascinated that you've never heard of the term pizza pie. What country maybe, are you maybe, in? Maybe, uh, maybe I have heard of it, and I'm just not, I don't know, maybe my brain. Like we have, me. like over here, we have American pie pizza and damn good pies and all sorts well, of stuff. Well, I think part of the problem is, uh, like, for example, in Australia, the main type of pie is a meat pie, like a pie that's got beef in it. We, we don't really, yeah, but, like, Dessert pies are not really, and so when you say cheesecake, to me it's like a total disconnect because the only pie I know of that's like well, even a, a meat pie is, is surrounded pie. by crust. It's not that it's surrounded by crust though; it's that the top and the bottom is pastry. It's like in it's encased in pastry. That's like what a pie mm. is. Is a burrito a pie? What because oh, what well, being encased in pastry. Um. Because I don't think be that, that I, I wouldn't say the top has to have pastry on it. Well, yeah, but that the definition of a pie was um with topped with pastry. Okay, so it says with uh, a de a de so a definition of a pie on Merriam-Webster is um Webster Webster a dessert consisting of a filling uh, in a pastry shell or topped with pastry or both. So maybe it includes both and neither at the same time. Then, yeah, I feel like it's. It's like a um on fine well, cooking. Uh, well, it says that a cheesecake is indeed a pie because well, it. This is, okay, right. It, so huh. so it says it can be a cake, but it can't not be a pie. I see what you mean. Right. Because okay, crust filling, yeah. You know, that those are the integral aspects of it. Okay, I didn't know that. Oh, the more you learn, EFAP is a very educational podcast. Oh yeah. So I would say that even a tart is a pie. I figured a tart would be a pie. That kind of yeah. makes sense to me. Yeah, a tart would be a pie. Oh, and if a tart is a pie, then a cheesecake is a pie. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah. Okay. And a cheesecake would, would be a tart, essentially. So the right. top well, basically means that you pie. could call it a cake. Yeah, however, it would okay, always so be a pie either way. Really, it's all about subdividing, right? And the crossover. So, like, if pie is the overarching category, then you break it down into different things that are ultimately a pie, and maybe there's a bit of an overlap, right? Like a cheesecake is a cake while also being a pie. Yeah, it it can be a cake, but it has to at least be a pie. I see. Right. Cool. Anything with a crust, it seems it would be. Yes, yeah, like a cake. Well. Like a cake does not have to have a crust at all, and it could still be. A, it's still totally fine with being. A, uh, it doesn't even have to. It doesn't even have to be lined at the bottom with a crust or have crust on the sides. And it's normally iced on the top, so... I see, okay. But if you were to put... If you wanted to put cake filling into a crust, as if you would a normal pie, then it would, I guess, become pie. Well, it, I guess it's... Uh, you know, like, pie. imagine you, you got a pie, for instance, a meat pie like we got here, and then you had some mech... Like, some contraption that you could use to suck out the meat contents, 
and then maybe you've got like a pie uh, not a pie a cake like even a you know chocolate cake mixed up in a bowl and then you inject it into the pie it's now just a chocolate pie cake i guess but this is why a brownie would be a cake because a brownie the the quote-unquote crust of the brownie is really just the exact same material that's just at the edge of the pan so it hardens it's well, not I think actually the whole crust. Idea is, um, that so there is a difference between the exterior of the uh, food and the interior. Like a pie, the the outside is not the same as the inside. You know. Yeah, it has to be a, a, a distinct layer. Yeah, it, it's its own material, its own crust material. The crust right. needs to be laid. I, I think the crust needs to be laid down, and then toppings placed atop it. Yeah, like you, it the bottom is mandatory basically because you have to be yeah, able to yeah. like transport it like in slices. <laughs> well, how, yeah, it yeah. how do you uh, pick it up and eat it if there's no bottom? Yeah, the because if there's no bottom, it's basically soup with a crust. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine a pie with no base? A pie with no bottom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, shall we get back to the video? Oh, uh, I mean, it's <laughs> really uh, a you know, I'm yeah. I think this it's prejudice a- against pies to assume that they all need a crust. It I is. think uh, yeah. you need to check your privilege. And harassment. <laughs> pie harassment. It's disgusting. Yeah. You are a pie racist, sir. <laughs> something you don't like, or someone who doesn't like something that you like, that's... If, I think, I feel, I feel if a pie had a voice, it would sound like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you gotta. I think you gotta make a different. You know, there's a difference between, for example, a Ned Kelly pie would probably have a really cool sounding voice as opposed to I don't know, like a yeah. I guess there's pie. many types of pie. Okay, he's like a Jello then. <laughs> a Jello pie. Yeah, Jello are very wobbly and trembly. Yeah, you know, I can see it. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, you can make a Jello pie, but and he's just he's situated on the edge of the yeah, like, could, table, yeah. perpetually terrified of falling off the table. Someone who likes something you don't like, or someone who doesn't like something that you like, that's another human being. So maybe treat them like- Okay, no, I'm not obliged to agree with their shitty Star Wars opinions because they're a human, alright? Like, if it's my- if it's my mom or my dad or a friend of mine, like, I'll treat- they'll be like, okay, it's like, you like his chicken- that's- you're great, we're cool, it's all good. It's a stranger on the internet, I'm like, I just don't care. What is the theme? It just seems like this video is be nice to people on the internet. It's got nothing to do with... No, it's be nice to me. Actually, I I do think that's a fair point, by the way. This does have actually nothing to do with Star Wars, if you take his point to be what it seems to be. Right, Which is be nice. People, whatever, okay, what does it have to do with the dark side of the Force? Shut up. God. Well, it's because he's highlighting it, the Star Wars fan has fallen apart, and now he's extrapolated into, it's the internet that did this. It's like, wait... So surely it's affected everybody, in which case it's not just the Star Wars fandom, in which case, why isn't your video called, guys, be nice? Oh my god, he's actually so stunted that he's unable to uh, interpret anything except through Star Wars. <laughs> That's the lens <laughs> in which he sees I the world. I didn't realize that. I'm like, oh no, he like literally cannot contextualize any event unless there's a lightsaber involved. Oh my god. Poor man. Bilge. Um, Unless they're a bot. Let's see. Mahler sent you a note. Give. Hmm. A note on the on the Discord. I haven't sent you anything. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I guess now. Now he. Someone sent me something that you sent him. But now we're discussing it ambiguously. But I know what you mean. So we're good. And now I'm winking. But you can't see me because of my glasses. So I'm letting you know that I'm winking about the thing that you told him that there's, he told me that you There's told like him. a vague reflection in the glasses. I can just make it out on one eye. I think I got it. Did you get a dick pic? Oh, yeah. part five. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, wow. Part, what <laughs> is know. that? Part... <laughs> well, I'm, part yeah, fire? Part upside, fire? Well, it's more like... Oh, quite, part tire. Uh, <laughs> it's more like ort fire. Yeah. Oh, now that you've said it, I can't not see it. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> it's autistic. You guys hate it because you're not abstract. That's a terrible F. Yeah, like, oh, you know. no. No. Oh, no, yeah. No, I actually have the sudden need, or sudden urge to urinate, so I will be back. He used the thing. He did the quote. Oh, no. 
suburbs to throw up in my mouth. The music's suitable, though. It sounds tragic and failing. Yeah. You know? I like how he's got a full stop behind part five. <laughs> it's not a sentence, really. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's categorical. We have not. infinitely more in common with each other as Star Wars fans than we don't. Um. I'm not sure that I. No. Can... no. What? No, Star Wars shouldn't be that big of a fraction of your life. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't like the implication that saving what you love never involves fighting. That just seems ridiculous. Wow. That's why it's such a terrible quote. Well, <laughs> like, yeah. So what they would say is best faith interpretation is only fight in order to save what you love rather than kill what you hate sort of shit. Hmm. Which is, but it's, it, this is what I mean. The, the sentiment, it's all about execution and they couldn't have delivered it in a more comical way in The Last Jedi. Well, the fact that right. she didn't blow both of them up is hilarious. It's all hilarious, dude. Just... The resi yeah. I, we needed all of the resistance melting and screaming in the background as she said it. That's the only way to make it just that much better. <laughs> I mean, that's what I pictured in my head. I'm like, so so they all die, right? Because <laughs> it's just, it's just such a fun, it? fun series to watch. It it takes you across to all new worlds and you <sighs> There's see a fucking Christ. shit ton of IPs that do this. <laughs> shit ton of IPs that do this. See these fantastic set pieces and it's just... And it's just quick, it's witty. It's got a really fleshed out universe with a diverse cast that anybody, like, there's people that you can gravitate to regardless of what kind of content you like, and then you can talk to other people about that. There are these- You could, you could literally have been oh, describing like one of a thousand yeah. IPs there. I'm about to say the same thing. He literally just said, you can discuss Star Wars. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. And there's there's something Four. for mostly everyone. And you're like, yeah, you yeah. can you can say that about pretty much everything. <sighs> Such a ringing endorsement. These intense, epic, fun, imaginative stories. In, there's something in there for everyone, no matter what you're into. I think this can be summed up in an experience that I had on opening night of watching The Force Awakens in theaters and there was a little kid wearing a Kylo Ren shirt and uh, about a 30 year old guy wearing like a worn out Star Wars shirt, something like that. And I remember he knelt down and looked at his son and said, what do you think about the movie? And the kid was like, I loved it. And the dad went, you know, I loved it too. And they just hugged each other, right? <laughs> it's like a green text or something. <laughs> <laughs> they just hugged. Everything was great. Also, he is pointing again. He released his hands from the clasp. So. <laughs> he seemed pretty restrained with his hand movements. Yeah. I think they were all reasonable. No, they are. They're much less pointy than they, they were before. I don't yeah. know if this is before or after then, but still. Right there in the lobby of the theater, and that really meant something to me. At the end of the day, we're all Star Wars fans, and whether we like the prequels, or we don't like the prequels, or we like the sequels, or we don't like the sequels, or whatever. Oh shit, there you go, Theo said, and everyone collapsed. That was all that was missing from that story. <laughs> We're all fans of Star Wars, and we should all be able to discuss the things that we both like, and we share common interests in, and the things we don't like, we should be able to talk about them in a civilized manner as part of one fandom. Whether your first experience was the original trilogy, or the prequels, or the new films, we've all experienced something no one else can even begin to imagine. Um, what? Really? What is That's happening? That's a little bit melodramatic. What is he referring to? Is he saying like Star Wars is like that unique of an experience that like humanity is unaware of it to like a daunting and tragic degree if they haven't watched it? I'm, not sure I'm what so he means. confused. Chill the fuck out. I'm gonna. I'm gonna Watching play it again. Watching a movie cause... is not that deep an experience, man. Like, yeah, it's a good movie, but you have not you have not touched the face of God. Calm down. I mean, I don't know. I'm getting the impression. We'd all be able to discuss the things that we both like and we share common interests in, and the things we don't like, we should be able to talk about them in a civilized manner as part of one fandom. Whether your first experience was the original trilogy or the prequels or the new films, we've all experienced something no one else can even begin to imagine. The experience of <laughs> that, being That's actually, that kind of pissed me off, actually. It's pretty I mean, reductionist, yeah. like, towards other films and just stories in general, like, as if, uh, like, frankly, 
Saving Private Ryan hits me in the feels more than any Star Wars film has. Shawshank hits me in the feels more than any Star Wars movie has. Yeah. Um, Look, Star Wars I, is awesome, I, but holy fuck. But yeah, Lord of the Rings. If you had said like I, we've more. experienced something deep and meaningful, I'd be like, yeah. But when yeah, you say one we've thing. experienced something no one else <laughs> will ever experience in the history of the world, like you. I am dying. What is wrong with this man? Does is he like Someone doing it in a way that's like up. it's a specific kind of experience or something? Like, because it just comes across as he's actually being like, us Star Wars fans, we got something other people don't. You're like, what the fuck? This guy is so insane. I picture him with a child tied to a chair as he's explaining this to him. We have experienced something no one else ever will. <laughs> what are you doing? Hey, you know who that kid grows up to be? Albert Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, and then he travels through time and kills Hitler. Think about that. <laughs> what was the quote? We Star Wars fans have experienced something that, like everyone else doesn't, or no one else ever will. What? What? what, what? I'm gonna get this. You do it down. again. I. It's terrible. All right. Experience was the original trilogy or the prequels or the new films we've all experienced something no one else can even begin to imagine bullshit the okay oh well, you back rags we're dealing with this comment it's Listen, it's a it's a wondrous one this is such horseshit like we, we can't imagine it we can't even imagine chances are you felt extremely close to the exact same emotion so i'm pretty sure i can't imagine it I think after I'm not I'm not 30, right? But in under 30 years, I felt a lot of emotions and a lot of different, you know, on the spectrum. Here, you know, kind of not proclaiming that I've experienced it all. Human but I feel like this guy good. and me, I feel like we're kind of you know experienced a lot. Kindred so, spirits, uh, like no one could possibly imagine what I feel when I watch Star Wars, it's like, okay, you're not, you're not some special fucking snowflake and you feel magically different than everybody else who's ever existed. Calm, calm down. You're watching a movie. I mean, Come how on. many times have we told him to calm down this whole fucking thing? <laughs> it's like the theme. You need to I think to that's chill. ego talking, you know? It's like, I, enjoy, I understood Star Wars better than you. That's why I liked it more kind of thing. And you'll never be able to fathom the experience of everybody wearing a Stormtrooper helmet and talking about Ewoks. Like, yeah, I, I yeah. can probably... It's like, I've hung out with nerds before. I get it. <laughs> that's like that's like you brush them off. You're like, okay, I get it. You're a nerd. That's fine. That's great. I know you're new to yeah. this, but yeah. And maybe one day you'll feel the... In it's like... When it, let's say you like the the best orgasm you've ever had, right? Fucking un nothing else in your life can quite compare to that in the same way. And then you're like, man, like a lot of people have probably felt this exact same thing. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, no. Porn got Star better for me after I had sex. Star is Wars. <laughs> Star Wars is an experience that only the Star Wars fans can really even talk about. Cause whoa. You know those those lame Halo fans? They don't know what they're missing. Those, <laughs> those Star Trek fans? Yeah, go sit, go go talk about your little Prime Directive. How cute. Star Wars, though. Pew Somebody pew, motherfucker. Like, this dude has never had sex with a woman because he would not be talking like this otherwise. This guy? Oh hell no! It doesn't yeah. matter how well, special you think that feeling is. Somebody out there has also hilted an unflared chance large size. Is you're not special. You're not I mean, special. All right, just get over it. He is kind of special. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, maybe in one, maybe in one way, he is. Maybe, maybe in some sense. The experience of being in that galaxy, far, far away. We know the exhilaration of flying a starfighter. The no, we don't. sounds no, you of don't. a cantina in Mos Eisley. Yeah, 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 that. yeah. The terror of being in a room with Darth Vader. No, Mater, I don't think so. The power of the Force. We've lived. No, okay. Again, Stop. calm down. Stop. Calm the fuck. You don't know what it's like to fly around in a starfighter. The second one was good. <laughs> Hearing the sounds of a cantina. Yes, that's something a movie can give you. Yes, I. Yeah, totally on the same page. And the third one was the terror of being in a room with Darth Vader. No, no, no. Calm down. <laughs> we 
chillax, bro. He makes okay. it sound like a Star Wars fan has a magic portal that lets them actually travel to the Star Wars universe. Like, dude, cal- come on. You don't understand. It's the magic of Star Wars. <laughs> I've experienced being inside of an X-Wing, and it was a thrilling experience that no one else will ever understand. <laughs> it really does feel like a kid who's felt this the first time and can't fathom the concept that you're not the first person who's ever existed and thought things. Right, yeah. No perspective. No perspective. Vox has just uh, sent this along, and I feel like it's quite excellent in terms of summing up what's happening here. Yeah, basically. There is a kind of religious sort of quality to it. Totally. Oh, it's just it's just a feel. You'll you'll know it when you feel it. You know, it's very very wishy washy, ambiguous. I like the too. employees into ambassadors. So, like, yeah, the the brand products customers into fanatic. It's all very um. Again, calm down. I don't know how many times I have to say yeah. it. The title of this video should be an appeal to emotion. An appeal to, <laughs> yeah, that's uh yeah. Well, I look at the title now, just because you mentioned title, and I'm like, you, you're storing balance. He's going to have to tell us what restoring balance means, because I think he means everyone agreeing with me is balance. Dude, but, an look at what we're posed on. Like, he seems to believe that there was some point at which the Star Wars fandom was this uh, united hive mind. And I hate to say it, yeah. he was probably like 10 or 11 at the time he believed this. I am sure this has never been the case. Like, well, nothing I think the change about the Star Wars fandom. I think the difference is that it's where we are in the timeline is we are in a place where the last movies to come out were when we were really, really young and we couldn't have this sort of discussion debate thing going on. And then we have the advent of the internet and it rises, gets to its popularity now. Then we have a new Star Wars trilogy comes out that people can attach themselves to. So it's kind of all those things meshing Mm-hmm. Look at this screenshot. Yoda saying the, we the, the, this. We lived this. The, we, <laughs> that's a, what is that's just what not are you doing? True. Does he like <sighs> you need to calm down? You watched it on a screen. <laughs> He's a puppet. I don't like to be the one He's to break this to you. <laughs> <laughs> and like the force, it binds us together. And the fact that our hatred and anger is making it so much harder for new generations to live these experiences. Bullshit. I don't, don't, bullshit. Quit this appealing to kid thing. You want kids to get beat up because it's more like being a Jedi. So don't you dare I, appeal to children when you're okay the, with them getting their asses kicked. The fucking idea that parents are like, hey, want to check out? Because I'll give this to the sequel films. There's plenty of kids will watch them and love them, whatever, whatever. Kids, parents are showing them, like, oh my god, I love this shit, I'm gonna dress up as Ray. I'm gonna talk to my friends about it, I'm just gonna pop on Twitter quick, one sec. Oh my god, everyone's so mean. No, fuck this, I'm not into Star Wars, bye. Like, this isn't happening. Bullshit. I, I don't believe it. What was his reference for children not wanting to play with Star Wars anymore because of mean people like us? Well, I think it's, well, they're not buying the toys, so I, who knows what they're doing. Maybe, maybe Star Wars sucks. Yeah, maybe the <laughs> maybe a thing sucks. Maybe the thing that you thought in your 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 naive youth is the best thing ever. Maybe it's not so great anymore. Because I cringe when I look back to my my little tiny child mind and all the things that I used to think were super cool. I don't anymore. Because I've grown. Feel that same life changing inspiration is absolutely heartbreaking fuck to off me. oh my god <laughs> we need to end this video because i'm going to kill myself i'm going to, <laughs> no, he keeps, to kill myself he keeps I doing this listen to this motherfucker in his fucking piano music talking about how <laughs> star wars is some fucking god-given gift to the entire fucking world i'm going to kill myself piano <laughs> it's unbearable <laughs> he's gonna do the old Vito delito don't make him do it no <laughs> i'm I can't handle any another minute of this motherfucker <laughs> talking about how he's experienced the deepest fucking depths of human emotion because he watched a guy fly an X-wing and the, <laughs> the other guy put his fucking hand up uh, fucking Yoda's ass. Look, fucking get over it, man. Go get some outside, perspective. Fuck a girl. Just, just live a life. Jesus <laughs> Lord. Look, look you, your what you just said was. 
absolutely heartbreaking. Yeah, I'm part of I'm part of the fucking harassment and I'm ruining the Star Wars community. Good. I want to ruin the Star Wars community so people like this are forced to go live in the real fucking <laughs> world. Just like at this point, this man has made the greatest possible argument for taking the Star Wars fandom and shattering it into a million pieces because it is producing complete psychopaths like this moron. This is horrifying. This reminds me of when Destroy Matt Jarbo oh. cried when he got his um his yes. YouTube award, and there's no way he cried at the birth of his son. It, al it, also, it, makes me, <laughs> it makes me feel like this is the kind of guy who brought like a, y a Yoda puppet to university with him just to look after him. Like he was like, "Did I do good, master?" And he's like, "Ho ho ho! Yes, you did." But all the other kids are like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. Me. So. I'm done with the hatred. I'm done with the arguing. <laughs> you're not, you're not tough the enough to hate. You can't hate. You're not man enough to hate things. I don't even... He wouldn't touch you hate with the pole. a pole. He's like, oh god, the hate, that slimy, sticky goo. No, hatred This bad. man could never play the hate piano like I can. Oh no. That's a talent right there. He couldn't play chopsticks on hate. <laughs> <laughs> I think if he was done, he wouldn't be making this video. I think he'd be off doing something. Could, well, I mean, it wouldn't take more us long. To expand all the definitions he's already expanded to include his video in the hatred cycle, right? Oh, yeah. Like, dude, this is perpetuating hatred. This is sending people our way, being like, you guys should learn to be nice, or we'll kill you. <laughs> like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Ground. I'm going to be proud of my love of Star Wars again. I'm going to... Proud of loving Star Wars? That's weird. If you like violence, I'm gonna kick your ass. What if I was like, you're proud of loving Star Wars, and I play clips of the younglings getting killed? I'm like, you disgusting person. You shouldn't love this. <laughs> I feel like it's weird to be proud of liking an IP. I don't know about that. Like, what, what exactly? Why are we talking about being prideful of it rather than just, uh, I guess, celebrating it? Yeah, how? Okay, so when the youngling said, Master Skywalker, there's too many of them. I'm like, you're younglings. If there was one of them, that would be too many of them. That was such a weird moment in Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrate it, and I'm going to accept that I don't own Star Wars. Nobody ever thought you did. Thank even God. Here. You never did. You're not Disney. You don't own it. Like, I, I, since the beginning of him bringing this shit up, it's always felt like he was never talking about himself. He's always talking about the people he thinks who are like, Luke should have been more like himself. He's like, well, you don't own Star Wars, so you can't do that. Okay. And if Star Wars stops being for me someday, then I'll accept that and appreciate the fucking music, dude. Yes! It needs a mass amount of Star Wars films and books and stupidly expensive Lego sets that I still have and will always is... have. So when you grow, when you turn like, I don't know, 90. Well, I was going to say like next year when you turn like 18 or whatever. It's like, I, you're, you're not going to have, I remember all my Lego stuff. I loved them. I cherished them. And now some other kid out there is having a blast with them. It's really fucking heartwarming Toy Story shit. All right. Mm -hmm. And then I moved on. You're not going to have that stuff forever. You know, maybe save one, and so when you when you are ninety, you're like, oh yes, I remember fucking Legos, just stuff. I was like, all right, yeah. you'll move on. Dude, don't worry. It be really don't, funny. don't attach yourself to toys. I, I remember when I was twelve and I did that. It's all right. It'd be really funny yeah. to show this guy in his nineties this video. Like you made this, by the way. One day you'll be an adult and you'll attach yourself to graphics cards like a normal person. Yeah. <laughs> you should aspire to be something. We used to make art, create. <laughs> something of meaning and now we're the guys like this are sitting down and this is what they make they cry this is how they find they their humanity let this them is cry this is a oh. human tragedy and whether or not people don't want to grow up Jedi, it's, it's sad i, I don't want to grow up i'm a do toys the same risk kid because that fandom that was a force for good Piano is music dying. seems more intense now yeah. and loud. Yeah. The fandom that was a force for good is dying. That's what he just said. Oh, um... I'm so sorry. Alright, rip. Uh, 
What do you what do you do with this stuff? The only way to save it is to stop fighting what we hate oh, and start no, saving No, I hate we love. terrible movies. No, 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 I'll fight no, no, no. I will fight against ah! terrible movies. It's so painful. Hate... Stop using that. This is the dumbest moment. line maybe in all of cinema, maybe. <laughs> An argument could be made, especially with the visual that comes along with it, you know, the sexual assault, the rebels being destroyed in the background. But man, uh no. This ain't it, Chief. This ain't it. Chat of just knowing. <laughs> I'm just no. dead inside. I feel nothing anymore. I feel mm -hmm. nothing. When when he's appealing to this as the lesson of today, it's like, oh no. Love. It's our only hope. Shut up. And yes, I know a lot of you think that Rose line is the worst line in the entire series. Correct. Let's explore I mean, why. It, it really is. Yeah, yeah. it could be. <laughs> like, like I said, in isolation, I think we can do stuff with it in terms of like what, the sentiment behind it. But in context, it's one of the most embarrassing deliveries of anything ever. I don't even know. It felt like they knew like, <laughs> when they did it. They were like, this is pretty funny. Isn't it? <laughs> it's completely the opposite of what's happening in that scene. Yeah, it's hilarious. Finn right. proposes to attack a machine. Finn, Finn proposes to almost, well, essentially kill himself to save a bunch of people. She stops him, and then they all get blasted with a laser, and she says that line. It is baffling. Like, that, that line only makes sense if Finn's like, God, I hate the First Order and what they did to me, and he's motivated by hate. Yeah. But he's not. He's directly did... motivated by love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It feels so like they missed said, that. Like, yeah, bitch, I know. What did you fucking think I was doing? Get your get off of me. Everyone's dead now. And then the AT-AT -AT just fires one shot. They both explode into a flesh <laughs> fountain. And it's just like, well, that was good. Good job. I actually came across a very interesting quote from that $100 out-of-print paperback book about the making of Empire Strikes Back. The I'm interviewer sure read, asks, read, and what about the conflict read. between good and evil in the film? Oh, and Empire's direct. This is such pretentious horseshit. <laughs> right. <laughs> Dude, the focus cycling down on the page, the music yeah. playing, the the no, it is... see the the book was introduced earlier in the video. That means yeah. it's profound. <laughs> the reincorporation. Yeah, it was so beautiful. <laughs> the shittiest payoff ever. <laughs> oh, it sucks. Fuck Please hell. end. Just let it finish. Let's just get through it. Oh, so you can that man, actual end, God amongst it. humans says, well, for example, Princess Leia's rebel forces will not do anything in order to win. They will not sacrifice lives. They do not Whoa, descend no, that's what an to army the is. of the enemy. Yeah. That's what do you mean they won't do anything? They, won't they did sacrifice lives. 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 If people, that's... if you go out to battle and die, what is that if not that's a sacrifice a, of your life? That's basically a soldier's job distilled down yeah. to its most basic form. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I know the well, but like, the Empire shown is sacrificing their troops' lives. Is that a I mean, thing? But, but, but. But what about all the times yeah. in the movie where the rebels are shooting their guns? What? And they die in battle fighting against the evil empire. I'm and, confused. Yeah. Like, I wanna, I, can I, I just want to listen to him read this quote out because I am baffled right now. ...will not do anything in order to win. They will not sacrifice lives. They do not descend to the level of the enemy. That's, that's the wrong. difference. But that's wrong. That's just, that's wrong. Um, here's the thing. Sacrificing, sacrificing lives in order to achieve a greater objective is not exactly what I would describe as the worst thing ever. Also, isn't that and what besides, Luke, like, the life that you that choose TLJ? to sacrifice can be your own? Yep. People are referencing like the girl in the opening of TLJ, and then Holdo, and then Luke. Don't they and all Holdo, kill yeah. themselves? Yeah. I hate to say it again. Does this guy know that the movies are called Star Wars? As in a war. This bat yeah, is in it. Is. Yeah. People die. And if this is General from the book, then I'm sorry. sorry. This, is very, this is a stupid quote. I don't yeah, care if I'm, the director said this. This doesn't yeah, make sense. He directed the best Star Wars well, movie. He's clearly very, very talented in that field. Yep. This quote's dumb, and he's wrong for Assu saying yeah, it. Yeah, assuming we've got full context. Assuming what it means is Leia's forces will... Like, I don't, I don't know what to make of this shit. Yeah. Isn't the whole point of the fight on Hoth to give as much time as possible for the transports to escape? And also, in the Battle of Yavin 4, like, they knew that some of those guys weren't coming back. Some well, of them he, were meant to be dude, there. Dude, the more, so, the like, more apt he, one is Hoth, because he, he made this yeah. fucking movie. Hoth 
They need yeah. time to get the transports out so the ground war begins. A lot of those people died to gain time for the transports. That's what we might yeah. call a sacrifice. Maybe I mean, this isn't like a core theme. I, like, I, I, in, in Rogue One, don't they know that it's basically a suicide mission? Yeah, in fact, you're right. Yeah, in Rogue One, they do sacrifice people uh, overt, right. like, overtly. Right, it's not like this is Star Wars TLJ is principle. filled with this shit, the sacrifice shit. I don't understand. Yeah. What? Let's just finish. And the Empire. It's possible to fight because you love... Wait, we got it there. Oh, right? there is the quote. You... Okay, well, so... for example, Princess Leia's rebel forces will not do anything in order to... That's a weird sentence. Will not do anything in order to win. They won't do any action to win. What? Do you Here's mean the like thing. they won't do all, like, the worst... They won't okay. go to any possible length in order to yeah, win. I'm that's, sorry. That's not a good that's sentence. Not, that's not represented in Empire Strikes Back. I'm sorry. Hmm. They will there's not sacrifice a, um... lives. They sacrifice lives. But, but... So there's the there's the there's the quote like if, if we're talking about soldier quotes here that are more appropriate. There's the only one that goes uh, a soldier fight a good soldier fights not because he hates what's in front of him but because he loves what's behind him. Like that's a way better quote than that. These are all these cool Tico warfare, said. You know, yeah, I like some of them that were actually good. And... When you die, yeah, <laughs> some of them were really good. For me, it's not the quote is bad. It's that again, it doesn't fit the context of what's happening. Well, like no, you can right. say, what I'm realizing like, is, we need to know what he means. Unfortunately, because what if he mean, what if by sacrifice he means like literally chopping through your own men just to get to someone you want to kill or some shit like that? My like, my very right. charitable reading will be that they won't use the same tactics as the Empire, and they're not as willing to like throw away lives in the same way. Yeah, like way Vader will does. kill people who aren't functioning as well as they could, while Rebels would never do that. Yeah, they that, won't throw I'm a thousand. Being super right charitable. Problem. Yeah, being super. But charitable. What, what, what? That is a weird quote, though. Princess Leia's rebel forces will not do anything in order to win. So yeah. What, what do you mean? It's not a good sentence. When they went after the fucking Death Star, what was that exactly? I guess what he would mean is like they're not going to commit war crimes in order to win, right? That's you know. Yeah, I think it's interesting to think, you know, the space, the Coruscant conventions or whatever. It. Why can't we just have war with no casualties, you guys? <laughs> Why can't yeah. we just have a public space with no negativity? <laughs> <laughs> right, let's let's finish this video. Just because you hate. Huh. Are we done? Please say yes. Please just do your Patreon thing. Oh, he never even said what balance was. Can. Yeah, there we go. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're you. You're. I think you're a shitty person. Your video was terrible. <laughs> I hope I never hear from you again. Kill yourself. All right. Oh, let's move no. on to the next video. Oh, dude. I think we've we've hit our uh, our second part cap almost. There's no way we're stopping. Oh, well, so so now we get to read the Batman v Superman Chris Stuffman script, right? Please. Um. <laughs> I don't know if we should. We, you guys know how to tie a proper noose? Because I think I keep tying a Shankman's hitch over here. You know, I don't <laughs> think it has to be fancy. I don't know. Yeah. We, we've we've been cutting it really close. I don't know if it's worth uh saving it for the beginning of three. Uh, well, so what, what's the plan now, then? Well, because it's- we got 40 minutes of cap left. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, it's only two pages. <laughs> um, okay, give me a sec, let's see. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> it's too good! I can't... It's funny every time. <laughs> what does cap mean? What's- what's in 40 minutes? Uh, the stream oh, caps. The, the stream cap, yeah. Oh, is it like YouTube stops it at a certain time? Yeah, for some reason it only goes up to 11 hours and 55 minutes. <laughs> Fat I, did, only. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, I guess I've seen that before. Most yeah. don't. But here so, on EFAP. Did you oh, cut it earlier or did you go to the full cap? Right, so this is... Fringy, you can confirm. This This is the full thing, right? Um, there's two... Oh, let me, let me pull it up. Because there's two pages. Um, this, 
this uh this wonderful script was written in uh yeah that that is uh that's that's the full thing yeah so um, clearly there are three roles <laughs> being narrator batman and superman yeah so. I, I mean i was i was cool with just reading it all very dramatically oh fuck <laughs> that we gotta have characters jesus okay you but you can be narrator if you want to if you want the big part Man, I I feel like I want the bat <laughs> the Batman. I'll be the narrator. The All right, I'll Rags narrator. I'll be, join. I'll be Superman then. You'd be Superman, yeah. So <laughs> right. So context. What you're about to hear. It, well, wait. Is the so Batman vs Superman came out and people weren't In happy. In 2016, and people didn't like it, and uh, Chris Stuckman didn't like it that much, and so he in 20 minutes he uh he pumped out three pages. Uh, in 20 minutes. Or like three pages of the script for the rewrite. It's most of, he's uh, ever worked of, on of, anything. Uh, and now, now here is your additional context: the zinger line, the real kicker to this script, was said by him on a podcast about a week before he posted this on Twitter. When he then said that he only worked on it for twenty minutes. Now, whether or not he did, you know, is unknown. But the the real punchline that was not made in 20 minutes that was lingering up there in the in the little headspace dude just for looking a at while just looking at this i don't believe he only took 20 minutes making it i reckon that he would well have, uh... 20 minutes to write three and a half pages in like final drafts i mean it's pretty quick so yeah we'll try and do it all without even we'll just like as if it's like <laughs> an actual even thing very yeah. serious business this is art and we take art very seriously here on yes. every frame of pause all right <laughs> All right, places, everyone. All right. All right. Rain assaults the ground as Batman takes large, powerful steps towards a figure <laughs> descending from the sky. The striking silhouette of Superman explodes into view as lightning flashes across the clouds. The two titans lock eyes as Superman's boots hit gravel. Batman breathes deeply and writes himself. Superman shows no signs of apprehension and begins advancing towards his opponent. Within moments, the two colossi are standing inches apart. I admire your courage. I imagine bravery isn't something you're accustomed to. <laughs> Challenging me isn't my idea of bravery. <laughs> you don't... You don't know the meaning of the of the word you've never tasted fear you've never felt pain that's about to change lightning erupts in the darkened sky beat superman <laughs> focuses on batman's cowl utilizing his x-ray vision bruce wayne i'm actually impressed batman remains silent I'm surprised you can find time to kill criminals in between drinks. A tiny smirk appears on Batman's face. That's rich. How many people could you have saved while you snapped photos at that party? Superman is taken aback. What? You thought of... <laughs> you thought... You thought a pair of glasses could fool the world's greatest? <laughs> <laughs> the world's greatest detective. All right, I got it out. Silent. I won't tolerate vigilante justice. <coughs> then keep out of Gotham. Branding your victims. Murder. What separates you from them? Don't lecture me about death. Thousands were killed the day you decided to help. The low lives I put in the ground would have hurt good people. You nearly decimated an entire population because you chose not to lead Zod out of the city. So I should have just stood by and let him destroy the planet. The people you've killed may be criminals, but they're fathers, sons, brothers. You've crossed the line, and I can't accept that. Tell that to Zod Snap Neck. Uh, <laughs> God. How do you tell uh, Snap Neck? How do you tell? <laughs> You're not saying it to it. More like it's more like at it. 
<laughs> yeah. Are you talking yeah. at something? Yeah, like, this. you don't talk to a rock. You talk you at a rock. You got laying there on the ground. <laughs> you just <laughs> grab his neck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In rage, Superman tackles Batman, and the fight begins. The fight proceeds exactly as depicted in the film. Batman stands over Superman's beaten body. He places his steel boot atop Superman's chest and presses down hard. As opposed Superman, to soft. Yeah. <laughs> Superman lets out a scream in agony. Anger floods Batman's eyes. Superman's cries echo through the cement walls. But soon, another sound. High heels. Lois Lane rushes to Superman's side. Uh, I get, I'll do this. Stop! What have you done to him? <laughs> <laughs> she cradles Superman's neck in her arms. Batman is unfazed by her. He takes hold of the kryptonite spear and raises it above him, preparing to vanquish this alien. Lois throws her arms upward, begging him to stop. It's in this moment that Bruce has a vision. He remembers something, something horrible. That night, the night he lost them, his parents. Insert, Martha Wayne, kneeling by her husband, with her hands in the air, begging for mercy from the mugger. Bruce looks at Lois and sees not her, but his mother, cradling Superman in her arms, pleading with him to stop. The gun fires, murdering Martha the Wayne. The gunfire murdered her. <laughs> the gun did it. <laughs> the spear so, is still raised, but he's not plunging it downward. Please! Batman's eyes are visible now. Tears streaming down his face. <laughs> he drops oh. the spear, stepping away. He walks out of the warehouse and gazes <laughs> into the sky. Martha. Oh my god. <laughs> insert <laughs> young bruce wayne staring at the mugger who has just shot his parents batman looks in shock at his hand horrified to see the same revolver that killed his parents clutched in his grasp he shakes this vision away and returns to the present the rain beats down on the pavement still lois comforts her beaten love she glances towards where Batman was just standing. He has. Yeah, that was shit. Well, <laughs> the <Bravo>. snow. <laughs> most literal dialogue. It's like literally I, I like. I can't get over it, dude. Tell it's that to Zod thing. Snap Neck. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> a line uh, for the ages. You defended the city, and then Zod came and fought you. I do remember Is... Zod. Yes, yeah, I remember dude, the, 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 I, I, I do. the smug way they oh, reveal each other's right, identities. Like, criminal. oh, you're Bruce Wayne. Oh, you're Clark Kent. I, I, <laughs> I love can tell the by your face. Batman refers to himself as the world's greatest detective. That's not cringy as all fuck. <laughs> yeah. Batman calling himself the. <laughs> I, it's uh, it's not. It's really funny though. Like, I can't, I can't get over it. I really liked when Lois is cradling Superman. Presumably it's yeah. a baby and not a full grown Superman. But then if it was <laughs> if it was baby Superman, would he have like a little baby Superman outfit on? Yes. So you knew it was Superman. <laughs> it <laughs> like, like you and, can, and you also can just use, you can use like allegories. You can be like when you let that monster destroy our city. You don't have to go. When you let Zod in, you know, tell it to Zod's well, snap neck. It's I, bad I just, writing to, like, so deliberately I, spell everything I out. Do, I do love how the descriptions are even weird. Superman explodes into view. Like, how does one explode into view? <laughs> exactly. Like, what, what does yeah. that mean? The, the two colossi. Ugh. <laughs> no. This uh -huh. is... Oh. It, wh why is it so overt? Why is it yeah. so overt? <laughs> It's really it's funny, though. Is, he has learned, in all of his years, he has not learned anything. As if his short films didn't already prove this to us. 
he is just devoid of talent. He's like a talent black hole. Hey, he put something out there, and you are being mean. You're harassing him. Stop it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that was um, what he said, like, when this happened initially, because he got a lot of shit for it, um, obviously. It's, I it's can really see why. Bad. Well, yeah, it, I'm sorry we can't live in a world where everybody praises everybody for everything. Well, the big problem as well is when you, when you go out, like, saying, I'm going to, like, amend something that already exists, you're already kind of asking for trouble. Like, oh, yeah. I'm going to fix the thing that already exists. It's like, ooh, Isn't, um... it better be good now. Isn't the presence of criticism what makes praise meaningful? I would say so. Because if everybody Please praised stop. everything, you'd just be like, yeah, great, you're going to say it's good. Yeah, yeah, shocking. Okay, moving on. Well, I mean, the, 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 the knowledge that there is such a thing as bad makes it an achievement when you've done something good. Um, I mean, we talked about it before, peaks and troughs, right? If, there, if there's no such thing as bad, then what does it matter if anybody ever does anything? There, there is no difference between the Green Mile and, um, and like, I don't know, the room. They're, they're, they're just as good as each other. There's hey. no difference between the Godfather and, and, and uh, I don't know, like Transformers 2. This is, like, pointlessly stretched out. Like, what do you gain from them discovering each other's identities in this moment? I like, honestly, how does that... Dude, I honestly distinct? think he wrote it because he thought, how cool is it that Batman and Superman separately figure each other out? How fucking cool is that? I guess yeah. it's just... The way it makes right? it, like, actually less interesting, because before you had two kind of uh, icons, like, it is Batman versus Superman, bringing their uh, alternate identities into it, like, there's an extra layer. It kind of worked better when they both saw each other as these weird monoliths. Uh, it made their fight more believable because they didn't understand yeah, each other. It, it, it's it's this weird thing where, like, the original might be better and the original is not good. Um, mm -hmm. because, like, like, the second they don't Batman discovers Superman... Like, here's the thing. The, sec uh, the reason Batman stops beating the crap out of Superman is that he discovers he's human. He has a human mother. Yeah. Like he thought he was some Mars, random uh, alien with, and he didn't know anything about him. And he's like, "I don't know anything about this guy. He could, you know, destroy the universe. Might as well just kill him." You know. And the big reveal is, "Oh my God, uh, he has a mom. Uh, he feels human emotion." Okay, but if Batman on his own figured out, "Oh, he's Clark Kent. He has a girlfriend. He has a human mom. He's a newspaper reporter. He's just like an average guy." Like. He, he would have not needed to have this fight, or at least he would have had... Mild Man and Clark Kent from the Daily Planet? Yeah. The, the, more that I, the more that I think about this rewrite, there's actually more problems. Why isn't Batman trying to kill Superman at any point? Why are they even talking? Like, Batman has no intention of talking to Superman in this film. He just wants to kill him. So like, Why not set up a kryptonite it, bomb in the Daily Planet if you figure well, out Well, I mean, there's, there's a lot of problems. Well, yeah, exactly. That, that, this scene doesn't work. The the fact yeah this the scene doesn't even work like as its own thing. I feel like uh, when he no, addresses like uh, addressing the Clark Kent Superman glasses thing in dialogue, I feel like is a comic book no no. Like you just don't no you don't bring it no, up. Yeah, yeah. Don't mention it because now that you brought oh you thought a pair of glasses could fool me. It's like oh so it. it then other people are going to figure it out. Now that you mentioned that, right? Yeah, everybody else is going to figure it out. Like, don't call attention to it at all. And also, yeah. how, how does how does X ray vision make one able to identify? Like, if you use X ray vision, you just see a skeleton. How how are you meant to figure out that it's Bruce well, Wayne? Just be a skeleton. He knows Bruce Wayne's right. yeah. face and stuff. I guess Having he can decide a... the level of the X ray, right? Like, he can decide I, I what guess. he's seeing through. Yeah. Initiate well, X ray level two. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, directly referencing the old how come they can't tell it's just Clark Kent with glasses joke is the equivalent of why didn't the, why didn't Chewbacca get a medal uh, and then you give him <laughs> right. Right. Oh, right. 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 I feel right. like, yeah, huh? this, this fight between Batman and Superman, it's a good time for a joke, really. Well, yeah. I don't know if they're trying to make it a joke. That's the thing. I don't... I don't know that that's what he was going for. I think he, it was meant to be a serious scene in which both characters reveal their, their differing perspectives, but they do so in such a ham-fisted way 
you know like oh you don't like me the- about death i blame you you know it's it's like that rick and morty joke where he's getting dragged to hell and he's like it's so it's all real i shouldn't have let you let me down and i blame you like it's that <laughs> overt. i mean the thing about i'm surprised you could find time to kill criminals in between drinks that's a joke <laughs> yeah. a very bad yeah. joke surprised you had time to kill criminals in between all that drink an insult than a joke it's, it's so awkward. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I find this uh, surprising because I, I like the guy. I, I, I've i seen his uh, video reviews before and uh, I've enjoyed his content. So it's surprising. It, to It's like this is what he thinks is a good script. But, you know. Well, he's got stuff said that isn't. I would say that his short films are better than that. <laughs> like, I would I don't wait. Think well, great let me all, but... drop. I, did, I didn't yeah. know he did short films too. I thought he was just a review guy. I'll drop two bonus pieces of context for you on that. He thinks this is bad, since he considers the script oh, okay. pretty bad. But secondly, we all think his yeah. reviews are awful, so... <laughs> oh, do you? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I've never been able to get through a full video of his. They're only like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I've never been able to get through a full video of his. Um, yeah, Chris Duckman's like, I uh... He just, he just stays incredibly broad. <laughs> Never really says anything is is the like main thing we come away from him with, and very boring. But of course, right? Uh, works for a lot of people. He's he's got to be popular for a reason, right? Yeah. Yes. I I uh, I saw a couple people asking about Batman trailer. I think it looks cool. I think it looks cool, but I would say that because I like Batman a lot. So. Yeah, Fringy was maybe, a big maybe. fan of uh, Joel Schumacher taking over Batman. He loved those too. So. Oh. <laughs> Just saying, guys. Oh. Oh, I mean, I hate to say it, but uh, I think Zack Snyder's color grading is much better than Joss Whedon's uh, oversaturated garbage. I think Zack Snyder makes good-looking stuff. I mean, it fits my personal tastes. It's just the I, think, a lot I saw the Justice League, and honestly, my thing is, this is kind of too dark. It's kind of hard for me to make out a lot of details with everything. The new so one? Dark. Yeah, the, the one that came out today. Or, you know, yeah, you that's kind of a thing. I mean, I love high contrast. It's just what I'm into. I know it's, it's not everybody's. Oh, well, it's uh, it's more like there's not much of a palette. It's it's really uh, there's not a lot of like, I I don't know. I the I, shadows I like are way more intense than the theatrical cut, though. Yeah, but I, I I don't know if that's necessarily even the I am vengeance line. Yeah, it's better than if he said I'm Batman. I think that's way better line. Did I, you I see this? Did you say the Snyder cuts out now? It's no, they, they, the whole thing? they released a trailer today. Oh, okay, it. right. Yeah, it's going to be split into four parts that are an hour each. So it's like, wow, this is going to be twice shit. as long. Holy shit! Seriously, I know. Yeah, oh it's going to be, it's gonna be <laughs> twice <laughs> as long as the theatrical cut. Oh my god! And it had the dark side. Thing it, is, uh, it looked uh, really bad. Yeah, the majority of the trailer does seem to be like unseen footage. They're kind of saying uh, like, "Hey, look at all." You haven't seen it was right. footage that was trailers, a lot of it um there is some new stuff again dark side and i think he looks rough i think he looks real rough like that better not be what he look- well i don't i'm not that invested in uh the justice league snyder cut but i mean yeah it, it looks it looks rough um dark side at least. i don't know man i don't know how much money they can afford to sink into the scene they got like, 30 million dollars they got like 30 million dollars to do this okay what did the movie cost to make before like 500 million uh pretty sure it costs 300 million when you include reshoots and remember they're not paying the actors or this is all for uh visual effects and like post-production 30 mm-hmm. million bucks especially when There's a lot of it's done do any additional reshoots at all no no believe. no no because the whole well i mean no they're not i think uh the whole uh, the whole idea of the snyder cut is that it existed i mean at least that's the story that's been spun but we know that's not true because that the fact that they needed to spend $30 million to finish it means that the Snyder Cut didn't exist. Like, whatever it was didn't exist. Or whatever it was is not what is going to be released next year. This right. Is, but know, maybe it was all just unfinished CG, because that's... Well, you know. some of it was probably unfinished, and some of it probably was finished but got cut. Because the film was only two hours long, and I'm pretty sure that, you know, whatever happened in the interim, like, I'm not... I'm not sure. I guess I guess the thing with the Snyder Cut is like, I'm just not that optimistic that it's going to be like, like it's probably going to be better just by virtue of the fact that there's more content. Um, but I don't know that that's fair, you know what I mean? 
Mm. You, yeah. you know, it's like maybe are, oh, oh, just waiting. He it. ruined it. And it's like, dude, I'm I'm willing to bet that Avengers is still going to be a better film than whatever the Snyder Cut is. Like Avengers one. Yep. In terms Probably. of achieving all of this, obje- and plus Buffy and Angel again, you know, sing the virtues of those shows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's happening. That's what it is. Also, I was gonna say, uh, we are at like twenty minutes away from the cap, and there is there is more things to come. We are not yet at the even though we're close to twenty four hours already. Uh, so mm-hmm. neat. Um, but yeah. So watch that we, trailer. We're gonna well, we'll get we'll take a break, and this one's probably gonna be actually half an hour, maybe a little bit more, because. I need to walk around and also get everything ready for part yeah, three. Otherwise, so. you might get deep vein thrombosis. Yeah. <laughs> all, all you know, shallow vein thrombosis too. Either one, you could, uh, as long as it's, yeah. you know those poor veins. Um, but thank you all for for watching and hanging. Soon to to come to stores near you is part three of EFAP Ooh. 100. I can't wait. We did two rags. That's not bad. <laughs> yeah. <that's pretty> <laughs> Um, thank you all for, for hanging out with us, both chat and guest Um, we will no catch problem. you soon enough. Uh, goodbye. Yeah, everybody. Goodbye. See you soon. Thanks, everyone. Mm-hmm. Bye.